change it all. All right, sat here with uh, Imperial, and we're going to go over some potential CS2 patches that are coming down the pipeline. Have you guys been playing CS2 at all? No, not yet. Just a little bit. Just a little to, bit to see the new maps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See how pretty they look. Yeah. Um, okay, so here we go. This actually is the map pool patch. Is the first one we're going to throw at you. After each major, one map will be taken out of the pool, and one new map will be added into its place. I like that. Yeah, I think uh, that's been discussed, right? Like, as an idea. I think, I think it's good. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah. Like, there is always a rotation. You like I it? Like, it's gonna be more dynamic, right? Uh, I think even for the viewer, it's good to see new maps, don't you think? Like, it's always the same, 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 same. Mix same. things up a little bit yeah. quicker. For you guys as well, you like the idea of a new map every major? Yeah. Yeah, I think yes. But, but I think it would only work if, like, the major would be the last tournament in the season. I think they've made that change yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Okay, so it could work. So now yeah. it can work. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Well, I think right now they don't change a lot. Yeah. Don't you think? Like the rotation is not switched for how long? There's what, no, what? there's no set time period. Yeah, just yeah. yeah. So they just change randomly. I think if they put like uh, a schedule to change every every three months or six months would be pretty good. Every player break would be nice, but it's 
difficult to make that happen, but... What map would you guys pick to come back in, just out of curiosity? Cobble people? Train, train people? Train. Train? Cobble. Cobble? Cobblestone. Cobble Cobblestone. Cobblestone. Yes. And for me personally, cash. Yeah. I would vote maybe for cash. I want season back. I do too. Season, season was there at the start, the ECAA, like pucks, and I love that map. I think and, I, and I think it was very good. I yeah. literally played like one puck in that map. I, yeah. I never played it. And train also good, but I would rate cash more than train. Okay, cool. What about Tuscan? No love for Tuscan? I oh, love Tuscan. Bro. Yeah. Tuscan and train, I would like. Train. Ooh, train is a good one. I kind of miss train. I used to be a train hater, yeah. but I kind of miss train. This one we call the, the Valorant patch. I'm going to break this up into a couple chunks because it's big. Gameplay-wise, we're going to take the matches instead of MR15, they're going to be MR12. You're now able to run around and move in the buy time area in your in your spawn and CT or T spawn. And then we're going to change over time to MR1 instead of MR3. No, it's not good. Everything no. you say, it's no. not good. No. Don't like any of that? No. Don't like MR12? No. Don't like MR1 over time? No. Nah. Like in my opinion, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know nice. the boys, but I, I don't like, I, I don't think I would change that. I, I like the MR12. I think the only thing I like is actually the MR12. And the only fact is, I think it's better for our viewers. Mm -hmm. Because like, if there's longer matches, I think it's going to be way more enjoyable to watch it. But other than that, no, 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 doesn't doesn't look that good to me. You know, you remember the the beginning of the sort? Like they had a, a different type of of competitive. I don't remember I don't the remember, name, yeah. but it was like you. It was Imar 13, I think, and you would start with like 10k. Uh, so there was no equals at all. So yeah, don't it was more aggressive. It was more fun. And don't like running around in, C in CT spawn. That could be something, but no. Yeah. Just a blank no. <laughs> yeah. There's no real use to that one, is there? No. CS is just better than that. I I don't like any of it. No. I, I, no. I think MR Tribe is not enough in CS. Yeah, for the players. But I think yes. for the viewers it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. for the players I think it's really not enough. Uh, added a one-tap rifle to the rifle tab. Comes with 12 rounds and costs 2400. The R8 revolver uses shotgun rounds. Reduced the auto sniper price. Gosh, you're asking for chaos. Like, uh, you know, like, uh, what, like, I'm trying to think, like, you know, a car 98. A crossbow or what? No, like a one shot, like, yeah. it's like, a, it's to the head one shot, but yeah. it just doesn't have the, the, uh, So would you have, like, a scope. harpoon or what? Yeah, like an M1 Garand or something, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah. okay I see. I'm like, uh, Mosin. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mosin or something, yeah. yeah. Reduced auto sniper press, I think that could be interesting. Sure. Just in having more color to the games. Yeah. With guns uh, that have scopes, at least. Mm -hmm. Cool. And it would be probably new meta of Auto Sniper, new price. Like Silencer's meta. OT. I think BO5, BO5 is like the that's, that's the worst, you know. Like if the, if you if you get to play all five maps, like from viewer point of view, I think it must be crazy. Yeah, like yeah. if you actually want to watch everything, right. like Can you imagine explaining that to a friend that's not esports and be like, yeah man, come watch Counter Strike. Bro, I have eight hours to watch this yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did that. I brought my mum to Cologne, first Counter Strike event she's gone. That grand final went five maps. Oh my she God. sat there and she's like, okay, so when does it end? And I'm like, about very interesting. Yeah, eight hours from now. Yeah. <laughs> Get comfortable. Yeah. Have a nice seat. Update number three, seeking cover. So this has to do with the bomb. So we're going to introduce bomb pressure waves. When the bomb explodes, it creates a volumetric pressure wave, which expands around corners and spaces and into gaps in the walls. So if you're caught in the pressure wave, you'll take 100 damage and die automatically. Don't change too much, right? It's not CS for me. How's good the wave's gonna? How do you know the the wave where the wave's gonna hit? Explosion. So like Inferno and Ancient already. Sure, it just makes it like way more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of you can I, hide behind a wall. I no, no, guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, like but I mean, if you're talking like a real life thing, then it's. <laughs> Like uh, you should cover, you know, if you hide behind something in theory yeah, a bit, sure. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's less damage. Right? Less yeah. damage. Yeah. I like it. I like. Don't you like it? No. Like people would have to hide better. And I already kind of enjoy it on ancient. Uh, Inferno is too like cruel. I think there was like a round where like I'm trying to save. I run to other bomb site and I die. Yeah. yeah. Like. Hello? Yeah, the amount of times I'm like mid box and it's about to blow up yeah. and it's like I'm, I'm not probably yeah. not safe here. I think I think Ancient is the only map that you can do Ninja Diffusal now. Something like close to Ancient okay. would be good, I think. So cool. yeah, it could be possible. Yeah, so you don't mind the Inferno radius? Inferno is alright, I think. I mean, yeah. it wasn't such a big difference to be honest. It, wasn't it was just extreme. a little bit of damage. I think it's fine, yeah. yeah. The Nostalgia patch is patch number four. The Diffuse kit, the price is reduced to $200. 
you now need to buy ammo for weapons as, as we did in 1.6 back in the day. Wall bangs are way easier to pull off across the map, so we're just going full back to 1.6. The ammo I like because in, in 1.6, I remember Opera's, they would just buy an op and you don't even buy the second, third par, par, like pair of ammo, you know? You just play with the 10, 10 bullets basically and man, you better hit the shots, you know? I would enjoy having that added. Really? Yeah, okay. I, I think I would. Uh, making the economy mm -hmm. different. I think that would be good. You might be able to like buy one magazine and still afford a flashbang or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like th that would be very interesting to see at least. Yeah, it would be certainly. much harder to, to control the economy yeah. as well because yeah. you don't know how, how much bullets it does they, yeah. they bought. Yeah. And diffuse kits are cheaper, which is nice. Yeah. You see a lot more diffuse kits I, out there in the world. I like it. Yeah, you yeah. would like that as a coach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like these changes actually. I, I, I like it. You're gonna wall bang, you need a lot of bullets. Yeah. Like, you're gonna spam the smoke, so. I mean, in 1.6, it was like uh, awesome to play because, like, you have a lot of cool things to wall bang, like yeah. the walls, the boxes. And it was quite okay. Uh, but I would say maybe um, yeah, to make uh, less than in 1.6. I think the. The wall bang is a little bit too much. Have you seen yeah. some of the broken wall bangs on yeah. the CS2? It's it's too much. That is I think it's a good balance right now. Yeah. To be honest. 1.6 nuke spam was a little was a yeah, little yeah, much. A little too was, much. Yeah, it was a, not a little. It was a lot. <laughs> so you from outside can spam a side, a bomb side, everywhere. Like yeah. Oh. I like the, the like basically 1.6 wall bangs. There isn't this nothing clip where it just spams like four people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean this. I mean you had to learn all those wall and bangs. It's impressive. Right? It's it is impressive. impressive. Yes, 100%. I guess for the opponents it is. You could argue there is no counterplay. You just. I guess you don't go. No. Wait. I mean there you just spam every corner and I mean hope. You, you just hope you kill him. You know. Yeah. Intel Extreme Masters Cologne is brought to you in part by Intel. Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, and 1xBet. Welcome to the group stage of IEM Cologne. Unfortunately, we've lost some great teams, but hey, we've got a lot of good ones in return. And some of the good ones are coming in with new fresh faces added to the rosters. Let's look at Cloud9, for example. Yes, they don't get to debut their full roster in here, but Electronic and Perfecto in new colors. These are major champions looking for major success once again. And such cool storylines coming into the groups like Hades. He's playing for nine. He got demoted from Ents, but he made it through to groups anyway. And he's facing his ex-team in his first match today. Crazy. It does make it that little bit more spicy. And then we have FaZe Clan, who, okay, these are the tank engine trains running on through like the treks 
put on right now. They are dominant team from start to finish with a new coach to try and help Carrigan out, who's an old face who used to lead the team. It's crazy. And we haven't even touched on Vitality. We haven't even touched on Navi. And that's just to say how much greatness there is on the horizon, on the road to the Cathedral, to the Lanxess Arena. Let's find out how it's all going to go down today. The first day of groups at the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne and eight new challenges are approaching. Eight teams rising from the plains, but now an entirely different task on their hand as some of the best teams in the world will be gracing these halls all with one collective goal, edging ever closer to the Covetous Cologne Cup. Some teams will rise, some teams will fall, and we are here to be seeing it all. My name is Freya Spears. Joining me up here for our pre-show, Moses, Shanko, and Kassad. Gentlemen, how excited are you to be in the group stage of Cologne? I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped. I'm really excited. This is what we've been waiting for. And I mean, I think the big thing is all the new lineups coming in as well. You yeah. get the first glimpse at some, you get to see how some teams have developed after a couple of games. And I think that's the important thing with this event is teams are going to change as the event goes on. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, very exciting. Uh, whether we'll have something to make up for Cloud9 ruining the whole tournament. They did it again. The most anticipated, like they just, they just find new ways to disappoint you. I know. You know, in the words of Blair, uh, I, my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. <laughs> it's like the most anticipated roster we've had in a couple of years, probably. And let's like, oh, well, the, one of our best players, the star player on the team, can't make it because of technical issues. Yeah, like, that you just did this to not have any pressure for this tournament. Admit it. Admit it. Admitting it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I saw what you did, Cloud9. Yeah, I was watching. Yeah, yeah I was watching <laughs> the, the ruin the beginning of, like the, to watch of, the, of the real tournament. Excuse me? <laughs> <sighs> that, no, the thing is, like, listen, you need a coffee? Like, <laughs> let's go over live. Let's go pick it up, bro. <laughs> Cloud9, yes. I, I mean, couldn't have just sneaked him in somehow over the border? Sure. Listen, forgive him. In our neck of the woods, that is possible, so not here. <laughs> um, any surprises, gentlemen, from the play-ins? Were there any teams that you maybe weren't expecting to be making it to the top 16? I the love the Mongols. Yeah. I'm buying into the Mongols they're because fun. they got to do a couple of their games and they're just playing so simple, which is not to take anything against them. Like they're going with basic stuff and until you can stop them, they're going to keep doing it. They're fearless. I think they give you a great example of when you execute on a site with a lot of utility, how the, what the waypoints should be for, for players, right? Like they just push, they don't care, they create space. And you know, for example, with Into the Breach, I mean, they were just shell-shocked, you know, there was nothing they could do about it, and I was very impressed by that, and also by how deep the talent pool seems to be in Mongolia. It's like, oh, they lost one player, two players, they made some changes, and all of a sudden, 9-10, amazing opera, and Zinho, only 16 years old, he was the highest-rated player against Furia. Yeah, great stuff from them. Yeah, and they've always been fun to watch, even if you don't want to buy into them long term. I think one of my surprises has got to be OG as well. OG making yeah. it through kind of caught me off guard just because all these different times they put together new rosters. I'm not like fully certain like what to expect out of it. And it seems like it's going to be a little bit weird. And they did just enough to get through and, and I mean, look good in that final game. And obviously, uh, Keto coming in. I think his quote was great where the, uh, Kakafu telling him, you're not on big anymore. You can just swing. You can just peek. You can just take fights. He has like the hot <laughs> hand. Don't have to worry about anything. So I mean, that, that was cool for me. And obviously, it's going to be fun to see Regali continuing to play. So let me just make this clear. Out of all of this new OG, you're most excited about Keto? Uh, no, that's not. But I, that, that was just the quote I took, you know? Why are you trying to throw me under the bus like that? You're like a tank engine <laughs> yeah, coming in along like these tracks. This morning. You know, it's one of his mornings, right? He does that, but you just don't pay attention to him. You don't know my mornings. He's, he's, he's Talking about tank he's engines, gonna, you know, Thomas disappear. is out. Yeah, man. Is that like my a British UK reference? Heart is, broken. is that like a good reference? Or? <laughs> that's pretty decent. I, I have not take it. I haven't seen... <laughs> a team more disorganized and looking more poorly than Into the Breach in a long time. Like, yeah. unfortunately, they've had some issues, you know, playoff team from the last CSGO major uh, out, of the ter out of contention so early. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, you were pretty hyped about the two new I editions I thought they were going to well. be better, yeah. like with Neil Frag and Beamus, they can make this happen, but no, they need more They can let a couple takes before the play-in stage. Yeah, that went top, didn't they? Um, yeah. Torzy was another one of them, Janko. Do you want to defend <laughs> yeah, yourself I said, here? Yeah, I said Torzy, you know, Dexter was holding him back, I think now under <laughs> Shui, just like in Mao's NXT, it was all the in-game later. <laughs> Verbatim, that's no, exactly I, what you said. Yeah, we'll see, you know, he obviously <laughs> had an amazing uh, couple of games, yeah. right, 20-0 in opening kill. Of course, I think like these teams should be paying me money. Like if you want 
your player to pop off, just tell me, I'll criticize him off the broadcast, you know, and he'll do great. But I think it's just for him, you could tell he was way more aggressive. And when we saw him first time in Katowice last year, that was the takeaway, like with yeah. Torji. He's fearless. He doesn't care. It's a bit... You know, you wonder if it's overly aggressive, will he get punished? But that wasn't happening really. And I think we'll see in some of the later stages against some of these maybe more veteran teams, if he will end up being more punished. And I guess one other player you have to bring up too is just someone who like found like a new lease on life, Mezzi with Fnatic. Like the burden yes. of leadership taken off him, he popped off in the play-in stage. That was awesome They promised to watch. 40, right? He delivered 39 in the first one. That's pretty they damn are, good. Besides the Mongols, they are the biggest surprise right here, right? Yeah. Obviously, Mongols number one, the way they played, he's just like Yanko mentioned, he's like, so simple. They're like budget heroic in terms of trading. They're super good in these basics, so that's why they won. But like I said, Fnatic was also a big surprise, and Mezzi, and obviously Afro, and you know Dexter. Uh, so and Roy and Krim. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, that's and Karn, the, the, the Karns are there. Yeah, 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 don't forget right. about Kita. And Kita, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Samuelson. UK yeah. boys. And Kito in OG as well. And <laughs> Sam Matthews. And <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Fnatic. Uh, yeah. Maybe two times. I don't know. The fashion that they made it through in was most surprising. But maybe Kassad can actually say something valuable here. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about Mazzy because you were his coach the first time he came in. Is this Listen. all due to you? Yes. Well, no. <laughs> Well, is, those are the options. No, the thing is, like, he, <laughs> he actually was pretty good back time in the, in the, in the Colossus, whatever that was. The, the, <laughs> the, last, the thing is, like, he was the entry there. He was super aggressive. He was doing all the things yeah. that needs to be done. And you can see the raw skill, you know, and then he transitioned into IGL, which was I was all against. I was saying, and I was against you all the time, saying that he's the best player of that lineup, and you were giving me all this kind of BS, and now you are turning this ship around, like, well, you're riding the wave right now. <laughs> well, am I, am I riding the wave, or am I driving the ship? <laughs> well, turning the ship around <laughs> on the wave. But I, I think with Mezzi, it's just his versatility is incredible. Uh, like yeah. Asad said, he was like entry, he was like, he was hopping for a little while, I yeah. think, on that team too, and obviously very talented, and I agree, unfortunately. I think he should be probably best be left in a role where he's just playing, you know, and have someone else IGL. I mean, I think the argument of that lineup, we don't have to get too deep into, is also like, who's going to do it if it's not him, though, yeah. right? That's the other side of that he's coin. He's him. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, it's cool to have Fnatic in the, in the group stage. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the new faces that are going to be gracing this group stage. Of course, we have eight teams advancing from the ESL rankings. Uh, we've got some really big names coming in as well. Obviously, we've had our first taste of Na'Vi, we've had our first taste of Vitality, but I feel like this is where the real testing ground is going to be, right, Jason? We're coming into uh, such a prestigious tournament. They want to be making it to playoffs. Yeah, and I mean, regardless of of what, what kind of a lineup and situation with new players like Cologne is that event that, yeah. that you want for like multiple reasons, right? The prestige and the history of the event, you know, you need a championship level event for the Grand Slam as well, but just to show that these lineups are on the right path and everything. So um, yeah, I, re regardless of where you're at and what problems you have, like this, this event is kind of like patchwork, fix these up as quick as possible and let's go as deep as we possibly can. It's very surprising to see Mouseport being the you know ninth time here, considering you know the past and everything in the last few you years. You were here once as their coach. I was here 2015, 16, 16, 15. I don't even know, but we didn't make the playoffs. Memory is not what it, it was. Used just to be. a just a terrible memory. Anyway, <laughs> Navi ten times, NIP ten times. I didn't expect that to be you know the case, and obviously Fnatic. I mean, Navi have won it champions. twice, right? They've got a pretty good yeah. percentage record. If you're gonna. Take it like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think also, you know, obviously you have teams like FaZe, full of veterans, right, with uh, Kerrigan and Rain. I think Kerrigan was at every single one. So was Rain, um, yeah. And, and then you have, you know, some of the teams that are here for the first time, like Gamer Legion, who also hasn't, haven't played an official since uh, the Major. That's yeah. wild. That, gonna get stomped. that is pretty wild. <laughs> and they've come in with some changes. Well, they had two the, players for most of it as well, so that's yeah, an issue. Yeah, they've kind of been poached. I, I feel like you kind of get that, you know, being an underdog team, doing really well at the Major. People are going to pick you apart, and I feel like they felt the mercy. It was the conversation right out of the Major. It's like, we all kind of knew it, because we've seen it happen so many times. Like, these young teams that did really good at the Major, it's like, well, that guy's going to get picked up by somebody. That guy's going to get taken away from you. That You're going to lose him, too. And, and now you just have these teams that just, yeah, get scavenged, get vultured, um, and, and had to find some quick way to recover. And I don't know if you know Gamer Legion pulled it off as gracefully as we would have liked. So it's kind of like, okay, let's see what let's see what you've got. Yeah. Any final thoughts on? No, I got nothing. Gamer Legion. You got nothing, nothing. on Gamer Legion. <laughs> <laughs> the same way they're gonna play this event, I got nothing. Oh, absolute fire! Um, right. Let's talk about some of the veterans. You mentioned two names: uh, Carrigan and Rain, making it to every single one. Apex just shy. He missed out on just one year of coming to Cologne. 
Yeah, we'll see with Vitality, right? Obviously, the whole thing about replacing Dupree after you know winning the major and bringing in Flames, it's like you don't really want to do it, but it makes sense. You know, it's, you're better off this way. And I think also they, them and Heroic are like one and two, I think right now, but they have to sort of show us that here because they had a loss to NFT. Who would you put as one? Heroic. Yeah, it should be that makes sense. it should be more heroic has a uh, you know problems with stage and finals and everything. Vitality is not the same form like they did with Soiton Blast. And uh, you know, we have Navi who is trying to accomplish something. It's gonna be a, a really, you know, interesting group stage and the playoffs. It should be like I I I'm expecting an unexpected winner. That's the thing. Yeah, very open stage if we're <laughs> Expect the unexpected Kassad, well. then you'll never be caught off guard. <laughs> We're going to get some sage so life gonna advice be with this. Like one of the favorites. Yeah, yeah. I, that's where Mavs it, are yeah, going to win. You heard it here first. Um, yeah. Going back to the Apex conversation, though, uh, we had a nice little graphic there. He's made it to three grand finals of a Cologne. Hasn't won any of them. And I'm thinking back to 2015. Yeah. Envious get on the stage with Fnatic. They're almost close to closing out the first map. And then now they take a timeout, and it's like, psych, actually, we're going to come back. And they win literally three rounds after and that. And they stick like four up barrels down Apex. Oh, and throw it yeah, that's so funny, like that <laughs> moment, because it, you just look at how far we've come. Like yeah. that was Apex just tilt beyond repair, taking all, and I'm going to peek like through double doors when they have, you know, it's overtime, I think, when it happened, they have like 16 kin, there's like four ops yeah. waiting for him, and he's not even an opper. Like, you, you just wouldn't see that, you know. It all started, I think, with the Crims 1v3 yes. on the B bomb the B -bomb side, right? And Crims still around, still kicking, still and we'll see him in the first game. Yeah, nice. absolute madness. Um, Apex obviously having a bit of a character arc as well. Now he's an in-game leader. Then he was just that kind of aggressive entry fragger, right? His, his transformation as a player, I think, is gonna is, is one of the greatest ones that we're gonna we're gonna have when we look back, you know, a few years down the road. And like, if you look at like the the era of French Counter Strike that he came out of as well, I don't think anyone in the world would have picked Apex to be the player who survived <laughs> this long. With, like yeah. shocks with NBK with Kenny S. You had like or you had a million other people you could have pointed at. And Apex is outlasted. It's the thing that saved his career to become an IGL, right? Yeah. If he didn't do that, he would be fading away and we wouldn't be seeing him on biggest events, maybe in teams like Falcons and, you know, all the other French like mixes and everything. But he took that mantle and he, you know, accepted it, accepted the, the, the way that he's playing. He's not really on the highest level anymore, but he's decided to, you know, to help the team in other ways. And his charisma is right there. You know, you can see it. And yes, he's going to be, you know, emotional. Yes, he's going to make his faces, but he's going to get you there. That's the that's the point. Well, he, it took him a couple of years to really get into the swing of yeah. things as an in-game mm. leader, right? And that's also where you have to, like, learn to, like, manage your emotions. And Apex is never fully going to manage them, you know, to, to the point where he's, like, a little bit of, like, a robot. But, like, you have to learn how to channel that even when you're doing the crazy faces, even when you're being emphatic. Uh, finding ways to make that work within how your team is going to function. And he's, he's accomplished it, so that's sick. Carrigan as well, making it to every single one. I was just having a quick look. Uh, Copenhagen Wolves back in 2014, TSM, then Astralis following year, Maus coming on to phase. He's been on a hell of a lot of teams, hasn't he? Yeah, he really has oh. been. One of the goats. It always makes it happen, right? I remember the one with TSM where they had to get a stand-in first. They got Glaive to stand in for that tournament, and then Dupree had like appendicitis like yeah. during the tournament well, so Sonic, Sonic had to play yeah. and that was the the major and they had to play the decider game against MSL's Dignitas a best of three to make it into the playoffs and then they beat them with Zonic and Glaive so yeah a couple they of miracle runs for Kerrigan I think the one that will sting the most is the loss to Big in 2018 in the semi-final right because that was Astralis this year Astralis wasn't there or they lost to Na'Vi in the other semi-final right it was phase Big where Big was like somehow managed to get there and if FaZe beat them, you know, they had a good track record against Navi, that would have been the Grand Slam. They would have been the first That was the Grand big Slam with Smuya, right? When they yeah, were like, yeah, yeah. playing the finals and they lost to Navi at the end. I mean, yes, that would be a great final. If, if, if they made it, it would be like one of the legendary games. But we did have legendary games here anyway, so. Yeah, when Last we talk year, about legends, I mean, this is where legends are made, right, gentlemen? And I've got two more legends that we need to be checking in with. So let's head on over to the commentary booth where Ooh. everything Scrawny and Launders are waiting. Gentlemen, how are you feeling about groups today? Well, first of all, thank you, Freya. Yeah, legendary in our own right. And uh, groups, I'm, I'm ready to get this one started. I think it's very interesting, Mo, that we got the two youngest teams coming out of play-in here now uh, now progressing to groups. Mouse and, of course, Mongols. And the Mongols, yeah. Uh, so many rookies here playing at Cologne. I think it's something like 30 in total. And we talk about the Mongols, like their entire team is one of them. And... Players like Muzinho, uh, players like 910 have come in and have just been integrated so well into this roster 
that they're starting off fast in European CS. Yep. The rotations look good. Their aim is great. I mean, they're on par with some of the teams. Well, they've passed some of the teams they beat. I'm thinking myself as well. Jim Pat, obviously, it's going to be, I think, tough for him because all of a sudden you get a mouse that's obviously looking at IEM Dallas, the fact that they were able to get into the finals there. Uh, you turn around and you're thrust into Cologne. You're making this uptick from the mouse NXT roster. There's a ton of hype behind you. And what I saw originally was like a bit of pressure. I think pressure on Jim Pat, not necessarily crumbling under that pressure, but also I think the stakes are now higher, right? He's got to get ready and he's got to adapt quickly because he's got teammates that have been sat around waiting for wins. He's got a teammate who just led a roster to a major grand final. Um, and so he better get up and running quick. I also want to give a shout out to Head Trick because he yeah. is, I mean, he's turning into just like a straight up tier one opper. So that's somebody that I really want to watch. And they called him Clutch Trick yesterday because of his game. <laughs> okay. It got a little messy, but he made it happen in the end. Right now I'm looking at like this Head Trick config relationship. And to me, it's almost, a it's a, it's a bit comparable to, not in level, but to Nico and Monacy. Like it's just this this confident, this confident person who wants to achieve a bunch with a new We Play Academy League turned main team opper. It's it's got promise. Yeah, let's so. find out what Kassad has to say about that. Tell me. Yeah, straight up to you, Kassad. It was what do you have to say? Reach. It was a bit of a reach to compare <laughs> Nico and Monacy with He had to okay. hedge. He was like, Oh yeah, there's Serbian. I mean, but I can see where he's coming from. The duo against the duo, but it's like one is David driving versus one, one is driving like a Ferrari. And the other one is like Fiat Punto or something. Don't call Nico that. What do you mean? Nico is the Ferrari. <laughs> that, that, that's the joke. Um, yeah, <laughs> speaking of newcomers, Mongols, obviously one of the teams there, um, beating Furia to me. Yeah, it. and they beat them also in the same stage of the tournament in Katowice, right? So it seems like it works for them. And listen, with Furia, it was also one of the more like roster that we wanted to see what's going to happen mm. fall and finally in furia and obviously they're going to need more time to get adjusted to the change in play, play style but i have to say from some of the interviews i hate what i'm hearing yeah like i absolutely hate <laughs> yep. the whole oh yeah fallen is doing a little bit of his thing then art is helping like like with the you know we're taking the best of both worlds no no, stop. You need to stop. You need to get away from that. Like, doesn't matter that Fallen, you know, some of the maps were weaker for Imperial, so Art is doing more. Just, it has to be a clean break. You let him come in, set everything up, do it his way. You help him with that where you can. But this, like, back and forth, like, I hate it because I know Fallen. He's a super nice guy. Like, he, it's almost impossible to have him say, hey, listen, let's just do it my yeah, way. Yeah, we're doing it my way. You know, he'll be, he'll say, oh, okay, we can try it. Let's try it. Like, he'll always, like, do a let's try it. And then it's like, you're not getting the change that you needed. If but you it's do not it only way. him. Just get the coaches. Like, work together. He doesn't have to be the bad guy. Coach can be the bad guy, right? Oh, yeah, and because say, like, that, that were great for them. Well... I mean, they're like best friends, Art and Gary. It's like the thing is, like I mean, bad like guy you and Jason, <laughs> bad guy. That's not gonna reach. What? But the thing is, like bad guy in a sense, like we cannot do this anymore. We need to do like the other way, right? I would, he did an interview with us after the game, and he was quite open about what what happened. And he was like talking about specific situations on Inferno. They ran out of time, and he said like, yeah, I called them in the middle of the round to, to put pressure on Banana, but they didn't really do it. And it's like some things like that we need to get used to, and need to just start doing it to understand the map better. And if we wouldn't run out of time and grenades and whatever, right? So he was quite open about that. But yeah, I do agree. He's super nice. He just needs to stop being not that nice. That's it. They're going to look better down the road, but I think at the at the end of the year, we're going to look back on that Fury change and be like, I, I really think that Fury messed up not going for Biggie's Aaron Skulls. I think that would have been that would have been a smarter way to go long term for that team. So I still have some faith that Fallen uh, can, can get this team pointed in the right direction. I think they're going to improve. I don't think it would be as good as if they went Biggie's Aaron Skulls. Yeah. I mean, any other disappointments for your money, gentlemen? We've talked about the highs. Liquid? So planes, but I mean. Yeah. <laughs> haven't even talked about Liquid. Like yeah. Do it, Jason. Twist that knife. They're not an NA team anymore, so I don't I, I don't feel obligated. No they talk about complexity. Then. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Yeah, both of them. That's that that's both disappointing. And I mean com complexity. I think the real disappointment there is like something with this Elige edition is just like not clicking whatsoever because Grim has just fallen off the face of the earth. It's not like a dip in performance, it's like a disappearance, um, which has got to be frustrating for him because it felt like he was starting to get a little bit of a groove. I think Halzerk had a few heart like uh, like low-key harsh words to say about the loss saying people were getting quiet the atmosphere in the team in those crunch moments was was dipping um so i, I mean it just seems like there's something uh, that's not really working in the early stages of this edition so you have to be worried about this future you have to be worried about where this team can go from here it's the leadership you have sure. to be 
Okay. It has to be changed, right? Mid, mid management, lower no, no, management, in game management. Okay, that, that's the thing. JT, I'm just gonna say I don't care. No, no, he needs to be replaced, <laughs> right? He needs to be the one that you know, team takes another direction, right? So do but, some because you got a leash, you know. He's there. He's gonna deliver the numbers. Once you get him in the right place, you just need to get somebody to get him there. Is right? a leash gonna they, give you the numbers? though? has he been? I mean, if you set him on the right path, he will. Okay. Uh, that's the thing. I, I just I just wish they went in enough to do you know, direction. Maybe they will. Maybe that, that's fair, because I've had that opinion in the past, but I kind of came around on JT, where I think, like, complexity, I think he's been a little bit underrated in his, in his calling. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's not, like, any kind of, like, mind-blowing tactics or strategies, but I think he's called for them fine. But, but I mean, certainly, I think, you, you know, pointing the, pointing the, you know, the issue at leadership isn't, isn't the worst thing in the world when there seems to be, you know, issues within the team, people getting quiet. That comes down to who's the leader who's kind of establishing the energy within the team in those moments and the focus in the team in those moments. I mean, it's it's kind of those like long relationships where you exceed the moment and you don't want to really be with each other anymore, but you're just used to each other. And it's like very, you can't really escape it anymore sure. until you just cut it completely, right? So I think that that's what they need to do. I'm going to pick your brains advice. about liquid. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to pick your brains about your past performance. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting some psychology out there. There's a content idea. Jesus Christ. Um, liquid, I think, has to be the biggest disappointment for, for my money, particularly with the start we saw in Copenhagen. I think we all got gaslit by it. And then actually the reality. Fred, you need to stop. Back. Like you're always focusing on the negative. You need to be a little bit more positive. Class, why, are you, why are you talking about liquid being a disappointment instead of how great is it the ascendance of nine? You know, that they've made it, that they've justified like some of the qualifying uh, that they've managed to do before, right? They've taken that next step. I think for Liquid, we're just seeing the growing pains, really, right? Oh, a couple yeah. of players that are new to <laughs> Tier 1, Kanshak, or I guess mostly Rainmaker, but also Yakin, they're new to the IGL role, and I think their playbook is just a little bit too thin at the moment, right? For a team that's as good as nine, especially with the map pool, they had to play them on Vertigo and it was always going to come down to the third map. But you could see that they crumbled a little bit towards the end of that game. It was mm -hmm. nine coming back off of a half by win uh, to close it out. I, I, I would buy it if it was only nine that they lost to, right? Sure. I get your point, but the it, big game even, like I, I know they won it, but that got hairy yeah, at times, Yeah, got right? a little sketchy for sure. I think it's I think it's a lot of uh, communication issues. I think it's a lot of like a clash in terms of how players philosophically like to approach situations in the game. I saw a lot of like really ugly, like three on three retake scenarios, post plant scenarios where you have guys like Patsy and Yukinder who love being aggressive, making moves before guys like Naf and Rain Waker who are more passive were ready to kind of pounce on it ready to kind of like make it a cohesive attempt. So I think there's some sketchiness in that area. I think obviously the Yakinder as an in-game leader conversation is going to be one that goes on forever until he can truly prove it. And I think what scares me about it the most, Yakinder strikes me as an in-game leader who's like, this is how I want to play. And I want my players to fit into that structure rather than saying, these are the players I have. Let me build the system with the tools that I'm working with. And I mean, I think that's a pitfall that most new slash young slash inexperienced in-game leaders would fall into. Um, but that's got to be developed over time. He killed his value as a, as an entry fragger be, be, becoming an IGL. Did you see his numbers drop immediately, yeah. like massively? And as a player, he, when he wasn't an IGL, he had a massive, tremendous value as an entry, like creating space for players like, you know, Naf and, and whoever was. I think that there's on, just so many moving role. pieces, too, because when you think about it, like Naf almost has to slide into a role now where, like, previously he was a little bit more passive for Liquid in, in previous iterations, where he kind of got to wait for most of the action to occur and kind of pick and choose his battle. And it feels like now he's kind of almost got to slot back into a position, back like when he was more on Renegades, where he has a little bit more freedom to be like the powerhouse of the team. So you have Naf kind of trying to slightly that, adjust. That, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Uh, listen, I don't know. Like, Kinder is that new hotshot, like mayor of a town. And, you know, he's giving all these promises. And initially, you know, crime is up, unemployment is up a little bit, but he can still turn it around. You know, he can still deliver on his promise. What is that? What happens I don't in know, real life? In too? Deep what is crime right in this metaphor? It's like the, the, just yeah. his numbers are down, <laughs> crime is up, he's criminal, his performance is criminal. Okay. They have to, yeah, they have to break it down to I you, I'm with you, baby. The taxes, you coffee, like, you know, I'm going to cut taxes if you elect me as a, you know, just, just those type of... I mean, the promises things. sound great, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, no <laughs> turning around for Team Liquid here. The remaining teams, though, not only fighting for pride, beautiful trophy, a hell of a lot of prize money, but also a notch on the Intel Grand Slam belt. So let's head over to the sideline to check in the current state of affairs.
Well, let's talk Intel Grand Slam because it has to be in the back of your mind anytime we're at one of these IEM events and the ESL Pro Tour events because it is so hard to get your hands on. It is $1 million, but you need to be incredibly consistent. Oh, yes. That consistency comes with winning multiple events, four in total, including one of the championships alongside other ESL events. And there's only limited teams that have even had a chance of getting that. Astralis being the first, then into Liquid, Navi, and most recently, FaZe Clan. But now, the race is still on for the next one. It definitely is. It's also interesting that you said that. That's such an elite club, right? Because it is so illustrious to get your hands on that Intel Grand Slam. And a lot of those names are also on here. And that goes to show what big of a step you could take forward if you do manage to win IEM Cologne. But as you said, it is Vitality and Ents that are one step closer so Ooh. far. Oh, yes. One step closer. But who is going to be the next one? It's going to be someone here at Cologne. But maybe Vitality is the one that could grab it. Maybe Ents will come through and they'll have another shot at it. Guys at the desk, um, who do you think is going to be the ones to grab it next time? I mean, it would be great if the likes of Ents or Vitality did get one because uh, don't forget, you need to be getting a Masters level event that is either Katowice or Cologne to be in contention with getting the Intel Grand Slam. But gentlemen, do you think we'll see another champion rise from the 16? Yeah, I think it's going to be G2. <laughs> no one Any logic? No one okay. expects no, it. Be Opening great. day they, they, jokes. They, they were poor at Blast, sure. right? But that, that's the point of Blast. You go there to suck, so you can be good here. So you get through the, like, the initial, you know... Uh, like the level of, of the, events of the is equal to the level of the team. Point. Right, and they rise to the level of their opponents. Freya, and they're yeah. in a very difficult group, right? That group looks like it's already playoffs of Cologne. The other Boys. one looks like it's the playoffs of the that Blast be, Major. The G2 winning, that would be the worst thing ever. <laughs> because then... <laughs> because then... They would be like, oh, yeah, we got it back. And then in another year of pain <laughs> and misery and my tweets. And nobody wants that. <laughs> nobody right? wants, nobody that. wants that. Yeah. Nobody wants uh, that at all. You know what I do want, anything. gentlemen? Yes. Schedule. Yes. We do have to touch upon it because we have six best of threes going down today. Three on the A stream, three on the B stream side of things. We've got the A stream kicking off with Cloud9 versus Fnatic. Then it's going to be G2 versus Astralis, followed by Mao's Navi. Uh, Jason, do you think G2 are going to come out on top of an Astralis that's been looking uh, pretty good? Yeah, that, that could be a, a sketchy trap game. That's the perfect kind of game for G2 to lose and disappoint. And then obviously you can see here nice. on the B stream, Monty and G Gamer Legion, Nine taking on Ents, Heroic Mongols to round out the day. I just want to I just want to say I like that James mentioned Ents. I think they this is another opportunity yeah. for them. Okay, they did it in Dallas, they finally lifted the trophy, but here you need to build on that, right? You I feel like you need to make the playoffs, especially considering their group, right? It, it is the more easy of the two groups. So I think for Ents that would be a great way to stay consistent and also build on that moment in Dallas. I love Ents as a team. I love watching Ents right now. I think they're such a fun team to watch. I think they've got so many cool tools. I've enjoyed watching Snappy's like leading for for like you know a year or two years now. So uh, Ents is, is such a fun team for well, the Jason, order. I'm great. sorry, you're going to have to hold your excitement. For I'm a doing my bit, best because that is our second game of the day. Our first game on the B stream side of things is going to be Game Legion versus Monty. But coming up on the A stream, it's Fnatic versus New Cloud Nine. game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opera, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? Man, this is the roster everyone is excited about. And I understand, I saw the news, we don't get Axel to start. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame because we wanted to get that taste straight away. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, this is, an, this is in most people's mind, if you are building a dream Russian speaking roster, yeah. this is it, right? Of course. And for you, the amount of teams and players you've played with, this mix of players is very exciting on paper. 
but it's different on paper than it is in the server. You know, personalities and communication. Yeah, 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 yeah. So do you feel you feel like you've got some work ahead of you? You feel like, you've, you know, it, is it exciting or is it uh, intimidating the amount what you've got to work with now? The first of all, I'm so excited to play. Yeah. It's really different to play on Prax and on tournament. On tournament is always different, you know, on Prax, of course, the things uh, going well. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm very sad that Axile didn't come here just because we spent so much time, so much time together. I mean, uh, a lot of Prax, a lot of the theoretic uh, stuff, you know, we tried to adapt to each other. We we did a lot of work past two weeks, yeah, right? right? And uh, we came here, we stand in, but still, I believe we can go through. Yeah, no, absolutely. How do you feel uh, Electronic and Perfecto as um, characters yeah. are, are going to be able to uh, integrate with Shiro and Axel? Yeah. I mean, that's those are two very new voices in the team. Yeah, yeah. Do you think they're going to benefit Axel and Shiro? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm going to say that um, uh, before Electronic and Perfecto in TeamSpeak, Always we're talking Tafani, Shiro, and me. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. And now everyone talking. Yeah. And too much noise, you <laughs> know, but it's good. That's a good problem to have. Yeah, you know, it's, it's better than uh, silent things. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, the Perfecto is he's communicating very well. Yeah. I mean, he's a very unique player. Is he calm? Like, in my mind? He's, he's calm, but yeah. uh, at the same moment, he's very... Uh, and, and energetic, energetic yeah. yeah, you know, he's trying to communicate, he's trying to help, he's trying to support. And of course, electronic is like uh, on the level which uh, we need to try to to step yeah. to be on the same level like him. Right. You know, communication, really? the calls, the understanding of the game, of course, it's, yeah. he was playing for Navi, he was, uh, he was winning a lot of tournaments, yeah. you know. He, he was playing under uh, Zeus and he understand a lot. Yeah. So, of course, um, he's trying to use it um, inside the server. Yeah. And, you know, the, everything will show tournament games. Yeah, how wonderful. It's because it's very different and it's hard to say. Of course, I'm going to say that we have a lot of firepower. We <laughs> You've got lots of firepower. Yeah, yeah you know, communication on, uh, on good level, everything on the top level, I'm yeah. going to say. But the um, tournament will show Hell yeah. every like mistake and every gap what we have. What is your calling? Making their way plain sailing from the play ins. Fnatic rearing their heads today at the group stage of the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne 2023. And so far, so good for the squad. Mezzi unleashed without the mantle of leadership over his head. But today, they will be turning to face a four fifths of the beast of Cloud9. We have all been hyped to see them entering the server. Obviously, with a little bit of an adjustment, the asterisks of Axile unable to join the squad for now here in Cologne. I'm still very excited to see the convergence of electronic and performance so entering this new blue jersey anchor. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is the one change where you're like, okay, this is the biggest upgrade for a team during the player break. You already have Shiro and Exile. Now you get Electronic in there too. Now you get Perfecto as well. Hobbit as the fifth guy. I mean, yeah, the, the sky is the limit really for the team. Unfortunately, they don't have Exile, but listen, they can still make it to the playoffs and that's where supposedly he would arrive and then imagine that we get the full beast for the playoffs. I, I feel like people are not like understanding the level, the highest, the, the, the skill level of this team, right? Even without Exile right now, I think they can definitely make it to the playoffs. Yes, it's not going to be the easiest path because of, you know, the positioning and everything that's going on, but I think they can do it. And this is like the scariest lineup in the in the past year that I have seen, like in, in the in terms of like roster changes and everything. And I had to share a little bit of a, you know, uh, bar talk. Uh, Rain told me yesterday that electronic is a uh, flip side electronic now. <laughs> so take that however you want <laughs> and be scared. Okay, that's sounding pretty scary. Uh, let's go and check in with the man himself. It's electronic on the mic with Banks. Now, this is going to take some getting used to. Electronic in a Cloud9 shirt after so long on Na'Vi. And first thing I want to touch on here, Electronic, is you stayed as the IGL now coming into Cloud9. Is this a personal choice, what you wanted? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there was only one team that I want uh, to be an agile. Mm -hmm. For them, it was a Cloud9. The other teams, no, just only Cloud9, because I know that this team have a lot of potential and individual players, right? So it, it will be much easier for me to build a system and build a good team with these players, right? Uh, yeah, it was my personal choice and I want to be, as I said before, right, a lot of times I want to be the best in-game leader in the world. There is no, there is not that much a good in-game leaders in the world, so I want to be one of them, yeah. Another goal for this man to achieve. Now, I heard from your manager and we've been seeing it on social media. You guys have been practicing like crazy, so much time. But that was obviously with Axile. So how much time have you had with Buster and, and how are you getting him into the system? Uh, we played just like two or three practices with Buster because we were believing that uh, Exile will get his visa, but he didn't. So yeah, we didn't practice at all with Buster, I will say. Uh, but we will try our best and yeah, I hope we will do good with him because yeah. he's a good player also. And is he just going straight into Axile's roles or are you making more changes? I think for us it's it will be much easier to give him Exile role, so yeah, we will okay. put him on this one. And for you guys, are you hoping Axile can come back for the playoffs? Is that a chance? Uh, yeah, I hope so. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Let's see if we can get the full Cloud9 here in Cologne. That would be the dream to see. But Electronics ready. Let's see if they can take down Fnatic. My oh, man, look at you. You just got so good. So good. Yeah, I think we're crossing all our fingers, all our toes. We want Axel to be returning to this Cloud9. It's, it's nice to see Ivan Drago doing the interview. Just, I'm going to kill them all. I'm the best. I'm going to be the best IGL. Just going to kill them all. I, I feel like that. you're just doing an impression of yourself, but okay. <laughs> I am Kassad. Yeah, I am Kassad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think also for Buster, I mean, he's a guy who's very experienced, obviously played in the team. I wonder, like, how much their style is going to change, oh, if at all, to the old Cloud9, mm. right? But I think there's still enough firepower on this team. Yes. They are shouldn't lose too much in terms of team play, right? Sure, you can't really replace a guy like Axel, but Shiro's still there, Electronic, Hobbit, Perfecto, like they can get it done and that should be the mindset. It shouldn't be like, ah, well, this isn't really it. No, it's like, let's get this done and then let's get the guy in here and play the playoff. We got to hear it from Banks that Electronic, he did want to be the in-game leader for the side of Cloud9. I know it's been a bit of a contentious debate as to whether we wish that he would be relinquished from that role. What, what's your take on this, Kassar? Are you happy to see him still be I'm leader? just happy that, that Drain told me that we're going to get flip side. <laughs> Electronic, right? Look at the, the stats before and uh, before we became agile and as a, it, it's a little bit of a drop But I think right now he has a little bit of a different pieces in mind And I think he adapted to this role and it's gonna be even better than that he did in in, in the Navi so if, if you look at it like pre IGL, it's just pretty sick He's obviously always top 20 player mm. for me and it's sometimes he would be even top 10, but I just want to see the old one, you know, the old one that drops 30 every single game, the superstar electronic. All things considered, it's not that much of a difference. Yeah, but right? that's the point. If he becomes an IGL, you're probably not going to get those superstar level performances. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily because he has to lead and some of his mental focus is going on that. Also, he has to change some positions on the map to be where the action is so he can do a better job of calling. And that's probably the case for not having him be the IGL, so you could get those sup that superstar level. But hey, he doesn't need to be a superstar on the, in this team for them to be the best team in the world. He's got Shiro, Axel, Perfecto, Hobbit, right? He just needs to do his own thing, lead the team, help with the mid rounds. Like that's where Cloud9 struggled the most. And then it's all gravy. And also helping with, uh, I guess, the emotional mentality of the team. Because yes. we saw them absolutely cracking, right? We just have to look back to the RMR. Basically, the entire first half of this year was disappointment from Cloud9. Is he the guy I though? don't see Electro. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I spoke to him yesterday on media day and he was like i'm not taking no shit no egos in this house we are I all like collectively that. a team together i exactly. like that. and i think you know again with the negativity freya but whatever <laughs> i i think absolutely that was an issue for cloud nine you could see them like look defeated before the game was over as soon as the team like starts coming back against them you have no faith whatsoever that they'll be able to close it out it was only nafani really shouting and trying to pick everyone up and now when you have electronic and perfecto in there and obviously just such a big change in the roster, it's going to feel like a big change for the other players too. And it's going to give them a bump. You know, you heard it from Hobbit in the uh, talk with Machine, right? He said, oh, before it was only me and Shiro laughing around. Now it's like everyone. So you could tell that it feels like the vibe and the atmosphere within the team is better. And that's really important. It's upgrade in every aspect, right? Psychologically, they're going to be better, right? Skill-wise, they're going to be better. Breath of fresh air is going to be there. You know how it is when the roster moves 
happen like a honeymoon period and everything. Everything is going to be, looks like it's going to be really good for them. And it's the most scary lineup this year. Moving on over to the side of Fnatic, obviously we've seen a change in leadership over there, but it's Mezzi relinquished of that mantle. And boy, has he opened up, Yanko. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's been playing incredibly well so far uh, in the tournament. And I think we talked about his versatility and what he's capable of. Roy helping him out, especially in that series against Nine. He was uh, the highest rated player. And, you know, we saw Roy's peaks at times. They were really high, even in Fnatic, especially in Copenhagen, Flames. So we'll see, like, with this roster, uh, can they find that synergy? Can they mesh in a way where these guys can keep delivering uh, on this level consistently? Yeah, the ceiling for these guys is, is pretty sick, right? But look, the thing is, like, he He's too inconsistent. I don't know if it's him or the environment around him or the things that happened, you know, before in the, the other, the, the Danish team, Copenhagen Flames, was it? And, uh, you know, he's not the, the, the spring chick. He's not like super young, but he's still delivering a number when oh, he's talking. in a good mood. I think what, one thing that interests me as we get closer to this game for Cloud9 is Cloud9's best map was Vertigo, which mm. was the perma ban for Navi, right? And then a really good map for Navi was Nuke, which was the perma ban for Cloud9. So what are they going to stick with? Still so, banning out Nuke. So they do go with, with Vitoing Nuke, Fnatic, Vito's out Mirage. So here we'll get a bit of a closer look as to what Cloud9's map will, is going to look like. I would be surprised if they picked Vertigo. Like, yes, mm. it was very good for you. Fnatic. Fan, Fnatic does it instead, banking on the fact that, you know, Perfect and Electronic aren't really familiar with the map on, on, on uh, a very high level. Cloud9, Anubis. Anubis, wow, okay. Wow, that's a bit of a curveball. Huh. I feel like this is a punish pick a little bit, right? Mm. Like, it does, it does have that feeling, obviously, that overpass is for Fnatic in the second stage. It's... Uh, I don't know which, what you're going to go that in, a, maybe Inferno as a decider. The thing is, like, with these new lineups and the stand is we don't know exactly at the beginning of the season who is going to be good on what map. So this is, like, surprising to us as well. But Anubis, I didn't expect that at all. i also tell you, I'd be very surprised if Electronic is, like, full-on calling immediately on Vertigo. I would expect mm. him to get a lot of help from, like, either Hobbit or, or Shiro, right, while he gets used to the map, really, and playing it on a Tier 1 level. And we see Ancient as the decider. That was, like... Pretty good for Navi and um, Cloud9 as well in the old iterations, but also one of the favorite maps for definitely for Roy and, you know, the, the, the Fnatic guys. Yeah, coming on to Vertigo as the first map. Uh, Kassad, where are you looking at for the side of Fnatic on this one? Why do you think they've brought it into the mix? Obviously, I mean, we have to look at Mezzi. Like, he is the one who needs to deliver high numbers to keep up with, with, with Shiro, with Electronic and the whole and the whole Cloud9 squad. He needs to be, if he doesn't deliver numbers and get the support from Roy, it's going to be a problem. But I think also, if we just saw Afro on your screen, right, I think, he has the potential to pop off because he's a guy that's relentless. You know, we saw him get shut down a couple of rounds against Complexity, like get punished for, for his aggression, but he still kept coming at them and eventually it paid dividends. So I think for Cloud9, what they were really good at is defaults, right? Being defensive at the start, punishing that aggression. So that will absolutely have to be on point for them uh, because Fnatic is a team that likes to get in your face. Well, we've been so hyped to get our first taste of Cloud9 and now it is time to do exactly that. We begin on the map pick of Fnatic, a bit of an unfamiliar ground for Electronic and Perfecto. We're going to be starting on Vertigo and it's Chad and Alex to bring you all the action. Yes, Chad and Alex, who feel like children on Christmas Day. We get to have a look at new look Cloud9. And going up against the Fnatic that impressed at the play-in here in the group stage, the fact that they were one of the first teams to secure a spot uh, during the play-in, like day one, locked in. And I think a lot of people were sleeping on Fnatic, right? This roster change, it was uh, down the bottom of the barrel of the exciting ones, as opposed to Cloud9, which was at the tippy right, top. To now we have to make sure the asterisk of the whole Buster situation is in play here, but we're still excited to see the likes of Electronic <laughs> and Perfecto on Na'Vi's permaban. Well, yeah, yeah. And the way in which you're hearing Electronic talk about this team. Sounds like a baller, doesn't it? You're he? hearing whispers in the corridors about this team in practice. It's, uh, it's an exciting opportunity for us to get a look. It's not the look we were hoping to see immediately out of the gate with Axel having issues with his visa. There's a molly available here for Electronic's position. Does not have a smoke, so... Oh, oh. oh who needs the molly? You'll just use the glocky. Roy well, they're in. takes down Electronic. Looking to start strong here, Fnatic. T-Star. Shiro bullets through. Safe plant from Dexter. Roy wants more blood. He had a high-flying performance. What? Shiro's caught Dexter through the smoke. I thought that bomb plant was a certainty. He falls upon Shiro now. A fake out from Afro. Pushing through. Roy keeps it level. It's really hinging on Roy. He can't get more. Yes, he can. A third. Someone put a bullet in him. 
20 HP, a 2 on 2 emerges. This isn't a fruity pistol. Oh, yeah. You're going to get that bomb back here and Shiro patrolling. Yeah, to be scooped up, perfect over towards elevator room and hold of a minute. Roy has dipped on back, just making sure. Nothing from behind here. Crimson Roy against Shiro and Perfecto on this A site. 30 seconds now. Now, by cutting the noise, it has isolated Perfecto away. You see, he's going to for a quick glance middle, but it does look like they'll be in position. Roy. Primed. Ready. Spotted. Should be Shiro to isolate. Now they get the info on the last. It's only Crims yet to frag in a 1v2. Perfecto to reposition. Crims, ooh, ooh, gets the info. 10 seconds, fates out. Needs to find a frag. Can't do it. Crims down, holding his nerve as Shiro. A triple kill, and look at this. Oh, the vibes are so who, who's, high. The, who's the in-game leader? The vibes. I, got, I just got goosebumps all over my arms just seeing Shiro. Focus, focus. Focus, focus. He's, ha he's, la he's laughing, Chad. Yeah. He's laughing. Okay, well, uh, Shiro here denies the plan and does an awful lot more. Three for him. Look at them go. I am. Uh, the, the whole Counter-Strike world is hyped for this roster right here. And I think <laughs> not having Axel as well, it alleviates a little bit of that pressure, right? Because the yeah. expectation was so high. It's like, well... He's not here now as Roy, the high flyer for Fnatic in the previous. Hits the deck early. Will be these Glocks as you look Fnatic as well. We have to remember they're also a new roster here. But, uh, focus, 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 focus. Hey, <laughs> why, why the hell not? Look oh. how much communicate. Chad, you go. I'm just going to watch them. Oh, you just look straight I'm at them? I'm just going to just make, try and make eye contact. All It'd right. be weird if, they, if we did make eye yeah, contact. Yeah, if they peel their... Uh, Eyes off the screen there. Could be some problems. Buster, a chance to farm some up with the MP9 right now. That's Perfecto as part of this Wombo combo. He's going to jump up. Buster doing some good work. Gets two, and now it's just Afro. He's been able to get a kill, sure. But uh, almost as clean as you like there for Cloud9. We'll be getting into first gun round here. See the purchases coming in. For Fnatic, they are going to have plenty of AK-47s, but no AWP available for new AWPer of the team, Afro. And well, we have new in-game leader of the team, Dexter, which promotes Mezzi back to the position of being a star. And him and Roy are going to have to be the rifling prowess of this one. Mezzi, speak of the, the devil. He's opened up the account on B. Buster to be exploited. There will be a contrast. There's so much responsibility on Axel on his B defense of the C9 CT side. And this time, Buster goes for aggression and is punished. So a dream start to the first gun round of Fnatic. An advantage and pressure mid. Dexter smokes off to obscure that elevator hold. Applying pressure, forcing a reaction. And even, yeah, scaring Perfecto off a rotation from Shiro, indicated by the trajectory of these nades. 2CT, he can say. Oh. Ouch! Perfecto sent to the Shadow Realm. Dexter threw the smoke as well. Huge work. You can see how much attention he had glued to one player there. Shiro trying to get something done. His position noted more. And, oh, ooh, Dexter looking for exactly that. Cops a bullet between the eyes. Hubba and Shiro should be looking for the save here. And that's if they are given the liberty. Hubba's gone walkabout. You can see MP9 would love to upgrade that. That all started with that entry. So Mezzi, you say he has to be the star. And, well, finds an opening pick towards B. Then Dexter does all the heavy lifting. Don't worry about the B bomb site. Focus on me towards middle. Even missed his smoke, but still drew an awful lot of attention. And it will be Fnatic in their first round on the board here. One of the keys with this Fnatic roster it is a, quite a, a, an older team when you consider the likes of Crims, Roy, and Dexter. But I think with that comes a, a bit of maturity to them as well because the way Mezzi carries himself, he's also quite a mature lad. So I think that in terms of this team and how they're going to function together and the way they're going to talk to each other and, and solving yeah. problems, I think it's going to be done in a mature and open way. And hopefully, you know, a lot of that... You know, baggage of not talking about things and the resentment that builds up within teams. This roster can avoid that. I like that. I think that's a very um, valid framing of, of Fnatic. And, the, and, you know, the, there's a strengths and weaknesses column. Uh, and I think that falls very firmly into the strengths. I think one of the weaknesses is, like, how long can you keep a roster with this type of an age? It was the same with the old Fnatic roster, right? Yeah. So, Electronic aggressive Look now. Look at this from Electronic. Yeah, he's trying to make the, be the best of the MP9 situation. Wants to, uh, well, in the absence of a full belt of utility, use his, his body to get that information. And, and Dexter, successful on his first venture middle, and this time he's not alone. He has two 
members of this Fnatic squad trying to take that space away. Now, a re-smoke arriving, top of the stairs, and Mezzi might take that as his cue. As Boost well, and over. Afro. Yeah, let's see what Buster... Oh, oh, let's see. A single miss jiggle here. I think Mezzi's caught a glimpse, a whiff. I'm always coming for him as well. Buster's scared. Smoke to survive. And that's a lot of successful pressure applied by Fnatic. And Dexter onto Perfecto again. They're crunching. It's beautiful from Fnatic into the site. See you later, C9. Yeah, you can understand why you'd want to pick into this map against C9, knowing Electronic and Perfecto. This was the permaban in Na'Vi. You can exploit right. this mid position where Perfecto has been tasked with anchoring down. Electronic filling the shoes of Nafany aggressive over towards that A ramp. And well, Buster, uh, you mentioned he you know, has to replace Axal, who's one of the absolute best at holding that B-bomb site on this map. So it's going to be a difficult task for Cloud9 when you consider some of those worries. 100%. Yeah, I mean, it's it's maybe out of date, uh, the data that I, I'm referencing, but I will, will never forget Devil Walk talking about uh, doing research for players on who to watch for B-anchor defense. And the rating difference was the largest ever between Axile and the number two, JKS, uh, right. uh, on that B-site hold. It was like a 0.2 difference in terms of who can play that B-site anchor position. It was Axile and then no one else. Ah, oh, you and Devil Walk must have got into quite the conversation Yeah, there, we got right? We got okay. <laughs> well, just because I was talking about how, how much of a nightmare I have with it, okay. and I was asking for recommendations as to who to watch. Sure, all right, all right. Well, the only positive, that was it. That uh, was what he said. That's yeah. free coaching advice right there from Devil Walk, major winning coach. <laughs> yeah. Major right. winning player. Yeah. And I just stopped playing B, actually. I uh, yeah. made yeah. a different choice. I think I'm suited a little bit more towards that. Yeah, I there, think guys. I'm just going to run down ramp. Uh, but either way, a 2 2 scoreline, and I'm going to shut up. Yeah, this is the timeout call from Cloud9 here. Okay. You can see the early stages Ooh. of these teams, how many people are willing to contribute with ideas. Love that, yeah. Right? And eventually, what starts to sour after a couple of losses and a couple of calls that go awry is, you know, people either get a bit scared or they don't want to make that anymore. You know, these yeah. things change over time. But it's great to see Fnatic having Roy contributing on a map where, well, last time round, to get them to this stage, I think he had 31 kills or something ridiculous. 1.88 rating. He does seem, yeah, he does seem reinvigorated, wouldn't you say? Uh, you know, I think in contrast to... Yeah, how Three. he's performing on the... Yeah, exactly. Precisely. Uh, shuffles. But, but him on Copenhagen Flames was a monster, yeah, right? Precisely. It was an absolute beast. So. Precisely. But I like the... Uh, first look at Afro bringing the fight to Shiro with that T-side orb. Looking for answers is Shiro. Managing his angles well. And wow, quick hot shots to the toes will have to fall off. And Roy, oh, just hot in pursuit. That's a lot of space again for Fnatic. Whenever they wanted space, they've taken it. Be it B stairs, top ramp, it's theirs again. And they've going got so in. much time. Do you think they're going? Off the rip. Shiro over up and commits to the spray. Finds Roy, a good contribution. Shiro tagged up. We'll need a lot more considering the rest of his teammates. These preserved rifles. Yeah, Shiro's is now taken from him. But Perfecto's element of surprise thwarted. And Hobbit rocking a CZ-75. Grim's down. Bomb and loose. That's the problem. Advantage for Cloud9. No armor on two of oh! them. Mezzi handing out haircuts. Double on the push of the smoke. And that lines up for a, I was going to say, plant buster. Looking for the rifle in the smoke. Hoping he can perhaps piece together a one versus two. Really hesitant to plant. They don't know where he is. And that rifle too far gone, I'm afraid. Buster. Staring at him now. Afro. A gap's presented itself here, and there's a kit. Kit AK, and you catch Mezzi. Oh, an opportunity. Goes awry, a triple for the Brit, and three on in total for Fnatic. Is that on, on the trot? It is. Yeah, I like that there. So you see how they do the deep elevator smoke, knowing they're against a couple of save guns and lighter buy. So you can't just get swarmed by pistols pushing through on flash timings. It gives them a bit more room to work with, means they're not so pressured on the side right there. And uh, Fnatic will be taking the lead here, but we would... We'll see if Cloud9 get back into the weapons. Shiro with the AWP, his weapon of choice. No kit here for the CT side. And a standard split of the defenses here. Deep ramp smoke. Afro going to try and search over the top of that as establishing a one way to work with here for Mezzi. So obscuring the view and then he can play around that be cheeky. On players who want to play up towards that wooden cubby. And he's doing a good job of searching and applying pressure if he can continue to bully Buster. Think about how many rounds they pressured B and middle. It is going to force them to play a different setup, which you can see from Cloud9 right now. Shiro has to play mid, Perfecto and Buster dealing with this early B pressure. And that means A is not as heavily fortified by Hobbit and Electronic. Speaking of A. Coming to play, Hobbit flashed up. 
Can I pick this? Audible. Audible. Toe spotted. Dexter caught. No trade. Roy might have him. Hobbit stubborn. And it's Mezzi once again in this head to head with Buster with support. Flash as well. So they know a little bit more as to how the CTs are positioned. He had the defense almost exactly as they'd like it here, Fnatic, but still giving up the opener. Plenty of util to try and finish this. So grouping together now with about 50 seconds left on the clock. Afro searching. Yeah. This is a well placed Molly. Does he hit it? Does he hit it? Turns the. Oh, it's an extinguisher. He okay. saw the trajectory. They know. Ouch, that nade leaves Hobbit with very Roy has one to as well. Work with. That's sure, he pushes wide. Crims was holding. And leaves us into an orb head to head that Shira was unprepared for. A valuable contribution now from Afro. Not in a hurry, but with 20 seconds, they do need to get a wiggle on. Electronic needs help, needs support. Perfected to distract. Maybe Electronic. Ooh, he had a chance onto the bottom carrier. Roy saves them. And just in the nick of time, the frags come through for that plant. Buster 1v3. Can he deny? It doesn't look like it. And Fnatic securing another. That was hanging in the balance for a while. And Roy's name in the feed twice. That one feels really good, especially considering you give up that opening pick, right? The one-way smoke, the way it gets abused. You're in a number disadvantage situation. You isolate that sandbag kill. You finish him off and you get into the site relatively easily here. This was the death of Hobbit trying to get out of the sandbag position. Roy as well playing on that little tightrope there. Knocking off a couple. And Electronic, yeah, felt like he... Could have done a bit of damage, but well cleared. And Cloud9 will be back down to just another partial investment here. Again, having to start too early over towards B. And in these situations, you're always going to take a bit more of a risk on the CT side. Where do you want to hedge your bets? Where are you going to look for fights? You have some smokes, a couple of deagles. USP on Shiro, who's going to want to get himself into an AWP yet again. Really not a whole lot to write home about here for Cloud9 unless one of their individuals pops off. Yeah, lots of pressure, right? And they baited out that smoke. So mission accomplished over towards B for now. As Fnatic, they're really not in a rush, right? They're being quite thorough. They're doing it together, not giving away any individual frags if they don't have to. They have all the advantages in the world in this one. You can see the position of Electronic over towards the site. The only man currently tasked. As you can see, the rotation of Hobbit starting to cheat over now. Perfecto not too far away, and this should signal. The fight is coming. A one-way smoke deployed just to delay things for a little bit longer here. The only threat, really, is Hobbit being overlooked and having backs turned on him. And we said, Fnatic, they're not in a rush, right? That smoke might be weighted out and loses its potency, but Hobbit's position, perhaps, yeah. Oh, pushing. And received well. Afro not caught out. Electronic present and popping heads. Crims is dead. Time to issue. seconds. Messi has to step up. And now he's dead too. Planting. Dexter could go down. Perfecto's right in front of him. Roy trying to hold on. It's getting slippery. Two versus two. Cloud9. They are making a threatening round after this. A nice shot from Afro. That should be all she wrote. But my goodness, close. Saved by Afro, really. Dexter tagged as well in that smoke. It could have gone so many different ways. Yeah, very fortunate that the rifles dropped over towards Gap. It couldn't be scooped up. Yep. Right? It couldn't be used against them there. And some, I want to say standard shots for Afro, but important shots considering the circumstances of the round, right? So good work from him. You know, other Orpers may miss. They may get a little bit under the pressure, but... Are you hearing that other game? There's like a lot of roars between Monty and Gamer Legion. That's begun as well. Yeah, so well, we know Demka likes to get loud. He certainly does. Seven rounds deep into the first map as well. Be sure to check that out. BSL. Twitch.tv slash CS. CS. Oh, yeah. Well, CS for us and B for them. CSP. Yeah. I'm there now. I'm getting there. Bang. Very significant damage to Dexter. Missing a finger or two. What? Buster, Buster the Orpa. The Orp, of course. Well, Mezzi can't apply pressure towards B right now, so that's a big scalp to take. Mezzi wasn't expecting a secondary Orp, and well, Shiro's got one too. They make that clear. But Roy. Sent six feet under. Limits the options as well here, Mezzi going down, so can't really rotate back towards B. We'll just have to try their luck. Hope they can get a kill here over towards the A side of the map. Fnatic already drawn back a 4v5 disadvantage. Three on five would be something special. Well, you said the uh, shots were necessary yet pedestrian. I think Afro would have to do something quite uh, 
Incredible. Pow. Get them into this one. He can keep creeping here. This would be set for success onto the Ooh, electronic angle. Losing health and hope. 20 HP left. Afro's down. And Fnatic hang their heads as they lose this round. Perfect from Cloud9. You can see they're coming. Ooh, oh, he's alive. I like the reflash. That's cool, but too many angles. Too many men. All right, well, the double orbs worked immediately here, but Fnatic are now where it's in place. So we see a lot more pressure towards mid, maybe over towards B, and try and swarm this. Oh, and uh, Electronic, he wants a drop. And I can guarantee you right there. Divide the way. I think there's so many interesting things about this. Not only is there the conversation about this Cloud9 roster being under a new in-game leader, right? That, that's exciting. That is. There's also uh, Electronic and Perfecto not being in Na'Vi, right? Getting to see what attitude they adopt, the type of people they are outside of that team, right? We all know that it's a uh, tense environment over there. I'm curious if they bring that with them or if this new adventure is uh, something a bit refreshing to the soul. Yeah, lessons to be learned, huh? For us and for them. Yeah, exactly. And uh, time out being called. Fnatic, do you have enough money to get a buy going here? Now remember, the double orbs. So off the back of this, how do they want to address this problem? Didn't buy into MAC-10s or anything that might represent something quick out the gates, but doesn't mean that isn't the case with the rifles in hand. Gap smoke lobbed out from Dexter here. And a bit of a standard spread. So just going to go back to the default playbook as Mezzi once again will get himself over towards the B lobby. Crims alongside for the ride. But you know, Afro, as well as all of them, are aware that there is that secondary orb in play. That is going to affect your flight paths and your approach. And it's interesting that Cloud9, they keep it. Interesting. They're keeping it mixed up. Two-man mid-hole, which might facilitate some early aggression and info plays. Perfecto. Called upon to hold B so low. Mezzi, you can see that. A little, little bit of uh, pep taken out of his step after the Buster Orb. Continues to show presence, though. He's trying to serve out his purpose in a... I think we just saw that, didn't we? The fifth way. <laughs> yeah. A second diff of that one. So uh, really limiting the aggressive positioning of Cloud9 to make sure they're not playing for info. But Electronic next up to the plate barrel. Spotted and killed. Not delivered. Roy, huge. Wow. Uh, and now missed shot from Shiro. He is in trouble. He is in jeopardy. Dexter's got him locked. And Fnatica found access. Resmoke on elevator. This is now a conversation about not winning, but surviving. Unless Dexter gives this to Hop it cleanly, they might have a look in. Just enough to get him out. And with no kit present, you play the advantage through. Crims is on his way to try and take something extra away. Buster holding it There's a lot of time for this as well. So Crims doesn't have to rush. Look, Bomb only halfway gone. Also, sound cues that you may hear a scope towards middle. Somebody trying to sneak towards the ladder room. Perfecto is already considering it. You can see just considering every option on B. Crims and Perfecto. They will be, there will be friction. There will. He's been spotted out. Doesn't want to lose his own weapon. And goes and calls it quits. Six to three. Good haul for the T side already. And an impressive round conversion considering now we're coming into those double orbs. And I think, yeah, that angle from Electronic, or rather the, the approach from Roy, you, you saw it gave him, he knew what was coming, but supported, covered. This is what I was talking about. And in terms of who gets that frag, Dexter already engaging. Electronic's days were very much numbered. Good find from Fnatic. Cloud9 just boasting three. It is difficult for Cloud9 as far as the info goes right now. Uh, as mentioned, they were getting harassed towards B, so you couldn't play close. I mean, you can't play white box with that util that Mezzi threw out twice. They're also making sure they can't be wood. They're, you know, throwing an awful lot of util to dissuade. And uh, then just creep up towards A. Like, Dexter is quite truly letting Roy just be this Terminator and contact in towards the side. And he's just along for the supportive role. So good stuff. And basic CS working for Fnatic here. If you keep hitting those type of shots, keep finding the openings, be looking good for a couple more. Six on the T side so far. Max loss bonus in play for Cloud9. And when we do see the buy come back out with those saved rifles, Shiro gets his AWP back in hand. And that means Buster downgraded to just an M4. Gap smoke through. And two pushing B. Afro, he was full flashed on that. They're getting so much access. Every time. Yeah, you, you need to try and stall this out here. Wow. Good nade damage. Very good nade damage. Yeah, practically 100. Delta. Fanatic start. This one way that's dropped, it's so well known. You can see Mezzi was acknowledging as soon as the smoke was dropped out here. Creates a little bit of a gap you can try and be cheeky through, but 
What, this one here? Yeah, yeah. So, but Mezzi can abuse it against them if you push up, right? This is the thing. It's it's so well known at the moment. Now he's going to throw out one of his own. So any tricks you've got, I've got them as well. When smokes on smokes on smokes, B is blocked here. But that just shows you how much pressure. Because there's a minute left on the clock. Mezzi's doing a great job. And oh. that flash even better. Up the ramp. Roy with another opener. Oh, they're screaming. Or oh, trap sandbags. Hoping for the punish. That's the end of Shiro. Great work again from Roy. Crim's dead. He did a significant damage to Hobbit. And with 50 seconds now for them to piece together this final element of their attack. Regrouping. Roy, I have to continue to sing his praises. Does seem reinvigorated. Returning to that kind of, uh, well, for la if you'll pardon the pun, his flame form. You can't really contest this. A flash. Just to try and facilitate a frag. And it's going to do yeah, it. It's good. Oh! It's not. Perfecto gets away at 10 HP, and now they actually have the advantage for this retake. Afro, important shots to be hit here. Smoke on the bomb. He takes some liberties. Going wide. Doesn't want to be the first to take that pot shot. Calls the bluff on the face. Oh, oh no! Oh, that leaves a mark. That is a problem. And they will take the round. Punishment back. He's having too much fun. I wish I knew what he was I saying. I know, right? I wish I knew but, what he was but saying. But I mean, like, we've, we've, we've watched this man on our screens for so many years. I've never heard that tone. I've never He's seen bubbly, that enthusiasm. Smiley. It's like, it's, I mean, it's like a different person in the best way, but it is, it's interesting all the same. Yeah, and uh, this time around, it, it, the best way all the same. You yeah. know, well, the fact that you're able to snatch <laughs> this one away, Perfecto <laughs> somehow surviving so and then. Fun. What is going on? I don't know, man. All but right. uh, I mean, it's a joy to watch. Let's go. Big retake and a bit of a, you know, first blemish on the Fnatic record. Feel like that one could have and was would have been theirs. Yeah, you see the dink towards the headshot box, the nade looked destined. I can't believe he dodged it, but here we go. Three man start towards A. Shiro will be held at bay by the utility for now. And Fnatic, yeah, you can see them. This is the play. You're getting B lobby control every single time. And they're going to set up. This is going to be an execute with all the flames laden across the floor. Smokes are plenty and flashes to go. And it's a free bomb site. Back to Buster went for two man mid. Their reaction's integral now. Every second here upon the execute. They have decisions to be made. Spray through the smoke, keeps them at bay. Considering aggression, and it's actually Dexter to draw first blood. Sprays through into Buster. More to be found, more to be... Ooh, hard electronic caught by a lot of damage. With just seven HP, he sticks around and profits. That's one down. Big frags back, Shiro and electronic have given him a way in. And Crims, he's late to the party. Bomb is ticking in his favor and planted for him. But with a 1v3, there's an AWP in the mix. It feels like a certainty that Crims cannot flip and turn the tables in this one. Util out, smoke on the bomb. There's a kit in play, a fake as well. They know where you are, and they'll secure it. So into the site, sure, but Cloud9 demonstrating they're fine with that. Yeah, one of the problems there for Fnatic, when they executed in, they used all their nades, right? So they had nothing left for the right. post-plant situation. So the bomb goes down, but as the smoke starts to fade, Cloud9 are happy with that. They pick up some key kills. The AWP of Shiro rings through, and they're able to scoop another away from Fnatic mm -hmm. here. But this is this is great. You saw the just the aim port on display here from a few of the Cloud9 members. This is the thing, if you're calling your team into the site and you're getting the bomb down, you're doing a pretty decent job as an in-game leader. That next step is where you need to make sure your post plan is set up well, you have some good ideas of how you want to approach after you get in. And really for your players to uh, make the most of the space that you've been able to create. They pop, Shira under pressure here, grabs on with the orb, the Tech Knights keep coming, Hobbit bops up his little head, and Dexter's is lost. Afro here gives himself a smoke to work with to find the Tech 9 upgrade, maybe even a bit of space over towards Sandbag, but that's going to be Cloud9 leveling things up. Six apiece now, and they've managed to pick up four out of the last five rounds here. Wow. And I just did some bad approximations on the utility damage, trying to add it all together. Cloud9 in just 12 rounds of play have managed to find over five kills worth of damage, 550 on their CT side. It just shows that, you know, we've got new names. We talked about it being the permaban for um, Na'Vi. Well, Perfecto and Electronic, they're contributing 200 uh, utility damage between the two of them. 
but to 550 total for Cloud9 so far. I think it's a good team to join to get up to speed on a map like Vertigo. 100%. It's like, yeah, guys, we play this all the time. Yeah, let, Just, me, let me hold your hand. We'll help you through yeah, this one, yeah. shall we? So, uh, definitely going to be learning on the job, as it were, but you've got some good teachers. As Fnatic have taken their second tactical timeout here within this first half of play. Already should be pretty happy with six rounds. I want to make it a few more before we head into that halftime break. Hopper to lob out the deep yellow smoke, so operating with a different defense over towards A here. Progression smoke, and yeah, Hobbit's going to play ahead of Ooh, this. I like this, Shiro. Goes for a very aggressive angle for that gap, and it's like a moth to the flame. Roy walks into the scope. When he was looking for a great opener. Now look to seize the lead of Cloud9. One back from Perfecto before Mezzi gets to the punch. Shiro caught out on this one. Afro. Oh, he's given him the warning shot. Nice back from Dexter. Puts Shiro on notice. He is alone on the site for now. Hobbit scarpering over to provide support. But it all hinges on this head to head. He's Mezzi open. knows that is wide open. Everyone, knife out, holding W. Hobbit and Shiro the same. It's a race. And Mezzi, first on the scene. Shiro, what's your plan now? Do you delay with the Molotov? The answer is yes. Afro dispatched through mid, hoping they can have a different angle of assault. Shiro making it no secret of his positioning. It's a nice smoke, actually. Look at that. Shiro's been pants because of it. Afro takes him down, and Fnatic sees the round. Yeah, well handled there, right? They, they didn't just rush the plan. They allowed Afro to come through. I could be brain farting, but is that another Fnatic 4v5, like converting from conceding? Because Shiro killed Roy first, right? Uh, yes. So that's the second time we've seen Fnatic kind of dig themselves out of a 4v5 convincingly. I think that was a three on five, because Perfecto yes. found Crimson middle and was then traded immediately, yes, right? Sir. So, yeah. So technically. And that all really started to spiral. I wouldn't say because of the Buster push, right? Because Electronic mm. died over towards Sandbag, over towards A. Mm. And then Buster pushed and got caught off by a bad timing. So, um, yeah, th this is this is where some of the issues for Cloud9 are going to start to, to rear their head. But, yeah, can't take it away from Fnatic here. Hitting the necessary shots. It was well played within that mid-round, allowing Afro's Lurk to come through when they knew there was a player trying to posture over towards CT. Uh, you love this, though. They manufactured that gap, right? You get Hobbit throwing the deep yellow smoke. They throw up progression smoke. You know there's a gap smoke in right. play as well. So you put Shiro out, just look down that little death tunnel. Finds himself the gap, finds him the opener, but not enough. And still smiles on the faces. This might be the cutest romance in Counter-Strike history. I agree. People are writing the fan fictions now. All right, well, not done just yet at Cloud9 in the finance department. We've got two rounds left here in this first half of play. Remember, holy trinity of the map pool, Anubis and Ancient, if we need to get there. Hallelujah. And for this head-to-head, -head, it's exciting as well. Electronic didn't like... You know that gun has a scope, right? Electronic? Yeah, but he's going to use it like a shotgun. Up close, one-shot headshot. Take that. Take that. Oh. oh, and delivers a heavy blow! Takes two down with the Org, and there's more where that came from. No hope for Afro, and this round already gifted to the boys of C9. And Messi and Crims are really feeling fruity on this uh, 2v4. They don't have the bomb. And they don't have much... Oh, brutal. Can't even stick around that Molly spreads. Hobbit. Has the bomb. Look at that. Sitting on it. And wow. it's going to cost him. Gets his crosshead to him. Does a lot of damage, which really hinders the, the, the hopes and, hand and chances. I think the bigger issue I see here is the fact that there's still 50 seconds left on the clock. And right now they are essentially playing a retake B setup, so... And retake A. Yeah, they, they've given up an awful lot of space here. Now they can harass with U2. You can see Shiro has a molly. They are going to boost, so they might even be able to silently get their way up here. Nobody spotted towards default for Mezzi. He's up now. Crims can smoke and... Okay, well they're worried about a player quad. Nobody's home. Well, here comes that Shiro here. molly. Crims, Crims needs to try and live. 10 seconds, Buster extends, does take them down and up to Mezzi. With just nine seconds left, he's better off trying to get the kills, pushing the smoke, spamming him through. Perfect from Perfecto.
Everyone's having a great time. I think he was talking about Roy's one way there, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I heard a bad word. So we're learning it all here. I'm sure there's an AI that could probably live translate. Maybe I should get that up. That's on its way, yeah. I think, um, do you remember the old Hellraisers player, Zero? Yes. He's coded something. Oh, in Counter-Strike, right? Where it yeah, automatically yeah, yeah. subtitles your teammates. Yeah, that's uh, some next level smart cookie right there, I'd say. Oh, this is the final buy for Fnatic here. It was Hellraisers, wasn't it? It was a red logo. Who did Zero play for? Anyway, that's just a fun trivia for you. Let me know on Twitter if I'm wrong. It's not that anymore. Sorry, let me know on X. Yeah, with your posts. Yes, posts. Uh, since you were here before. Oh, and Dex is gone, so good fight for Hobbit. Ah, not so lucky this time. Should be able to get away. Got three bullets, don't find him. Oh, that is a considerable amount of damage. Electronic surely is going to need to get bailed Here out, lined up, Hobbit. They wait for it, delay it, hoping to have as many faces staring at the sandbags. Oof, Shiro. He's been spotted and dismounted. There's the flash. Ooh, he's not going. Electronic's being pushed and Afro dead. Nice catch from Electronic. Just not feeling any pressure. You'd think he'd be feeling the pressure, but he's not showing any signs of it. Crumbs has made a round out of this with a second quick succession onto Shiro. Considering that Buster flank, you know that B players likely have had a lot of liberties and could very well be about and ramp, but with 30 seconds left and Loud Nine looking to end this half with the advantage. And they will do so. Secure. Looking solid, an interesting first taste, a first look at what new Cloud9 have to offer. We'll be right back with more. Kind of strapped for rounds. So if Acor doesn't go that much further above and beyond, somebody else needs to step up. Pound for pound, Monty simply better. Yeah. We get a big grouping outside of ramp. We'll see what Demka has to offer. He's been loud and rowdy and goes down with nothing. It's been Bro who stole the show at times throughout this half, putting himself up there with SDY and Waro. Isaac wants the jungle control, but there's two players here to deal with still. Bomb planted, no ticket push, no CT peak here from Gamer Legion. Oh. Now it's starting to unravel, they're stuck. Oh my god, they dealt with that so well, man. That was like perfect protocols. Like, like Gamer Legion should have immediately gone to do something else. Like they should have, that was, that couldn't have been better. They organized so perfectly, close. They backed up in the window, they played three favorable angles. They came in to pretend to fight from the opposite side of murder hole. And then you see like, oh crap, like we're gonna have to fight full force team here if they want to get jungle control. And Monty said, no, this is our plan all along. Come. Come die. Come. And they did. Oof, who did they ever? Monty feeling it now. You got good ass protocols. Yes, sir. It always starts with Demka. 
now I think Monty are starting to Vertigo, our first map as we get our first look. Cloud9 versus Fnatic. No Axile, seemingly no problem, at least so far. Eight, they take the half, and Fnatic staying competitive. I think a lot of people were sleeping on Fnatic in the play and a lot of expectations for other names, but Fnatic not at the tip of the tongue, but find themselves here in the top 16 of Cologne. Let's get this one started. First day of play for the group stage. Our opening match is day four of IEM Cologne 23. Uh, first half had uh, Mezzi, great job working that B lobby. Roy, the same thing over towards A. Managed to get themselves seven rounds on the T side here. And Cloud9 still the favorites by the bookmakers. Afro taking a bit of contact early, and here they come. The train of Cloud9, it's in your face. Yeah, let's see what Afro's got. He's got Dexter in support at least. Turn the flat. Oh, great headshot out of Dexter, but Electronic says, anything you can do, I can do better. Doubles up. Crims will do the same. Contributes heavily. Gap for Electronic to try and punish, but that bomb goes down. Does it? Spoke too soon. I thought Shira was holding that one. Should have. Smoke coming through. Messi now. Electronic would need to do... Oh, he has done a whole lot. Gets three before Shiro's thrust into the 1v2, and he's out of there. Plenty of time to play this round out here. Fake the steps. Go on. Oh. Full on reset. This is going to be Fnatic now. Are they Ga going to split Gamble up? B? Are they going to stay together? Gamble B? There's just so many options, of right? Of course there is, but I mean, I, it looks like, just from their immediate body language, that they're going to Gamble B. Call, like, essentially say, you're not faking in us out. Well, Crims is rocking a Glock. And that's what he needs, boys. Fourth frag, it's going to have to be Crims! Oh. Okay, <laughs> Fnatic can count on Mr. Consistent. Crims with four to secure their pistol round. Damn, okay. Well, that's a massive one to rub away right there. Looked good with Electronic that's with that double up coming out short. Now. Yes, indeed. Both teams picking up their CT side pistols. And yeah, I think that Dexter frag, it happened in an instant. It was very important. And Crims, well, doing his best Shiro impression right there. Spamming players through the site smokes and getting even more done. Finding himself with a Glock in the final moments. And well, speaking of Glocks, it's Whoa. four plus a hero. AK-47 in the hands of Uncle Hobnob. He's been smoked off, drops a progression smoke of his own, and we'll try and play over this so they can't push on down yellow. You can see this elevated angle giving him a decent line of sight. He's got the head arm behind it. Shiro has one flash as well if they want to try and make a play happen. Yeah. And that's what they've been waiting for. Afro can't quite believe it. An AK, elevated AK to the face. It's a huge start here. They can actually get that gun back. So, Fnatic, I don't know if you're going to be able to do anything about this here. Keep in mind that one Shiro flash. Messi with space. Messi with so much space. The only one, though. And he'll take him down. Nothing to report. Electronic, the one that dropped that AK. Dexter confirms. Lots of action towards the ramp. Nade could be perfect if he nades it right. Bang onto Perfecto's nose. And that recovered fam has softened up. Crims reacting. Flash in the sky. Hoping to get info off of that. Forces him all back. Perfecto finished off. But there's Hobbit. Still with the AK post is second. Confirmation of presence. Spots Roy on the crane. Crosshair's good. And the frag is too. Hobbit doing so much for the boys. A triple kill so far. Make it quad. He takes another scalp. One AK, Chad. And they've got themselves the round. Unless Messi can come up clutch. Rifle. He can work with that. 12 bullets. All he needs. Buster on sight, Hobbit exposed. If he could just find Fat Buster, waiting for the reswing. He's Hobbit. got no idea. He's overlooked him. This is so ridiculous. He's on the millimeter, a sliver left of concrete. Living oh, on the edge. Find it, that SMG, the weapon for the job. He's not going to look at it. Hobbit, what an incredible round for Cloud9. Hobbit, Uncle Hobnob in the server. That's nuts. Talk about impact. E Electronic. In-game leader drops him the AK-47, and Hobbit makes good on the promise. That is ridiculous. Hobbit go kill. Not a strat we've seen too often. And now it's just to limit the economy, right? You're not expecting to walk away with the round here. Get a couple Incredible. of kills. You make sure the CTs can't have the best to buy. It's going in the next one. Your AKs are coming out. But Incredible. Hobbit, kill after kill after kill, perfectly played. And the audacity. The audacity to sit there and not touch your mouse and keyboard and call Mezzi. Oh, to try and find you. Hide and seek at the highest level, and that's going to break Fnatic's souls as this round, they forced it, already losing two bodies. Yeah, forced is probably a key word. Not only did they force the buy, they forced the issue. Aggressive, two of them dead immediately out the gates here. And this is better than winning the pistol for Cloud9. Mm. Perfecto does fall. 
Hobbit is low. If Afro pushes and kills the low HP Hobbit in spawn, that's a conversation, but uh, he's gone for ladder. 21 and 7, what a round from Hobbit. If they convert off the back of it here, it's essentially worth three rounds. So, huge staff and spotted now. Hobbit's wow. still on low HP, contributing. Roy gets something done short. Cloud9 still have the utility and the weapon advantage, and Shira having a good map as well. 18 and 9, a good first half. Grabs one more frag, and Buster will get that bomb down. And see the final man standing here. Not really an awful lot he can do in this one. Hobbit would have to uh, really overstep the mark to give this AK up for there even to be a bit of a chit-chat about him getting into this, but starting to back off now with the MP9. And I think he's going to be found here. Hobbit, this is so annoying. What, what else can you say, right? You, yeah, you, no. I mean, you'd said it all. You said everything that needed to be said. So 11 to 8 is going to be the scoreline after this next round of play here. Okay, yeah, very th good. Those two kills essentially came in before we even got back into right. game. That tells people how quick it was out of the round, right? You hold W, you get that contact within the you know, first 10 seconds. And now Shiro gets to rock and roll with the MAC-10, looking to farm up kick some cash and get that longevity. I think something in this team as well that might change, right? Because there were questions about, you know, who's going to be the sacrificial lamb, who's going to run in. I think in the early stages of this roster, a lot more players are willing to make sacrifice. That's what happens in honeymoons. People are willing to put their body on the line for the good of the because team. Because you know you don't have, you haven't built up like this doubt for yeah, your own Precisely, teammates. right? Yeah, so you're just like, I'll do it for you, bro. Yeah. Right into this together. And, and this is where the uh, the good vibes here at all time high. This is with the honeymoon that we talk about. Theirs is um, a little bit more interesting. They got married and then they brought a different partner on the honeymoon, but yeah, uh, it's not by any choice of their own. <laughs> And Shiro going to get at least one here. Maybe not. Wow, Dexter does 100 to 0, Hobbit. I guess you're right. He did at least get one, but poor Hobbit, man. Poor guy. Especially considering that's his eight, eighth death. He's doing such, a, he's doing such hard work. Chat. Well, Sh Shiro, obviously, he wants to try and catch up, right? Yes, so right. It's, it's competition yeah. internally. Kaboom. Okay, well, try and get away with that one if you can. Scamper back is Buster. He's got the Hoover out here. Find two crims on the side looking to be a little bit more annoying. And yeah, I think that's all he'll be to Shiro, just an annoyance. Still going to try and give this one a crack here. Crims is either going to go down with the bomb or go down to the MAC-10. 600 bucks and then up AK upgrade. Thank you very much. Damn diligent stuff. Make sure you get the 600 bucks kill reward, and then go back for the AK into the next. Before the bomb detonates, so the AK doesn't get flung off the map. Of course. Of all the, yeah, oh. planned. It was all planned. Oh. Well, well, well. Timeout number three for Fnatic here. Keita, an opportunity to get on the mic yet again and try and change the flow of this one. Start a great pistol around Crims. Four massive kills. Lob it on the board. Looks like they're hot to trot. Lose to the hero AK of Hobbit. And now you find yourself in a bit of trouble here. Afro's AWP not available. They will be operating with a five rifle setup for their first gun round here on the CT side. Let's see what they have to offer here. Now we're in the group stage. We still have a lot of learnings. And we've got the new Gamer Legion roster taking on Monty right now. The new Cloud9 roster with an asterisk taking on Fnatic, who, as you mentioned, a lot of people slept on, including myself. I wasn't hugely impressed. I think Fnatic are down the bottom of the totem pole as far as team uh, players are concerned of joining. It's like OG, right? It's a good name. You know, they've got the partnerships in some of these events, but uh, they don't have huge names that you're signing behind here. Shiro fast for the AWP. 4-0 in opening duel, Shiro. Yet to concede an opening death. And it looks like he could be up for uh, a fifth here as he's going looking. Roy, ouch! Finds him, hands him through the smoke his ass and his first opening death. Yeah, Roy's trying to level out his department as well. I think he was about three for five within that yeah. first half. Ouch. Buster, not too shabby, using it against Mezzi. We spoke about it in the first half. And that head-to-head, -head, they were jousting with Mezzi being the nuisance. Now it's Buster's turn. That's a love, I mean, in considering the state of play. I think that's probably where Buster is going to be pretty comfortable because back when he, he was on Avangar. Yes. I know, you know, with Jane. Right. In 1993. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, everybody. I'm old. I get it. Uh, <laughs> but he was working that B lobby as well. So, you know, there are some similarities. 
But uh, in more recent time, especially when it's on these Cloud9 roster, Axile's going to get all of the key positions and the positions he wants just being so strong as an individual. But uh, they are going to look towards this B finish. And Dexter, you have to love this. He hasn't been caught. Hobbit, Dexter's talking. He's definitely heard something here. This is such an opportunity. Oh, God, that's the bomb carrier. Electronic going to be 30 shouting, seconds. foaming at the mouth. Threats from both sides, though. Hobbit from the bridge side. Dexter's smokes pinned. it off. He's doing it. He's saying the bomb's with me. Come and get me, boys. You've got to push through a molly. Push through a smoke. He saw your barrel. He knows what's up. You got the bomb. 18 seconds. What are you supposed to do? Die is what Perfecto does. And, well, not much to be done for Hobbit and Buster. Yeah, they're going to try and get this A single man completely disrupting the T side. Afro really wants this up. He's not going to push the issue here. Thought maybe he'd love to go and pry that one out of the cold, dead hands of what should have been Hobbit there, but they'll get to retain it. Buster stays alive as well. But that is crazy. Dexter with the timing. Hobbit was acknowledging the right, ladder until right. he wasn't. And when you go back and you watch that, you oh, the timed. frustration. Ready? Three, three and, two. Oh. oh, no. God, there is one second in it. Damn. And then Electronic, of course, completely pants. Perfecto helpless. I mean, he had to do the impossible there. And whoa, yeah, whoa. He's like looking at his teammate's scare. screen. Yeah, that's a bit of a stressful moment right there. Well, yeah. still with a two round lead here. Oh, oh, Fnatic, they're going for an interesting approach. They want to contest the ramp early. At least that's what the three man posturing presents as, but with no sound, no steps, no nades. Ramp is silent. It They'll is play a reactionary quiet. defense. Yeah. I, now no. they limp it out. So Here I guess we they were waiting for the tease and this uh, vice versa. Right. You go first. No, you go first. After you. No, after you. Oh, the door's held open now. Oh, good placement of that nade, Roy. He's, he's taking full advantage of that silencer as well. He'll happily throw a couple of bullets down. And you get that sound cue, at least maybe if your opponent's uh, within earshot, but teammates rather. Uh, now they can stall out a little bit longer here, right? So limping the nades out, not off the rip. But all of this util place to scare Cloud9. Are they playing behind the one way? Is it just a delay tactic? You don't want to risk it. As again, another sandbag smoke will land, but Cloud9 know they need to get a move on. Yeah, you get into the uh, pointy end of this. 21st round, and it's Hobbit caught out. Afro down after the one. Oh. Caught by Shiro, still dispatching of Electronic beforehand. Push again, he's pushing again. Yeah, this is really ballsy from Dexter. He already won the one in the previous. Perfecto is to fill that gap, that's his responsibility. Head spotted, Dexter are noted. 20 seconds they need to plan. If one more from Dexter, this gets very hard for Cloud9. Buster. Oh, oh, walks in, Dex, the pre-fire, obscured by the smoke, no problem. He's ready for it. He's so aware. Dex, the switched on today. As he comes online for the boys and secures another. 16 frags. I think the craziest Dexter game we cast was a Vertigo game as well. Do you remember? He yeah. was having that insane performance on this very map. He seems at home here. And so do Fnatic. They're keeping up with C9. Yeah, looking comfy here. And the history of Dexter as a player, maybe people aren't too familiar with these days in Australia, but he was the in-game leader of Renegades and he was the star player. Right? That's why there were so many eyes on him. Hey, this guy can frag and lead. Yeah, let's get him over. And then Europe, well, uh, it's definitely a different ballpark. Are you park. saying the European players are, are better than the Australian? Yes, indeed, yes. Alex. Yes, indeed. So uh, Dexter, during the Mouse campaign, didn't have too much shine around his name. But... Uh, here on Fnatic, early stage is looking pretty good. Yeah, this is a really impressive um, kind of, a, you know, first taste, first look. Both teams have used three timeouts here, I do believe. So this was Cloud9's third. Okay, groove on the microphone. Yeah, probably just to balance the finances here going forward into the next round of play. Loss bonus is uh, 2,400. <laughs> so they should be able to get a buy without too many problems here, but Fnatic with an opportunity to tie things up, legs 11. Already like 700 utility damage from Cloud9 and about 200 from Fnatic total. It's a stark contrast to Shiro versus Afro. Might be going down. You heard the orb. Oh, I see. I see why that might change things. So this is the thing with that AWP in play. Cloud9's job is just to get information, relay it to Shiro, try and put him in positions for picks, but Crims and Mezzi are very forward here. Yeah, Crims, comfortable. Expecting a whole lot more where that came from as Electronic was trying to bait the shot for Shiro, who profits? 
or B now, and they can just continue to swing this pendulum. Of course, gaps might be taken, and Hobbit, he confirms ramps are not occupied. Yeah, okay, this is the seesaw here. So as Hobbit gets space, that AWP can come back silently or not. It doesn't really matter here. They've been able to scavenge the M4 off the body of Crims, and alongside of that, they have two smokes. So now in this passive stance of Fnatic that we can see, they can walk up the ramp because of Hobbit's space, and they can do left-right smokes on site and try and get this bomb down. But... The counter to that, Fnatic, they've got a couple of HEs and a couple of mollies. Surely sure it gives the smoke to someone else. Yes, okay, so now he can take that headshot fight just as the smoke's about to plume. But here's the deal. Roy and Afro are the ones with the HEs and mollies. They should be able to delay this. They should. They certainly should. They could stagnate the plant. Or a molly to delay even better. 28 as that molly denies the plant. They'll have about 15 to try and get it down. If they get it down, Shiro's in a power position. And they will start to plant. Nades better be good. Oh, denied. Awkward now. As Dexter's pieced together the double. Shiro sandbag. Scary. If Hobbit could just plant. And he will. Oh. Roy pushes through. Knows the value in denying that plant. Shiro it's has like killed everyone. Time, yeah. He might die after time. They have got the opportunity. Oh, and he will. Roy takes him down and leaves him with 3,100. All of that hard work and he's left holding the bag. Yeah, well, fortunately for him, his in-game leader is electronic and he knows, uh, you know, the or not, he needs to drop that AWP. And he's got enough cash to do exactly that. So Shiro will get one back regardless and he can drop a Galil. So it isn't the end of the world here. But this is the thing that you tilt to stall out the plant. That was the key. You could see that coming through the entire time. They had the checkmate in that round. And we're all tied up here as we do get back into the guns. On the harder side here, the T half for Cloud9 going to be more difficult for somebody like Electronic to call into a map that he's never played a whole lot of officials on before. Rejigging the setup. Smoke limits the options for Shiro's orb to hunt. Chip damage unconfirmed. As now two members of Cloud9 find themselves within that one-shot headshot from the M4. Bus is on the top of this one. Yeah, that head-to-head -head with Mezzi might find another tally. Ooh, okay. Three smoke stairs from Mezzi. They're coming for electronic. They want answers and Dexter. Quick to the draw. Too quick quiet. to the punch. And now Mezzi knows, or at least he's got a bit of a premonition that this beast site is going to be their final place. He's got help here. He's also got a smoke to extinguish his feet if they do molly him. Counter util. Hoping they overlook the squad position, but that molly's destined for Mezzi. Mezzi burning smoke as you discussed. Trying to find a safe haven. Well managed. Supported by Crims, but nothing from Mezzi at all. Buster takes him down. Looking to plant, but they don't have to rush this. Two versus four for Shiro and Perfecto. Ooh. A missed shot from Shiro and it will go punish. Dexter grabs himself a triple and continues to be racking up the frags. That puts him up to 21. He is a couple of frags behind Shiro and Hobbit in the server. Yeah, he's feeling it here. And you can really see just there, just three individuals creeping down that A ramp looking for a fight. Trade potential always there, doing it as a unit. Dexter finds that opener and even more impact over towards the B site as it's Huge. under pressure. So great shooting. And getting fired up now is Mezzi. They've taken the lead here, Fnatic. Probably something they felt they should have had regardless. If it wasn't for that Hobbit hero AK round with all five kills, maybe just maybe Fnatic will be teaming towards that oh. 16. Electronic with some pace will find an opener. That's a big frag from Electronic. Reaction necessary. Dexter good for one. Molly Gap, love that, does deter. They feel like they've seen enough. They didn't manage to leave with much more than a frag and some damage onto Electronic. I can't believe Roy. Probably feels a little hard done by. But look at this full rotation here. There's actually an empty P bomb site right now. Whoa. Fnatic are clearing out the A ramp, but it's not Afro, the end of the world, is it? No, they have util for the retake, sure. But the bigger issue is how far does Bush, uh, Buster push? If he goes deep, right? If they actually want to take fights towards Connector, you want to fight towards CT spawn, then they might be able to use these Tech Nines a bit more efficiently. But if they sit back, they are just going to be isolated here. Heavy on the flank. If they win these fights, they can pick up some rifles, but. It's Electronic Glock. I don't have too much faith for this one. No, nor he. But, I mean, this time, it is going to have to be pretty perfect on the way in. One good Deagle headshot, and it gets awkward. 
These stairs down. Afro onto Buster. That's Perfecto. Needs another. Look at the oh, time. Dear. He gets it. Cloud9. One more from Perfecto. They have to be defusing. Doesn't have the kit. They're going to do it. A 12th round stolen away. And a quad kill from Perfecto. That's cheeky. That is insane. That just Look at started, Groove. Uh, I just saw a smile. You shouldn't be winning. Yeah, you're right, actually. I just saw Groove smile. Some, I don't think I've seen it before. Get on YouTube. Rewind. Take a screenshot. Get it on the internet. That is going to break X right now. Oh, my goodness. The, the two think about two of the rounds that they've won in this yep. they've only won four rounds yep. one was hobbit with the hero ak and the other was the electronic tech nine entry kill into an empty b bomb site because of a heavy rotation from fanatic to make sure they could clear out the ramp into perfecto orbit oh the b anchor probably kicking himself at not considering it but, I, but also, I mean, they had the same conclusion as they, us. They called, well, look, Fnatic called the, the full rotation they here, did. right? This is the thing. If, you, if you're going to play that type of game, you can give up the map space. Sure. We even said that there was Util for the retake. We said there's a Glock on Electronic watching behind. The fact is, those Tech Nines did constrict the rotation in through yep. CT spawn. Construction, the drop down, hit the necessary shots, and oh dear, send Fnatic down to an eco. Impact again for Cloud9 in key rounds. Think yep. about where the impacts come for them, right? The Hobbit Hero AK resulted in a force buy, which resulted in an eco. Now you have a tech nine win round that results in another eco, right? The ramifications of the type of rounds and where you win them can mean an awful lot. Oh, lovely placement of the bullets and the crosshair. Look, let's be honest, it's not the most like pretty Cloud9 T side in the world, but you just have to get the job done here, especially when you're missing one of your stars, Axel. And we keep saying this and people are like, yeah, shut up about Axel. It's one of the best players in the world last year. Yeah. Because they're one of the best riflers in the world. It's, you know, this is not just any player you've lost here. No, this is like Cloud9 without one of their fingers of the fist. It was just so exciting, you know. Oh, Crims has misbought. Or someone's misbought. Someone's misbought heavily. Can, can we get a cam on that here? That That is actually, Crims isn't going to have any armor. There's, there's, yeah, okay. Uh, a big old miss by here. Crims is literally just rocking an M4 with a flash of smoke and a molly that I think was donated to him. He has no armor whatsoever for this. There's not a single defuse kit. Oh, that's, that's not nice. Oh, Afro, are you crazy? He's insane. He gets them. He connects them. Afro racks up the double, brings the fight to Cloud9. He says, don't worry, boys, I got this. I'll, do I'll solve the problem. I'll win the round before your lack of armor ever becomes a conversation. From the top rope. Okay, well, the uh, flying Frenchman. That's one way to kick off the round, huh? Just as I'm worried about Crimson's buy, it's a uh, 4v1. Big slap in the face there, and yeah, give Afro the final. Deserves it. Spotted now is Buster. Position given up. Shouldn't be too long for this world here. Still going to give it a crack. From the highest to highs of the previous, now Cloud9. Nearly took down Afro there, Buster in the clutch. Timing on this though from B stairs and Crims down. Nice find from Buster. Lack of armor hurts. Flex a problem, and there it is, Roy. Perfectly timed. Bullet in the side of the head. Nothing more for Buster to say, and we tie it up once again. Wow, okay, Afro. Yeah, right. Now, there's the GXX move, it's the same kind of thing. He just kind of runs and jumps down, and but this was with the run boost into it, right? So an extra bit of flair there as Hobbit has an awful lot to say. You can see him. And this is a, like the leg to start, and he still gets away. Just the movement from Afro springs on his feet as he leaps into action, and that one's going to feel real good. Nice reaction, like you know, in terms of that, uh, the way in which Cloud9 have won two of those rounds. I think that's kind of a Fnatic equivalent back. You see, as well, over there from Fnatic, they're a little bit more aggressive holding this B lobby. They just threw out that deep Molotov to make sure the Buster can't take that space early. Remember how many times Mezzi were getting B lobby initially? So. Different approaches on how they want to defend this side of the map here, but an important round, a very important round. Loss bonus for Cloud9 into the next 2400, which means most of their players should be in a decent position. Deliberate steps made by Hobbit. Yeah, might be able to get a partial on the next hit, Cloud9, but we're at the business end of this game. It's working. Mezzi and Crims were forward on B, and now both are kind of cheating back to Jen and mid, so. Just from Hobbit making a couple of steps on the ramp and everyone else cutting noise, it does just leave, essentially, a four versus one on B. 
Free smoke to buy time. Is that, it wasn't, it was a flash. Yeah, you're hoping for a reaction, you know, hoping someone spams or makes a sound yeah. cue or gives something away here. A Molly to stall things out as well. And again, they're searching over towards A. Fnatic are doing it as a team We've at seen least. This before, though. But this, 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 this is how they lost the Tech Nines. But this progression right here, I, I, I still don't hate it, right? They're going to have a lot of info. And if they lose the site, we saw Cloud9. They gave up the site completely in that first half and then were able to retake. So they're happy to concede the plant here. Maybe Mezzi's not. First onto Electronic. Yeah, and big start. And there's more to be had as well. Looking for the trade desperately. Haven't committed with Good the bomb. Flash. The Hobbit takes down Dexter. Mezzi's gone too. They have the access. They should be getting that plant in. Shiro shuffling towards that site. Afro trying to provide some sort of fire. Roy late through mid. Save. Hobbit's got That's it. Safe. And that is going to be a Cloud9 round. There's 1,400 bucks lost bonus into the next tier for Fnatic. They don't have an option to go for it. That's why I thought they'd play retake. I didn't think they'd want to fight against it. Right, let them into the side. The bomb goes down. Wait right. for it to fade. If you can get a couple kills, you can go for it. If not, everybody can save. Now it's going to be much more difficult. With that loss bonus, Afro's going to be able to drop something. But that's not if Hobbit takes away another kill. The fight towards T-Stairs and Roy lucky to stay alive here. They need to hold on to this AWP. We saw what Afro did in the last round, right? That was huge impact. He only got 12 kills, but that previous, it was massive. So give him another opportunity to do that as Roy, and Crims, and Afro looking to retain their goods. And they'll get away with it here. So three players staying alive for either team. Cloud nine. Just two more rounds necessary now. But if we continue to go back and forth, I have an overtime on our hands here. First map of the day. Ты сможешь выкатить сам себе, а я тебе дам на гэп смог. Ноги, ноги, да. По ногам дам. Просто флешку дай или хуй. All right, gap smokes out. It's in the air. And away they go. Deagle for Dexter. Been able to get one extra rifle out here. But this is essentially the game for Fnatic and Afro. We speak go. about the impact. You save the orb, you find the orb. Now that's exactly what the team needs. You can see this hesitance. They don't want to be caught out, caught short on their B defense again. Mezzi, this time, confirms and finds Electronic. Whoa, the re-peak is brazen. It's brave. And he's naded down by Perfecto. A response in kind from Crims does tag up Buster low. Molly will slow. Smoke to play around as well. Dexter trying to provide as much support as he can. Just the Desert Eagle. Might have the weapon if he can scavenge. 3v3. Finds the rifle. Gap in the smoke. Dexter. Perfecto. No flash for this. He's walking in. And Perfecto set for success now. As a Cloud9, a must win round for both of these squads. Roy, stubborn. Refuses to submit. Refuses to surrender. Two on two. Low HP. Oh, and Afro profits with the nade. He started this. And he's going to have to finish it as well. Shiro, 6 HP. Oh! Adjusts and closes out for Cloud9. That's the Shiro we know and love right there. The pressure on, the orb comes out. The backbreaker, 15 confirmed for Cloud9 now. And they have found a ray of sunshine here. The clouds are parting, the smiles are on the faces, and just one more. That's the game. That game in a one, comes down to a one-on-one, one, a 1v2 for Shiro. Bang. On to Roy. Knows the nade came from that side. He doesn't need much to take his shot. Look at this from Electronic as well. Elation, he knows what this kill means. Damn. So they're having a good time. And right now, for that, the very opposite of this. They're going to burn the last and final time. Now. You can pick, understand bro. exactly. And it started what felt pretty well for them. Good patch of rounds on their T Hall, five consecutive. And then they were only able to post two in the later stages of that first half. It started well again on the CT campaign. The pistol win, but that Hobbit round is going to come back to haunt them here, as well as the Tech 9 loss. So these key rounds falling against Fnatic. Left them flustered here with a uh, fragmented bite. Pistols, SMGs, a scout for good measure. Cloud9's map to win. Afro trying to use that scout. As an orb, that same kind of angle and information. Shiro knows his angles are here very well. Obscured by the smoke. Afro will have a lot of information here. This is a powerful position to save on the absence of utility. Well, Afro's dead now. Feeling the futility of defense against Cloud9. That's another body drop. Roy gave it a pot shot, and yep, three left. 
from Cloud9 to take Fnatic's pick away. Crims, next victim, sprayed on down. Nice combination with Dexter, but Buster beating Mezzi. We've said that before. And Shiro, pegging it, not interested. Down the ramp, sprinting away, want to make sure they can finish it here. Their best opportunity to do so, and with Buster taking all that space, he has single-handedly guaranteed this round. Unless Crims does something ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't see that every day. Strafing in. Trying something outside of the map, not outside of the box. As, yep. uh, it is just Dexter now. Has had a good map, but it hasn't been enough. 25 kills in total for the newly appointed Fnatic in-game leader. Has one available. We can sneak up behind here. Two spotted, just can't connect the dots. Perfecto takes him down, and that's going to be the first map victory for New Look Cloud9. 16-13, no Axile, no problems. And what a change on the demeanor. of Cloud9 at the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne looking pretty sweet. Shiro and Hobbit both activated on the grounds of Vertigo. And although that T side got a bit crazy, bit chaotic, bit messy at points, a really great reply Kassad to Fnatic who did put the pressure on a point. Oh yeah, definitely. It was an uphill battle, especially the T side for Cloud9. In they had to rely on some individuals, you know, heroics to kind of push it over the line. But overall, I'm I'm satisfied what I saw. I know I have to understand that there is no star player in exile. It's not just about the frags, it's about the rotations, it's about the utility usage, all the presence, like, it's a lot of things they managed to, like, overcome the problems they had on t side. It was still a little bit slow, but understandable. Overall, I like it. I think this was rather impressive, considering the circumstances for Cloud9, not just the Exile situation, but also the fact that it's Vertigo and Electronic and Perfecto didn't play it in Navi, and they managed to overcome all of that, mostly due to Hobbit and Shiro. Yeah, I think the fact that, you know, Fnatic started to answer back on that CT side with a few rounds in a row, that was a point where I kind of thought, okay, Electronics is probably not used to calling so much on this map. I wouldn't blame them if they crumpled, but they, they really answered back, right? Yeah, I think also you could see some little things about like having good timings in some of the calls, like understanding, you know, we saw a couple of rounds when Fnatic is trying to re-aggress, say, and take control, and Cloud9 is already grouped towards B and executing, and listen, five seconds there makes all the difference. If you're five seconds too late, they've cleared it, they're already rotating, 
rotating the rating for you in B. If you're just on time, you get to execute Wardell, clearing it, you get to take the site and set up for the post plan positions. And that's all there is to it. So a couple of good calls towards the end from Cloud9. Well, you mentioned his name. Let's bring up Hobbit in our Air Force aim high because, uh, yeah, instrumental impact basically from the word go, Kazad. Yeah, I mean, he had like a amazing performance. This is what you need when you're missing your star player in exile. You need somebody to step up. Shiro stepped up. Hobbit definitely number one player on the, on the server towards the last, towards the like, all of the map in the last couple of rounds, Shiro was there to clutch, but overall, uh, Hobbit was the one that pushed them over the line. And I've been critical of Hobbit a little bit, you know, in the last iteration of Cloud9, it felt like in his role, his output was not what it's supposed to be. Uh, but maybe it was due to the situation in the team as well, right? And sure, this is just one map, but, you know, if he can just increase his output slightly with the addition of the other players on the team and everything else, yeah, that's really, really scary for everyone else. I think, yeah, that's exactly what we talk about is the slotting into the new system, right? For, for your money, Kassad, was the CT set up from Cloud9 kind of what you expected it? Uh, on be? A side, yes. On B side, not so much, simply because the Buster was there and Exile was supposed to be there. Like I said, it's about the rotations and the timings that Exile has in this map and obviously the utility usage is different than the Buster's one, right? So it's going to be a little bit different dynamic when it comes to the actual official games and to come back to electronic in-game leading, he's going to need at least 10 to 15 vertigos to actually get into the because the timings are different on practice and the situations are different on practice. That's a lot of vertigos. Yeah, I don't know whether I could. It's going to take him like a much. year of games <laughs> to play that many officials. Uh, Yanko, let's bring up Hobbit's highlight from this map. Round 17 because Fnatic, they win the pistol, but then a Hobbit comes out with a bit of a hero AK play. Yeah, I think, you know, Cloud9 put a couple of. Uh, rounds out of there behind and this is the first time I mean, it's an eco with a hero ak right and what you're content with here is just getting a couple of kills and keeping the pressure on their economy but you can see this is like really good you can see like perfecto is baiting like he wants them to shoot at him so hobbit can swing and trade like that's the goal through all of this like it's really really good micro counter-strike right like it, it, we know the plan and we're just baiting for you hobbit we're just creating good scenarios for you and in the end even with this position really cheeky he gets the ace in this round and this is you know detrimental to fanatics economy it brings all the momentum back to the side of Cloud9 and absolutely crucial round for them to be able to win Vertigo. The difference there is definitely like between the average players and, and players like Hobbit when you give them the chance like Fnatic that he's going to use it against you and he's going to deliver the frags and that's what exactly what happened. And let's move on a little bit later to round 24 because once again we see Cloud9 you know not having the best weaponry but uh, Electronic gets a really good opener and then Cloud9 capitalized off that. Yeah I mean this was just wild how, how he uh, took down Roy and then, you know, they just pounce. Like, it, it's a bit of a different scenario uh, compared to the last round where they were, you know, a bit slow, a bit methodical. Here, they put pressure, they go back, and it's still a disadvantageous situation. And now it's Perfecto who's stepping up, right, with that double kill with the Tech 9. Then in the clutch, Dexter runs out of time. And these two rounds really broke the back of Fnatic. You know, you could see how they had a way to uh, take the reins in this game. And this is where really, really good teams, you know, mess it up for you in, in rounds where you don't have all the utility and everything, they, they make something happen. I feel like in this round, it was like a little bit, uh, they give, were given too much space to get into the B side, especially after Dexter flanked and killed the guy on, on, on B stairs. The, the reaction should be faster from the cities, but it, sometimes it happens. The problem right now is happened in the worst possible round for Fnatic, mm. and this is what kind of lost them the game at the end. Well, for Cloud9, a hot start, particularly considering that was their opponent's map pick, but I believe Banks has a bit of a sideline update for us. What's going on down there, James? Well, Frey, I was able to catch up with Groove, and you know what? He actually said he was surprised that Fnatic would pick Vertigo against them. And okay, he obviously understands that, you know, Buster standing in, Electronic Perfecto having never played an official in it, but he was very happy when that went down. He had said the mood in the team right now is completely changed and very different. You saw it on the cameras anyway, but he was saying what Electronic Perfecto bring is a lot more energy and a lot more confidence to this. And you, you can see it in the gameplay, right? We knew Hobbit was always the smiley happy one, but we'd seen Cloud9 so negative for so long. The new is obviously coming up next, but he is full of confidence to go and steamroll this even without their main five so cloud line up pretty scary freya you you just know that someone is going to already there's on the internet like shiro and vertigo with nafani tears <laughs> in his eyes playing the rmr or or was it at the major itself and then it's like 
first round, he's giggling, he's, he's smiling. Giggling he's like, guys, so we have much. to focus. We have to focus. You know, a bit of a roller coaster in terms of emotions in this game for Cloud9. But yeah, you can tell that they sound different. You know, it feels different. And you know, Shiro dropped a 30 bomb. It's a different team. It does look like yeah. a different team. Just imagine the darkness we saw in the previous, <laughs> like, you know. Uh, uh, scenes of their team right it was so bad and now you know it's like it's it's like dawn it's sun right it's 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 summer the clouds and they're just yeah disappeared. and they're no just more enjoying and it's like green cologne in yeah. summer actually Shiro is top three player summer. right now yeah. <laughs> he's top three player right now i mean he's laughing he's gonna be even better and he's I, feel also like, I, I feel like you know, we have a term for this something along the lines of the honeymoon phase you know, so that's hitting Cloud9 right now like a truck, and we'll see if it keeps on. Next map is Anubis, a bit of a surprising uh, pick, especially, you know, the standing situation, all yeah. of that, but probably a bit of a curveball, a bit of a punish uh, for Fnatic, and also just, hey, maybe they just feel really good on Anubis. Yeah, certainly a bit of a curveball, but it's time to see if Cloud9 can hit this one out of the park. We're going to be moving on to the grounds of Anubis. Their pick coming into this series is going down after this break. What is that reaction? Yeah, right. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my! Oh boy! Phase Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my God! Yeah, are you gonna be kidding me? What a map! What a map! The in-game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opper, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? I feel really flexible in the game. I can do whatever I want. People called me a pace developer back in the days, but I think it's started to change because I found my pace. So it's really different because now it's international team and I've only played in French teams. So whenever I want to do something and what's really cool with the, with my teammates is that everyone is like ready to do everything I want, you know, like I don't need to push them. Hello and welcome on the Deutsche Quiz. <laughs> I'm your host Alex and uh, I've got Liquid with me. Uh, through four, what do you think? What do you say through four? Through four, four. Uh, Durchfall. Yeah. How? No. Of course. How do you call it? You know where like, like a trap door or something? Like mm. in cartoons, you just fell in. Yeah, yeah. it's like a trap door. Oh, yeah, like a trap door. Yeah. Trap door? No. Oh. It's uh, okay. diarrhea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lou glasses. Lou glasses. Is that, that a peephole? No. <laughs> 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 Did you say glory hole? Yeah. I did. <laughs> uh, you're a classy man. Toilet seat. Toilet seat? Mm -hmm. Oh, because the glass, the circle around the toilet seat. <laughs> this is stupid. I sense. know. Listen, don't blame me. All right, you talk to the Germans. Ass bomb. A fart? fart. It's not a fart. <laughs> <laughs> is it a fart? Could be. I think so. I think a fart is good. It's a good guess, but it's not. Fart? Gotta be just. Uh, I think just it's a shit. A Can I hear you say um, arsh bomb? Arsh bomb. Arsh bomb. Arsh bomb. Very bomb. good. <laughs> Cannonball? There we go. Cannonball. Cannonball. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lazy animal. What do you think a lazy Slot. animal? That's oh, slot. damn. Okay, <laughs> killing it. Hey, that I makes mean, sense. I, I mean, I guess yeah, it makes sense. Wait, can we, can we, can we, can we do it again so you can give us the answer? Uh, oh yeah. Okay, what do you think a lazy animal is? Slot. Oh! What are the chances? Slot. Bang. Slot. Yeah. Uh, and then waiting snake. Like a hose? Oh, no, like not a hose. hose. Uh, you do it all the time at the airport. Then you piss. <laughs> <laughs> it's a super hard one. I believe Roberto can do it. Roberto? Got this, Roberto. Q. 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 
It is a Q. Yeah, exactly. You know Let's German? go. Wait, oh, you know, what? This guy's a professional. How do you know? Gee, oh my geez. God. <laughs> this has been the German word quiz with Liquid. Thanks for watching. <laughs>
I was just gonna try and toss it away. Well, that's all right. They've all got rifles anyway, so. Five am I? Gross. Yeah, it's uh, serviceable, but we're gonna see how it matches up against the AK. Sorry, it almost didn't match up against the Glock. Okay. Well, they will be able to get a clean one on the board there with all five staying alive. Very important for the Fnatic side of things early on in this one. So let's see the ramifications of that uh, Galil investment. It's just very light on nades, I suppose. Uh, yeah, like this is the thing. It, it, they obviously have a plan in mind. You right. wanted to, they wanted to limit, so coming into this round, they weren't dealing with a full buy. They get nothing away, and well, you have to have some kind of call that you can. Look at this. Nice little love up there. Work off the back of. So yeah, you, you're right. Lighter util limits options, and already using a bunch of them. And in stark contrast, obviously with those five fam, right? they've, Ooh, treated, they've got yep. every belt loop covered in nades. Two down, bomb delivered. Electronic could get them both back, and he does. Resuscitates hope for Navi in round three. They've got backs to each other again. Look at Afro and Buster. This is twice. We had the pistol, and now round number three, they've just completely passed each other once again. So. Uh, the Good. two of them really struggling with each other's timings right now, but I'd say this favors Afro a whole lot more than it favors Buster. They still think there's likely to be someone towards A, but Buster peering in now, seeing this clear Afro's timing, it is going to be the difference maker, and, well, they're passed with the bomb. Oh, he's got a kill here on a silver platter, does Afro. Takes the freebie, and now a three-on-two situation on this A site, yeah. but very winnable for Cloud9. Interesting decision-making. You can see the tree of, of thoughts going on here. Buster, he dropped the smoke so the Electronic can slow down Akon, and he can already be dug into main. Now, might be a bit late for that smoke. He's picked it up now and actually just drops it to play around. Bait and switch, styly. 25 HP, so he is just going to take a risk. Hope to catch someone with a play around the smoke. They tagged him. No, they didn't. Oh, Electronic. Found. Open plant for main. It's up to Buster. Can he have a moment? Yet to frag, Mezzi holds strong, and Fnatic stay undefeated. Yeah, not flustered there, going for that retake, taking their time, staying quite poised, upgrading away from the Famuses now, so very, very tidy work from Fnatic here. Bomb does go down, it puts Cloud9 in the realms of possibility to get out another partial. Good work there from Mezzi, just diligent in the smoke and smiles on the faces. Good work in middle over there from the likes of uh, Dexter and Roy combined for a couple of kills. You could see what Cloud9 were hoping to get away with. We'll creep through the smoke, we'll spam to make it look like just a standard start to the round. And they managed to double up even though Electronic stole two back. Now this is just a partial investment here. Cloud9 trying to level out the money knowing the loss bonus into the next will net them a full buy. Scout for Shiro, Galil for Electronic, some pistols on the rest and a re-smoke re of Dark from the CTs to hold them at bay for now. Now this is cool, if Electronic throws this, right, while they're hitting over towards A, it is gonna limit one of their rotation points. But they need to get this entry here and Dexter's waiting towards Fountain. Strong first game on Vertigo, Dexter not gonna be cleared out and contributing, Woo! oh, snaps into the third as well. No help needed. Dexter even gets himself out of trouble. Beautiful, I textbook. Perfect. Perfecto and Shiro locked. Can they keep a complete clean sheet here for Fnatic? It certainly would really aid the longevity of their run in this map. With all five alive, not for the first time, they are making bank. Ah, it's not just all five alive, right? We're talking about four kills on Electronic at the high end. Then you've got Shiro with one. Hobbit Buster Perfecto yet to find a frag just yet in these first four rounds of play. They need to change that dialogue very quickly here. Great work from Dexter, isn't it? Putting his aim on display. I know it is a lighter buy, but still under a lot of pressure on his lonesome in an extended position. So great shooting. Yeah, I mean, you, you could see a world where bigger names do less. Uh, he really nailed that. Impactful round from Dexter. Well, this is where we can really start to get into the game here. And something that's been key for Fnatic throughout is just taking these fights through dark. So if it's not going to be smoked off, they're more than happy to leer in. This Orb of Shiro not posted to deal with them right now. Did that Molly make sense to you? No. Okay. Not just me. Unless a somehow burns through the wall and we don't know about it. Is or, it like Desi knows that we don't it, know? Or it, or it sounds like main molly, but no, 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 no. You know, like the little like uh, bug molly on heart? Yeah. And you can do pushes, but no. 
Electronic onto Roy. Oh, oh and Perfecto catching Dexter. So this is CT aggressions, but they've been cut down to size, so punished for their attempt. I should push B now. How about ready for this? Converts. Well now, in a two on five situation, just need to group up and finish together here to Cloud9. They've got the util for this. Hobbit, gonna search him first. That's good information to Mezzi's position, but guess what? Electronics low. Yeah, you could isolate these jewels by throwing the molly down. And Buster's trying to get, hey, the Afro's ready for him. Oh, you thought you had the gap now, or you're in limbo. They have to go B. Mezzi's dropped towards Temple here. Good angle to fight Dark. Very good angle for Dark. Two through dark, bomb through main. Electronic first, victim, perfecto, oh! eaten by the Mezzi Kalashnikov. <laughs> and it's Fnatic's round, a stunning recovery. Two five kills. Five kills between the two of them. That is insane. Absolutely insane. The thing is, Hopper went forward on that part of the seesaw, died, and they all just started to run back towards A. That's not how you play those situations at all. No. You go in slowly, you feel it out, you find out where that player is, you hope that you can find space on the other side of the map, you do it together. This was way too individualistic out of Cloud9 early on. Hobbit and Buster, free kills, and then the low HP of Electronic gets mowed up by Mezzi. He ain't missing those. Yeah, credit to Afro as well. Yeah, Mezzi definitely gets the style points, but if Afro doesn't kill Buster with that, you know, it's a jiggle, it's a smoke in his hand, it can be those awkward shots you fire off and Buster gets through, you have to relocate. It's a different round. Afro taking that shot, forcing them into B, forcing them into Mezzi, results in a 5-0. Was, was there a timeout taken? No. Yeah. Yeah, it's taken five rounds. Cloud9 realizing they do have to make a change. This is the thing. So a round that really should have been theirs and a way back into this half results in Tech Nines and a Deagle. So Fnatic are doing a great job here. Looks like they're setting up for a bit of U2 over towards B early here. Oh, Roy completely blinded there as there is pressure towards Dark and B long. Wow, Roy, that is hyper-aggressive when you know they're on a potentially pistol round. Wow, they blocked them off here. There's a lot of utility to hold them at the door. And now Roy's going to head back towards middle, so... Maybe he wants to try that trick again. Cloud9 are completely out of U2 after their opening move was stalled. You have to hope that some of these Fnatic players overstep the mark or catch them with a good timing. Grim's back to the pillar. God, good luck getting through this. You can see it perfectly positioned so he can't be seen from dark. Exhibit A. And that's Grim's dead. First bullet out of the Tech 9. Great from Buster, but Mezzi seems to be fine. Not feeling any pressure under the scrutiny. Another multi kill round from Mezzi. And uh, yeah, Mezzi fantasy fans 12 and 1. It's pretty exciting if, you know, Mezzi and Roy can frag like this, and then Dexter, he, he had like 25 or 26 kills in the last map and is also showing some individual prowess as well. And the Dexter stuff is not, you're not expecting it every game. It's a, it's a bonus. You know, once once every, you know, four or five maps, if Dexter has a 25 kill game, that's great. You obviously can't have the polar opposite and only have matches where he gets three kills, but... I mean, Dexter and Mezzi have 20 combined. Cloud9 combined have nine. Distinct lack of frags. Yeah, and uh, this is it. You pick an Ubers. We don't know what Cloud9 had to offer here. We don't know what Fnatic was willing to respond with. And that goes the same for both of these teams, unless they practice each other a lot throughout that break. And sure. there becomes even more of the information, because around the front of the hotel, I talked to some of these players, and you mentioned, oh, yeah, this team looks good. And they come in and they go, ah, do they? You know, they kind of scoff a bit. It's like, mate, I know you practice them. We got no idea. They have full B info already. You still got 70 seconds here. Perfecto will start his campaign towards dark. Crims with such a gift for his squad. And yeah, you aren't going to bolster A. It is pretty comfy, isn't it? Right now, no dramas for Fnatic oh, that's here. something. Dexter on the AWB oh. and adjusts. Thought he'd been caught out. A misplay, a misstep, but kept level by Electronic. They're advancing. They're committing. Roy, element of surprise, now squandered. Needed one. He did. Damage inflicted. Seems insufficient, especially now as Afro's caught out by that mid lurk. Nice from Perfecto. And not going to be finding Crims as that 1v4. Certainly seems like a too tall an order. Does he even give it a look in? I don't know if he has the best grenade trajectory in the history of Counter-Strike. Oh, yeah. What? Maybe he could get a kill. 
serious trigonometry. Yeah, we required. need that to fly through the windows. Uh, Off the brick. Up deep in towards heaven. Uh, yeah. And you might get a double kill. But that was a round that we've just highlighted looked good for Fnatic in terms of their setup. And they end up losing it. Whereas they just won a 2v5 where everything was against them. Yeah, well, that's just kind of Counter-Strike. Yeah, it? right. It does feel like that's kind of Counter-Strike at every level of play. We do find a way. Crim's just making sure they go down with the ship here, but Electronic and Shiro at a safe distance. Hobbit will get away from Dodge as well. And there you have it. Finally, a Cloud9 round here. And in the face of adversity, it's all smiles still. This is T-Side Anubis. You've picked it. You wanted to kind of get out that strong start. You've lost the first couple of guns as well as the pistol, and it's all fine. They will find their first. Yeah, we did see double offset up there, right, with Dexter wielding one as well. We I wonder did. if we see that again. He's already used that fountain position a few times this game, so need to have a bit more diversity in the way that he is holding over towards that side of the map. Shiro goes looking, shopping for anything mid. Smoke is down. Standard procedures. Ah, that's not standard at all. They've given Afro the green light. Will he walk past Buster again? I highly doubt he moves past this line in the sand he's drawn. And uh, Buster. Oh, yeah. Spots out the barrel. Starts to unload his magazine. Afro's orb spotted, but will they think it's Dexter? They didn't see who was equipped with the AWP, and previously it was Dexter. Good mid space here. Dexter's about to get a lot of company. Three players poisoned at the ready. Buster and Perfecto Does from this main. reek of a mid-A split? It's just so quiet across the map, isn't it? You know, now you does. Action in middle. Smoke from Afro. Hoping to delay. Not the kind of smoke Coming you through. want to push through. Electronic does, though. By virtue of his own smoke, Afro's going to overlook this. Electronic has found the power position. He is behind enemy lines. There's no way. Oh. Dexter won for sure. Afro's gone and this should be their site unless Dexter's got more electronic dispatches of Dexter. Roy's gone too. What a play. Classic electronic there, isn't it? Just an absolute criminal in those smokes. He knew what the util set they were throwing was and so it was only essentially maybe one second window where he could have been spotted on that move. Calculated risk. Slinks in, gets three massive frags, secures the second round for Cloud9 here. And that's what Electronic is going to be able to provide you. He didn't just run in to be traded. He wasn't just running out there to give you the information. He knew exactly what he was doing. And it's great to see just Crisp. And this is the thing, when you hear him in the interview with James, right? He's doing it in English. You know you did one with him in Rio. Like he's, he's definitely starting to get a bit more comfortable in that environment. But it feels like he's getting a bit more comfortable in himself, talking yes. about wanting to be one of the best in-game leaders, right? And, and that confidence out of an individual like this. And, and we know how good this guy can be, right? This guy is an absolute monster. He's 24 years of age. He's a beast. He's played under simple. Like he, he knows what it takes to be... A fantastic Counter-Strike player, and if he can put that on display while in-game leading, not getting stressed out, he's got fantastic players behind him. This is why everybody is so excited about Cloud9. Yeah. Every piece of the puzzle is premium. Right, exactly. And what's so special about Electronic is this transition to leadership is something that's coming from him. You know, it has to in the sense that he's changed his dialogue. I, I no longer want to just be an individual comparable with Simple. No, 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 that's old me. New me is, do you know how many legendary in-game leaders there are in this 20-year-old game? Yeah, right. Do you know how short that list is? And do I think I could do it? Yes. What does that do to you? A whole new, like, chapter in this man's story. Never mind the tools he gets to wield while pursuing it. Yeah, the only thing that ruins that little venture for Electronic is if CS2 and they all just lose their hands, or they all forget how to play or something, right? Sure. But this is a roster that uh, there is so much hype behind. Back into play here. Shiro aggressive over towards B long behind their own Molly, gonna peer on out. Temple Smoke already applying pressure, removing angles, and now able to search three players to deal with. Three. Magic number, you'd think. Crims, ready, received. Shiro onto Roy, glyph clear. They know Mezzi typically occupies the site as well. They're looking for Crims, no help from Mezzi. Spoke too soon, he gets him. Perfecto threatening, but caught. And now the advantage held by Fnatic. I think they're expecting more of a heavy mid or more of a heavy A type of setup. They're still going into B, and there's three players once more for Fnatic. Haven't really bucked the trend with their setups too much. Afro's AWP, the next fight available. I think he would have been spotted there. Me too. Shiro's going to be on that angle and collect a very important frag, an equalizing frag. But, but look at this. Look at this. Cutting him off. Together. 
Shiro, aware, nope, not ready, fires off a shot, misses that, Buster, however, has got A on lock, Dexter frustrated, Betty motivated, he's down as well, and now a 1v2. Buster's coming back, they're going to take this fight together. Oh, oh, no, they're not! Catches him in the air, that's the bomb carrier, a perfect timing for the engagement, Buster can, you come up clutch, Crims knows what's up. Bye! Bye. An orb kill from Crims to secure it for Fnatic. Huh. A team effort. Feels just as rare as seeing a Crims orb kill as you do as a rain orb kill, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> yep. So, uh, good one there for Fnatic. And just staying active within that mid round, staying one or two steps ahead of Cloud9. They were very stubborn about that approach over towards B, throwing multiple bodies to deal with Mezzi close towards that dark position. But it's Crims in the clutch. And Fnatic up to seven here. Beautiful stuff as he gets himself the five kills in total. Let's see how many... What rounds Cloud9 are going to be able to put on the board here on this T side because it's not looking great, is it? Oh. Looking fantastic though, Chad, I'll tell you that much. Electronic, the entry fragger in game leader. Extraordinaire. Okay, him and Dexter are both throwing yeah. out some punches here today, aren't they? Well, he's got the whole um, A side of the map on his shoulders and with an MP9. So I, I can't help but feel that. Uh, if they do come a knock in, Dexter, as great as he's been, would have been, yeah, okay, he's gambling away. But well. th this is the thing, I understand that the weaponry is a little bit lighter on here, but we've seen Fnatic win a 2v5 in this map so far. So uh, the thing is, Cloud9 really need to pull up their socks here. They have a lot of space, they have the weapon advantage, they can break Fnatic here, they can start slathering on some rounds, but the thing is, we've already seen them have some oopsie daisies. So right now, look at Fnatic. They're calling their bluff, they've called a gamble. They've gone, hey, well, if you guys finish towards B, we have almost everybody here. Electronic. But what happens when he says A is clear? But think about a lot of the unknowns. They don't have any dark control, right? And we've seen Fnatic push out dark a lot. So at this point, if Electronic calls his team back, he might call them back into the same thing that happened last round. They are. So but there's a, a lot of questions to be asked here. 40 seconds left on the clock. They are starting to transition back over. They will need to start, unless they go through mid, start making a bit of a ruckus about this here shortly. They're going to go the long way around. Electronic is just going to park towards heaven here. They have to start running. Run, they shall. Okay, well, this isn't going to be heard, and I don't think Fan Fnatic are going to transition over at all, so it might just be the Cloud9 third round of the Fnatic save here. Well, you definitely don't fancy a retake with this smorgasbord of weapons. No, and you'd think with how quiet it was the entire time that maybe Fnatic would have sent somebody out as a feeler. But statues here, as the bomb gets planted with five seconds left on the clock, and that sinking feeling for Fnatic, hey, we'll just hold on to what we have. Really, I mean, again, you've got to give credit to Electronic, not just for the kill, but for that entire yeah. maneuver. Yeah, and I'm talking about them about to go into a stack, another number disadvantage situation. There's a bunch of them, Fnatic one well, on Vertigo as well. You know, dips the litmus, pa litmus paper into the A site and says, oh, guys, this is neutral. We can probably uh, do this a little easier. So well done from Electronic there. Sure, the path of least resistance. He's the man to find that opening kill and find them the empty site. Dexter would love an upgrade spot to the barrel, but Buster spins on a dime. It's only an MP9 to be lost, so not the worst in the world, but still, next round. Smonus. Slim on here, so you're going to carry an AWP, a Famous, and an M4. What can Dexter and Roy get their hands on here? Well, that's the conversation they're about to have in this timeout. Keita gets to confer. Now, this is where you hope that your individual holds that tab key, so as the coach, you can see all that money. Let's see. Oh. Roy's, Roy's, you know, intermittently bringing it up and down as Keita. He's staring at it. Like, you're right. <laughs> That's a good observation there, Chad. Keita's eyes were definitely locked onto uh, Roy's monitor to try and piece this all together. Yeah, and no, this is really quite cool. We get to take this look from above and see this tactical timeout happening live and in person here. So much variation in player preferences in their setup, isn't it? Like every monitor is at a different angle. Look at where the height. mouse pads are. Look at, I mean, Mezzi's mouse pad is fruity. No, that's, that's yeah. the Harry Russell. Back Harry of the table. You've got the keyboard orientation as well. Monitor tilt, all of it. It's all happening, but we're Everyone back underway. Ready to go. Two MP9s to try and bolster the saved rifles for Fnatic here. He's got a smoke cocked. A's completely open again here. Yeah, a calculated risk or a misjudgment. I think you have to take a bit of a gamble with this type of a buy here. See if you can force the issue. Molly forward as Afro has to fight. Damn, that is so much damage. They should be hearing the burning, I think, from water. Buster should hear that. Bang! Still profits. Buster's dead. And already hovered down. 
Dexter, good for one in the round. Crims as well from Dark, it seems. Fnatic have done enough. It's up to Shiro to change the dialogue. A fired off shot. They know there's a last man to stand. And Afro, the bookend frags of 11th round. That's eight now for Fnatic. And yeah, making the most out of that, Le leaving A wide open, but profiting. Maybe they didn't hear the molly burning mid. No, clearly. Know, because that that entire play is to either flush them forward to fight or send them back so they don't have the info. And they push forward and they had all the info. Or, you know, maybe it is audible, but Buster is assuming that's players them who falling are falling back. Falling yeah. back. Yeah, exactly. Well. Because there's so many ticks. It's like the only thing that, that makes sense is if they were... It's like over a 50 damage molly. Yeah, crazy. There were so many, so many sound cues on that. All right, well, Cloud9 struggling a little bit here on their own map choice, aren't they? Five rounds the difference. Also, it could be harder to plug Buster into Axel's uh, responsibilities. Bang! Afro on one now through mid. Two out of two successful finds on his walkabouts for some aggression. Very nice. Not getting respected, are they? He's more than happy to go for those repicks. So, very stuff from Afro there. And now it feels like Cloud9 are just going to limp across the map unless Electronic, who seems to be missed the impact, yeah. has something to say about this. So now that AWP down, Roy still to deal with in middle. You'd think this is at least traded, right? There's no way Roy gets both. None. From the Dane. Yeah, expecting a jiggle, I suppose, right. but that wide swing from Perfecto Mid takes open. his head off. Mid open for business. Electronic occupies the space with Perfecto. Dexter is going to be having some support through Mezzi. 30 seconds, and oh, Dexter does go down. It's all Electronic. Mezzi, oh, he falls as well to the hands of the new leader. Cloud9, the new name, and it's at the top of the scoreboard as well. And I don't think you have too much hope him. Oh, Crims. I have just caught a fortunate timing here. Hobbit, previously, looking between his legs. He's given another awkward timing, but catches in the back through the golden arches. Mmm, delicious. Mmm, I'm loving it. Ah, that was the... Damn. <laughs> well, sure. I, God damn it. Teamwork. No, I know, but how do I not get that one right? Teamwork, okay. You think that one should be just a staple? <laughs> you would think. Ah. All right, well, we'll try again in the future. Look at this ADR as well. Electronics had a great half. It, and, and whilst his team has been struggling, but if he's been able to keep this up, whilst they, they're starting slow on this map, you've already got four to boast. If they start waking up, you've got a half here. Yeah, I, I, oh, here's that push. Like that. Yeah, well, oh. Zero. Oh. Need a flick into action. Lovely stuff. Ah, they're back in the half now, aren't they? Yep. There's a force out of Fnatic now. Two kills back as long as they convert this round and eco into the next eight to six. Blink in your miss uh, and all of that electronic impact. Really being picked up now. He's kept them afloat, hasn't he? Indeed. And, and this is the thing. like We're still excited about this team and the storylines with them having a standard. Like Imagine if they're at full force. I'm not saying the results would be any different. right? They, the the scorelines could be exactly the same as they are right now. Right. But we wouldn't have to keep returning to that caveat or that asterisk or just remind everybody time and time again. Most definitely. Because it is, it is, it was the best roster move of the offseason. Maybe one of the best roster moves of all time. I, I, I'm trying to like just think back over the years yeah, no. and think what makes more sense, what fits like a glove, what's been... Like, the ROP situation with FaZe, we knew that was happening for a long time, right? We knew that it's a great change, a great piece to yeah. plug in. But this, it just, it feels what well, was meant to feel perfect. Yeah, well, it feels meant to be. Uh, and uh, without all, all of that excitement about rounding it, I, I think it's also interesting that, yeah, it's very clear that Cloud9 are going to try to make the best out of a bad situation. It's not like they're coming in here saying we've got nothing to lose. Sure, maybe saying we've got nothing to lose, but we'd like to be still in the tournament if Axel gets it. We've got nothing to lose, but we know how to win. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yes, exactly. This one, I don't think it's possible to win for Fnatic, so I'm going to go and, and watch it from their POV. Let's just watch five people die. Whoa. Wow. A lot of noise coming out of the Monty side of the studio there. Reminder, there are two streams running simultaneously here in our opening matches for the group stage day four of IEM Cologne 23. Okay, here you go. Bit of a beast stream update on your screens. Monty 12 to 7 over Gamer Legion. Map number two, Monty in the lead 1-0 in the series. I don't think 
That's too unexpected considering the fact the Game of Legion have had their hyped in-game leader taken and he's returned back to the organization of Mal's yeah. and Emma, who uh, was the best rifler at the Major, uh, also getting poached. So, so yeah. Unlucko. In terms of, you know, uh, getting the short end of the stick, I think is how it goes. That, that is the official saying, I do yeah. believe. I think they're up there. They're splitting into the stack, Alex. Busted. Yeah, only casualty. And one final round to see just how close of a first half this will be. Now, make no mistake, Fnatic boasting eight CT rounds on Anubis will feel good regardless. But the ninth, still up for debate and a recovered half from Cloud9 as well. This is functional. Quick reminder of that. You can go and check that out on the second stream. Take a look at the scoreboard. Look at Krasnall's giving him the long end of the stick, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -mm. Let's go. Final round of this half, second map. Opening game of the group stage. I guess we can set a bit more context here now that we are one map to the good for Cloud9. We are in Group A. Feeling himself with his aggressive moves. Afro, even with the rifle, considering his options towards the window. Winner of this one, Alex, takes on winner of Ents 9. Ooh. That could be fun, a Cloud9 versus 9 Vertigo. It's coming up today. Actually, what am I saying? Ents. Ents are going to be in beast mode form. I got good aura out of some pious and snappy yesterday. Cloud9 would love to walk away with 7 on this half. Hobbit, over on the pool side of Long. Can apply pressure late here. He knows that there's no push, no info as flashes are exchanged. Pressure now down towards canals as Messi speculative shot spamming through the smoke without the traces. Electronic still top mid. Buster pushed up in A main, so good map control here from Cloud9 as Electronic Ooh. will find another opener. Afro falls. 17. He is pulling Cloud9 into a competitive scoreline. He's 5 and 1 in openings. Yeah. 5 and 1 in openings. I mean, he has more kills than three of them combined. Oh. And Messi finds them both. Dark clear, he says, Roy overcommits. He thought he had Hobbit dead to right, but he lives on. A second kill from Hobnob. And Dexter makes sure that's it. Shiro in a 1v2. Do not write this man out of the clutch. 15 seconds. Oh, it's stacked against him. Dexter catches the timing. And Fnatic, nine to work with to try and take us to three. Cloud nine, six, as we swap sides. BRB. Disengaging and Kios not going to give him that slack. Nice hunt. Sticks around. Oh. That's going to be his demise. Bro able to get his 21st on the board. Only eclipsed by Krasnall. The two players up. The two heaviest handed members of Monty at the moment. Krasnall uh -oh. in a 1v3. And while Bomb's still back by spawn, he's got 20 seconds left to work yeah, this he, out. He can grab that freely. Okay, so this comes down to Volt, who, you know, is going to take a better angle here on. He's got to be ready. He's just right behind the pillar. Volt hears it coming. Krasnall, is he sharp enough? Oh, oh. it's close. Ooh. Dangerously close to a 1v3 clutch. Ooh. But Volt, Volt put like, one up. He's running. He's running. <laughs> I got him sweating. Eight for Gamer Legion. Nice push out through Monster. God damn. Not giving Monty all the respect that they feel that they've probably earned. It actually messes their buy up, even those frags. He's got a MP9. At least the save gun, but man. Wow, without the save gun. You need another MP9 here? It's three rifles. Util on overpass. That's what you need. Whereas Monty, they're doing fine, honestly. That was actually the kind of situation where 
Krasnell should have gone to die to see how many get kills he could get. It's a tense map because Gamer Legion know the amount of doubt that is over their heads publicly. People thinking this is going to be another into the breach type scenario and not quite a Monty slash Apex situation. Luckily, into the breach, set the bar very low. Okay. It won't be hard to beat. That was a very, yeah, that was tough. That was a tough one. Oh nice. Oh my nades. God, the heroic nades come up huge. Let's go. God. Good job by Volt for at least getting up into playground. Dealing a blow back to Monty. You can't let him get away with a triple nade stack freebie. Key, I mean, to be fair, they almost killed both. Mm -hmm. Stages do not get bigger than this. Anubis. A different feel to Vertigo for sure, but Cloud9 come up short. Only real redeeming factor is that Electronic is making all of the goodness happen. And we've got a, a Hall of 17, as has Mezzi. Both of these players definitely looking uh, comfortable. But will we see three? Ancient is, is in, waiting in the wings for our separating third, if it's required. Yeah, and look, Electronic has had a great performance here, but you have to remind yourself, Cloud9 lost a 2-1-5 on, on a gun round. So, uh, Definitely some issues here. Oh, mm. yeah, for Dexter. That's who's got the issues right now. That was meant to be a fast A play. He had nades. That's interesting. And uh, now, yeah, they are using that Molotov to buy them in. The boost not going to get much done. Shiro fired off the pot shot. No kit, so might have to have some quickness on this retake, but they're all already here to respond. Actually, an MC providing all of the observing goodness for this. Attempt into the site, retake, bomb ticking, bodies dropping, oh. Roy, Roy and Mezzi, comfortable, headshots hitting, eyes are rolling, and Fnatic running towards a tenth. Oh, oh, look at the fight in the face, grabbing the head and shaking them. Fnatic up to the double digits here, both pistols, they get the conversions, and we're going to be heading to Ancient in no time. It looks so good. The Perfecto opener, Dexter goes down, number advantage, and then they're coming out of connector and every bullet connects. Watching this, if you hadn't have seen the desk and the veto, would you have assumed that Vertigo was Cloud9's pick? Or like the, like this being Cloud9's pick, is that is it is it unusual considering how it looks? Well, this is the thing. You come in with massive unknowns. Right. There was a big Reddit thread about what the hell was Cloud9's permaban even going to be, right? Were they going to adopt what Navi liked to play with Nuke? Or were they going to go with what Cloud9 liked to play of Vertigo? Valid conversation. Uh, right? and, and that's probably something Fnatic, they practiced in the lead up. Your map, your map pool's not going to be mega deep. Maybe they were really comfortable on their Vertigo. They've gone, hey, this is a map that we know two good players, Perfecto and Electronic, haven't played before in official capacities. Let's try and pressure this. Let's, let's try and take this away from it. And it didn't work out, but highlighted by us, by the desk, by some of the key rounds in that map, was the Hobbit Hero AK with five kills, and then the Tech Nine it's this yeah. Central Eco Victory where Perfecto yeah. gets four kills. Yeah. Those are the difference makers in a map of CS. That's fair. So that could have very much been Fnatic's Vertigo. And now going into another black box, Anubis. Well, if you're Cloud9, maybe you felt confident in this one in practice, but you had no idea what Fnatic are going to be throwing Precisely. your way. You're learning on the job. And they've got their own priority list, right? You, you've, oh, you've seen it very clearly. One of them was with pushes like this on the CT side. <laughs> now, it's actually Not a looking. blank. Not turn. looking. No, it is two frags this on the be a eco. Full eco. They can't. That's two guns. They the, can get they, those they, weapons. They to, someone surely has to invest time onto the dark position. No. That is going to be two There's a smoke and a molly here somewhere on the ground. Rifles, two kills. Still going to be hard to get back in. Is it a default plan Surely or USP's is it a CT plan? Bait. Afro needs a multi kill. Badly. It's a CT That's plan. The Where do they go for? Okay. Safe. Back oh. turn. Timing supreme. As Afro confirmation of at least the other one coming out from main. And it's secure. Saves them from a real Orky Momo there. Uh, powerful post plant position there, playing the pillar. And they also, as mentioned, pl planted for CT. So even if they were able to get in towards the site, you had Dexter had pushed up. He was entrenched. He could have taken those long range duels. So we'll handle from Fnatic, understanding the situation there. From long range duels to opening duels. I just hadn't mentioned it before. I want to make sure we I identify that Electronic did have uh, six opening duels, participated in six, five successful, and then he has the highest in the server as well. So not only doing the leading, doing the entrying as well. Yeah, he, he was key to everything that they were able to Madness. scoop up there yeah. on that uh, T side. Let's Quick. see what happens now, though. You've got... Oh, 
Two rounds on the trot, a conversion of the pistol, first gun test for Fnatic's T side. Yeah, missed nade there from Mezzi, but not the end of the world. Extremely deep molly. And the smoke in exchange, he's not actually going to force the issue here. So they don't know who resides in towards Dark right now. And there might be a bit of a sneaking suspicion to Hobbit as well that somebody could be playing in that fade of the smoke, fortifying a main. We're on board with Buster and Electronic and Crimson Afro just around that corner. HE could be really well placed. He second guesses it. Buster trying to push forward and hits the shot. Crims clotheslined. Good reaction. Really big. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is allow them to establish a main control and then boost over that deep smoke. It's clearly set up for a reason. And now they're turning their attention. That smoke. Shiro. Primed and ready, as was Electronic. Roy to trade. Shiro set for success. Afro and Mezzi going to give it everything they got. Two-man advantage in our 18th, and a boost over the smoke's cool, but no reason for Buster to give it to them. Afro, rounding the corner now, procedurally clearing through. Loud now about this. Plan would be nice. Would be lovely. Should be safe for the plan. They actually opt for the fake, and Afro gets one, gets two, but no plant. And so Cloud9 get their first CT round under the belt. Costly, but successful. And you could talk about cost. I mean, Fnatic, yeah, you got two players on that double eco territory. Well, that's the ramifications of losing so many bodies in that previous round, right? right. You're losing to USPs and P2Ks, and, well, then you're going to have to rebuy. Well, Cloud9 were already going to be heading in towards that buy department. Sure, a little bit shaky for them. Electronics going to be into an MP9, a famous for Buster. But Fnatic's purchase in this one, the best they have to boast is that Roy AK-47, and it doesn't even have head armor behind it. Waiting to have something to respond to here, uh, Cloud9. Smoke Molly defense over towards middle here. As soon as they feel pressured, Electronic will drop that. He has Shiro alongside him. Has been mollied back. So there you go, stalling them out. But Roy's close. Oh. Maybe you're underlooked. Yeah, I found a perfect spot. Oh. Oh, gets nothing done. No head armor. See the immediate goosh? Yeah, yeah he see got, his cross he there. got rocked, didn't he? Dexter's done well to catch one before the double swing. Profits, but yeah, punished. And Hobbit, he's racking them up as well. His 13th activating into Afro, takes the bomb down. He's farming. And Fnatic, starting to feel Cloud9 warming into things here on that defense, looking convincing in their conversions. Two on the trot. And now a Fnatic Eco here. So Fnatic, who just be waltzing around with an awful lot of nothing here. 2,400 into the next. We'll be able to get the guns back out, but Cloud9 will turn this into a two-round game. And Electronic has done enough to allow his other individuals to start to warm into this. Seven for Perfecto, five for Buster. I'm sure we'll expect to, expect to see those scores start to get a little bit higher and higher as this CT side campaign continues. Now, all five of Fnatic over towards Beep. There is one flash at the ready for Dexter. Bomb plant here would be great, but a retake set up with Perfecto and Hobbit both playing down the lane. Ooh. Poppy, safe from the flashes and a very comfortable spray. Look at that, Perfecto and Hobbit. Make sure it's clean, the two of them, keeping their uh, guns warm. See, it's one doorway, but how they addressed it, Hobbit had if they crossed towards Jail, Perfecto had if they crossed towards Pillar. That's one, one choke point, but you know, why don't we share Divide the load? It. Yeah, exactly. Samwise Gamgee said it best. To see the guns back out, I don't see a single AWP in play, so stay transfixed onto where that opening exchange takes place. Utility donation from Shiro in middle here, so that's going to be with Electronic. They're going to start three towards B, Buster solo towards A, and Wafro across early here. Powerful position. One way smoke deployed to play behind here, and also to help with the crush. You can see it here, Mezzi getting cheeky with it, but now that the CTs are blocked to their own, he can start to scale up behind this. A main control available for Crimson Afro. They can get baskets. We saw this smoke before. You just see how deep it lands. And they didn't get to pull it off. Last time they were fought, they were pushed. They weren't able to set up what they were hoping for. Very, this time around, they've got the control. Very nifty smoke, huh? Even if it's just for posturing. Even if it kind of, because it forces you to acknowledge them 
reposition, pushing for answers. Dexter. Dexter talking a lot. Maybe he's got one in him. Oh. Nade down the face and up from above. It's Perfecto, a huge find to isolate the only player occupying B site. But hang on, with Electronic dead, Crims is opening in the A site. Back is turned right now. Buster's got the world on his shoulders. Nice from Crims. King of Kings into the A site. Might just be a save right here. Three on four, number disadvantage and having to retake A, sure. Feels like the individuals on Cloud9 can get this one done, but there's a risk they're willing to take. It doesn't look like it. And that's Crims. You think about the impact. So that's two kills into the site around Converter. Gets them up to 12. And he had that clutch, that one on two in that first half. He finished it off with the AWP. So oh, sure, yes. doesn't have the most kills to his name. But this is the thing. You need to look where the impact comes in and what they're able to convert off the back of it here. So Shiro upgrades into an AK-47. I'm sure the AWPs that you wanted to see will come out into the next for at least one of these two teams, namely Cloud9, Perfecto. With 7.5k, he'll be able to drop no dramas. And that's if Shiro doesn't want to just buy himself. Osbonus coming through, going to be that 1400. Back to a three round game here. So, really just came down to Crims, didn't it? And it felt like Buster. You can see him having to acknowledge over towards middle as well, but didn't seem ready for that type of a fight. Crims brazen, knowing that he has to make that move with the B long space being taken. Man, what a great name. That couldn't have. Dropped any further down the back pocket of Dexter there. Oh, is that the smoke I was talking about? As I think well? so. Did you see that angle as well. I think so. Unless it was a redeploy of uh, the CTs while we didn't get to see it. <laughs> yeah, but, but still, I'm, I mean, that's something to run around with when we get home. See how that one works out. Electronics got to line up. They're pushing main here. At least they're playing aggressive with this AWP. It's Crim's rugs just holding the push. What's the timing on this now? nade? This time, but oh, Buster perfect. activates onto Krim. No, but this is the thing that Nade just looks like it's the default A holder. Now the flames at the floor, burning him out. Mezzi dead too. Subverts the expectation, and it, it's enough to profit. They leave with two man advantage. I do like Roy's position, though. There's a small universe where Electronic gets caught out. Yeah, you can see there is an opportunity here still. They're not aware of this. No, huh? Nobody's acknowledging slipped. it. He slipped. This is a real opportunity for Roy. Needs two. One's not enough. It needs to be multiple. Oh, Hobbit adjusts in time. Perfecto, quick to communicate. Dexter and Afro going to play upon the fade and hope they can isolate a duel or two. It is a two on two on the second ladder of the alphabet. They both got smokes. Spotted. Bomb spotted. That will get the rotation moving. They're on a timer now. There's the smokes you discussed. Reaction to go wide is from Electronic. Can he find more impact? He's not done. Oh, oh but Dexter does force him out of the round. And another oh. from Dexter. The multi-kill to level the odds. And look at the time. They're milking every second of it. Diligently orp is posted. Dexter's dead. Where's that bomb, Afro? A 1v2 with Buster wrapping main. Exposed. And disposed of. 10. To 12. <sighs> almost got out of control again. It was almost a 2v4 situation. We've seen him win a 2 on 5 again. It's not going to be past I mean, the realms of possibility. Throughout this whole game, uh, both of these teams have been kind of, uh, yeah, subverting that expectation. But I love the opening move, right? The nade comes through. If you're defaulting towards A, you assume it's just Buster throwing see. it late. And then they peek out and get that kill while Crim's like, oh, yeah, they're not close, main. But then this late round, I love the molly from Electronic. But then... Dexter calls the bluff, gets flashed through the smoke, comes around behind him. What a great round of some micro decisions here. Unfortunately for Fnatic, just not good enough. Pipped at the post, allowed the plant. I've taken another time out here. They're third so far in map number two, but they are the ones with the backs against the wall here. They lost their map choice of Vertigo. And Anubis could very much go against them here as well in the opener of the I Am Cologne groups. Lots of exciting head-to-heads in our uh, opening round. Group B especially, going to be some in, uh, interesting ones going down there. Group B is wild. In Isn't case you, you haven't seen the bracket, Vitality OG, Navi, Maus, G2, Astralis, Phase, NIP. Woo. Big names in that one. Yeah, clear your calendar. Clear your weekend. It's Counter-Strike's weekend.
Audible. Mazzy. Trundling boot through the water. Oh. And it leads to 46 HP. Double nade response. There you we go. talk about Man, new there, ones. Yeah. We yeah. talk about just the release of that walk key. Leads to Mazzy working with half health. Pushing A main here again. At least trying to fortify it. They know that they've at least dealt with the dark efforts What's of Fnatic They're here. They're aggressing upon the fade. If he plays into what's basket, Shura can bait for him, and then they could set up a bait and switch setup, but I think they're looking for info here, and Buster needs to be careful. There's a gap in the smoke. Yeah, but Crim's not looking. Oh, Buster again! Damage! Mezzi, oh my god, he gets away with murder. Two headshots, he's not expecting a third. Electronic is already on the scene. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, he's not ready! Afro catches him, a gift! An absolute gift! In the form of an electronic death, smoke down, sight is theirs, unless Hobbit somehow makes space. If he finds Dexter... Oh! <laughs> yeah, he found him, all right. <laughs> Sit down. 13. Just like that. I mean, uh, quick recap. Felt great. Mezzi finding two headshots in a matter of milliseconds. Yeah, they lined up perfectly for him then, didn't and they? And then electronic... Yeah, just assuming that that was enough. Like he'd, that, that, he, they got three kills at that point on eight. Mezzi, that does a th third component. Excuse me, two kills. Yeah, that mid pressure as well. So I, I guess he just thought that the remainder of the team was all going to be coming through mid right there. Caught off guard, gives Fnatic their 13th round. Hard fought here. And a save for Perfecto as we're staring down the home stretch right now. And here's that double up that, oh no, it, it, it wasn't at all. Uh, it was not at all. Wow. That second shot, huge. And Dexter doesn't yeah. need a second bullet. Afro couldn't believe his luck. Electronic just turning around. You see there's some Dexter's POV. <laughs> Hobbit, <yeah. laughs> Hobbit didn't see anything. I mean, watching it from his POV, he barely swung. Dexter, so quick. Okay, 13. Fnatic, three rounds away from taking us the distance. Oh. Miss Molly there, you can see it burning in the windows. That wasn't where that was destined to land. They're creeping A main again here. This time with no smoke, it's going to catch Buster off guard, I think, Alex. Yeah, this is a little contact play. He just had a clear. And this is the straw that's going to break the camel's back here. I think we're destined for three. And jiggle out. Okay, guys, hey, hey, he screams. And Shiro relocating. We'll have a little bit of a gap to work with. And ooh, safe now. Knowledge of Shiro as the smokes come through. Shiro ahead, but Flash, look at the pandemonium unfolding now. Buster still lingering around these smokes. Mezzi, Flash through, looking for damage and finds it into Buster. Perfecto will respond in kind. And it's Crims that keeps it with a leg up. Oh, and Roy through mid. Electronic will not be arriving on the retake. 14 looms. And let, consider that bra back broken. Yeah, this is real problems now for Cloud9. If Shura can save the orb, sure, that's something. But Fnatic, I feel they've done the hard graft, the hard work here. And a great round. They've been conditioning A-Main with that smoke. They've been showing how they like to take and apply that pressure. And this time, just the contact walk in catches Buster completely off guard. You can see how quickly they swarm in. And they take their time as Shiro noted now up towards the heavens. He's in a whole lot of trouble. And that's going to be Roy to finish things off. They take everything away. And that right there feels like it's the game. Perfecto is the only one with money. The rest are pretty much completely bottomed and broken out here. Cloud9 need a miracle. Yeah, staying proactive as well. You can see they were well and truly aware of their win conditions in that one. Not letting... Those C9 boys set up behind those smokes. Again, right? And this is the thing, the whole conversation of the spotlight has been on Cloud9, but Fnatic roster playing this quality of Counter-Strike it? here, it's 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 impressive. Early doors as well, yeah, right? Yeah, we didn't expect them to be uh, a name getting too much done. It was one of the lower-ranked roster changes. Even hearing from other pros, it was a bit scoffed at. This is 15. Not sure what you're meant to do with three USPs and a P2K against a fully bought up Fnatic. Just walk, walks and on into your site here. Afro with another. Mollies are there as well. There's plenty three. of util to pluck them all apart, isn't there? Yeah, three of them have conceded heavy damage, but uh, the damage insignificant as Perfecto will finish off Mezzi as Fnatic secure their 15th. A five round run demanded of Cloud9.
We will see our third map. I'm curious to see what Dexter calls here. Does he want to try and get this done quite quickly? Do they want to keep with the crawls across the map that they've been operating with because their default spreads in the map space? It's definitely been able to net them some conditions that Cloud9 are worried about. So this is it. Hey, I'm expecting them to try and fortify this area of the map. Like we should be able to exploit it here or is it just, yo, let's throw a pace change their way right here, right now and finish this one off. Take us to Ancient. Roy walks through. Gap to work with. Molly. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Off the flash. Pushing in. Electronic. Oh. Dead. What a play. Roy flattens the defense in mid. Buster present. Noted. Naded. And eliminated. Roy contributing heavily. It's lining up for three. Ancient. Two clicks away for Fnatic. Spotted out Perfecto. Afro doesn't want to be the one to squander this. Doesn't want to be the reason they have another round of play. It's right there. Within touching distance now. Just have to putt it in. Ooh. Didn't quite get the hole in one on that smoke. Yeah, now they're just hoping for that CT re-aggress here. 44 seconds can group up. Still have plenty of utility to finish out this round. And despite Electronic's best efforts in that first half of play, where he's an absolute monster doing everything he could and more if, to try and will his team into if this. If Crim's calls A clear with 30 seconds, do you still go round? It's about to happen. But just as they get to main, he's going to say, guys, there's no one here. Oh, okay. Well, with the util, it might not matter. He's going to try and sell it. Will they react? Yes, yeah, they will. Perfect. That's cool. That yeah. works too. Yeah, and, and that's kind of a hope. They still... Uncertain a Cloud9. They haven't just darted on over. They're worried about mid lurks, and well, now they know it's B. And it's given them all the space they needed. Mezzi down goes looking. Roy dumping util. Quake it in their boots. A risk taken by Shiro. And Perfecto gone to. Fnatic force a third. Ancient is where we'll separate them here in the opening game for Fnatic and Cloud9. Is your calling?
A spicy pick coming out of Cloud9, but unfortunately, the only thing they burned was themselves. It's Fnatic to lap this ground up with a great start in the first half, then finishing out Kassad with a statement on that T side. Yeah, Fnatic just brought this one back, and I, I got to say it's like 70% on them playing all right, and 30% on Cloud9, and pretty much on Buster. Because it's not that he's bad, he's just, you can see that he's not playing with a team that there is like things that he don't do usually, especially on the T side, on a, a, a ramp and, you know, the missed timings, missed utility, it's like the rotations are completely wrong. You can see that he's not playing with the team. It's not on him, you know, but it's just not in the, that competitive, you know, environment anymore for a while. Now it cost them a little bit too much right now. Luckily, they won that first map and they still have a chance to win. Yeah, I think especially early on in the first half. In the pistol round, in the first gun round, same thing happened. Like, he's holding A from the balcony, and the guy pushes under him where he doesn't even notice him, and that causes all sort of conundrums, right? Like, people are in places they're not supposed to be. That causes confusion in the calling and just gives that little extra time for Fnatic to rotate and to stop Cloud9, right? And yes, Anubis is a T-sided map, but once you're in the hole and the CTs have good economy, it can still be tough to play. Yeah, let's move into that first half because you picked up round number five to be uh, going down on the Telestrator. What is this showing? Yeah, so for pistol round, first gun round, a bit unfortunate towards the A bomb side, then the second gun round comes along. This is this round five, and you can see right now five with two situation for the side of Cloud9, 50 seconds uh, left, but we're going to focus on the radar and where the players are. Zero, that's Afro, right? Seven is Mezzi. They know he's the B player, so he's still alive, right? So I'm going to play it a little bit so you guys see what's happening here. You see that there's a smoke on middle, so they know one guy is on mid. At this point, they already have Hobbit who's pushing towards B. You could also have Buster is five. He could push towards A, right? Either or you want to see maybe whether their stack is or it's just good timing. In this situation, with this amount of time, Cloud9 can also just group, like even if they run into two guys, if they execute correctly, that's fine. But what's going to happen here is Hobbit is applying pressure, right? He's going to die to Mezzi. Now, at least at this point, like now Buster can still try and go away because now he can see that it was another guy who was on mid who threw the smoke. So A is empty, so he can try to take A now or again, you guys can just group up still in a 4v2 and try to execute together, right? Mezzi is throwing some counter utility. Now Buster starts moving, but you will see once we get rid of this full screen zoom that this is a little bit too late and Afro is already back. So now Cloud9, again, okay, we don't want to go into the op. Now we're only 3v2. Electronic is low HP, so let's go back. You can see that Afro is already moving back towards the B bomb site, right? And it's just a little bit too slow, a little bit... Um, disjointed from the side of Cloud9. Messi with another great hold. If he doesn't get, if he gets traded there, it's still winnable for Cloud9. But it was just a combination of things, right? And a little bit not being on the same page and some delayed maybe reactions. And, you know, I don't want to say a missed call, but probably overdid it in this one and still. Fnatic kept up the momentum. They absolutely should have grouped there. One minute left, a lot of utility. You don't know where the CTs are. They're probably stretched or, or together in the worst case scenario, whatever happens, there is five of you, you know? And the, the second option would definitely be send one guy to go in. And if he spots someone on the side, you can say the maximum of number of players on the other side is one. So you just go with four. They decided to take the worst possible option, one by one by one, and end up losing. And like Echo said, it's a decided map, right? You need to get as many as you can, especially after the bad start. They went in a 6-9 position after the first half. They lost the second pistol too. So it's it was a really uphill battle from the very start for Cloud9, and they couldn't do it. Yeah, disjointed, I think, is the word you used. I think that perfectly kind of epitomizes maybe some of the issues that we saw from Cloud9, particularly in that first half. And then it flips over to Fnatic, and they were able to really capitalize on them, right? Oh, yeah, they were playing extremely well. Mazzi with another great map. Uh, he seems to have really come into his own now that he doesn't have to be the in-game leader. And I think, you know, Fnatic has looked pretty solid so far, all yeah. considering, right? Similar to their last iteration of the roster, they seem to have good cohesion very very early on despite not uh, playing together for a long time but they don't look worse that's the important part right they don't look worse and uh, you know we can see if it's going to be better in time but for now the eye test is fine i don't think there is anything wrong with their game they qualified you know uh, respectively to this uh, to, to to this stage of the tournament and right now they are in a position to defeat cloud nine with a stand and still but still uh, a good win to have well, we, go, we do rather go the full three distance. Uh, we will be seeing Ancients to be rounding out the series. But over on the B stream, it's been a pretty quick affair, hasn't it, Shox? 
Thank you so much. Well, uh, right here on the B stream, Monty made very quick work of Gamer Legion. Now, of course, for Gamer Legion, unfortunately, we kind of expected them not to be in their best form yet. Uh, Acordo had a good series, but that's about all she wrote. But I want to focus on Monty because what an incredible series of them once again. Quick work of Mirage and Overpass. And Bro just keeps getting better. It's unbelievable how he's fit in. Uh, and he just does everything what the team needs. I got to talk to Sam Da Young as well, and he said, I'm so happy with Bro. He's fitting in exactly as we wanted. I'm really happy with our T-sides. And uh, yeah, I think Monty is a team that's going to be very difficult to beat for a lot of teams, maybe even some of the higher echelons of teams in this tournament, because we can see them evolving with every game they play. And Bro Boros, I mean, it, it doesn't even matter. They're still performing the way they were. Definitely a team to look out for. Back to you. Bro just doing bro things, apparently. That's exactly what you want on your team. Uh, Gamer Legion, unfortunately, I, I think we kind of expected it. We touched upon it in the pre-show. They were one of the teams that were picked apart after that. They were ravaged, Freya, they were pillaged. Um, and now it's, you know, the rebuilding era for, for Gamer Legion. And uh, if you want to check it out, War 2K had a sick one before uh, in that game in a very important moment too. But yeah, back to our game, back to our series. I think here, Axile is the A anchor for Cloud9, right? Like, so that's why we're Buster also. He has a couple of those important positions where he's the first contact, he's the first line of defense. He doesn't have to go lights out, but he can't go missing, right? Like, you have to at least be able to buy time, get one kill, stay alive for your teammates to, to come in. And also, we need to see Shiro more on the vertical level than on what we've seen from him. I think they're going to be fine on the CT side, simply because Buster is going to be playing that anchor. It's not going to be as much as, as action-packed as Vertigo because he has the trade utility all the time. People can sneak up on him. Like it, it's a little bit different. There's only one, one entrance, pretty much, right? And he needs to, you know, just defend that entrance, and that's it, right? So I don't see any problems there. Oh, sounds so easy. Why don't you? <laughs> well, just put me in, coach. <laughs> No, the, the, the thing is, like, I do believe it's going to be much better right now because there is so much space for for Cloud9 players to do their do their job, and especially like Hobbit, like we saw on, on Vertigo as well. I think he might do the same. What about on the flip side for Fnatic? Because currently, 100% win rate on this particular map. What's been going so well for them on it? I want to see how they approach it, right? Because in the in the old Fnatic, they had these deep lurks, right, where after a default, you know, they decide to finish A, and you had, like, Fasher going up B ramp, and the bomb is, like, A main, but not committed to A, so they could still go back and forth, right? Uh, and for Maus as well, with Dexter, you know, it was also a good map for them. So I think they'll be fine um, on this map. Uh, it, it's just down to, right, who really executes better. And Dexter's not been having too bad of a series so yeah. far. So yeah, let's see if they can continue that streak coming onto the third and final deciding map that will be Ancient. They steal away their opponent's map pick of Anubis. It's time to see how it goes down, but not before a quick break. What is that reaction? Yeah, right. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh boy! FaZe Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god! Get ready, you're gonna be kidding me! What a map! What a map! The in-game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opper, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? Order in the court, it is CS Justice, and I of course have our defense attorney representing the uh, client, it is of course Mr. Merriman, thank you for joining us, and of course, Ruj, I believe it's pronounced in Danish. Well, let's get on with it, we have our first case, I am the judge, jury, and executioner, but we'll listen to the defense. Our first case begins. If you look at this guy's movement, he looks like he looks pretty new to the game, and he's, I mean, he's not really scared of anything, right? I mean, you're making points. 32 yeah. frags. It does look like his movement is of someone that wouldn't have 32 frags. Uh oh. Just tapped out for a second there, wasn't he? Maybe he was there and sort of calling him or something. Ah, yeah. right, right. Oh, 
even if you're playing noobs, you are sometimes a bit of scared of something. I've never seen a guy this confident in where, in, in where he thinks they are. It doesn't look he too was, good. He was a guy who's got plenty of matchmaking experience. He's a pure aimer. I need to hear your, your explanation for why he tabbed out and then clutched up. It, ha it happens it, to all of us. At the start of the game, he, your mom or dad, dinner's ready. Game. Mom, I can't pause it. It's an online game, mom. Yeah, yeah back or here. Or his uh, software outside of the game was a little bit tickling. Or, or his his gaming mouse uh, ran out of battery. I honestly don't know. Not enough evidence. Innocent. Oh, Mr. He can't even. <laughs> This guy's not cheating. No. <laughs> Just looking at them through the wall. You're right. He doesn't even yeah. he doesn't realize there's a half wall in front of him, does yeah, he? Exactly. Oh, oh man. You find us nest. Oh. He's one of those players, you know, it's hard for them if he can actually see them. Even though he's terrible at everything he did, he got four kills. Through, through smoke. smoke. Pre-firing through the wall, shooting through the wall when he can't even kill them. He doesn't know what he's clicking. He just one taps you through a smoke. So it could just be one. Yeah, it's ah. just one round. It's just one round. Guilty. You can't. Oh, what? I've never seen this in my life. I've never seen this before. I need to watch more of these cases. Oh, come on. Oh, where's Why is he button? holding it? He knows because the guy's AFK. Ah, oh, yeah, he knows. Okay, that's ridiculous. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you can't see the chat that all his teammates are tilted and said AFK, AFK, uh, he knows the stick. Uh, he's not afraid of anything, look. He knows exactly where he is. Now he pulls his weapon. Yeah. Right before he knows. And. <laughs> okay. He's gonna be a hard one to defend. Okay, yeah. Everything apart from last kill was a case of great communication. Heard all the steps. The last one. Uh, it was uh, 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 I am Cologne 2023, day four. It's the first day of the group stage, and we are into that third map, knifing for sides. Fnatic, secure it. They'll be choosing to take that, I would imagine, the CT star. Yeah, I think the defensive side of things on a map like Ancient would make an awful lot of sense here today, but I want to say on debut, the new Cloud9 roster, most, most of it, most of it's here, most of it made it, and map number one, we're extremely excited. We had, uh, Good vibes. Oh, we had a wow. whole different look and demeanor within that team. Map number two, it wasn't soured. It definitely wasn't elation and smiles from face to face. It was a loss on their map choice of Anubis. So 16-13, 16-10, and now map number three with Fnatic opting to start on that CT side. This one here is to put you, you know, want to keep yourself in the upper bracket and to take on the winner of Entz versus Nine in Group A. Had uh, Monty versus Gamer Legion going down on that secondary stream. And plenty more Counter Strike to come your way here today. At I am Cologne for 2023. We've got G2 versus Astralis, Ents9, Heroic versus the Mongols, and Navi versus Mouse to round up the day. And coming your way tomorrow, well, the matches we know will be Vitality OG and FaZe versus NIP. But what I know is the pistol round has started. We are underway. And let's get this one on. As the 1x bet odds are going to be favoring Cloud9 here. Three players for Fnatic over towards B in the early stages, and they're going to get Biffy on ramp. Biffy. Technical term. Roy and Dexter. They are very desperate to take this fight ahead of the curve. Not worked out well for Dexter. Roy nearly two, but it's Electronic who's already secured the site. A lovely find through the smoke onto Afro. And so, yeah, sure, forced to start on the T side, but starting the T side strong. Cloud9 looking for their pistol. Need to tighten up some of these situations, don't they? Desk highlighting on the T side when they lost out on a two on five situation. Bit of a blunder. Don't want to let the same happen again here. Crims has already found the first incision. Yeah, and that means Ramp might likely clear. 
Locked in cave if they can just isolate Buster. Electronic spotted out. Buster stubborn. Oh, they got the info. They know where you are. Oh, Mezzi doing the dirty. He has to find it now. Buster will secure it, but keeps the sweat on the brow. Cloud9 leave with the round. Whew. They never let it be too easy for Cloud9, do they? Another round with a big number di uh, advantage right here. Electronic picking up where he left off in the previous map on the T side. Popping a couple of domes on their way in. This offensive hold. Dexter goes down. Electronic picks up two. Afro trying to poke his head through the smoke. But Mezzi on the Julies doesn't need to reload. Two bullets left. And just not enough to get it done. Buster to pick up the eventual one-on-one. -on -one. And Fnatic they will be forced buying into round number two. Afro starting eight with the scout in case of a contact walk with the rifles. But it is Hobbit, Electronic, and Shiro to waltz out mid. Crims will be the man to take contact from Dona, and he's about to have a little bit of support from Roy, who has left the red position, obscured by smoke yet again. Ooh. Yeah, not the best. Very, very deep. Nobody was aiming for. If. Yeah. Replaced it now. And that is the cue to re-smoke from Donut. Well, they wanted to at least try and get some Donut pressure and control. You can see Electronic wanted to do the flash molly combo. Molly off that slanted back wall, burn anybody out behind the Donut position. But still just posh it in mid here. You can see Roy aware of the leak towards red. Donut also now susceptible. And there's that molly I was talking about coming in about 20 seconds later than they had hoped, but still the destination. So nobody cut out, nobody Donut. Nobody top red, and when they... Oh, wow. That's okay. exactly what Afro was waiting for. Holding Temple side with the scout into Donut. Shiro will be lingering red as they look to Pinsir into B. Hobbit needs to go second here. If he goes first, that's an AK for these cave players. Yeah, Dexter's going to be licking his lips. Oh, gets one. Hobbit not done. Dexter makes sure... Shiro's got two on his plate. Now he catches Roy. They know where he is now as the bomb goes down B. Afro knows he's on a timer. A flank is imminent. And oh, Shiro's dead. Afro, another on the scout. Keeping it interesting. Crims is crawling. There's plenty of time for this. A 10 second defuse ahead of them if they can retake. Perfecto. Tests Afro. Loses out. Traded out. Crims needs a one on one. Buster. This could be back to back clutches for him. Two 1v1s. And Buster reigns supreme in both. A solid start from the stand in. As Cloud9 do convert, but Fnatic consistently keep making them work for it. Yeah, close but no cigar in that one here. And this is where Fnatic will have to lay down their arms and take a bit of an eco. But sure, great damage and important work from Buster there. He's had a, a couple of moments where you'd expect a little bit more or maybe better decision making across these two maps. But. Uh, you know, whether or not he was expecting this call-up to play. Don't have all the details on exactly what was going on with Cloud9 not being able to get Axile here. Just know it's been cited as visa issues. So close. Good attempts. Good shots. Nice work from Afro on the scout there. But another Cloud9 round. They have upgraded into their pistol of choice. Deagles for Dexter, Crims and Afro. P250 for Mezzi and a CZ75 for that of Roy. They would love to try and get a kill or two yet again, and it is going to be difficult for them to break in towards main here. Afro's close, and then the boost. So there's lots of elements to this. Several traps they have to get past. Oh, no one's going to check it. Shiro was unprepared for that, and yeah, an opportunity. Whistles past. Or here. Lots of damage done, but not a single kill. Look at that. Electronic Buster Shiro. All oh, such low HP. A single Deagle bullet could take each and every one of those aforementioned names down. But yeah, unless he hits the pot shot through the smoke or plays the fade to perfection. Hobbit Buster all there. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Richardson. Yeah. Could, could I bother you for a moment over here on the balustrade? Yeah, I thought you disappeared. You are over here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did Crims change his res? Because he was using black bars, but I thought he was 4 by 3 He was. Now it's he's not on four 16, by 16, 10 black bars. Yeah. Hmm. You're right, he did. Changed his res between maps. I don't know if it was after map one or if it was after map two. Because Mezzi and Crims were sat next to each other. Yeah, and we they were, had the same and res. they had the same res. Yeah. Hmm, nice catch. I didn't realize, I didn't think pros were doing that as well as, you know, us normal pe peasants. Oh, yeah. They, they do they more do than too? you'd want to give credit to, mate. All right, well, the double molly mid-defense here with that divider smoke. If you've been catching uh, IEM Cologne so far, We've had so many discussions about the macro and approaches on Ancient. Cool tea smoke from Perfecto. Just to ensure that when their uh, smoke fades upon the oh. doors, 
There's unlikely to be CT aggression. It's a nice Afro. upgrade, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, uh, I can't believe Hobbit's gone from a MAC-10 to an AWP, thanks to his handy work, and now Afro has to watch. I love this, though. Mid control again, and trying to finish towards B one more time, just contacting in. Dexter spotted out, and a very nice delivery would need more, and Mezzi is able to contribute through the boards onto Buster. Hard to deny the plant, safe plant from Shiro. And more frags from Mezzi. Heavy contributions. Roy goes walkabouts and it's all Mr. Merriman. Hobbit. In a one versus two. Um, very rare to see him rocking the AWP. Not going to be gonna caught spread? by that molly unless it's caught on the spread. Now it is. Oh, burnt to a crisp crims. We'll finish it off and secure the round. And those are the black bars we're talking about. Less of a bar, more of like a, a little sliver. Yeah, half a bar. Half a bar. Well, that right there, I, I felt like it was going to be another one of these one-on-one -on -one situations falling in favor of Cloud9 here, but a good spam through the boards from Mezzi as they enter in towards the site here. And you can understand why you'd opt for this decision. When the orbs removed from Afro and mid, you know that you can probably scale up B ramp here, not having to worry about the orb in that back lines. And there's that late spread. So a clutch molly from Crims there to make sure Hobbit couldn't get anything else done. And yeah, a bit of a tongue of the tongue. Look up to the heavens. What else do I have to do? Hobbit got the opener. He got that orb and it wasn't enough to get them the round. Fnatic, they get themselves on the board here. Let's see what Electronics called into the fifth. 2 3 split here from Fnatic, so nobody's starting out the gates towards A. Calling the bluff of Cloud9, not expecting them to charge in. And Roy calls mid relatively clear. Those shots make me wonder as that's a nice little elbow smoke there from Crims. Not opting for the boost. And no rush here, Cloud9. More than happy to give them that space. And speaking of space, Dexter and Afro are about to take an awful lot here. Yeah, especially considering how pass passive Perfector was holding this. It's all their territory now. Uh-oh, Dexter's going to keep going. They're going to call B lane completely clear here. Mezzi's even baiting with that spam, so it doesn't seem too obvious. Uh, Mezzi needs to get a move on right now over towards Ooh. the A side of the map here. Yeah, with that mid-info and the info B, they're surely going to be able to have a real bolstered defense for this finish out Huge of info Cloud9. Play. Look at the mini-map. They are set to receive this. No smoke and mirrors here. There is no deception. This is just going to have to be brute force. Versus Fnatic's defense. Roy, that's what he was waiting for. Strikes into one. Hobbit keeps it level. Mezzi, spotted. Comms oh. flowing, still damage. Another expected. It's Shiro onto Mezzi. Two on two now. The T side. Counting on Shiro and his AWP. Afro, two from his. Can he find the third? The most important orb of Cloud9. Be catapulted to a fourth. Dexter and Afro to solve this mystery. Shiro opts for the AK 47. And Dexter. Picks up the kit and goes to hold it. Held by Afro. They're playing it perfectly. Calls the bluff. And Fnatic take the round. Shiro not going to be getting his AWP back as well. That works out wonderfully for Fnatic. And now just a one-round game. Okay, well, didn't even want to go for a fight there in the final throws of that one, did he, Shiro? Thought that they were going to tap it. Thought that they were going to call the bluff a little bit there. But they had Afro just posted up and simple stuff. Good trading over towards the site here. I think Electronic was under the impression they had a lot more room a bit more undetected. There were just so many bodies here. Fnatic, with that info push, that info play, with these two, the two that finished the round, all that space they took towards B lane profited and I'm starting to. Aggression. Roy, free frag, thanks to Crimson's flash. Hobbit just holding the arrow keys and charging. It's Electronic set for another. Impressive and important equalizing frag here. Roy's back is turned and he will punish him. Now they have the leg up, but Mezzi's still alive. We know he's not to be trifled with. Crims in support, has ledge. Ooh. Spotting falling back to Donut here as well. Some more information, but still have to worry about Mezzi, who's forward, wants to take a fight here, understands that this is a position where he can control the tempo of the round still. A lot of responsibility on Afro not going down to Shiro. Elpo finds him. Mezzi dinks onto Electronic, or actually, no, maybe not. He only had 25 HP, so just the body shot. Yeah, he feels hard done by on that one. Afro styling on Electronic to keep it level. He's been great throughout this series in those type of peaks, right? Swinging out and taking those precise fights when he has a pretty good idea where the enemy could be. Two on two now, when a regress once more. 
It is really promising signs that Afro's playing his game Thanks, his this way. This is huge. This is insanely huge. To push up this far. And now spotted by oh. Buster. He's punished for his... But Crims is here. Oh, activity. And yeah, Crims is going to be in the right place. Buster. Now aware of Crims. Effect is running A. Yeah. And now it's up to Crims how quickly he can work this one out. They've suddenly disappeared. No more friction with 15 seconds. He already knows what's up. He's going to have to be on quite a hasty front flank. Does he just want to save the AWP here? Now that he's been yeah, out of position, right? Does, does it question. just pick up the AWP? Do you still want to give this one a crack? It's a one on two. Feels like it's in the realms of possibility here, but so much to get through. Yeah, especially this two man donut setup. So if Buster overextends just a little, it would be enticing. It doesn't look like he's been given what he was waiting for. So, so there you yeah. go. I'm sure someone just said, AWP down, be long. Let's go grab it, bring it forward. It's not going to exist in the next round of play here. Lost bonus 1,900 for Fnatic going forward. So the two rounds that they were able to pick up, short-lived success here. And Cloud9 will get back on the board. Jiro motivating the troops as they do manage to react out of that one and dig themselves out of trouble. Don't forget, yeah, it was that Shiro Electronic pair of frags across the map to recover the advantage. So and what what happened there? How, Mezzi not calming that it was possible they'd get across top mid. Maybe that was calmed and he didn't expect someone to overextend the ledge to take that fight for Roy, but just getting blindsided from behind right there. Because when you were saying it was, such, it was so huge, right, the idea being that he can just sit there, step, hold all of lane, and be ready for the door swing as well. Mm. Like, it was just a power position, but you can see just going a bit wide, looking for Perfecto, maybe a sound cue made, and this was how uh, Afro's power position was overpowered. Searched a little bit too far, right? Yeah. Like, he had done a great job, and then got a little bit overzealous in that moment. So, hard to fault him, considering he was the man trying to draw that round back into contention here. But, uh, yeah, if you go too far, I get chopped off, as they have retained that AWP. Sure, Afro gets it again. Timeout was called. A real investment here. Let's see how much they can get out of this AWP, and it will be starting over towards mid. -o. Is it a run boost? It could be the run boost up ledge. It is. Oh, this is exciting. Afro his aggression. In the mix. No boost available. Oh, oh but no shot hit. He is in trouble now. Yeah. Oh, Hobbit should have him. Sprays to 50. Nade is shy. But they do at least manage to escort that AWP out. You'd like to just go B now, have. wouldn't you? Do a yeah. bit of a B execute. You can... Well, you should have been able to get inside. He's rotated here in time. Whoa, Afro, what have you got for us? A glass cannon. Flashed off. This is a diligent Cloud9. Try and get out of here now if you can, Afro. You'd think so. I mean, one more pot shot in the smoke and he's out. Okay. And now it is protect the VIP, right? Lost bonus going into the next 2400. Really needs to retain this AWP if he wants to make sure he can wield it into that next round of play. Now, if Cloud9 are aware of that, they might want to throw a body or two at this, but you don't want to give an AK over towards these pistols. And speaking of pistols, there's a Mezzi just around the corner here for Perfecto. How far is he going to push the issue here? Just going to try and back off here. Perfecto might get away with nothing done. Pushing short, caught out. First kill comes through, and yeah, Crims. Consolation prize, isn't it? Taps the bomb. How's the kit? Pretty damn close. I like it. Just on the off chance that someone kind of panics and don't, you know gets caught by the radius, I can see how it's a play. Yeah, well, he uh, gave it his best shot, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. What do we do if we don't try? Wow, a lovely lilac, Perfecto's mouse there. That's uh, that's a unique color on the mouse pad. Another time out here, Fnatic with their first. Keita on the microphone. Yeah, I was trying to see who was doing all the talking there. Have to wait and see what they prioritize here, right? With the mid defense, they've been doing that divider smoke than the mollies either side. So you are going to need at least two Molotovs to try and get that mid hold, but well, they have just been able to afford that. So dropping those across to the uh, correct individuals. Mid smoke lined up from Buster here for red. So insta window removed. I want to try and do something a bit poppier now. Do a bit of a pace change, do something a bit more set. Hobbit selling what is standard in towards middle and they're setting up this execute towards B. 
Yeah, to get through Mezzi if they want to have the two prongs to this assault. Roy in support as well. Shiro lining up for the util. Smokes will be sailing through. Smokes up for now. Are they blocking cave? Looks like they want to smoke long here. Here's the go. Dexter readies himself for battle. Rejig of the setup as well. Roy, Dexter, Mezzi, all present. Afro catches mid. And Roy, Molotov down low. That's a big spray from Dexter onto Perfecto. Into the site, looking for the plant. Mezzi knows the lineup does. Managed to deter oh. and adjust into Buster. Oh, but from oh. behind, he's ready for everything. Mezzi delivers individually. Three to five, the scoreline. And a gift for Fnatic. Stops Clyde Cloud9 from finding a third consecutive round here. And for their third in total, this is the third map as well. Yeah, really well done here. Afro just catching Hobbit, trying to squeak across middle, and this is great for Mezzi, isn't it? The awareness to worry about the cave position that Tronic comes through, gets his head ripped off the shoulders, and Crims finishes off Shiro here. So he went for something a little bit more direct towards that B-bomb site, Cloud9. Now they just left with the AK for Shiro, the rest with some pistol upgrades here. More pressure towards mid, they're more than happy to go with the Extinguish, just to keep Roy and Crims on their toes. This new look electronic, he's got a Glock and a full belt of util. They are going to try towards A, but it's not off the rip, so out they come a little bit late. He wants to punish Crims, and Crims will have a nice angle to play around. Now, they have boosted Shiro up, which can lead to an uncomfortable duel here for Crims if he does leap through. The Shadow, the Shadow, Crims knows. He knows what's up. Electronic to bait, but Crims is ready to adjust or fall out. That's what he was waiting oh! for. Roy's gone. Shiro nails it. Great one back, but still that rifle in play, and that bomb now down. Mezzi coming through Donut late. Dexter, he's oh, going to go down. No. Shiro's doing it all on the hero AK. What a call. What a play. Afro one, trade come through. Perfecto clean to the head. It's on to Mezzi. A frustrating round to lose. Oh, oh no. Oh, he thought he had it. He thought he'd isolated the one on one. Didn't quite finish. Onto Hobbit, and that is one way to steal a sixth round. Yeah, slashes of frustration right there from Mezzi. Get that kill. Probably has enough time to try and make that one happen. Yeah, Perfecto had no armor either. Hobbit even on the oh. hunt here. And, oh, Mezzi. Jeez, <laughs> shake rather and rolled right now. Just has to tuck tail and hope that he gets to hold on to the goods, and he will. Okay, well, just as it looked like Fnatic were trying to find a footing on this CT half. That happens. Whoa. Jeez. Tech 9 drive by there. Second timeout call for Fnatic here. Yeah. Oof. That one is going to leave a bit of mental residue would, for poor Mezzi. I would have said that, but I don't know if Mezzi's the kind of player that that's really going to linger with. All right. Yeah, I think that's the kind of thing he's probably just said, well, that sucks, and he's already talking about the next round. Shit I think happens. It's, yeah, I th just not one of those personalities. doesn't strike me that way, of course. I'm not, you know, intimately familiar with his the like, psychological being, but... Um, yeah, as you said, that CT side was just starting to get rolling. And now a big FU yeah. handed to them by C9. Well, this is where Fnatic, with one save, then four, can lightly invest behind it, get the guns out into the next. But what was meant to be the start of multiple rounds, mm -hmm. now sees Cloud9 likely to get up to seven here. Buster watching A, and there is an A aggress from the likes of Crimson Afro here, who do cop a flash. Oh, this aggressive all peak, not to be. Oh. Mezzi with a save, Dem4, two massive kills. That's what I'm saying, Mezzi. He's not giving up. He's only just begun. And that preserved rifle, it could completely wipe the slate clean if they can respond in kind with a conservative one rifle round. Did they forget he was the cave player or something? Shiro wanted to just go straight. I guess they assumed he might go elsewhere with being the only rifle. Buster onto Roy, though. Concedes one of the two-man advantage they were working with. Mezzi sticking around, oh. and Hobbit can't believe his luck. Shot in the side of the head, trying for wall banks. And, well, short-lived success. Afro's timing here. Buster yeah, acknowledging Buster's it. Looking and finding. So now, I guess, you just chill. Buster goes walkabouts. And lets you know what he finds. Oh, rejoins the pack. Hobbit with the bomb cave side. It does look like Buster's gotten across with Dexter having to acknowledge the potential with this cut of noise. Leaves all onto Crims and it's just the Desert Eagle. $700 versus the thousands now encroaching onto his bomb site. Yeah, this stuff should be a mechanical masterpiece here. Oh, no absence of mechanics for Crims. 
Looked away. Spotted out. And Hobbit, good for it. As Cloud9 will ascend to a seventh on this T side. It's really nice. To, like I, I don't know what they're saying, but you can hear commanding voices in different situations yes. for Cloud9. Like Hobbit just there was very vocal about how they were going to enter in towards that site. Like I said, I don't know exactly what he's saying, but uh, it sounds like he is organizing the squad as bust up. Gets it done against Dexter. No dramas whatsoever. AWP retained and a round that started for two kills with Mezzi, almost putting them up uh, to steal one away here. Uh, Why did it's? It sounded like he said rush B, rush B, rush B, rush B. Yeah, but why would he be saying that with such vigor at 15 seconds on strat time? Well, unless it's like land strats, you know, you go, hey guys, let's go B, and then you go, guys, let's go A. Well, I think uh, <laughs> they're definitely going B here. Mac 10 leading the race here. What Q did pace they change, get? Pace Look change. at them charging in. And already met by Mezzi. Another, this time from Dexter, despite the flashes, the util. It's handled by Fnatic, and it's Dexter who racks up another. Finally, Shiro finds something back. But this one falls flat. Well, there was conviction behind the call, and everybody followed through. It's a heads up counter strike here. Fnatic hit the necessary shots with the icon show and flashed. You win that, you win this B rush, you you win the half ridiculously, right? Yeah. Like you just waltz in the pace change. It's such a shift. And now they still have two players to deal with on this site, Mezzi and Crims. But it didn't quite have. Ooh, hold on. Hold on. Shiro and Electronic shaping up a 2v4. Afro and Roy didn't think they'd be necessary. Well, thankfully, Afro contributes heavily. 8 HP though. Roy, healthiest member of the bunch. Electronic, 10 HP. He's isolated this dual afro. When do you move? Now, and into Electronic's warm embrace. It's Electronic picks up. Oh, too much on the angle, and Roy will collect. I think he thought he had a moment longer there to deploy the incendiary. It could have been a round winning incendiary upon picking it up, but perhaps just overcooking the pooch, as the saying doesn't go. It's hard to celebrate that if you're Fnatic, right? I know it's another round, but uh, again, you lose so many people. You've got Mezzi with 3.8, Crims with 3.5. So the issue with only one player staying alive, there will be emissions, and they've made sure the AWP was not in a position of retention. So great job for Shiro and Electronic to get the bomb down and make this a costly round. They've set themselves up to still be able to break Fnatic into the next. A decent attempt. They weren't even, they didn't even get any space, right? They, they weren't even up the ramp. They just had to waltz in later. So it wasn't like they were left in like a mid-round position where they were in a skirmish. They had to brute force their way in. So some good shots. Cloud9 are going to call their second time out now. Kruv, let him get away with that B-Rush call. And uh, maybe now he wants them to change back to that default spread. Maybe Buster in A main, Hobbit middle, Windows smoke. Three players taking that B-Lane control. Of everything they need and more yet again and the same not to be said for Fnatic. One kit, an MP9 for Crims, the rest with rifles, but definitely no Afro AWP. And we spoke about the importance of one of his info moves off the back of that earlier in this half. Hobbit and Electronic close towards mid, Buster with A main. So yeah, this is it. Electronic roams around a bit more. He can help whichever group of players across the server he feels necessary. Wow, Mezzi, what is this so brazen about it? A gap from Hobbit to confirm that B lane is occupied by the CTs and a smoke to confirm it. This is a scary position for Dexter and Mezzi now, but they've lost mid. Oh, very, very scary for Dexter. He's been brought low. And his only options ramp to escape. Oh, thank God they can get out here because, yeah, that looked dicey. Oh, Mezzi! Handed his ass by Shiro through the smoke. Okay, you can't get out. Dex is the low one. Yeah, that's This one could, really sucks now for Fnatic. It gets worse, Chad, as well. Look at this crunch into Roy and Afro. Bails himself out of trouble. They both strike and both successful. They are very low. Molly could be perfect. Roy tries to take the chance. Whoa. He gets away with it. And Crims has already caught Buster towards a main. They're all low. Wait, Dexter. Can't believe he's got another there. That's a lovely find considering his HP. Perfecto's going to win this. The he's going to win this. Okay, this is going to be a one hell of a 1v4. A quick find in the first two. Faking out. Oh, he has no idea. Yeah, Afro should be able to spank his bottom. And Fnatic will take five. Wow.
That's a recovery. You felt like after the the way in which that went down, this very quick uh, access into B lane from Fnatic, information flowing thanks to Hobbit, but everyone winning their duels. Roy and Afro in particular going to be uh, happy with the way that one went down. Yeah, yeah, so they, they both were ahead of that molly, right, ready for the fight. So you're kind of after that molly coming out with the peak to check the other angles, but not expecting two players coming your way. Perfecto getting two kills quickly from just that cave, cave precipice, but uh, you're not ready for the swiftness of Afro there. All right, well. Fnatic, what's the look now? It's the window from Perfecto here. It looks like it's a mid-go. Look at all these bodies again. They're not going to go out the gate initially. Molly to deny the heaven jump up. Lots of util invested into this one. They've lost middle here. There's no B lane presence at all. It's kind of weird not to have anybody spamming or just sitting doors in case of an info play or push. Dexter and Mezzi aren't going to hear anything. They're not going to be pressured whatsoever. Look at Cloud9. This is strange. It just... Essentially, all five players just sitting outside A main in middle. Yeah. It is a bit too quiet on B, is it not? It's quiet everywhere right now. So in the dark, our Fnatic, but they're going to walk into this AWP. Afro, poised and ready to receive. And that's the freest frag of the lot. Into Hobbit, ready to re-strafe in. He wants more. Re-clearing. Buster's overextended here. Afro's drawn the line in the sand. You will not pass this point. Perfecto boosted up, though. Buster should have been a dead man. Afro's been great at those shots until that one. Yeah, that's a bit of a blemish. No problem for Fnatic. They spot out for the last. It's Shiro with the bomb on main, and Buster's bleeding after his fight with Mezzi elsewhere. They could perhaps pivot. It's forced a rotation under the assumption that, yeah, the bomb's going to be going towards B. And that's the cue from Shiro. Kirim stays aware. An astute position to ensure a one round game at the end of this round. Yeah, we'll call this one six. And that fake meant nothing, right? Afro's not in a traditional AWP or rotated position, right? He's not like throwing the nades and then sitting in the back lines and the A smokes come out. No, he's CT now and smoked off after transition to Temple. Nope. Uh, I'm standing in the middle of mid, posted up on elbow. And if you don't flash, you're definitely dead. They weren't expecting that one, Cloud9, at all. That fake didn't need to bite on it, especially with two rifles over towards the site and Afro posted so deep. So great work from the French Orpa. Mm. It is definitely... Um not a one-voice team. No, they're, they're doing this as a unit, right? Working yeah. out who can do what. Like democratically. Oh, wow. Check it out. Hobbit straight through mid on that Mac 10. It's Crims that will find the equivalent. Trades out. Roy watching from the sidelines alongside Hobbit. Four on four. This is aggressive. Mezzi fancies his chances. Didn't catch a glimpse of anything, but it is occupied. It's Electronic and Shiro. Working towards this cave position. Mezzi times the smoke well. Electronic with the default molly for rat side. And they will push through. Okay, that's going to shave some time on their clears off. They'll have a lot more time to work with now as they already confirmed that cave not occupied now forward here comes the ramp push. Yeah, that's Buster's responsibility. Oh, just as nades. I say that, he's throwing out the nade. That's the Q. Oh, perfecto. Very snappy on the tech nine. And Dexter's aware they could beat the gap through cave. Has to play this power position now. Electronic, he's already across to that tight corner. Going to be overlooked by Dexter here. Oh, perfect. A dream frag delivered to his front door. Electronic takes down Dexter. Crims has to do a lot more now. And strafes through. Shiro, perfect execution from the Cloud9 squad as an eighth round imminent. And they, they just make the best out of that. Is this not the, the second round? Is this not the second round they've won like this? Yeah. There was that Shiro Hero AK round where they went over towards the A side of the map, and now they've done it over towards B again here. This was great from Hobbit to get a kill out that mid smoke, especially considering how much of a nuisance Crimson Roy have been in locking down that side of the map. Afro. Buster tucks down. Will eventually be finished off, but Afro wants to survive and hold on to this here. Going into round 15. Needs something to his name. 
But those are the type of rounds that if Cloud9 are able to continue to produce, right? It wasn't like they did it quickly. It wasn't just an uppercut. Like they were able to slowly whittle away these frags and take key positions, understand where Fnatic would be searching out for info and jewels, and then punish them with something yeah. that doesn't even resemble close to an all-in buy, right? You've got an orb, you've got some lighter investments like these Tech Nines, and if you can make this much out of them, well, you're going to be set for success as we see them get up to eight. They have won the half here. And this one's going the distance here today. On that secondary stream, the opening match between Monty and Gamelin has been over for about an hour. It was a 2-0 affair. <laughs> Let's see how close this one can get. It certainly points towards a Cloud9 ninth. The last time that happened, Matic's still capable of putting up a fight at the minimum. Hobbit does seem at home in middle, doesn't he? It's a peculiar smoke. Yeah, I think there was questions about, you know, some of these positions, if there was a bit of overlap with Electronic and Hobbit and uh, who was going to take what in some roles. Like, But uh, we're getting to see how it works. We even heard from Electronic, they're just going to plug Buster into Axile's positions, even though pound for pound, player for player, it's not the same. As long as he can fill the role, it might be enough here as Roy with the Famous, a massive gap in that red smoke. We've seen that a few times. Mm. Miss thrown out of Cloud9. So you've still got B Buster holding that A lurk. You've got two players through mid with the bomb. Perfecto on his way to join them. So yeah, at the moment, it really hinges on these next engagement through red. Afro's playing the off angle. Roy is also aware and alert. Electronic first duel. Afro, profits, Shiro, trading. Not really a fight for a Famas versus an AWP. Needs to make sure he doesn't drop this bomb here. 29 seconds left on the clock. They need to group up. Crim's coming to search through Donut. They need to push the issue towards A. Dexter around the world may have done this. Deagle doesn't find it. They're still coming. Dexter is coming behind him, sure. But Mezzi and Roy, they have to slow them down. 14 not clear. seconds. 14, 12. They still can plant. Dexter, the unknown entity, going for the safe plant. No time for him to disrupt that. But perhaps the element of surprise Buster's moonwalking into him. There's timing on this. Buster's back is completely turned. And he's going to hold his trigger. Now he strikes. Shiro looking for the trade. Gets the smoke out. Oh, gets the info. He knows what's up. A 10 second diffuse ahead of him. Unless he can find the kit. Flashes through. Ready for the duel. Shiro's ready to stand and bang. A dink exchange. It's nine. Locked in for Cloud9 in this final map. Looking to start the groups of Cologne off with a win. Fnatic. Six to work with as we swap sides.
final half of play in the opening game for Cloud9 and Fnatic. Go in the distance, Vertigo first, and then we find ourselves all the way here in the final half of Ancient. Anubis didn't quite go to plan for Cloud9. Well, probably not uh, too dissatisfied with the nine round haul on their attack. Fnatic, they've got to match that or better on theirs. A lot of nades for Crimson There's Mezzi. Four players B for Cloud9 here. This is wild. Normally you see like heavy mid start, maybe three towards B early. This is four of the CT defense ready to receive. And the confirmation of early aggression. Lots of nades. Perfecto throws a flash for good measure. Oh, and he connects a bullet as well. Will they clear Hobbit? Hidden on the site. Needs to go down. Roy provides lots more bodies. It's really deathmatch here. And it's all Fnatic in the feed. Three in unison. They take the site running into the stack and it still looks practically flawless. Buster closes the gap. Electronic two, Crim should have him and there you have it. Fnatic will take the T-side pistol. Splitting pistols here on map number three. Started uh, with a what ended up being a one-on-one, -on -one. remember Buster? That first half of play had to clutch out two one-on-one -on -one situations that were, I believe, number advantage scenarios in favor of Cloud9 here. But Fnatic get things done and they blow them out of the server. They had the correct stack. That should have been a Cloud9 round to win if you're going to have four players on the site just unable to connect in combination and will now have to stomach a bit of an eco. One flash at the ready Imperfecto's hands. They're behind the red smoke and if they give the go signal, they just drop on out. But looks like we are seeing Fnatic line up for a B pop. And we've been talking about the potency of these type of rounds. In they go, a long smoke. Oof. Uh, um. Not quite a long smoke. But no issues all the same. Roy sweeps two under the rug. Nafro sends Buster into the same domain. Yeah, quick and clean. Not too many casualties whatsoever. Right, they had primarily rifles right there to be able to Give it a crack and holding on to most of that is a real boon here for Fnatic going into round number 18. Now, what is the defensive CT setup for Cloud9 going to look at? Now, coming into this series of the day, I'm not sure what people's expectations were. Cloud9 with a stand in no Axile here. Fnatic looked fantastic during the play ins. Uh, I suppose name value, we would have been leaning towards Cloud9, but they are. Oh, straight into Shiro's all. Fast one. Yeah, Shiro. Puts Mezzi to bed, relocates ahead of the util, but is flattened by Crims. So they are in. Rotates through. Dexter looking to plant. Open sight, tagged up on the spray, but he gets away with it. Fnatic changing the pace on Cloud9 right now. No kit here for this retake. So Cloud9, you have to make decisions to make them now. Electronic wants to get into the fight and takes down Roy. A chance now. Dexter remain. He'll be late. Afro should have Perfecto oh, tags him up what? through the corner of the box. And now, going to make the same mistake again. With Hobbit gone, Buster holding. That is not going to work out well. An Electronic Limited, he does do damage. They're on the defuser, 10 second defuse. They cannot be disrupted. And Fnatic switching up the pace and picking up the W. 9-9. Nine, nine. Nine. Jame calculations. Of course. Okay. Well, yeah. Of course. All down to the tiniest of details right there. But you yeah, check that out. It's two B plays, pistol, the follow up, and then straight in towards an A go here. Shiro gets the opener. Then you see that donut smoke. It was a, one of these ones that protrudes a little bit more out towards the site. And in the gray screen, Shiro gets taken down. So swarmed on the site, Cloud9. Yet to find a round here on their CT half. And again, heavy towards A. So. Hubbard, Perfecto, Buster, making sure they can't get away with just another quick one. Taking this early space, Fnatic do have mid control by virtue of Mezzi and Crims. Next to holding off towards A main, Roy Cave and Afro with the AWP just patrolling the B ramp push. A well placed nade as Shiro. Might be regretting this one, it's getting awfully hot in the cave. Nicely handled by Roy as well. Next up, confirms that A-Main was pushed, and it's also a good indicator as to the Cloud9 respecting the economical. Yeah, I've spoken to Dexter about this map a bit in the past. In passing, I feel 
Like, you know, he's the type of guy who's on top of the way it should be approached. So I'm interested to see their T half here is Hobbit. It's nice one in a bit. Great weapon for that particular fight. And that's the thing, at maybe different levels of Counter-Strike, you'd see it used a lot more. Mm. But at uh, the top tier, it's more often than not, you're going to get one and get traded immediately. But at, like in matchmaking, maybe you get a kill and you find yourself a gun straight away because you're not expecting to get traded so quickly. People don't have the uh, same proficiency in that department, that's for sure. I still want the kill reward back to 300. Yeah. Like, I don't know if we can justify a $100 kill reward anymore. I can't believe it. You know, we've had all these like opportunities where Valve goes, so anything, uh, anything in particular? You've been thinking about them. At not one point have we said the CZ oh, I, me I mentioned it. I mentioned just, it. I just. I guess it's not a big deal. Like, like oh, well, you know. Well, yeah, I guess what they'll say is people are still using it. Well, they, I, I think you but know. It, it made sense at the time. Sorry yeah. to talk over you. No. It's just like you know. It was it, overpowered. It back was then. overpowered. But then it uh, changed it. That's oh close, but no cigar. Yeah, not going to get any of these guns. So a couple of nice kills, but no salvaged AK there. Unfortunate. Okay, Cloud9, second gun round. Second attempt. You can see how much that Molotov was obscuring Roy's view. So he's getting away with that one as the bullets were coming through. Nice angle adopted by Afro. So, big round ahead of us. Two orbs in play, Shiro and Afro with their signature weapons. And Krim through the flames. He thrives, he charges, he sprays. And with Mezzi's help, mid is down. Open for business is A. It's only Perfecto here. Rotation through, but they're already testing him. Krim's already on the site. Spotted out now. Perfecto delivers an equalizing double. Burnt out. Goes wide. 30 HP. The bomb is on its way. Rotation through. Dexter needs to molly him now or never. Perfecto, what are you doing? He's got no hope on the Deagle, but forced into the fight nonetheless. Roy has got B they just completely. Need, yeah, they need to just pause. I don't even know if they should go back to B. Allow Roy to work, see what he can find. This is the thing. Hobbit is aware that this rotation point back, if you come through middle, you're going to be coming straight into a rifle here. It's all going to come down to timing, and Shiro's here as well. Oh, this is weird now. This is the problem. If your player has this much space and you're rotating through the darkness, the unknown, like I'm saying, allow Roy to work. You know that you've drawn this full rotation. You get two kills out mid in the opener. You deal with the A anchor. Look and Hobbit. now you're rotating all the way back. This is very dicey for Fnatic now. Like, it really hinges on Afro and Dexter's jiggle awareness of the clears. For How this. diligent are they going to be? I don't know if either of them are going to be looking. Let's see. They're using utility. Oh, wow. The smoke to facilitate. And Hobbit caught on the crawl. Dexter is switched on, and so are Fnatic. Okay, well, understood what they were up against Perfectly. there, right? Perfectly. You know, plenty of other teams that are around that corner, not willing to use that util. Didn't want to give up the fact they were trying to contact in towards that site, but understood when their go needed to be. And that was handled there, so... The pre they're doing a double pre-fist bump. I think they were really satisfied that someone alerted them to that idea. Yeah, that was well done there, so another Fnatic round and <laughs> Cloud9 yet to get on the board here on this CT campaign. We're talking five consecutive rounds right now. Sure, Shiro gets to save on the AWP. Sure, the max loss bonus is in play. But Fnatic, I'm not going to say they're looking polished, but they're looking like a team who are communicating well, playing off of each other. The devil is in the details okay. here. How about not polished, but how about valid? Yeah, for sure. You Fnatic can't take a valid right now. This is the thing, as I mentioned earlier, that this is not one of the most exciting teams that you're looking at when you, you come out of the roster change season. And hey, they got who they could. Right. But this this isn't a Cloud9 roster change. It's not Flames added to Vitality, right? This is Fnatic bringing in a French Orpa and Dexter, an in game leader who had mixed bags of success over there in Mouse. So this is. Uh, Quite a disruptive looking Fnatic, and in the early stages here, the way that they did it was through pace. A B hit, a B hit, and an A go. And now they went out a very tidy mid round, which was out the gates with a fast mid fight. Third tactical timeout call for Cloud9. Groove, the coach, on the mic. There's not enough money here to get a full buy behind the saved AWP, but could definitely be some 5 7, some armor, MP9s. But it's like all of the teams you're hearing there as well from the Fnatic side. Mezzi doing a bit of talking mm -hmm. there in that round. So uh, in the early stages of these new rosters, everybody willing to contribute. Team effort. I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't have to be some sort of dictatorship. 
Double mid again. B lane. Uh, yeah, that, that. Pressured a lot. Cold clear now. Fnatic aren't just going to run willy-nilly in towards the A site just yet. Shiro's going to be here with the AWP. Wow. Yeah, Cloud9. They're going to be in the right place quite quickly. I mean, Shiro's options limited by the flames, but not completely impossible for him to contribute. Smokes are fading. This is a problem. Electronic nearly takes them both down. Crims. Very impressive reaction from him. He gets off of the plant and ooh, Afro lives to fight another day. Shiro's AWP is found. Just one whistling past the hip and Afro will finish the job onto Shiro. So taking away the AWP as well. This sets Fnatic up for a bit of a slam dunk. 12 secure. And Cloud9, they were in the right place, just unable to handle it. You thought with Electronic finding the first frag there. But Crims, the premonition to get off the bomb, aware that these players are good enough that they will probably find him in the smoke. And after they tagged him up, he just returns the fire, follows the tracer fire. Watch this, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, see, it's just, he got a glimpse. Just enough to work with, gets off the bomb. And it, had he not, could have felt like a different round. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, and this is another dicey situation, considering the circumstances. But Cloud9, how are you going to stop this? Oh, look at this, a two-man A push, Buster and Shiro. Aggressive now. Afro. Spotted. Dexter swinging. Buster delivers one. That Shiro Orb is primed and ready. You'd be expecting this, though. It's a pretty common setup. Maybe not. Hmm, peut-être non. Roy didn't see Electronic there. Both just on the other side of these smokes here. Electronic aware that this is a possibility. Just looking for the top of the cap over the ledge as Crims. And Mezzi have now rejoined the pack over towards B. Perfecto in place at time, and looks like they're just going to contact up here, keeping things quiet. Again, though, Cloud9's finger is on the pulse firmly. They know what's up. It's going to come down to some individual brilliance. And it's Electronic 1. Perfecto. Spotted out, cleared out. Nice crossfires. Profitable for Cloud9 as they look to secure double digits and make this just a two-round game. Mezzi, he's sharp. He's always threatening. And Hobbit's taking a real gamble here. Nice work from Hobbit. Some initiative, some proactivity, and it does translate before Mezzi's clutch can manifest. Two-round game. Yeah, it might feel like a finally moment for Cloud9 mm. here. How many has that been on for Fnatic? Wow. Yeah, the entire half, so six on the trot from that pistol. I'm surprised they, they weren't prepared for that. If your rifler pushes up that right side especially, right, you, you tend to have the AWP cover the left. Rifler pushes up the right there, so... Afro straight into the jaws of Shiro there. Perfect only has an MP9 here. So let's see. Fnatic, they can really rock the boat. Lots so of mid investment of the util here. And Mezzi going to go through the flames upon the fade. Afro was flashing for them. Shiro's posted up and oh, actually doesn't kill Mezzi. Mezzi's allowed to find Electronic. A miss by oh. Shiro and Mezzi what? catches a head. What did he see? Just the very tip, the quiff. On Hobbit. Look at the aggression Perfect. from Afro. Look at the frag he posted. Takes down Shiro at 1 minute 16. It's just Buster here in Donut. In Perfe CT. Yeah, Perfecto's completely cut off from this. They only really have to worry about this Donut position. You know, they can try and fortify, get in towards Temple, but Perfecto slinking closer. Might go over. Look, Afro, barrel spotted, but Crims is here, the contingency. Wow, the jump, he gets no! the info and Perfecto hits the nose go. A one on two. He has to win it. His teammates furious at themselves and it's come down to this. Mezzi swings out, great headshot, but oh! it's Perfecto to nail it. And that one is a tilter, Cloud9 gifted around. Oh, this has happened so much throughout this series. These number disadvantage rounds are being stolen away, but this one, this one felt like a certainty. They had everything they needed and more. It was a it was Perfecto with an MP9. It was nothing. The Afro kill, the, the Afro kill, sure, but you, you feel like Crims has him every day this of the week there. This is how it there. started, Chad. Check this one out onto Hobbit. So so Mezzi with the fade oh. back in the smoke. I don't know. We, we don't we see did, anything so you there. You did. You saw a two pixels before he went into the smoke. Oh, and that, that shot. No scope. Take the last one as well. I reckon that's nuts too. Oh. <laughs> Blo bloody hell. Perfecto the orpa. Here it is again. Look, look, ready? Watch this. Bang. Oh my god. Two, two or three frames of a head, a tip of a head. That, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, right? But then you want cut to Hobbit as Perfecto clutches up. I bet it's a very different story. Whew.
How did they get away with that? It was just Buster and Donut. He got a kill during all of that mess. Afro, I think Afro's going to be mad as hell because he saw he even glanced at it. He yeah. Was like, it. He was like, no, I don't need to clear that. No, 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 no. Oh, dear. That could really shift the momentum here. Still subbing out mid here. Electronic with the Famous has a gap to work with. And that's something that Mezzi's not aware of. It's a big shot in the last bit. Electronic will remove Mezzi and Crims immediately in the AWP. It's activated now on Shiro. Problematic. Almost no way for Dexter and Afro to make a round out of this. Board plant. up through the board, sure, bombed down, but Dexter needs to reload as well. Oops, team flash, five on, essentially one. Dexter makes it work with five HP, but that's just Shiro. You still have four up against you, and from every single angle, they will catch him. Okay, well, three kills in that round for Electronic there. And you see the way that there was the gaps in the smoke made it quite easy for him to be able to get those necessary frags. But Dis this is tied up now, 12-12. Distinct lack of timeouts throughout this game uh, from both sides, I'd argue. I don't know how many, if any, we've had. I think, actually, Fnatic may have used all of those. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I think, okay, I think we, they just burnt one in the last round as well. So I, I didn't get to see the total that we're up to, but there's a few of them using that first half as well. Yeah, okay, just a bit of a brain toot there. Yeah, that last round would have been a bit of a tilt to, to take a moment That's to have I a conversation. About, yeah, but it seems like it's uh, it's moving fast and it's shifting very quickly, shifting in favor of Cloud9. It's been up for debate throughout this series. And with the three-man walk with armor and side arms, they want to kick up a fuss and clear out Cave. That's a gift. Roy has taken down Hobbit. And that might lead to a rejigging of the defense. Take a look at this. The observers are drawing our attention to They've the evacuated reaction. Completely, completely <laughs> open. Bomb site, Chad. This could be Fnatic's way back in. If the AWP was there, at least they could leave that in CT spawn. But here now, Afro boosted up. And, well, no, Afro has 22 kills here. And now that they've cleared out towards B, Electronic back in cave, they are rotating over. Fnatic, this hesitation, it's going to cost them here. They've taken so long. They wanted to make sure the util was down. They don't know what was occupied, of course. But now that plant is going to be a little bit more contested. Oh, good shots. Wow, Crims, those shots into the smoke confirmed. This body's close. He has the donut side, but Cloud9 have the weapons. Mezzi still fighting for Donut, spotting out towards the Temple for Aggress. Mezzi's Deagle, good. Buster, two on the retake out of Temple. Shiro's up onto Crims, and now Fnatic really running out of hopes. Staring at a smoke, and it does extinguish the flames, and not right for the smoke to fuse. It's going to be recovered by C9. Ooh, that info they got over towards Cave coming just in the nick of time, right? And obviously, Fnatic had no idea that that site was completely open, waiting for that Q. Waiting for Roy to get back a little bit closer here, but another opportunity that they probably feel like they had a decent shot in. We know that the A bomb site is quite difficult to hold, especially in that post plant scenario. But a great shot from Mezzi, a good opener from Roy, but not enough to post around on the board. Now, it was this lighter investment. They were biding their time to get the guns out now. Triple kill out of Buster as well. So he's uh, he's done a whole lot in an impactful round. And talking of timeouts, yeah, Cloud9 going to be burning their last. In the last couple of orders there from Groove. We are into freeze time now. And Fnatic, they know that this game is not over with this streak that Cloud9 have been able to obtain here. These have been scenarios that they know they could have won. It's only four consecutive, the only four rounds they've got so far on this CT half. Their loss bonus, 1,400. Their bank, not particularly built here. Fnatic have them teetering. Rims, tagged by the nade, but pushing through. He has Mezzi in support. Electronic spam does indicate that they have access to mid, and it's unoccupied. Shiro versus Afro. Bait from Perfecto. Jumping for answers long side. Hobby. Triple boost. You never see this. this, this is really you never, crazy. you never see this. This is like a blue moon rarity. And they're going to boost in. Looking for him. <gasps> and they nail Shiro. Unbelievable scenes at the business end of a best of three. You never see that.
you wouldn't go for oh it again. Oh my god, this that is nuts. That is absurd. Fnatic are pushing the envelope, are pushing the limits of what you can pull off, re-establishing the boost for Info, and Perfecto... He might get him. He might. As he goes... They can wait. Edge is wider and wider behind the smoke for a second longer, but they can wait. And they will slip off Hobbit Audible now. Yeah, look, the information's flowing. That's surely enough from Fnatic now. They could still pivot Donut to A. They do not have to commit towards this B bomb site right now, but 30 seconds, the call is going to have to be made. You two lined up. It's going to be a brawl on this B site. This is going to be hectic. Hobbit responsible for ramp site. Roy and Crim surging into it. Oh no, a team flash. Dexter blinds up Mezzi, and it's only one for Fnatic on the way in. These defenders are comfortable, and all of those heroic openings are triple boost B lane onto Shiro, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, look, it's very rare to see it come into play. We've seen people put it on Reddit. It's definitely been discussed, but you don't see it come out too often. So a little pocket pick quite literally, and they can't get the job done. Faffed around with the second boost for way too long. And look at this little shark in the water. He's head over the fence. Hello, Shiro. You're not going to catch this one. But that is the type of round. Fnatic getting the opener and not being able to punish. They knew it was the AWP of Shiro that they took down. It was just took them way too long to get themselves organized for the finish. It was a great opener and a great way to get yourself into a round, but it wasn't enough. Stark contrast in the demeanor. Crimson has a good mid-spawn, and we've seen him go for this Tetris control an awful lot here, so... Curious to see if they want to send him out mid one more time. Dexter's got the instant window lined up. He's got the spawn. Afro's got the smoke. And Fnatic need a round. Electronic to spam. Shiro to receive. Much quicker scaling here. Very telling of an A split right now. Dexter. You chill at the ready. Afro and Roy behind that main smoke. Shiro also covering off towards the donut here. Electronic Perfecto seems to be drawn to this red position as Hobbit left alone over towards B. Oh, Buster, perfect. On this A anchor position, he's doing what Axar would. He's fragging up, he's converting, he's defending. Here's Bombsite. Good back from Dexter. Mezzi very low. Hobbit going looking and it should. Oh! oh! Isn't a free kill! Mezzi quick adjustment into the head of Hobbit. He knows he's got a gap and he is just taking every advantage he thinks he can get away with. Up to cave and nothing audible just yet. Well, Perfecto, nothing to report. Now we had this conversation before about trying to rotate like this late. Now Mezzi making sure that nobody could push in towards the side. Dexter, is he going to come through the cave position as well? Afro disconnected. In middle right now. 30 seconds. Does Messi go forward here and take the risk to find anybody on the site? 25, Dexter still considering the flank as a possibility. Afro now the feeler. Trying to make some noise, trying to find that fight. He's going to walk into the AWP of Shiro. He's been spotted. He's just going to get baited, just going to get toyed with it. Afro even gets the better of him. Perfect of activating though. And the bomb, Dexter has to take the fight. He had to win that one. The whole round hinged on it. We down to the finest of margins. I can't believe Afro toying with him, considering the amount of time on the I clock. He it. knows he has a one on one, knows he gets to play against the other Orker and bait him into yeah, it. Letting Afro go first in the off chance that you they had to. Up. Yeah, yeah, you had really to. Really cool. I, I guess there was there was no way back. You needed Afro to be able to draw something, force a fight, and yo, oh, you could see that yeah, electronics dude, yeah, reaction. Right. Dexter's phase two, he knows there was 12 seconds left, and Afro was not going to be planting that bomb or finding Perfecto. Oh dear, Cloud9 oh, in Afro. trouble. They force Afro. in. Another pick. What another an Afro AWP kill. What a time to come alive. They have to convert this one, Chad. This is it. Lined up, laid up for a tied game. And an intense third map between these two. Hobbit has to support. Perfect. Needs another. He does. And it looks like Crims has gotten away. Nine bullets in the fam and he's bringing the fight. That's how much he needs this. Crims su supporting and the hunt shuts down. Hobbit looks good for Fnatic. The others who have to save. It's only 1900 loss into the next. This shove, this, this force by in. You can understand why Cloud9 had to go for it, why they went for it. But right now, Shiro and Electronic, they have absolutely no options here. They cannot risk this round. 
They will have to concede 14 to Fnatic now in this 2 on 4 disadvantage situation. And Fnatic, even though they're about to win this one, the loss bonus will tick down one more, but... They're going to be feeling pretty comfy if they can keep four players alive. They're going to have enough for a residual buy into the next, which means going for 15. We're going to have all the questions of Cloud9. What are you opting for? You have this AWP, you have this M4. If you don't force buy behind it, you, you will not have an AWP in the last round of play. Unless Shiro can save again, right? He has to do another minute and 55 seconds of just not dying. The finances are just not going to be there. What a pivot point. What a your arm wrestle this matchup has been. Taking map choices off one another, but finally... Fnatic, they are the ones in the power position. They're not the ones who are struggling as far as the cash is concerned. That's all in the Cloud9 conversation. Remember, they're out of timeouts, Cloud9. And that was an Afro opener, right? He's been having a fantastic map here. The French import AWP at 25 kills, top of the server. Five higher than anybody else. You got Perfecto, Shiro, 20 apiece. Crimson, Mezzi can say the same. But Afro's impact. Your piece singing. Yeah, that was Afro's uh, fifth opening duel. They've taken a save here. They well, haven't invested behind these saved rifles, and the orbs oh. already landed. Brutality. Oh, no. Shiro connecting. Electronic building a 15th round out of this one with limited resources. This has been the bane of Fnatic's game. Oh, a missed shot from Shiro. Ties us right back up. Full rotation. Buster Electronic cheating over. Understandable. There's a weapon to be retrieved. It's their best hope. An AWP, who's up for it? They want to fight. Roy, they're pushing. They're retrieving. Spotted, executed. Roy will build another, but the AWP has fallen into Buster's hands, and now he can perhaps equalize. Not from behind, it's Mezzi. And so, with one frag in it, a recovered round out of Fnatic. This is the tipping point. Oh, oh Mezzi, instantaneous on the headshot. And match point, Fnatic. Wow. I uh, hope Fnatic have been keeping tabs of the economy right here. I said Shiro would not have an AWP. He gets a kill in that round, and he just has enough money to buy glass cannon orb if he wants. He can quite truly... Oh, he hasn't gone for it. Shiro's gone for M4. M4 armor, you two. There's not going to be a kit here for Cloud9. Round 30, Fnatic. You've got all the advantages in the world that you could hope for here. This is the best moment to close. Oh, they're going for something quick, both of them. With so much at stake. They're still trying to fight mid. Electronic heard you, fragged you, traded. No one's seen anyone, but it's a four on four and it's still going down. Shiro repelled by the flash and Mezzi has mid for a moment, that is. Buster and Roy having a bit of a battle here on A. Mezzi caught by Shiro. Great angle and profitable. Buster to be run down. They swing through. Bomb lost. Cloud9 taking us the distance as overtime looms. And Afro, the last of full OT inseparable in regulation. Yeah, this is what this game deserves. It's been back and forth, some great moments from both of these teams here, and neither team willing to give up in the opening stage of the group stage. It is going the distance. It has definitely had some elements of speed, but big streaks from either team here to take us to overtime, and Cloud9, just as it looks like they were broken, just look, as it looked like the chips were down, they're able to pull it out. We will get into... Round one, OT1, first to 19, 12,500. Fnatic continuing on this T campaign. Flashes are ready from Dexter, out mid once more. Crimson to fight, the flashes are good. Crimson's got the Ob now, but Buster, he's got the trades. Wow. Mezzi and Crimson down to Buster. He is having a great third map, isn't he? Yeah, 23. 23, but still above 20 in regulation. Nice contributions. And Shiro not falling foul to the jiggle. Catches Roy. Molotov forces him forward. He is committed to this fight now. And the barrel bait swing through. Ready for Dexter. Shiro not falling for any of your silly tricks. Whoa, Afro, that is ridiculous to start. A quick scope. In an impossible clutch, eats the flash. Hobbit goes wide, and Cloud9 will take the first of overtime. And still keeping smiles on their face. You know, this is the Cloud9 roster where we look at the old team and you start to get very stressed, look very worried. Only one player traditionally keeping the energy up, which would be Nafany, but from what we've seen today, it feels like it's a whole team effort. A good round here to change the flow of conversation. Crims with the success out mid, but fortified heavily. Cloud9 with a two-man mid defense, and great work. Electronic with the org again. Interesting to see him 
Building this bad boy, we saw it on Vertigo as well to great success. A bridge of smokes does not exist. But Roy, he's come out the ledge and he's oh. found another mid. It's Fanatics for now. And Buster consistently there to at least safeguard the trade. Again. Afro v Shiro? Not an angle that Afro is probably going to be pre-aiming. Oh. I told a lie. Wow, he is having a fantastic game here, Aurelien. Dead. Three on three. Buster so focused on middle, and understandably so. It's been constantly occupied, and it still is. They boost again here, I think. Just try and get Mezzi up to a power position. Gives him the ability to try and clear up towards the tall box. Better angles to clear out with. Crims. He has plenty of time to work with here, but Buster on the jiggle is his biggest problem. This information is something he... Oh, what did Buster see? Nothing yet, but they're focused towards A. Oh, Messi again with these deletions. Hobbit's here quick. And Hobbit could deny. Messi this time unable to find the head. What you've got, Dexter. Back. Perfecto caught by Crims. And it's Dexter again. Whew, to secure a 16th for Fnatic, an immediate response. Down to the wire, down to the nitty gritty. Great shot by Mezzi. Fantastic look right. from Crims. Uh, you know, they, they, they have a lot of trust in each other, right? They're not just grouping up and going, oh, well, we have to do this as a unit. They're giving each other their space and understanding they can hit these shots. So Crims coming out mid here. We had Roy off the top ledge. This is a really good shot from Afro and a head-to-head. -head. You don't see that every day of the week. Hobbit draws one back shot, but this is the shot. Bang. Um. Yeah. Just got a glimpse, didn't uh, admin, he? Admin, check him PC. Electronic this time jumping up is going to catch Ooh. Roy off guard, but can't finish his meal. He thought he knew it. He thought he'd solved it. And just like that, three frags come through. Hobbit caught on the spray through the boards. Two T rounds loom. Crims is dead. Correct. Shira makes With it With the so. here. He is ahead of the util. Turns the flash. Smoke as well. They're throwing everything for the kitchen sink. And there it is, Afro. Takes him down, Fnatic to leave with two T rounds. Par for the course, some could argue. But if we return to Cloud9's T Hall, remember two of the key rounds they won were with lighter investments. As we do see Perfecto attempt this clutch, if he grabs one more, we could be interested. But Afro will finish him off. And yeah, as you mentioned, two on that T-half. Now, re return to Cloud9's T-half. They had like that round where Electronic scaled up close cave with the Tech-9 and didn't get cleared, right? And he gets that free yeah. kill and they finish over towards B and they had one earlier in the game as well, over towards A. So we'll see this from Roy. Now, just to remind you, in the previous round, Roy killed Electronic with a fast ledge push. This round, Electronics mantling up to try and intercept that. And whilst being caught out, Roy still hits the shot necessary. So those two rounds back to back might have shaken Electronic. A full team effort in terms of Fnatic's individuals contributing. Take a look at the kill spread. Similar scenes actually for Cloud9. Oh and another Afro opening. That's a dirty 30 and Buster unable to do anything about it. Yeah, he's unbridled, isn't he? Afro's allowed to go for whatever peaks he wants and more, it feels like. Whatever he feels, whatever he wants. Yeah, question marks around uh, Dex's in-game leading with Orpers. You've got the A-Court debacle, the Torsi should, the situation, or situation. <laughs> yeah. And now you've got Afro delivering. Oh, this flash. Oh, brutal. Money, you know. He smoked off now. Orp noted mid. Intentions behind the electronic arrival. Dump some util. Taking cave in contact. This is a great setup here for Fnatic to get the 18th. Three towards B. Hey, Afro is watching towards oh. red from the B site. Oh, and it smoked. Yeah, and now the this is where there's problems time. with the T site calls, right? You're blocked. It's going to get you down to just about that 20-second mark. Now blocked towards the ramp. It couldn't be more perfect, Fnatic. This is brilliant stuff. Just have to hold on. It's going to be very, very hustle and bustle to finish after these smokes do fade. Has Dexter really got a gap on that? He's playing so close to it. Missed Molly. 
Doesn't have too much to work with. Getting pushed to Dexter. Takes down Hobbit. Delays them further. 15 and counting. And backs are turned as Mezzi will activate for one, but still Cloud9 are fragging. The Perfecto's left alone and it's Afro with three in total, 18 secure, and this long battle of Counter-Strike, a third map, an overtime. One round away from taking Fnatic with a big smile on their face. That's the Afro Huge, opening. Right? You don't see that one every day. No, and it just forces their hand. Their A piece is completely removed. And, wow, the timing of those smokes. Top ramp as well as Cave perfectly placed by the international squad here. And just one more round. This is definitely an upset, sure. We're well aware that Axile's not here, but the odds had it as the Cloud9 favorite. And understandably so, they have not looked like a bad team whatsoever or a team missing an integral piece. It's already exciting from Cloud9 and they are missing Axile. But Fnatic, underestimated by the community and their opposition alike, are one round away from starting off the group stage with Cologne with a win against the Cloud9. Look at this setup here. Afro's more than happy for them to have Donut control. We've seen what he did with the Scout from this very position. I'm sure that he can do lethal damage with an AWP and they're coming his way. An opportunity for Afro to close this one out. A hard flick doesn't actually connect and the AWP now noted. Crims to be tested. It's Buster who has been having a good game for Cloud9. The stand in clears through and clears Crims. The bomb needs to be picked up here. Still plenty of time. Forward. Afro choosing to go forward. He knows it's only Buster. He'll just take this jewel head on. One on one, baby. You reloading? That's fine. I've got an AWP with your name on it. Three on two. Fnatic. Two frags away. Afro. Oh, missed the shot. Shiro on the York. Hits it on the second. A second too much to ask as Perfecto's got a clutch. Otherwise, this is Fnatic's. Knocking Cloud9 to the lowers. On the first day of play. Perfecto. Spots out Roy. Knows he's on the headshot box. They both double peek. It's Fnatic's hard fought, impressive scenes. Afro. What an ancient it was from the Frenchman. And individually, everyone shining brightly. You had 33 total. Mezzi behind him with 26. Loving that extra freedom he's getting with Dexter calling the shots and hitting the shots. Yeah, massive stuff here. And the, the community are going to take notice of this one. Sure, it's a Cloud9 missing Axile, a key piece of this team. But they still have Shiro, they still have Hobbit, they still have Electronic, Perfecto, massive names, and this new Fnatic roster, one that everybody slept on, one that nobody was expecting an awful lot, went through the play-ins with ease, and now have upset Cloud9 in round number one of the group stage. Massive work, grit, determination, some good rounds, some good understanding, the individuals in form. This is what you want to see. I'm sure Fnatic management making these decisions definitely wanted to see this. What a delight for the first day of play of the groups up against Cloud9, no less. Day four of IEM Cologne 23 and Fnatic take Cloud9 down. An incredible reverse sweep from Fnatic. And man, talk about that map getting close. You could almost cut the tension with a knife, but Fnatic are the ones to come out on top with the W, Kassad. Impressive stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for me, the, the man of the match is, is Afro. The, the amount of pressure he managed to you put on Cloud9 in all, all three maps is just unbelievable. For some, somebody you saw, you know, new to this uh, level of Counter Strike. Yeah. Dexter, hey, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congrats. How was that for you? Wild one. Uh, yeah, it was a good, stressful game. Nice, nice, lot of <laughs> good mistakes. Good, stressful game. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you prefer them. <laughs> yeah, I just got to enjoy the stress at this level. Sorry. Yeah. Tell us about going to that overtime, right? Because things are getting hella close in regulation. What was key for you to be pulling out? I think Kassad had a really apt point about, you know, Afro really stepping up in those later situations. Yeah, Afro had a great uh, game in the like, late situations. Did like a lot of high impact, like early kills for us. But as a general team thing, we kind of just slow down the pace, like just we just committed to the game plan and just be like, we don't need to fight them. They know we're fighting them, so we can just chill out and then like be really like smart with our utility. And then they had to like run through smokes at like like 20 seconds left a couple of times. So far, are you satisfied with the deal you made with Mezzi? Is he contributing enough? He's not going back to the IGL role? Um, it's okay right Good now. Start. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> talk to him a little bit more, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. He's not really showing up too much. <laughs> he's, he's cool 40. Listen, since you came in, how are you happy with like the development of the team and the lineup that you have? And you know, what are the things that you work the most coming to this event? 
I think uh, everyone's like contributing a lot about how they want to play things. Um, Jamie uh, Keita, the, the coach, really helping me with tactical side of things. I've never really had like a full, full tactical like coach for me, and I, I can focus on a lot of my own game actually. And and uh, yeah, everyone said I work hard, but in this team right now, I'm kind of relaxing a lot more. Everyone's doing like a great job themselves, and and uh, yeah, I'm happy with the attitudes we we came into it with. All right, that's great. Dexter, let's do a thing here, right? We talked in the pregame about Ancients. We know that Fnatic before, they like to do these deep lurks, right? So this was round 20. I don't know how much you remember it. It's a gun mm -hmm. round. You guys are going for a fast mid take, right? Here you get the two kills from Crims, like, and Mezzi. It's looking like an A split, but for the viewers at home, there's also this guy right here. And that's Roy. That's Roy on that deep lurk. Is this like the plan from the get-go to have him in that position so that you could maybe freeze here? Or what's the plan in this round? Uh, yeah, it definitely helps. Like, because you need plan B. Like, we weren't going to, like, assume that we're going to win mid 100%. So if we won mid without any kills, then at least we have more B info and I can call the slow round. But in this situation, yeah, we ended up getting all the kills. And, like, the A call was probably the best option. But, yeah, he played a, a great, great job there. So... It's good to have like that plan B so that we don't have to kind of stress into that the next scenario. Exactly, and look at him now. Now he's in the sights on his own. Perfecto had a good hold. You traded him and still in a 3v2, you get a lot of information. I love this bit here, like great awareness that, you know, someone might be just watching B from uh, from a highway, really, and you knew Hobbit was coming through the smoke, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw his face after you killed him. It was like, come on, man. And so a really great round, important round. I mean, you guys... Gave away a couple, you know, the 4v2, that was a pretty wild one, a but lot. this one was a great example <laughs> of, you know, being calm, collected, composed, so props to you and the guys. Thank you, I appreciate Jack, it. So just zooming out on this matchup a little bit more, we've been hearing in the halls that, you know, uh, anybody who's been scrimming against Cloud9, they were looking pretty solid. Had you practiced against them at all? Yeah, we practiced Overpass, uh, Inferno, Ancient, and Anubis, and they absolutely destroyed us on Anubis, <laughs> like 25 ah. to 5 or something like that. So, yeah. Okay, that makes sense as to maybe why they picked it in. Yeah. Because we were a little bit surprised about that, right? It was the bait all along. I think they've been destroying <laughs> everyone in practice on Anubis. So, yeah. So. What, what were you particularly focusing on then coming into that match as a kind of, you know, rematch on an official ground, as it were? Um, just kind of watch back our practice, vest them, and then also just kind of be confident in ourselves and what we do on our CT side. Uh, we played like Virtus Pro before that and they have like very similar styles. So it kind of suited us to go into this um, uh, this official with us. Dexter, just final thoughts. Um, what are the goals for Fnatic then coming into this stage of clone? Obviously we saw you doing incredibly well in the play-ins. Where do you feel like you're setting the expectations for the guys? Uh, I don't think we have like too many like tournament related like expectations. We like, we just want to kind of relax and just <laughs> not relax, but, you know, like really get to know each other as a team because we've only been practicing for two weeks, right? So we want to just make sure we understand how we work on a land environment so that we can be really efficient going into more tournaments in the future. Well, it's been working so far for you, Dexter. So congratulations. Uh, we'll let you go off, celebrate with the team, get prepared for your next matchup. And yeah, great to speak to you. Sweet, thank you. Congrats. Awesome stuff. And yeah, real team performance coming out from Fnatic yeah, this time around yeah, I mean, as well. they had this easier kind of circumstance, considering that Exile was on there, but that's what's given to them, and they, they took advantage of it, and they won quite as early, so... Well, I don't know what, what's comes what's going to be next for, for Cloud9. Mm. Is Exile going to be back? In how disappointed they will be if they actually drop out very early? I mean, it is what it is right now, but they need to move forward. It's a lot more difficult now. You have to win three best of threes, right, just to make it yes. into the playoffs. And even though Booster had a good game here, I'm, I'm most impressed, but Fnatic's, you know, mental for each other, yeah. their composure. I mean, they lost that 4v2 where per Perfecto was hitting no scopes. They lost a couple of rounds in the first half. You know, again, they lost to a hero AK, right? So they could have won this game more comfort comfortably if it weren't for a couple of those rounds. So to, you know, uh, stay persistent, to pers persevere in, in, in the face of that, and also in some crunch time, you know, different players stepping up, different people stepping up, and then in OT to be able to close it out. I think for a, a team that's been practicing two weeks, like Dexter said, those are some really good signs. Just add to that Vertigo, the way they lost it with the Eco round and an mm -hmm. Ace with the Hero AK again. It's just like a, a lot of like mental strength there, and you know, it's really nice to see that.
I love that you gave some props to Afro in this as well, because I feel like later in the stages of maps, that's where we see him kind of becoming a bit more unleashed, getting more aggressive, and on that particular map of Ancient, it was paying off. That is what you want to do. We have an op like that's aggressive. You want him to be mobile. You want him to be aggressive. You want him to like at least be a threat. In, you know, he doesn't have to get a kill always, but you want the opposite side to be a little bit more defensive, so you can execute what is it that you want to execute. It doesn't matter if you're a CT or a T. He's just uh, super helpful if you have an aggressive op that kind of can do those things. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he is disruptive and mobile, right? So it's like difficult when you're preparing for an opera like that. Okay, he can be here and here and here and here. So, you know, at that point, there's no really anti stratting it. You just have to be ready to react in the mid round. And he's definitely had some good impact in this game. Gentlemen, I want to get your thoughts on the next game of the day. It is G2 making their debut in Cologne versus Astralis. Oh, man, I can't Not wait. Not biased opinion. Uh, who's taking it? I, I can't wait to watch it. But the thing is, like, G2 is in a terrible form right now. Astralis is a decent form. They are looking okay, better than the old one. I would say maybe 52, 48 at G2. Ooh. I think it's all a ruse, Freya. You know, it was all a ruse at Blast. Oh, we're falling apart. We didn't change anything, but we still kind of suck. No, this, that was just G2 getting into the swing of things. You know, it's the start of the season. In Cologne, they're going to be much better. I think they win. I think Rather. we demand they be Fake much news. better coming into Cologne. Yeah, Strugglesome City in Copenhagen for the likes of G2, but Astralis looking hot to trot. They arrive at the group stage for their debut versus G2 after this break. game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opera, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? I just think the uh, device deserves a better team. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, device bad boy. As you all know, big roster shuffle, roster mania. I've got Patsy in a bloody liquid jersey to, to prove it. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be ranking them. We're going to be using these playing cards, high value. I think ace is highest, uh, all the way down to joker, meaning I'm not quite sure. I'm going to throw them at you guys. Astralis. What do you think, stare. Borup and Stare? Borup and Stare, mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's good. I good think to it's, see Borup I don't think he's a king. I'll put yeah. him as a queen, though. Okay. Yeah, good. Uh, appreciation yeah. for the new Astralis roster. Borup is not not only really flexible and really versatile in terms of anchor spots right. and whatever, and they specifically need that player because they have Device, Blame F, and uh, uh, now they picked up Stare as well, yeah. right? Stare was always like the kind of like a star player in a way. And uh, now that they have more up like the missing piece for the consistency in their backlines. Yeah. That's it, another ace actually. Mm. Okay, a lot of love for Astralis' changes. That's cool. Yeah. I like it. I think, I mean, Stare. Stare is, there. I couldn't believe how young you were. One of the um, upcoming know. talents and I think Borup, I mean, he was upcoming when I was upcoming, basically, and right. when he was tricked still. So I think he's a solid player and he always was. Yeah, I see like he has a losing yeah. left and right. Like what <laughs> is everybody doing? Oh. Queen, queen, queen. Yeah. Okay, agreement. I know Stair is very good. I just hopefully he hope he has like all the good roles that he was playing in beforehand, and he's got kind of got that good confidence. It's the first time none of you agree. Okay, none let's start with Prozos, Mr. Prozos. Yeah. Why you why chose is, why the king? A king move. Their pack two on the last event was like close to ours, and we we were like like I was hearing them laugh all the okay. time, and they had a lot of fun. So I think like their chemistry is really good, and I think like the lineup has a lot of potential. Where do you see them at the end of the year, ranking wise? Top 15 to top 5, everything's possible. What mm. do you mean top 15 to top 5? You're giving yeah. us, it's not even yeah, okay. like a fork. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> it's a window. Uh, like, okay, let's say top 10. I think okay. top 10, yeah. Okay, top 10. I was shocked that they removed Glaive. Okay. Um, I dislike the move. I believe that he's he has so much knowledge and he knows exactly how to put the work with the young stars to make them work as well. Kangaroo Queen. Some, something in between. 
something in between the king and the queen and the king. Alright, this is very varying. I just think the uh, device deserves a better team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, device fan boy. I think like the core of device blame F and stir is like really strong. But then like Buzz and Borup is it's like a question mark. You don't you don't know how it will work, right? Well, what are your thoughts on Borup though? Um it's meh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last semi-final here at the arena. NRG and Astralis. Moses, you ready for this game? We're going to start on train. Oh, this is going to be absolutely beautiful. That Astralis we saw yesterday is so dangerous. I think Astralis is back, and I think they're going to win this series 2-0 and prove it. And Astralis, they win the first major championship, 16-14 against Martin Pro. You'll face it, London's major champions, it's Astralis! What is your calling? G2 looking for redemption after, if we're being honest, what was a rough start to the season? Slow out of the gates in Copenhagen, but a chance for redemption coming into the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne 2023. A chance for G2 to be turning over a new leaf in their competitive era. Speaking of new things, it's out with Kassad and Yanko and in with Mathieu and Jacob. Gentlemen, I am so excited to be diving into this one. We've got two teams on very different trajectories at the moment, but with very big expectations on their shoulders, right? I think that's fair to say. I think right now you're looking towards Astralis and you'd argue they're trending upwards. It's a team that is getting better and better. The new role changes, the new roster changes once again have brought life to the Astralis brand. Whereas for G2, I feel like we're coming to a point now where we need to see some results. I'm done. I'm, I'm tired of seeing G2, you know, play Aww. good, play bad, play good, play bad. I want to see some consistency match here and I want to see them show up at a big tournament like Cologne. Yeah, I'm right there with you. It feels like Cologne is make or break. For G2. This is the point that we have reached. Um, they have a very perverted relationship to performance, which is whenever they are supposed to be good, they're not. And then whenever you have already put them aside, it's a very important event and they show up. But this is what we are left for when it comes to G2. We are reaching for context. We are reaching for prestige. And we say, hold on a second. All of the troubles that you've seen from G2, it's not going to happen here. It's Cologne. It's the most important event. They're all going to give the 200%. This team is going to come together. That's the angle that you're left with because what's inside the server has been complicated. Yeah, and they should be delivering more than we have seen uh, yeah. coming into this new season, right? It was kind of complicated when we look back at their results for Copenhagen. Yeah, the last five matches haven't been looking great, to be completely honest, for, for G2. You look at it right here, and the only wins they have is against a, a rather weak OT. I know they've been playing better at this tournament, but the, the, the win against ET is the one that annoys me the most. They should have lost that game. They were down 15 to 10 on the third deciding map. Somehow, some way, found their way back, thanks to Nico in particular. But in terms of the result after the summer break, it's been been disjointed. It's been mm. bad, right? We're talking about a team that didn't make any roster changes. We're talking about a team that came in, you know, somewhat prepared, I guess, to the second part of the season, and yet they've been one of the biggest disappointments for me. Yeah, listen, in Copenhagen, we had the, the luxury of watching them, observing them when they were playing, interacting, and in the atmosphere, there was something wrong. Mm. I think Chad had this beautiful idea in the HLTV podcast to just lock them in the room and just have them shout out all their feelings. I'm, like, I'm not even going to lie. There is, there is some truth to it. It feels like there are some unsaid things in the G2 mm. camps, right? And you feel, you pick up that vibe when they're losing. I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we know the kind of talent and firepower there is, mm. which means Nico pops off, Manasi pops off, Hunter has a good game, suddenly it changes the narrative. But when they are in these like hard fought moments, it feels like they, they come apart. As, as a roster and it becomes five individuals and, and that's an issue for me. And the only thing we really saw popping off back at Copenhagen was Nico. Uh, it was a one-man army for basically the majority of that tournament. He was posting incredible numbers but nobody else on the squad was. Listen, he was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so stupid. It, it, it is stupid. You look at those stats, you know, Nico versus the average of his team. He was playing lights out. He was dropping 30 bombs left, right and center and that's the scary part. Nico, the biggest star within this lineup, was playing good Counter-Strike, was coming out of the break 
feeling fired up, yet G2 was still struggling. This man is, in my book, the best rifler we've ever seen in CSGO. In fact, of the matter is he's still consistently delivering at a very high level. I don't want to see him waste any more time. I would like to see Nico contest for more trophies. I know they had a couple of good ones, one Katowice for that matter as well, had a good start to the year, but it does feel a little bit unsatisfying to watch Nico play on a team that is struggling that much when he individually is so goddamn. Dude, they were about to lose to EG, and oh. he had like 1.46 rating in the entire series. <laughs> How ridiculous is that? He ended up what, with 89 kills, and the next person on the team for the whole series was like 40, um, sub 40, right? The yeah. thing is, it, it's a fun bit for us to laugh about five minutes, but like there is a reality behind it that is actually yeah. concerning. Like we, we always knew that Nico would have an unfair amount of pressure on his shoulders. Like That's just the way it is when you have players of that kind of caliber, simple, the size of the world. It's never even in terms of like hey, weight on your shoulder, that's fine. But we, we've passed the threshold of it's funny anymore. Like it's, it's not funny anymore. You still have Hunter, you still have Monesi. I mean, Monesi, huge expectations on mm -hmm. this guy. Hunter is supposed to be a top 15 player, has always been his whole career, supposed to be super consistent in the output on the server. It hasn't been here since the summer break. It's, it's been gone. It's been the Nico show. Let's compare two in-game leaders coming into things. Obviously, we have BlameF on one side, Hooksy on the other. They're both Danish. That's a similarity. And that's where it ends, right? That's pretty much it, right? You have uh, you have Hooksy, who's been under a lot of fire recently. Not only is his firepower not looking too great, but the identity of G2 is nowhere to be found. That's another one of my issues with this team. You know, I can't tell you what type of Counter-Strike they like to play, apart from the individual-based CS. On the other hand, you have the fracking in-game leader, the modern era in-game leader, in BlameF, who's transitioning back into that role. For people who may not watch Counter-Strike a couple of years ago, he was playing in complexity, he was in-game leading back then, but he's now matured a lot as a player and he's trying one more time. The T sides of Astralis so far has been looking wonderful, Device is giving a lot of praise, and as you can see, per the stats mm. and as per the win rates, you don't get the much difference. I look, the contrast is huge. Like, it's hurtful for Hooksy, of course, it's a little bit unfair on that regard, but <laughs> I, I like that you're talking about, you know, Blame F and like, his ascension as a player, because what used to be, for, in my book, a one-trick pony, city-sided multi-kill, actually has become very much more versatile. In mm -hmm. fact, his T-side rating on the last few months is higher than the CT side. So he's not just hiding in a corner and multi-killing you, that's not the case. But another data that this graphic tells us as well is that the floor of G2 is much lower than the floor of Astralis. The worst player of Astralis has much better number than Hooksy, and there is a disparity in terms of skill that's going to have to be sold on the server. Yeah, we're certainly going to be demanding a lot of G2 coming into IM Cologne. So let's go ahead and check in with the coach at Swanee with James Banks. G2 may have not started off the year exactly the way they wanted to so far, but you're looking to turn things around here when it comes to clones. So I want to start by asking, what have you done in just, what, maybe five days at home, four? Uh, we were two days at home, but oh. yeah, we, there wasn't a lot of time to fix stuff, but we rewatched and we made sure we got on the same page again, especially on our T side. Uh, we focused a bit on two or three fundamentals that we want to be really good at in Cologne and that can raise our basis level. And yeah, we just tried to focus on just doing the game as well. So in your eyes, it's just the basics right now? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's the easiest to fix. Okay. And we do not have enough time to implement a lot of new stuff. Yeah. We obviously have a few new tricks, but uh, they're easiest to fix right now. It's like basics and communication especially. Now, I don't want to single just out individual players, but Manasi and Nico are your two stars, right? Nico's been up there. Manasi himself mentioned in interviews to me before that he felt it was like he couldn't get his consistency, his groove back. What have you told him? What have you done to change that around? Uh, we started watching POV demos a lot more, especially now when we prepare against opponents. We are watching more demos together and also himself after the games. And he's asking a lot of questions, what he can do better, what he can improve. Yeah. And we are just uh, trying to focus more on the good things as well, rather than pointing out negatives. Mm -hmm. So we get him back to where he is. And I think like his confidence is still really good, good. but sometimes he's just doubting himself a bit when he didn't do it in the past and mm -hmm. we're just trying to get it out of his head get him to feel the game a little bit more right and dive through it all. Another thing I want to touch on around this confidence for the whole team in general, you lost Edward, right? He's not with the team anymore, but do you have a replacement coming in? Because for an event like Cologne, the, the pressure's high. Yeah, he's here with us at the moment. Ooh, who's this? He's uh, called Luca, mm -hmm. and he was with like uh, Olympic athletes before, and in the past, like with Crazy, so he knows Hunter really well. Okay. So he has a good uh, background with sports and also with esports, and yeah, he's here right now, and let's hope... Uh, he makes a difference again. Let's hope he does make a difference. All pressure's on him. Yep. Hopefully not on G2. <laughs> Thank you. 
And I love that James and Swanee touch upon Munnessy there because we're mm. coming into this and we're looking at both sides of the equation, the Orpa having such instrumental impact, both device and Munnessy. Yeah, we're talking about contrast, you know, between the in-game leaders. Look at the contrast between the two op players on the server. Sure, in terms of rating, impact, etc. we'll dive into that. But stylistically speaking, you're looking towards device who's been praised for being consistent, for being smart, for inspiring an entire generation of op players. Everyone was saying, let's look at device's demo when you want to be a smart op. Going up against Munnessy, who's this flashy youngster coming in with an incredible amount of talent, flashy no-scopes, etc., but they're very different. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And listen, there is, there's something that's scratching my brain, itching my brain for a little while now. I have a theory that Manasi is more inconsistent than his average actually says. And the reason for that is because his pops off are so incredibly out of reach. They're extreme outliers. That's a good example right here. If you're looking at last month, it's 102. You think, all right, it's decent. Suddenly you take off that OG game when he had 2.3 rating and then yeah. it drops down. It's the same as asking, hey, how much do Swiss people make in terms of money? That's ridiculous because we have a couple of silly millionaires out there that destroy our average. And then we look like we have money. That's not a case. That's a lie. Some people do. We don't. That's the same as happening with modesty a few outliers <laughs> ah, it's a little far-fetched you know you have money matcher but <laughs> statistically it sounds statistically speaking sure but but I, I agree with you you know you say it's a theory I'd say it's a fact fact of the matter is that modesty is not finding the same consistency as a player like device that's the contrast so I think modesty for once would be you know in terms of developing it would probably be a good idea for him to look into how can I position myself in positions where I don't need yeah. to no scope where I don't mm -hmm. need to hit the set flicks just get the easy kills and just be there for my team it's a matter of being reliable right because right now if, if you have had Monopoly money and you say, hey, do you want to invest in device or do you want to invest in Monacy? In terms of what you know you're going to get out of, the, the conversation has changed. Device yes. has already now established himself as a player who is going to deliver. Hmm. And in itself, his journey is crazy. Like being away from the computer and the mouse for so long, coming back, not skipping a beat, immediately being a player that we look towards to, to multi-frag and carry. He's doing that. He's so consistent. It is insane. I think that's what's so impressive about when we zoom out of the entire Astralis roster, right? Mm. We, you know, we could have argued coming into this new season that we'd be focusing on Blame FN Device, and we have been doing that. But the supporting cast around, Stair is slowly but surely making a more consistent name for himself, Buzz as well in those clutch situations. It's about growing that consistency as, as a group, right? Yeah, I guess it's about finding the roles within Astralis. And I think they have very clear defined roles now, which they didn't have before. We had the whole conversation with Blame F and Sipnix obtaining the same amount of space within the team. Now you sign Burrow a guy that is signed to just be the guy who is playing all these positions nobody wants to play, very selfless. So it's starting to make more sense for Australia. Mm. Same goes for the map pool as well. They're trying to build an identity, and I would argue that they're already further ahead in that process than I expected at this point. Yeah, and then the funny story is, it's not necessarily the player that we painted as the third win condition that turns out to be. Hmm. We maybe got gaslit a little bit by Stair in his yeah, beginning in yeah. that jersey. We say, oh, snap, like he's the third one. Incredible ancient. And then he tempered down just a little. And the other players to whom we didn't really give a lot of time, it's actually Borb and Buzz who's doing much better than we expected. Mm. Yeah, I, I think Stair maybe gaslit us a little bit because like, I feel like every series, first map, he comes super hot out of the gates. <laughs> and then he kind of tempers off. Maybe it's a question of stamina for him. Yeah, and he's also 18 years of age, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a step up. He was playing in Sprout. He was doing all right in up. Sprout, but he's, he's in stepping up into, into the Astralis, you know. So I, I would give him the benefit of the doubt for now. I, th I think Device labeled him as one of the biggest talents he's ever seen in Danish Counter-Strike, which is quite big words from a legend like Device. So I think there's more in store for Stair in the future, but it'll be nice to see more of it, especially at a tournament of this caliber. Should we, we just, touch upon uh, Ancient? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we just yeah. had uh, the maps uh, rolling under our eyes right here. Ancient going in for Astralis. It's, it really seems to be a go-to now. Mm, it has yes. been established as a map that they feel super confident playing. Uh, Stair, for that matter, was very impressive the first time around. An Inferno pick for G2. I think that currently G2 is kind of cornered in the veto in terms of like what map they can rely on, what mm -hmm. maps they know they will deliver. When Astralis do the Mirage away, your G2, you kind of have to go to Inferno. And Astralis against Liquid look very decent. Though. Listen, Nuke, third deciding map. I've seen G2 lose to EG a couple of weeks ago on that map. Oh, that wasn't pretty, was so, it? I am not confident. I think this is going to go to all three maps, and I think Astralis have a pretty good chance of taking this W. Where do we look at then, specifically coming on to Ancient? We've kind of, you know, hyped up what Astralis have delivered on this map. Where should we be looking to see uh, the best kills coming out? Well, honestly speaking, and I hate sounding like a broken record, but when you look at what G2 has to offer, it is the individuals. If Nico is having one of those games where he can disrupt the opponent, where he can disrupt the way Astralis want to approach the game, that could be a win condition. Same can be said for Manasi. I believe that OG game you're referring to, that was on Ancient when he had a score of 30 kills yeah, and ridiculous. 7 deaths or something like that. So he can be disruptive as well. So again, G2 
relies on the individuals, where Astralis, they have to rely on the team. Yeah, I wonder if the extremities of Astralis will be able to have any kind of impact. I feel like it's it's definitely an important part of their playstyle. You're looking at Burst, for example, towards A. I think he's going to have a couple of encounters with JKS. We'll see who gets the better of it. We'll see if Stair can actually find a couple times on B ramp, which he did the first time around. If you're G2, I think the extremities defense really have to be on point and always focused on your crosshair, because there's a time where someone's going to try to get you in 1v1. I think somebody's name that we've been repeating time and time again uh, has been Blame F, you know? Yeah. His defense has just been so stellar on this. I I'm interested to see if G2 can crack through it in that second. Yeah, I think it's been impressive to see Blame F frag out while he's been a great in-game leader as well. I think the yeah. T-sides of Astralis have looked better and better. He's taking more initiative. He's more involved. As you said, his, his T-side ratings are growing to become very, very solid yes. as well. Stable as ever before. So Blame F is a player that is growing on me, and I think he's growing on a lot of people out there as well, because he was called Bait F for a reason. He was one of those players you like to hate on, but I think with the new Astralis and the way he's approaching the game, he's trying to change that tone. He's taking a new character arc. I would I love mean, to see that. Listen, we all want entertainment, right? Are you not entertained? That's what we want when it comes to Counter-Strike. But Blame oh, sometimes just plays the odds and the numbers, and sometimes it's boring. Mm. And we never asked for him to change his playstyle completely. We just said, man, can you just like, take a few more risks? Like, come on. Like, yeah, I know it's a, it's a 2v2. <laughs> Cross that smoke, you know, like, like go for it. Try and go at that duel. He he is basically live analyzing odds as he's playing, and if the odds go into the negative, like nee, I'm out. I'm not playing this round. We're just asking for a little bit more pizzazz, and I think he's getting there now. Well, you know what, gentlemen? Only positive signs as we are ready to be getting this matchup underway. We've got Ancient, we've got Inferno, we've got Nuke if we do so need it, and we've got Harry and Hugo to guide you through all of it on the mics. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. What a, what a great opening game of Group B we've got, right? For G2, after falling short back in Paris, lackluster results for the squad there. They they go on to decide changes, not what this team needs. They've got faith in the individuals, so they keep together as five. And as we learned in the interview, they focused on fixing the little mistakes for Astralis when they failed to make it to Paris. They're getting eliminated back in the RMRs, that's when changes were afoot. And now we've seen the restructuring of this squad. So two teams in very different positions. Yeah, and for Astralis, the results have actually looked really, really good recently. So let's see if they can step up to the plate and take on some of the big boys in Group B. It won't be an easy road to the playoffs of Cologne. Fast out into the A site. It's a donut split, but Mainz yeah, getting taken back. And G2 have so many players and so much control. They will just swipe the ball clean of Astralis. Two on four. Stairs lost in the smoke. And Blame goes back to maybe an empty B bomb site. Nico's keeping an eye on it, though. And he's got support, so this should just be dead in the water. Uh, yeah, look at it, man. G2 are just swarming here. Sure, might have had a chance on that first guy, but you weren't going to go any further than that. So the pistol round is found dominantly out of G2, and, it, and it's hunted to do the bulk of the heavy lifting on that push up towards main. And, you know, you say G2 don't make changes. Let's talk about Astralis's, because they weren't necessarily the changes we expected. Maybe, you know, not even the ones we wanted completely. Sure, everyone was touting Stare as the next big thing from Denmark. 19 years of age, relative inexperience, but showed some great face on Sprout. I think Borup was the surprise for everyone, but back at Blast, he proved to be a real consistent piece of the puzzle. The cutting of Glaive, you know, meaning the finally all of the old guard except Device from Astralis is gone. Mm. But Blame also stepping up pretty aptly to the in game leading role and putting up numbers while he did it. I think uh, there's a lot of reasons to get behind this Astralis yeah. team right now. Yeah, a big part of it as well, like, because, you know, you, we kind of gloss over it when you're talking changes is the one on change man in device. He's been, uh, he's been fantastic yeah. since his return. Hello, JKS was on for the ace right there, but he won't quite get it, will he? So Hunter moves in and puts a stop to it still. Nice round for JKS, well contained. The Glocks don't really get much done as you would expect, but now the buy round's coming through for Astralis. Yeah, I think um, playing in that previous iteration of the squad, there, there was kind of a, you know, I kind of felt bad for Device at times. It felt like he had to do a hell of a lot. It felt like he was kind of having to do a bit of everything to try and make that team work. But I, I will say, part of me wonders, has that made him ex even more deadly now, right? He's someone who we already know is an, an incredibly consistent player, can reach these insane heights, uh, can really do it all. And I think being in that previous iteration of Astralis probably gave him more appreciation for just what he's capable yeah. of. Off, right there were moments back at the RMRs where it felt like he, it was him versus nine <laughs> you know what I'm saying so yeah it, it's been a treat now that there's this supporting cast around let's get into this first rifle round Ooh. out into mid for Borup 
and he's fed to the Wolves. A triple set up there to open for G2. They had every intent to fight for this mid control. They're going to keep pushing the issue. And they will feed one to blame F, but it's punished, it's returned, and we end up back in this three on three with the way in for Astralis appearing over here towards B. Oh, yeah, they just had to go there into the B bomb site. It's all they had. Hooksy, good to even get a one for one there as he flashes himself back out cave. JKS is very close, but he doesn't want to play active. He's all alone. Device just walks backwards in. They thought no one would possibly go through that CT smoke, and it's left Buzz in the clutch. 1v2. JKS making moves, but also needs to be patient because Nico is on a long rotation round. He can start running now. The plant's been heard. Buzz given nothing in this clutch, and the more time he wastes, the closer G2 get ready to trade this kill out. JKS can swing as soon as Nico finds that contact, and it's not even needed. Nico closes it, and G2 find 3 0. Very strong start. Nice cool on the mid take as well. You know, on Ancient CT side, you're going to be making uh, a, a lot of different starts of your rounds, right? Sometimes you will be starting heavy mid with good util. Here, G2 have three players. Sometimes you want to be aware of the B rush. You want to be taking A main. You can't cover everything. And so G2 make the perfect call to stop Astralis from taking those mid spawns. Back to the drawing board early for the Astralis squad. Down to these pistols now. They like the success they were able to get away with over here towards B, and, and they want to try and replicate that here, but they will get challenged along the way. Hooksy out from Cave, and Nico hears those tags as the spam comes in through short from Hunter. They'll combine for a kill. Hooksy oh. <laughs> out on an island here. Does go down as he's faced by three Astralis players, but he gets out with a two for one and keeps this nice advantage for G2 ticking over. Should just be the cleanup here. Hunter's going to do exactly that. So it's a very oppressive game plan to open up from G2, right? It, one thing you will have already noted here is think about the pistol. They're pushing a main. They're trying to take the extremities. Then they, they kind of dictate the fights over in middle in that first rifle round, knowing that the force was going to come through, anticipating a bit of a B hit, something that's very, very fruitful when you only have pistols and a handful of util. So they swarm it through cave. They're fighting down the ramp. They've got reinforcements padding out the back of B. Right now, they've had a good read on the first few rounds of this game. And so the onus is going to be put on Astralis to try and break the flow of that early. Yeah, they go for a default here, though. So just 1-1-3 one, one, and aware of this B take. They play very slow out of the gates, not even moving through those doors. JKS pushed all the way through main, but he will be flashed off. Buzz didn't full check it. And JKS gets away with the goods. He will escape too. G2 pressure relieved, even though Modesty misses his shot. They will lose Nico over at B in the meantime. That is a little awkward. And so Astralis might just have to, again, go with what they've got. The smoke's towards the B bomb site. Blame lurking A main gives them a get out clause. Let's see if Astralis take it. This is far from a commitment. Oh, oh, it's a little awkward at top ramp. Hunter wasn't oh, quite ready for that. it. Stair's going to spam him out in reply. They're still battling up the ramp side here. That bomb's going to be retrieved by Stair as well. And this is where we have to see blame. where they want to go with it. Yeah, they're taking it back. And that's because of Blame F. As you highlighted earlier on, he left that back door open to get a little tricky with it in the mid round. And now he's very, very deep. When it oh. goes quiet like this, you're expecting that they've got room somewhere, on, uh, somewhere else on the map. But even though JKS had an inkling, it wasn't enough to give him an edge in that fight. And now we get to this 1v2 for Monacy does have a kit. It's just the, the sheer lack of info here that's scary, right? Every one of these angles could be harboring an aggro blame F who pushed all the way through A. And so the big question for Monacy now is can he find even just a shred of information to play this 1v2 out? He's going to go in. Gets given a fight from up on top of the boost, but that tag brings him down even lower. And I think that should just seal the deal on the round. Monacy or to his knees by Stair, who, who goes on a goes on a tear in that round there, doesn't he, right? Starts it with the wall bang over towards B. He's then the guy to go back and retrieve the bomb. Helps, uh, you know, rejoin with Blame F and make that whole play happen. Yeah, this is a, a classic Blame F round, and it's something you, you know, G2 realized. As soon as they over-rotate, they probably won't do that again. Mm. Uh, we saw this in old Astralis, uh, you know, before Blame was calling went on Ancient, when he'd often be a guy walking solo up B while they go for A, execute something Astralis did a lot when they first started playing this map. But it never felt like Astralis had that entry power, right? Too many Academy players, Glaive with a you know downtread of consistency. But now we have so much more firepower, it does free up Blame to make more of these lurky plays. 
I love that call out of the gate for Astralis. Even just to have that wall bang supplementing the B hit makes life very uncomfortable for G2. And Astralis, they think they've Ooh. got the world right here. But Hunter's got his eyes on it, and he's even calling for some help. Two CTs moving in to stop this. If you've got to go, you've got to go now before that smoke blooms. But Buzz keeps them contained. Even though Astralis do want to hit the B bomb site, they're trying to make it seem like they're not. It's not a good smoke, though, and that's a little problematic. It, it doesn't draw as much pressure as you would have liked if that smoke over towards red landed properly. Hunter Great still read. plays ahead of it, and so he knows that they're not aggroing through red right now. That's going to free him up to move back over towards B, and the timing might be perfect on this because he's going to need need to deliver. He finds himself in the right place. There's one from Hunter, but end of the line, Borup knocks him and down. And so Astralis, it, it, it's very composed. They kind of fake it out with that attempt to get out through red, draw a bit of attention away, and then they nail the entries up through ramp. Yeah, shame for G2 who knew exactly what was going on. They show it with a very aggressive A main push from JKS. They they have the read of, of Astralis trying to end B there. You know, device being on the AWP on the boost sort of gives it away as well, but this goes back to what I was talking about with some of this entry capability. One thing that's cool in the, you know, 16 or so maps we've seen from Astralis is the, you know, entries on T sides are, are, are pretty split even when you look at the numbers. Like, in terms of attempts, everyone's kind of getting involved for the most part, uh, uh, other than the stair. And uh, what, what's really cool is we're seeing Buzz look more comfortable in this team as well. Mm. Even though he was a, more of just a fake player up mid in this round, in the academy team, this guy was, he was such a, a monster at... Uh, oh, sorry, in his previous teams, uh, as in Masonic, he was such a monster at getting opening kills. And when we saw him first in this roster, he was always second in behind Glaive. It, it, it never felt like he was as comfortable. But back at Blast, we saw a great resurgence from Buzz in going for those openers. So I'm excited to see Astralis on this map. They've clearly been making it a mainstay of their map pool. G2 now broken, left to just two rifles. Yeah, you can still do damage in this round, right? They're going to try and give JKS a bit of room, for example, here. Same with Monacy. You're going to keep setting up these rifle players to be that first point of contact. Anything they can do to, to steal an advantage in the round, you know, to arm one of these pistol players, it's great. And if they're the ones making contact first and then they fall, you know, the gun gets juggled around and there's still ways to, to find impact in this 4G2. But Astralis, they're expecting gimmicks, right? They're expecting trickery like this. So they're taking it pretty low and slow, using this util and a couple of nice boosts to clear out the cave, playing it safe. G2 are full grouped over here in middle. They want to make some moves, and JKS opens the round. They know the location of the M4. The, the AWP was last spotted over towards B. Oh, dear. Right now... Both Monacy and JKS have taken up position over towards the lane, and that's another kill for these hero guns. Oh, oh but it's swiftly returned back the other way. JKS, the last one of the hero weapons standing. He'll put it to good use. He's done a lot of damage on this flank up through middle. How much can the pistols be expected to get away with? That dink is nice. A bit more damage downrange means that G2 can give this 2v2 a look in. They've not got a kit, though. That's the big problem. And once Device clears out this flank, he can try and cover the cross onto Borup. He has his back turned. Borup a swing, and he shuts it down. Thank goodness with a double spray. That was so awkward. Device is back completely open, and he did not seem aware. I thought he was going to move in to try and crossfire with Borup. Saved by the bell, Astralis. That was meant to be a, a lot cleaner of a round, but given how competitive G2 make it with that late mid re-aggression, the climb up, what a shot for Borob. You'll take it if you're Astralis. G2 can rebuy, but they won't have the AWP in this one. Yeah, that's one of those rounds, you know, you leave it feeling, it's like bittersweet. You did a lot of damage, you made that round super competitive, but you're left with the feeling, God, it could have been could have been more, right? Yep. It could have been that 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 early, early game eco that just swings control of the game. Uh, very, very good performance in this, though, to open up from JKS. I think that's a cool thing to look at. In my mind, this makes sense. We played a, a lot of face it with him over yeah. the player break, and the one map that we play is Ancient. So <laughs> he is he is so well-versed here. He's done it all. Are you saying you taught him everything he knows? No, not quite. Uh, Chad, maybe. <laughs> Chad will be very happy to see this. He's been drilling him. But yeah, we played a lot of Ancients, and so he's comfortable doing everything. Oh, Buzz dead over in middle. JKS fighting alongside him. Full blind to the flashbang, and that's when Blame F goes out swinging. 
Going to keep the mid-fight in favor of Astralis. And they've done well yeah. to repel that. That was kind of what uprooted the early game oh. for Astralis. Borup nails the entry in towards B. And it feels like Astralis do kind of want to uh, exploit the fact that Hooksy finds himself over towards this B side of the map. Whenever you're seeing these like these mid takes, usually that means that hooksy has been left there with limited resources, limited players who can rotate in quickly. And so the reaction is really nice from Astralis when they see that mid fight coming in. Borup's looking crisp today. That one tap in the previous round, then a very nice check on that pixel gap to Hooksy. So Astralis, they get their 4v3 reset into B and they force G2's hand to save yet again. Looking like quite a threat on this map of Ancient. And I mean, Cologne is synonymous with Astralis, even if, you know, they don't have the trophies in the cabinet. It, it, it kind of shocks you to think about how, despite the amount of roster changes Astralis have gone on since the era, uh, you know, in the last four times we've been in the Langsness, Astralis have made it to the semifinals. Last year, they were there with Blame. You know, they made it back in 2021 when we reopened the doors. They were there in 18 and 19, of course, all in the semifinals making runs. And that's across, you know, many different iterations of Astralis with Blame, with, with and without device, of course, with Glaive Zip, Dupree and Magisk all the way back in the day. And so I think if there were any tournament that Astralis were waking up in the right time for, it would be Cologne. Good spray from Hunter through the mid smoke, though. It's started G2 off on the right foot. They've cleared out all of B. They know it's coming. JKS, what can you do? Gonna have to offer something up from up top the boost, but he's run down straight away. So now all the pressure is on Hunter with this M4 in behind the site. They're moving up close. They're right next to him. And Stair's gonna find that entry that, that really should just safeguard the round here. Yeah, now you're already looking at saving. I mean, ooh, Hooksy, that's a great spam. He found the kill, could have beckoned you in, but no armor, no kit. Nico can afford to die here, but the others should be looking for playing the long game right now. Astralis, with what seems like an unlosable position. They try and bait the peak, but Device still hits a shot on the rifle that crouches in, and Nico is sort of locked in tempo right now. Device knows he has him. And we all know how big this bomb is on Ancient. It will get you no matter where you hide. Someone's got to call it first. Device doesn't want to. But Nico should just be fine in this corner here. Just about. Yeah, this is very well done for Astralis. You know, they, they kind of, they got given their first way into this game. And since that point, they've not let their foot off the gas. This is... Uh, scary considering how it started. You you can really feel how the, the kind of ebb and flow of this game has changed. Early on, G2 had some good reads. The aggression was well-founded. It was shutting down some of the early Astralis game plans. They kind of had the foresight in that first rifle round to go take mid. Then we have them up against the, the force in round number four where they pressure lane. They shut down that attempt at the B play with Tech Nines. Since that point, everything's come up Astralis. So they did really regain control over oh, this map. Again. Spam through mid for Hunter. He's good at it. Woo! Another one wow. out of Hunter. He knows his lineups through this smoke. A scary place to find yourself. No one from G2 has even <laughs> seen an opponent in this round. And there two and is. a half players are dead. Finally, Monacy and Device lock eyes and lock horns over towards ramp. And it's Monacy to come out ahead. Yeah, Monacy's not going to have any fear about taking this, you know, peek onto the B boost where many AWPers will perch. And so this is actually a head-to-head -head while a lot of games you don't necessarily get the AWPers clashing that much. I think you will in this matchup as long as who's ever, uh, whoever's on the CT side, in this case Monacy, has the balls to go for that fight. Two on five now and I mean G2 would just have to make a massive error to even give Astralis a way in. Buzz is trying to walk up the ramp. That's a miss smoke for Nico trying to bounce it so it lands on ramp. but it's not really a worry for Astralis. Flash in, Nico takes a look over it. Buzz getting closer and G2 ready to swing on short as well. Yeah, JKS and Hunter have stopped waiting around over towards Donuts, so they're even coming in on the flank here. Even though there's real estate being gained up ramp, you, you've still got to battle your way into this. And Ooh. Buzz will at least gain control of the site. Well, this bang. is where the flank through cave and up ramp looks to come in and save the day for G2. Two bullets left in the gun. It was never meant to be for Buzz, so he will just get swarmed. 
That timing on the mid-rotate proves to be very important for G2, right? Yeah. The entries actually did come in up through the ramp side. So you, you count your lucky stars that JKS and Hunter started making moves when they did. And a lot of that is facilitated by the fact that you still had these G2 players in the B site taking these little jiggles over towards ramp, just confirming that, yeah, they are going to follow through with this. Yeah, back to back rounds. Blade F gets spammed through the mid smoke by Hunter. So let's see how uh, Astralis are going to adapt to that, move away from middle. G2 not needing to take it. Very common, you'll see Monacy just start Donut with the AWP, but um, Astralis have been throwing smokes in that position more often than not. So that has led Hunter just to just keep up spamming. And it's great, he's doing it with the A4 as well. Even though the A1S has no tracers, obviously the bigger mag is certainly getting put to use by Hunter. Even scoreline now as we get into another crucial gun round. Money on the line for both teams. Astralis again to lay out middle. They get their nades in. Eco trap between Molotovs makes it look easy. He's burning alive right now. He's sat in the flames, but he can only take one. Borup down to four, however. It's a damn good start for Nico. And we might once again have this orb head to head. Monacy calls it off. There was a little gap over that smoke. Device won't fight it. Yeah, when you throw the smoke in like that, damn ramp, you're, you you know that there's going to be a gap on it somewhere. So Monacy's just kind of using this to check a little deeper down the lane, make sure no one else is here. And now that he's got that info, he's not only retrieved this smoke, or he will be able to from the bottom of ramp to keep that smoked off and just deny the lane control. But it's more important as to what it does to the rest of his team, right? When you've got this much real estate over towards B, when you know that no one was lane, it's allowed for a much heavier presence over here towards A. Hooksy still floating around middle shore, but he's going to be in that A site the moment he's oh, needed. And now that the util's coming in, uh, there's some counter util back from G2 to kind of throw the timings off of this. Astralis have to wait this molly out, so they're going to keep replenishing util, but here's the push. Yeah, JKS anti-flash for the second one gets him as they come swinging. Great entry for Borup again. Three on two. Astralis have the sight, but as you said, the, those timings are aloof. Those smokes are fading quickly and nades are being pulled. Hooksy not seen getting into the corner and Buzz takes a step too far. Blame has him trapped, but flashed out. Hooksy looks for a second and Device is now in the clutch up against the kid. Yeah, the go v the kid. This is a big one. Device on the line, AWP in hand. Monacy, oh, little jump check. Device knows he's been spotted. Going to try and reposition a play around the bomb. Knows he can win this without ever even fighting Monacy. Monacy's the one feeling all the pressure in this clutch. Tap on the bomb. Device yeah. will swing it, and Monacy nails the shot. Perfectly played in the 1v1. Did exactly what he had to do. Great awareness from him there. Taps on it, forces a bit of an engagement, forces the check out of Device. He at least has to pay the respect that that could have been the stick. And that gives him the fight that wins the round for G2. Dude, Monacy just makes every clutch look so easy. And it's even just the micro details that you pointed out. That little jump check behind the box. He's almost impossible to hit, but he gets info. And that's what forces Device into a very uncomfortable post-plant position. That'd be a lot better if he wasn't against an AWP. But Monacy can just tap and take one step too far. What a perfect clutch. G2 needed that. High impact for Hooksy as well, coming in from CT with two kills. And that's for a player who's been having a bit of poor form lately. But G2 have definitely come to play today, and we haven't even really seen the activation of Nico. Not yet. Oh, Hooksy back for more. Wolbang stare. And that's a bit of vengeance, because Nico got tagged up on default earlier by the aforementioned man. Yeah, I mean, Stair's had multiple kills from these Wolbangs, right? So it feels good to, to get one back over him. Easy shot for Monacy. That flash does nothing. Five on three, and Ooh, Monacy re-aggresses. I like this move. You know, it, it looks kind of crazy because you're thinking they're up 5v3, but he wants to remain mobile on this AWP, right? He wants to keep them guessing. And by taking this real estate, he holds a very serious sight line once again over towards the lane. They've kind of been using Monacy as an aerial, de uh, an area denial weapon, right? He just kind of takes these lines, takes this space, and safeguards the fact that it can't be the B play. And so once more, G2 have got a lot of resources leaning over towards mid, leaning over towards Donut. They are more than ready for this A play. The hooks is loose today. 
He's playing, he's playing very well. He's got a lot of swing kills in these rounds, man. He's had openers. He's had these moments like in the last round, for example, where he's coming up through CT. He gets that double kill that opens up the door to the 2v3 retake. He's not been a liability on B. He's often gone one for one at worst case, which is fine. We've seen him on MP9s, you know, BAKs. So decent rounds out of Hootsie right now. You can't be saying anything against it. Seven to five as the Dane screens down his compatriots. Got pistols now for Astralis. Finally broken near the end of the half. Device on a lower boost to offset the angle, but Nico is getting flashed in. I mean, if Nico starts to get activated now, the quietest player in the server, it might be over for Astralis oh, before no. you know it. Hooksy in trouble, two health, just trying to stay away from the wall bangs. I would get out of here, bud. Nice help for Hunter. Seen more, well, not seen anything. Killed more players through smokes. Then he has visually, Blame will catch JKS in red. And that opens up middle. Frustrating death as well, right? Because you're just trying to jiggle mid. Like we kind of talked a great length so far about how G2 are going on these little info gathering missions on this CT side. JKS isn't really looking to like have a have a have an engagement there, right? He's just trying to spot if they're moving out into middle from heaven and he gets one digged out of the round by Blame F. And so suddenly, you know, now you're paranoid about middle. Now that area of the map goes dark. That's why we see G2 having to, to, to pull players over towards this, leaving the B site hold entirely on the back of one man. So it's a retake B set up here for G2. Oh, that, if anything, sells a bit of a fake buzz falling off there, but Nico spotted something up B and we said it was time for him to get activated. This could be that round. Peaked from the site. He's going to be helped out by Hunter as Blame is left in a clutch with a Deagle, finishing what he started. Couple of low players. Blame takes a couple oh. more shots, but Hunter is here to save the day with four <laughs> kills on the anti -eco. Ooh, not nervous at all as Blame puts on a show. You like it when the Deagle hits like that. You yeah. like it when the Deagle's hitting like that. I don't know, when you get three kills deep and you're on your way to some crazy round, it's hard to put a stop to someone when they're in that flow state, when the hands are hot. Hunter, though, he is feeling it in this game. And, uh, and he just remedies it by taking a straight up gunfight. Succeeds where everyone else had failed in dealing with that Blame F Deagle. Someone's getting screamy down there on the other side. Good energy today as we open the group stages for Cologne. A lot of teams we've been waiting to see. And a lot of teams who have earned their spots. In Fnatic just previously and Nine right now taking on Ents. Oh, sees that molly down ramp response just to stall it out. Make sure G2 can't push, but they still look very keen to do so. Nico getting supported by Monacy. You'll see this combo a lot. He'll bounce a flash off the box if Nico wants to go all the way down. But Astralis is using everything they've got to keep this control or at least deny it for G2. They are stubborn, ever present. Bomb is out mid right now. Buzz is looking for an A pick and G2 are trying to force these fights. That's a huge entry for Buzz with a flash. I mentioned it, it comes right through and it offers great results. Hunter has the world on his shoulders and Device has plucked him apart. Plant's gonna come in. Monacy's here is the first man on the scene, the first responder, but everyone else is a long way away. He's gonna get re-smoked over towards CT, so no chance to play his impact early. He's gonna have to wait for everyone else to join up with him now. Device owns this angle. Hooksy is lining up a flash, but it's got to be good. Oh. It blinds Device and it doesn't matter. He doesn't need vision. He does it on feeling, does Device. And they've got a save. And that's a done deal. Unless. Sure, the one kill from Nico makes it an even odds bout, but, but so much time has elapsed. Too much nice time shot. has elapsed. And even though Hooksy knocks out another, it doesn't matter. G2 are not going for this. They didn't have the time. That one kill from Device, surgical and precision through the temple, makes all the difference. It, it just writes that retake off. You never even have to worry about it.
Yeah, Device wins that round, right? It's not just the entry onto Hunter, but the, the first kill and the retake as well. Beautiful shooting from Mr. Consistent. Yeah, I, I want to say as well, in that round, there's, there's a really nice detail where you could just see that Astralis were kind of getting one step ahead of G2. They spotted the, the, the double ramp smoke. Whenever you get double smoked at the doors, it's really feeling like they want to take that space. And that's why you saw Borup just like play ahead of it, play through the smoke. He jiggled ramp. He saw Nico. He saw Monacy. He recognizes they're taking this lane control again. So instead Instead of hanging around and kind of having that space taken off you, Astralis went really fast through mid into the A split, knowing that in that moment, a lot of G2's attention, a lot of their resources are all dedicated to taking the ramp space. So that was a really nice, you know, little mid round adjustment. I think this game's had a fantastic ebb and flow to it so yeah. far, right? With G2 kind of setting the precedent early on, Astralis finding the, the solutions to that. And now you're getting this like trade back and forth of problem solving across these rounds. Yeah, it's not felt like a game dictated a tool by the co uh, economy with you know streaks of four five and four from either team you know everyone's had a bit of a run here in this map and this is what g2 more often than not take that man advantage the head-to-head -head is not even close astralis with only three opening kills in the half still netting six rounds g2 looking for more aggression more opening fights and it's device on the chopping block if they go any further, they're going to run right yeah. into the Dane. And, and, and Astralis know that when they're doing this, uh -oh. they want to take lane. So they try to hang around on Device. They try to have him play the Trigger Discipline, tucked in to fight that. But they kind of recognize that he was on an island. And if anyone was going to fall here, it was going to be him. Now the answer has to be found in a 4v5. You don't have Device. You don't have the AK he was carrying. He said this, this game hasn't really come down to economy, but round 15 might. You know, you're lacking uh, anything to get a play started here if you're yeah. Astralis. Blame can't lurk forever. He needs to get some sort of entry, but they have no supporting utility for him. Borob with the only flash in the round, and he's back behind B doors. Blame's going to walk into this orb. It's a missed shot, but Hunter's here for support. And another one of Astralis' ideas is thrown in the bin. Back to the B war. Good timing on Hooksy's peak. Again, the hero of this CT side. And Nico is right beside as these two players put up what seems to be round 15. Blame and buzz on a retrieval mission. And you can feel that G2 think they've done enough that, th that they've won this round, right? They shut down the mid play. Now they've got the bomb outside of B. They know that they've they've pulled the wall over Astralis's eyes here. So a fantastic back and forth in this game. And in the end, G2 are the ones able to rise above it, winning out this first half at nine to six. As we head into the second half, I'm hoping that we can see Astralis set this precedent all over again, like we got in the first. At least trying to. And keen through the 4K on the pistol round too here. Madden stuck between two. Smoke on Squeaky's gonna make this easy. Snappy wraps around out through huts. They turn towards him and they'll clear him out. Nice flash assist for him and mm. Kai's pressure down ramp. There we go, nine. There we go. There we go, they mauled him. It looked competitive on round two. And uh, But since then, ends took a hold and 
built up a bank, got eight rounds, T side nuke, and you know what I mean? Like, this is so much better, so much better. I mean, Moses put it the best on the desk, just saying that, you know, we can think a little bit about Vertigo, but it was more than just the map pick. It was a fundamental failure, too many opening duels lost. They couldn't hold the mouse. It was too rough of an end to judge them on. Again, though, opening kill goes the way of nine outdoors. Still plenty of time to put together some kind of a CT half. Well, maybe not plenty of time, but some. It's majority ends no matter what. The cross to secret allowed yet again. This time, some spam pressure, and Kai plays it safer in garage. But that also puts more responsibility on the others to hold B. Who's down here? We got Goofy over towards single. And then a quick ramp rotate with... been a battle of brains between Danish IGLs here on Ancient G2 up in the lead as they were able to shut down control over a few key areas of the map, forcing Astralis' hands early on. And even though we've had a little resurgence here in the middle, the streaks mostly belong to the side of G2. You're hoping that that can change now for Astralis as they move on to the CT side of their map pick here on Ancient. But it's reassuring at the same time for G2 who have definitely had a tumultuous time ever since Katowice. You know, a few months of, well, relatively poor performances when you consider the names and the talent on this team. Hopefully here to showcase that in Cologne, the start of a new season. Pistol round, Nico looks for that pick, but Borom immediately smokes him off. And so G2, whatever they had planned is now denied. Even that smoke lands. They can redo it, they can give it another go. Hunter has a second, but the flank is in and Device has already executed that man, dropping his bounty on the ground. There's Hooksy around the corner, Device caught on a reload, might get bailed out or at least traded by Stair. Astralis can reset. They've already caused a ruckus in this round, a four on three where G2 are quaking at their boots. Yeah, every bone in your body is almost telling you that you that you need to try and pressure this deep mid player before he Ooh. gets away. And so JKS will do exactly that. It's traded back by Blame F, who takes it one step further, nails them from the cubby. The bomb now loose in middle, and Nico left in this one all alone. Now he's been a little quiet in this game, has Nico? Hasn't really been in a position where he's had to stand and deliver. But this is that moment. One kill on his way to the 1v3 already. And Astralis. The chills set in now. You just fall back, you play around the bomb, you try to set up the crossfire, you do everything in your power to stop Nico getting these 1v1s. He just doesn't have a lot of time to be walking this right now. They can reset, they can run away once they see him and realize that he has to take the bomb A. They're already splitting up. This is a perfect call for Astralis. Nico needs kills and they're not even going to be offered. This one is unwinnable for Nico. Mm. Even if he finds Blame and he won't do that. Three kills for Blame F. The captain stands tall and Astralis steals the pistol there's nothing more frustrating than that g2 coming in with you know ready to re-execute the a site ready with a get out plan if it doesn't go their way and not only does device flank t spawn but then astralis mid push and they just throw the entire plan into disarray g2 don't even get to show us what they wanted and blame beautiful shooting on that usp And it feels like, you know, that, 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 that's got to be uh, some of the prep they've done here, right? The idea that, oh, well, if there isn't a lot of noise being made over towards the lane, if there isn't that early util, that early presence there, then it's probably their A pistol. And so you just see Device legging it all the way through spawn. Not every day you see the pistol round on Ancient play out where the first fight is it's from the B player flanking T spawn. Yeah. Ooh. Nico trying to get back into this game with a 1D got B. He gets dinked. There's only one rifle in this round. It is on Mr. F. See, that's actually the fight you're kind of hoping for when you're boosted with the Deagle, right? You almost want someone to get flashed in from long. And they don't get the opener. If they did, suddenly there's wind in their sails. There, there's a lot, you know, to, to kind of back up this uh, this opening. 
Instead, now, Astralis know that players were boosted, know that players are ramped, know that G2 are looking for their picks here. And so the flashes are dodged. There's three players inside of the site. Astralis have got the read. They've got it on lockdown. Bomb gets away from G2. And this one looks to be around. They forget about Ouch. Nico's Deagle. Oh, and yeah? Hooksy on the Tech 9. Hang on a second. They'll find a kill apiece. The backstab looks to put Hooksy in a box, and it will deal with him. Nico is overran. And so Astralis, they dust themselves off. They get composed once it gets down to the 2v2. And thanks to that flank, applying a bit of pressure, giving a bit of space over towards Bora at long, they're able to contain it. Yeah, they don't get scared there, Astralis. It would have been easy to be very, or too passive there and let G2 get in the site, get a bomb plant, but very quick flank timing and they play off each other nicely. It's cool that we have, you know, a national team here in the sense of how many Counter-Strike rosters are international right now. You know, this game is so European-centric at the moment and it's rare we see, you know, competitive teams all hailing from one country. Denmark, obviously, one of the few that has just so much talent. We have Heroic right there at the top. But still, outside of Denmark, it's often a rarity. Stair. Keeping things clean on the B side. They have full lane yet again. Oh my goodness. Blame. He goes hunting for the pistol. But it bites back. Still worth keeping this boost here. Nico's got some idea. Oh, can he see? Yep. Oh, Borum in danger. Astralis don't need to push the boat out with this one. They've already burned almost all of their utility. G2 are just trying to waste time as they group back for an A hit. I hope, I hope we can see Nico like just look more comfortable. I'll say that. Like thus far, when we're kind of watching him play, the little moments, these little, uh, these little tiny, tiny differences that sometimes would get him that like Im impossible shot that opens up around the shot over the lip of the smoke. He's not quite been finding them. The rhythm's just a little off. So I hope that we can get a Nico that builds into this series because he is uh, such a key piece of the puzzle to G2. It goes without saying. Device. Device just playing the long con and waiting in at the back of the site. He'll yeah. farm them up. And even though Nico adds one to the tally, he's got to do so much more. End of the line as Buzz swings him wide. And so Astralis stick the landing on these conversions. They now tie this game up at nine all as G2 bring out the guns for the first time. Exciting precedent being set. Astralis being very aggressive in their pistol and anti-ecos, taking B lane in all of these rounds. Obviously, imagine a bit of a change of pace here. They, so they started their T side by attempting mid takes, and the Hunter did such a great job of denying that. Will G2 go back to what is uh, quite a standard on this T side? Hunter looks interested, selling it by himself. Was G2 go very quick up the lane as well. Blame on an off angle catches his, but continued aggression from Stair as he gets flashed through on the cave and takes another opener. Trying to take the AK, lost the smoke. Nico will not forget nor forgive. And that's such an important kill. Without mm. that, this round is dead in the water. Now G2, they have their foot in the door. Yeah, considering how chaotic that was over towards the lane with the flashes being rained over from Barup, who was throwing some some gnarly lineups there to, to kind of tee up stare for those fights, combined with, you know, dancing around the smoke. They do well to contain it, minimizing the damage that this wild push into the lane does for Astralis. G2 now look to group, and they've left it quiet for long enough that Astralis still have to consider everything here in this four on three. I'll keep the defense split 2-2 with Blame F just keeping a watchful eye of that cross to Red Room. But this is a G2 rounds win. I mean, they're going to get dry fights into B with AKs. These are the rounds G2 are made for. Honestly, I'm through the ramp and Nico trying to gain entry into the cave. 50-50 angle and he'll choose wrong. There's oh. a flash teed up out of device and that allows Buzz a very easy path. Him and Borup lock down B between the two of them. And they'll repel that G2 offensive. You know, even though, because you, you talk about the, the dry fights up through ramp, it was true that the players in B were all out of their util. But that's where these guys that had been leaning over towards that A site who hadn't been pressured in the in the round yet, Blame F still at a full belt. Device still had some util left on him. 
He rotates over, he tees them up, makes those fights very easy, very comfortable for the site players. This is a convincing start to this second half out of Astralis. And once again, G2 need a hero in a round with very little to work with. There's only so many chances they're going to give Nico's Deagle. Stair can smoke this off as well. They'll double swing it. There's a shot there, but Nico can't connect anything. Bob's coming back in through T-Sport. G2 look like they want to end B in this round. They've got just enough for a full execute. Nice on a back B boost. Should be good for an opening kill here as G2 line up the exec util. Is Monacy going to get on his head there? Smokes in, device with his shot, and G2 run up the ramp. And now you feel like, you know, your thoughts about how this round was going to pan out are correct if you're Astralis. They had so many bodies ready to reinforce B. When you see that first man around the corner at ramp, you're kind of rubbing your hands together, you're smiling to yourself. Oh, we read them like a book again, didn't we? Astralis. Really picking up some steam now, really picking up some momentum in this second half. G2 yet to win a round. Now this was, you know, similar to how Astralis' first half started. It took a couple of rounds to find that footing, to problem solve, to shut down some of these avenues. And while we're here, you want a, a horrible stat to contextualize the current form of G2? Go on. Other than Cloud9, G2 have not beaten a top 10 team in a BO1 or a BO3 since when? The answer, the Katowice Grand Final over Heroic. G2 have literally not been a top 10 team. They beat Cloud9 twice, sure. Uh, both times in Copenhagen. Wow. Well, that's a long time, Harry, since Katowice. Wow. And G2 have had some rough maps since. They've, had, they've gone close. They've had some close matches, but uh, in terms of converting it, you know, they, they, they've been great gatekeepers, but this team is not a gatekeeper team, Harry. This is a team yeah. built and succeeding with championships in their pocket. World Finals at the end of last year. Katowice at the start here. Names that should have trophies in their walls, mm. but 2023 for G2 has been very poor since Katowice. We were hoping. I mean, I was reinvigorated with confidence after that first half. I'm starting to lose it now. Astralis are taking the mantle. G2 going for a rush. The timing's okay. off, though. Okay. Stairs caught completely off guard. And Nico finally has had enough. Double entry into B. He heard us talking smack. Yeah, I think he's hit that point where he's realized, you know, this is where I, I need to have my round. I need to have my impact. And so he plays it a lot looser. He's got full faith in his ability, just coming up ramp with his team behind him. He knows that if he gets that kill that tips the scales in their favor on the exec, then the round is G2's. And so what a great time to, ha to have Nico dig deep and do that single-handedly, you know, puts around on the board, closes this gap between them and Astralis. And, but I think most importantly, just regains you a bit of presence in this game because since you've gotten into the second half, it's been a sea of Astralis wins with nothing in it for G2. So a much needed, you know, reset to that momentum. Yeah. And a new thing to worry about if you're Astralis as well, right? You haven't really had to contest with anyone looking to go on these wild pushes through smokes over towards B. Not really something you've been worried about. For the most part, I think it's been a, a pretty safe and slow T side thus far for G2. That one changes the nature of what you're waiting for, what you're anticipating in these rounds. Yeah, just solid Uto. It's nothing too flashy mm. other than the entries, right? It's just the molly that forces a reposition, and then that's the first domino. Borup, if he wants to win the round, he has to go through, through the smoke and at least kill one, or G2 are gonna have five players in a post plant. Great parting for Monacy, best mid spawn, and takes that quick pick up top mid. Things are changing for G2, so you hope. A man up, and they go back to B through the spawn, leaving Hunter to lurk. Undecided, unconfirmed for now. Son, that's a little awkward as they wasted one of these smokes over in middle, right? And that's going to leave them with, with just one smoke grenade on Hooksy for the remainder of the round. Got to use it wisely. 
So that's got to be saved when they eventually decide where this play ends up. And with everyone else, you know, including this bomb kind of leaning back towards A, it feels like it's going to be the A play. You saw Astralis trying to take mid. You know you've stifled that. Bob just eats a flash and doesn't even bite. So unconvinced by that mid play. Nico still lurking outside of B. Reliant on his team to actually get into this bomb site right now. Astralis, they're starting to figure it out. They're starting to get curious. They're clearing the B lane. That will free up Device to be in Temple just as G2 set up in A main. We might have this Nico Borob fight, but ultimately it won't matter as much as this A hit. Yeah, and because they only have one smoke here, you had to pick an angle. You can't deal with all of them. Even though Nico gets Big. this kill with some time left. Hang on, they have the to bomb go actually going to come back. Now They've got a full run. They've got a run on this. Even slowing down for a second could cost them. And Monacy did. Got to go through Rooting mid. in through yeah. middle, yeah, it's the only option. And now, Astralis, Ooh. it all becomes clear. The lack of that smoke at CT gave them open sight lines. They know that it's not the A play anymore, so it's got to be B. It's got to be where Nico resides. Can he hold the sight long enough? Oh! Nico is dead. Stair has destroyed G2 in this round. And Hunter, as he plugs in these digits, he's got to find his way in the 1v2. Wow. Device will not let him have it. That Beautifully is done for Astralis. Absolute insanity for Stare. How does he find three kills? Nico's hiding in the back of the bomb site the entire time, and he just swings out to help his team at the perfect time. It felt like every player was there within a second, and Stare eviscerates all three. Sure, they get the bomb plant, but that was never going to happen. Trapped in on default with Device locking you in. Stare does the impossible. Crazy. That's Just, why they picked this kid up. Yeah, uh, you know, that's why he was touted. It's, you know, the, the kind of big up and comer that everyone should be looking at in Denmark. Beautifully done. My oh my. Three different engagements, three different positions. One that you cannot be ready for. You cannot account for. You didn't know where Nico went in amidst all that downtime over towards B. That is raw reaction in that moment. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Very impressive stuff from Stair, from Astralis in that one. And, uh, you know, it actually ended up mattering a hell of a lot that G2 lacked the proper util to run the exec into A. Yeah. Because that CT sightline was open for the rotating players, they they knew within within five seconds of G2 up and leaving the A site that that play wasn't coming in anymore. They could leave one player to hold an entire bomb site, an entire sightline. That gets so awkward for G2. Such a tilt round as well. G2 needs to keep their head on because it's all just changed now. Astralis coming back in and responding after G2's first T round. Nico running him up towards middle. Makes it right past the cave smoke. Astralis threw a ramp uh, door smoke from Spawn, but they're not playing with it. Stare in the cave, it's device holding ramp. Beckoning G2 in with these wall bangs. Nico doesn't bite. Device swaps out as well, so where they expect the M4 up close in cave, it's now an AWP and even a third rotation device in a head to head. Monacy makes it look easy as usual. And Stair getting anchored in here as Buzz comes in for support. They were trying to walk close top ramp, right? They, they almost wanted Flash. to try and take this ramp fight, and it was meant Ooh. to be supplemented with that flashbang. But G2 are ready for it, and Buzz is overran, overwhelmed. B crumbles before your very eyes. And this one's G2's all damn day. Remaining Astralis players just far too far removed from this one. And yeah, Monacy catches catches Astralis at the perfect moment, right? When you see this on the replay, that's Device kind of walking the angle. He wants to take the sight line down it, right as his teammate, who's crept up close, looks to come around the angle, looks to come around the corner, but they never get there. They never get to the end destination. They're cut down in that little, you know, minute yeah. period in between. If Device dies, you know, second or two later, his teammate's immediately going to swing. Mm. Guaranteed trade Monacy can re-peak with Buzz's flash, but Astralis is just bailing water out of the boat at that point they get a reflash in but jks hits two crucial entry kills and again g2 break their way into b it's been both their rounds in this t side their only way in and at least it's done enough to finally put astralis on pistols should not be justifying this by round device if he full ecos he can get an orb next we have two guns for astralis to play around with and so g2's chance to level the playing field make this 12 all
Honestly, had to spawn for this mid fight Ooh. again. This time, pulls a little shy of the opener. Just off the mark. They've been keen to just throw themselves out cave here, but they've not got a flash oh, to do it. they've heard that. They know that Monacy is floating around. He is the only yeah, guy yeah. in middle. There is no one here to help him. This AWP could get dropped. And in a world where the AWP oh, gets Nico. dropped over, suddenly this is all up in the air. Oh, Nico what? tried to move in and lend a helping hand, but he is deleted. And Monacy is fed to the wolves. And they're going back. They know that all of B has been cleared. So even though it's not a stack right now, Astralis know everything is going on. I like this call for G2 just because they might catch Astralis resetting and flanking. And that's where Buzz is found. It's one step back in what is a three on five, but it should never have been this hard in the first place. Stralis have made this round interesting. Can they do any more? Borup's got something. Second kill. Two on four for G2. Their whereabouts known by Stralis. Yeah, you're already at the point in the round where like you're almost kicking yourself. You know, this should have been easy. If this was a rifle round, you would be looking to save in a round like this in a 2v4 with so little time left, so little room where you're boxed in. But because it was only pistols when you came in and this is a round that you have to convert to tie this game up, G2 have to attempt this. They feel that way. They're looking for the room in middle. They know that Astralis have up and left, but that just, that gives you a new problem. Now it's... These fights later in the site, when you get into a bomb site, when you're trying to get that bomb down. As long as they don't overthink it, G2 have a bomb plant and they have smokes down and a, you know, a, a winnable two on four right now. They just need to get a guaranteed plant in quick. Hooksy will put it in. Everyone's here. Blame on the flank, a late backstab, two kits. It's not like Astralis are uncomfortable mm. about playing retake, but they've given G2 the room. Will they regret it? Yeah, one and done is not enough here. You need multi-kills out of the surviving oh, players. Yes. And Justin never fires a bullet. Hooksy boxed in, boxed in a corner. And Borup, even though the claws are out for Hooksy, Borup will overwhelm him. Astralis go into that round with just two rifles and they come out with it, laughing all the way to the bank. These two new boys of Borup and Stair have won some seriously important rounds in this map. On, on T side, it was Borup especially getting some huge entries towards B. Stair with that lockdown on the CT side a couple of rounds ago. And now Borup puts on three as well in an eco round with two saved guns. This was supposed to be G2's chance to just level up. Now Astralis are trying to run away with their map pick after all and send us to Inferno with one in the pocket. A must win by for G2 or they'll be up pistols at 14-11. Hunter back over the smoke in mid. Blame is a lot more passive this time. G2 take cave with intent. But the bomb is still outside of A, so we're far from a commitment in this round. This is some of the strongest map control G2 have had early, yeah. right? And that's something to go off of in this round. Now it's going to come down to this first fight and Monacy. It's this awkward 50-50 angle. Again. And once again, oh, look oh, to be dear. fruitful for Astralis. Oh. Little ugly from Borup. Monacy not able to punish that swing out into the cave. They play through the molly. They play ahead of it. This is a very uncomfortable round for Stair. He is kind of in this no man's land in the sight. So wow. they try to tee him up with flashbangs. He's going to take the space back. Beautifully done from Stair. Creating something from nothing for Astralis. Doing it all. Just JKS oh. left standing. But he's going to bring it down to a 1v1. Blame F, full HP and all the reasons to win this round. All JKS has is this plant. Gonna back up, look to play around it. Ready for the cave swing, and even though he lands the tag, it's Blame F, the captain, with one hell of a celebration. <laughs> he knows winning a round like that is so important. That crushes G2, that yeah. crushes them. They're gonna have the plant, they're gonna have another buy, but yet they're struggling to make ends meet now, Hugo. Yeah, Stair, again, another 3K on the B-bomb site. That pushed through before the flash. He hunts Monacy on the AWP, and then he goes back in for more with a flashback. That's such a ballsy play for Stair. This guy is not scared of G2 right now. And the results are speaking for themselves. More and more clutch rounds coming through for Astralis. Another 1v1. <laughs> And the energy is definitely good on the Danish side. Wipe off that spit. 14-11. G2's desperate buy. Full AKs. Lacking util. No AWP. And really, the only rounds they've had on these T sides are two, you know, 
little bee pops through smokes with a couple of well-placed entries from Nico and from JKS. Without that, this T side is yeah. lackluster, and no. Astralis have been fine to take mm. everything away from them. The, 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 the T half has been very worrisome, yeah. It's been such a, a, a kind of individual performance based T side, right? If you're not getting these crazy openers, if you're not winning the ludicrous clutches, and I have no doubt that's going to be the feeling in the G2 camp, this idea of you know, if this map gets away from them, damn, you know, we just needed to win one or two of those clutch rounds. You got to wonder, you know, why is it coming down to that? Why, is, why are those the, the big swing ones? In a lot of Astralis' T side, the rounds they found were pretty damn clean. In the same way that G2's only real rounds have stemmed like from that. Nico going mad through smokes, this one starts off that way. Hooksy oh. will get no smoked that way. mid. Hunter, no. You couldn't see him. Your, your, your stomach sinks at that. You've just let him get away. You've just let him get away. That goes unpunished. And, and so that advantage that Nico worked for, that advantage that Nico squeaked out, even though you were ready for the mid push, you, you don't catch it to maintain this man advantage. Nico's got to be making it cool right now. Like, get to me. You've got to play around my position. I'm so deep in the site. They they know about me, but uh, he hears that ramp flash, and that should alert you to that Astralis have gone for ramp info. Borob's leaning back to go gamble Blame gets that timing check on the Hunter, who's had a pretty hard half here despite his first looking so good. Four on three. Borob keeps his eyes back on that B bomb site, and he's got Blame by his side. Good flash. On this, on this T side, Nico's been the guy to, to, to find rounds for G2. Uh, and this one's got to be no exception, right? He started the round off taking space at B. If he can box them in a little bit along, if he can force a bit of respect on this retake, that would nice. mean the world to G2. It's modesty oh. to find it, and Nico follows up with a gnarly tap. Can't go any further, however. And now it is left onto Monacy. Doesn't have the big green. Oh, he would no, love it right him. now. And they've heard these steps. They know he's out at long. Now it's a bit of a mind game. Bomb not planted for oh, Monacy. Dear. Nearly catches Blame crossing in. But Monacy has got to push up. He's got to close the gap. And in doing so, he plays right into the hands of Buzz. That is Blame playing the numbers as he does, right? Even though his style has been under critique for years. That is such a risky move. Realizing I have the kit. Monacy is out of position. I know who he is and if i make it to default i win the round because buzz just has that guaranteed cover he jumps he almost gets picked out of the air but blame just sticks it in the middle in front of monacy that one hurts and the numbers, they're all coming up Astralis right now. Four shots to close this out, I have no doubt. Yeah, the, the death tower of this is a battle of individuals versus a, a team, you know, and they yeah. said that that's how Astralis are going to have to win, and that is exactly how Astralis are winning this. Four and one on opening duels for Nico. I mean, he's found another in this T side. He has been so good at finding 5v4s, but more often than not, G2 can't convert them. We're going to go for an A execute now, but Astralis is just so stacked. Okay, this time, thankfully, they have the util, and actually, they're, they're kind of it's almost like this Mao's pistol strap where they throw a donut smoke over that lands mid-side donut. So that's the post plant. But will they ever get there? Well, the bomb's now going back. They're switching this up on the fly, faking out the A hit. Bomb returning nice. to join up with Nico over here at B. Him and Hunter have walked right on through, and Stare is not aware yeah. of this. The timings are everything here. How quickly do they learn Ooh. about the long play? Borup ready for one, not ready for oh. two. And it's Hunter who digs the grave of Astralis in this round. Device looks to close the net, make it a little closer. Gets spotted from the site onto the AWP now. Going to have to try and slice it and dice a way back into this for Astralis. Got to be surgical with the AWP, oh. and they swing him together. They count it down, and Device's death certificate is signed. G2, they've done this one. They've done enough to walk it in. It's the family affair of Nico and Hunter going for that double B push that really throws Astralis for a loop. They've been used to seeing Nico taking space, getting away with room over towards B. They weren't ready for a second man to be with him. You can't say you're not worried about getting collated when you go for that 3 2 one swing on long. Luckily for them, Device just pulled the pistol back out and it wasn't ready to fire. But that could have gone very wrong for G2. Great entries for Hunter. Like I said last round, I mean, he had, he had 18 kills first half. He, he found, he's just found as many kills in that round as he has in the entirety of the T side so far. So, big 3k. The side-by-side side walk into B for him and Nico, even though Astralis consider that possibility, it comes through too late. Nice A fake into a B hit. But Astralis call out their final timeout and try and get ahead of it. G2 
have been given a good opportunity here. Strauss will have a buy, but it's lacking on two. So really, G2 win this round, and we're looking at a 30-round game right now, at least. Yeah, it's in these moments you, you find out who really has the metal. Because while Astralis have been pulling these rounds off and, and streaking them together since getting onto the second half, this is where the pressure is at its highest. This is the round that decides if you're going to have an easy path to just winning this map before it even becomes a problem. Hunter going to try to get out middle again. It's been a fruitful fight yeah. for G2 for the most part. And this one's no exception. Buzz on the receiving end of that opening. Just some really loose openings for G2. It's not like they're setting them up with flashbangs. They're not super convoluted. It's not even really Monacy going for picks, you know? Hunter running through mid smoke. Nico going up ramp. Nico chasing cave. But they've continued to get five on fours for G2 and untraded at that. G2 just stay grouped. Keep that trade potential. They move back to B. Device is here, though. Hooksy might be in a world of hurt if he tries to cross. Great molly, though. Ticks onto device. Forces that repause. He wants to go back for more. Ooh, they're making this very punishing for device. Knowing what he would do if he had an AWP, what his best options are on the most likely site that G2 set their eyes on. Yeah, it's forced him into this kind of awkward angle. He has support nearby. It's a donut pick. But the bomb's still coming back B, going into the Astralis stack, and there's not really enough time left to change your mind on this. Device wins that okay. first one, and now can re-smoke the cave. Stair can hold that. That frees up Device to go and play for this ramp fight. Uh -oh. G2 are uh -oh. going to try and change this one. Oh, the bomb's going all the way back through spawn. I really don't know if there's time know. for this, JKS. I don't know, Justin. He's got to have his trainers on. He's got to be running as fast as he can. Yeah. This will be a buzzer beater of a round it's if lost. G2 want to do it. It's lost. There's nothing you can do. 20 seconds on they, B rotate. They, they can't do it. They can't do it. They've lost this map. They've lost this map to time. Astralis didn't even realize that they were winning the map right now. That is mad. They'd relegated this to the save, but it gets so muddled. It gets so lost in translation for G2 that they run out of time. And that's what gives it over to Astralis. You don't win maps like that every day. Wow. Dia took so much damage, he's rerouted back down to the B site instead. Did they not see anything outside? Like no. the CTs? Oh. No, he didn't see him. Just, uh -oh. just knew with the utility they were nearby. It's a big timing maybe for Kai. Nurse was just spotted. Nurse thinks he's got the element of surprise, but I mean, easy pickup. I mean, too easy of a pickup. <laughs> just stood in the side of the wall, looking the wrong direction. So they, they just misread what was going on out there, and but now that... We see these lurks come in again. They're using the sort of Vertigo-esque style, the double lurk, to their benefit on um, Nuke. So, okay. Let's see what happens now. I mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good yeah. angle. Well caught. I feel like good work, Jay. Dia's going to find Hades downstairs. This one's not wrapped up yet. Even though it felt like just for a second, Nine had it all in control because they're getting these funny flanks. It's getting to the bomb site that's still going to serve up an issue. Yeah. And especially when you have 15 seconds to spare. And you can't get control site. d -Hawk could end this right now yeah, by low. himself. He's low. But the bomb is going to come through secret. Oh, they open the doors. Oh, they clear okay. him out. Oh. Then they get the vent kill. Snappy Wait, on time, his own. Time. He's found the timing. He get him off the there. plant. It's exposed. Oh, the Kylar turns it. Oh, there we go. Goodness gracious.
exposed. That spray down happens, bombs dropped, and it's Ents laughing their way to map three. Now that suddenly they're realizing they're gonna have to- Stages do not get bigger than this. Astralis with stars in their eyes and a victory on their pick of Ancient, but what a bitter end for G2 Machu. They lose out to time. What are my bloods waffling about? What the hell is this last round? What am I looking at? It's not even the first time. What am, why am I looking at the late rotate 4v3 no plan situation? We were walking down from the green room. We looked at the we looked at the time. We looked at JKS in spawn and we said, well, ladies and gentlemen, time to turn up your microphone and put on your headset. You are going to the desk now. What the hell is this? You sound surprised. You're watching TV. I, I am surprised. Yeah, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. I think we've seen that time and time again. This is obviously horrible Counter Strike coming out of G2. Mismanaged. I don't know if it's someone else, but something is not flowing within G2 right now. We prefaced it coming into this segment. Coming into the game, we said that something is off about G2. The energy is weird. The play is weird. And what we saw right here, another abysmal performance. Should we jump straight into round 22? Because uh, this wasn't just, you know, an isolated incident at the end. It happens earlier on in the game. Yes, that's the problem. And I think that's why I may be exactly in my reaction because it ha has been a theme throughout this game. Round 22 is a similar situation. You see here, nine seconds left. Nico is already on site and Stair has a beautiful multi kill to close it. But what we don't see, and I just want to set the context as well for the viewers, is that in this very round, Nico had taken the B side probably 30 or 20 seconds prior to this late rotation who comes in. And it, the time is so pressured that, yes, arguably Nico makes a mistake not clearing the angle, but G2 is not leaving themselves enough breathing room. If your call cannot sustain the bomb falling down, you're not making the right call. You're not leaving yourself enough time. And that was a problem the entire T side for them. And I think it's absolutely when you say, you know, are you surprised to see that out of G2? Because as Matthew just perfectly prefaced, the fact that they keep on doing this same mistake is like, man, that's, uh, yeah, so disappointing to lose out of the map. It's that getting way. slightly annoying to watch, to be completely honest, because we look at towards, towards G2 and, and we know it's one of the teams with the highest potential in terms of player material. You know, the individual level within that lineup is, is enormous. Uh, so fact of the matter is that we talked about contrast coming into the game. We talked about the device, Monacy, the blame F Hooksy. We saw many examples where Astralis had perfect synergy, perfect team play. We're good at flashing for each other, mm. constantly setting each other up. I didn't see at a single point in this game G2 do the same thing. Honda had a couple of cool rounds, individually speaking. JKS had a good start to the game. Nico came out a couple of rounds as well. But every single positive I can highlight from this game came from an individual of G2. Whereas for Astralis, it was the team play. It was the synergy. It was the flashing for each other. It was the setting up each other. Like, sure thing Astralis is winning this game. They're the better team right here. And Device looking really good on this ground as well. It was a theme coming into things of how Manasi, you know, was going to stack up versus him. Um, this kind of went exactly with the picture we were painting prior. Yeah, absolutely. The contrast is very one-sided here. Uh, Manasi had one clutch that we obviously will remember, but after this, it was complete darkness. Whereas Device is doing what a top tier sniper is supposed to provide, which is consistent frags, yeah. consistent inputs. You have 25 kills. I don't remember most of them, but that's because <laughs> he's just doing the job. Like, I don't care about making movies. I, there are people out there really good at it. I'm sure you can edit, mm. you can make it look good. But it's just device, when device is included in the stack, in the pack that's either attacking a bomb site or retaking a bomb site, he is so good at guaranteeing you a trade. He knows where to position himself, he knows how much space to live with his teammate, how to assist. Do I have a flash for you, Stair. A flash for you. I'll be right there. You get picked. I trade you immediately. The amount of right decisions he makes in this moment is almost flawless. I feel like he has a 90% right decision making in this game. He is every fantasy player's red dream, to be completely honest, because <laughs> he will show up every single time and deliver the kills. You're talking 25 kills in this game right here. I agree, you don't remember the kills, but you just see in this highlights reel, it's impact after yes. impact after impact. A double kill here and there. No, it's not crazy. It's not flickery. It's not no scopes coming in left, right, and center. It's just Device doing what he's been doing the past seven years in his career. He's Mr. Consistent and he's the biggest difference maker right now for us. And then we flip on over to G2 and you talk about consistency. Um, it was basically just inconsistency across mm. the pack, right? I feel like Hunter was the only kind of sole survivor to be stepping up, which is good after, you know, Copenhagen. He didn't look great there, but the fact that nobody's really alongside him. Not great. Yeah, it just seems disjointed, right? Because you're right, Honda didn't play a great tournament in, in Copenhagen whatsoever. We were highlighting him as being one of the few players who didn't show up at all. This game, he was starting off well. He found a lot of impact with the M4, doing a decent job trying to control the mid area together with JKS at times mm. and Nico as well. But again, it's just it's one player there, one player here. It's it's never two, three players working together, flashing for each other, etc., etc. It's just individual Counter Strike, and sure thing, you can be good, but you can't win against the Stralis when you're playing it. Yeah, if we are trying to be uh, into 
bit actually honest here. I feel like the CT side of G2 was decent. Like yeah. The scoreline might not be incredible, but there were a few of these moments where there is this synergy that you're talking about. I think whenever they decided to fight for mid control against Astralis, they did a decent job at that. You see, it wasn't just Hunter. Sure, we had this little package where he gets two kills through the smoke, but that's one round. There okay. were rounds where they actually committed to the fight. They did it together. So the CT side was fine. It's just on the creativity side of the T side. This is where things kind of fell apart. They got two rounds on the T side. Two rounds T side Ancient. I think we both agree right now that Ancient have moved into an era where the T side is stronger than ever before. It's not a CT side dominant map anymore. I'm looking at it as being a 50-50. Fact of the matter is that we said coming into this game that Hooksy has been struggling, trying to build an identity within G2. The T sides have looked rather rough, and now they're coming with this performance on Ancient only getting two T rounds against Astralis. It's not okay. It's not good enough for G2. They have to step up right now. So, Matthew, is there a chance for G2 to kind of change their fate coming on to Inferno? You said they were a little bit cornered uh, in terms of the veto. Is this kind of a good map for them? I mean, it remains a good map for G2. Like, I'm not standing here saying, listen, this is a tool guaranteed. Absolutely not. It's not the tune of the song. But I still think that this lack of creativity that we've seen on Ancient shouldn't happen on Inferno. Like if we're talking about the T-side, which they're very likely going to start on, I'm hoping, and by hoping, I mean I'm demanding more creativity on the side of finishing these rounds. I think it's a map that they know how to handle. Hooksy has a couple of great calls. I think whenever they win one or two hard rounds, Hooksy is very good at doing momentum-based call. You'll see them pick mm. up the pace, do this fast a wrap, fast banana fight with Nico being thrown into the fight. Whenever they get these opportunities, they seize them and they're hard to play against. But Astralis is no slouch either. They're pretty much a client. They told a lesson to Liquid when we were in Copenhagen watching them, so yes. it's going to be a tight fight. Yeah, me too. I, I agree with that. I think G2 is a force to be reckoned with on Inferno, and even though they are struggling right now, it, it used to be a safe haven for them, so there's enough quality. Nico is, is usually dominating Banana, so it's not going to be easy for Astralis, but as Matthew said, last time we saw them play the T-side, they took a 9-1 lead against Team Liquid on Inferno T-side, so they're not bad either. I want to tempt you guys with some predictions oh, in this ooh. one. Is this 2-0 for Astralis? You think G2 are going to bounce back on this. All right, mm. I'll, uh, I'll put my money where my mouth is. I'll say 2-0. Uh, okay. I had Astralis winning this series. I thought we would go to three and then the map will be a little bit tested enough on Ancient. And once again, I just think from coast to coast, the floor of Astralis right now is higher. Like, who is the weakest link in Astralis? Yeah. Who, who is the weakest player in Astralis weaker than Hooksy individually? No, he's not. Absolutely I feel like not. we'll know when the first five rounds. If Nico has 10 kills when the first five rounds, I'll say G2. If not, it's going to be Astralis 2. Well, Wait, we are on the precipice of that second map that has been brought into the mix by G2 and it is Inferno, but not before we head to a quick break. When we are back, we'll see if these gentlemen are right and if Astralis are going to take it in two. game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opper, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? You're sneaking. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Bossy? You're not ready for that. Hey. Oh my god! What the fuck? Someone is just walking. We have the bomb. <laughs> what the fuck? You have hundreds of people. Nice! Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. One minute. Dead. Yeah, he said 24. What the fuck? Yep. Run to the fake. Chunk the bomb. Oh. Yeah. Hold the bomb, hold the bomb. Yep. So close. 
This guy's like even! This guy's like yeah, seven is so good. That's there's two bind on my mouse. What? Here. Oh no, we're slow. No way. Like seven is so good. He's smoothing on you guys. You're preferring new passion. Planning, eh? <laughs> what the fuck? He's fine. 4 HP. Oh, the clock expert. No. Take okay. down the clock expert. Oh, one more bailing his teammate. 10 seconds, I have defusing. Yes, yes. Oh, oh my god. god. One more round, bro. I'm camping too much. I'm dead. Oh my god, dude, he's, he's using shotgun. Just as the clock wore down against them on that last map of Ancient Patience now wears thin for G2 to right their wrongs as we move in to their map pick of Inferno. A, a bad omen that the new look Astralis squad seemingly had them best in the synergy department here to open up this series. It was a, a real team effort from Astralis, everyone pulling their weight and everyone locking it down for G2, some glaring problems. And considering a lot of these interviews have talked about fixing the basics, losing the entire map to time is certainly uh, not, not boding well to no, that end. Uh, G2 have what we know they have, incredible raw firepower, but yeah, Synergy definitely has been called into question at times and some of the calls being made there confusing us. Estrella is coming in with a fresh squad and confident display, but Nico answers with some shots of his own. Three kills of the P250 all down middle and Stair is a dead man. He just needs to make it so. G2 can just run their way at him. Knives are out and Nico comes in with a bang. Yeah, quite the way to start this off for Nico. He is pissed after how that last map <laughs> ended and he takes it all out on Astralis to open a knife kill in the pistol round. Yeah, you could While y'all studied planting bombs, Nico studied the blade. Ah, the samurai stands tall. But yeah, it, it did hurt for, for Nico and towards the end of that T side, some of those you know, entry rounds that you know, just five on fours, not traded, and then G2 would still somehow lose it in a post part. The strikes would pull off some clutch or some, you know, uh, late retake. It hurt. So good to see Nico's coming in confident despite that first map. Got two players on a layered setup on B and a third in spawn. Device is trying to scout down middle, but G2 are ready to waltz in. Smoke will give them a path to do so. Hooksy just goes through theirs. Nico's right there as well. He will check for a second man, fortunately enough. And as Inferno often can be, this round is decided off of the entries. 
Yeah, just going to bow out of it, run this force back again. Even though G2 went into the stack, they deal with it nicely. They deal with it cleanly. And so no worries out of the gate. They at least find the pistol and the conversions here. All looking good to do that. And you hope at least that, you know, after after going low, right, after kind of hitting the hitting the bottom, you can pick yourself back up. Yeah, it's only up from that first map, safe to say. It surely yeah, couldn't get worse. Especially, you know, if this has ignited a bit of a fire under Nico, right? I think it was clear that first half Nico and second half Nico were two different people, right? Uh, back yeah. in ancient, it was very much the case that you, you kind of saw that determined look in his eye where he's like, okay, I'm going to have to do some heavy lifting here. This is also an event where it brings in a conversation we have at majors where, you know, oh, are these playing teams more warmed up and more ready to go? Nico, this, this is first, you know, game of the the tournament coming through. Astralis have had a couple of days of prac. They know the setups. They know the studio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a conversation there at least. Nice shot for device. And that's, I think, you know, part of the reason we see so many upsets in the early legend stage, you know, BO1s of the major. But of course, this is a BO3 as we enter Cologne groups. And so if Astralis have actually got the metal to take down G2, they've got to do it here on Inferno or on the decider of Nuke. And safe to say, G2 certainly have the experience as a roster on this map. There's no doubt about that. So you'd like to think... They can level it out here. Looking for a third round. Should be easy. There's only devices scout. And right now it's on the wrong side. So G2 a hop, skip, and a jump away from this 3-0 lead. Anticipating a B stack, but it might not matter because device is about to oh, ooh, walk he in. Could find. Yeah, he's, he's walking missed past. the timings. Yeah. He's missed the timing. It's Buzz is about to uncover that. Oh, they're in the middle, but hang on. Nades pulled for JKS. Now okay. Device comes back, and Device, they're not ready for him here. Oh, oh that could have been a kill. Second one will land. Now he's got support from the USP. Why is this round so close, I hear you ask? <laughs> That's a very good question. Hunter's looking to put it all to rest right now over in middle, Fire but he's run down by the USP. I'm not worried. Hello, this is, this is a 2v2. You're worried? It's a round that Astralis are going to attempt, I'll tell you that much, because why the hell not? They came into this with nothing. Other than those few save pistols. Now a Galil and a Scout to make it a bit more interesting. The Scout is going to hit like the AWP as well. Everyone on G2 sweating. They know they shouldn't feel stressed in this round. And yet they do. Backing off, playing around the bomb. They know there won't be a kit here, right? There's nothing else. And so this is very much the right way to have played it. They don't give up the fights. They don't give any way back into this 2v2. And even though Buzz is hanging around, looking to do some damage on the exit, they won't be ready for him, so he's going to get nice. away with a kill. Honestly, so a lot of damage done in a round that uh, Astralis had really nothing to go off of in. Yeah, that was an excellent round for Astralis. He could not have asked for more uh, when they come in with, you know, save Scout and some pistols. So, yeah, some awkward timings in mid. You know, G2 expect the B stack there, so they throw an exec, they go back. It's just the awkward timings that get hit. And again, we talk synergy for Astralis. Lovely 3-2-1 in middle to catch Hunter. That's the reason the round's interesting. He could have just Mac 10 swept them under the rug, but they kill him, they grab two rifles, and they make it expensive. So, nice round for Astralis, but it won't matter unless they win the follow-up, G2 can continue to amass bank. Marcy on an orb as soon as he can, knowing Device will certainly be beating him there. Orb will start on the short side. A Device classic. Oh, Nico burning, but Molly on its last tick, and Nico on his last legs. Blame cuts him off. Opener for Astralis, and they can opt to concede the banana, go for a boost on B. Device still has all of middle. And if Monacy tries to uh, take this, he's going to have to be flashed into the angle. Or else this will be a fight that Device wins to, to further extend this lead for Astralis. Instead, they decide to not bother fighting mid. They're going to go back. 
and join up with Hooksy. You know, they're, they're limited in resources here, right? That's kind of the big problem. You don't have the ability to go and fight for this top mid control. You would need favorable trades or, or the flat out opener, and you don't have the utility to sustain that in the round. So they go back to the one bit of real estate they've had since the start over here at B, and Astralis are ready for this. They've pulled a third player over. Perfect timing. Stair lets them all in as well. No one checks it. Hunter goes underneath. He still hasn't even fired. Hunter won't check this, but he's been hurt. So Stair swivels and takes that kill, but his teammates fall inside of the site. Gap in the smoke. Monacy can exploit it, but Stair jumps back to safety to play retake. We've got flashes. We've got kits, but we've also got Monacy posted at quad. Oh, first shot lands. Monacy. Deals with Borup, and now he learns about Devices Orb all the way back at CT. So as far as they're concerned, ooh, ooh. they've just got to worry about this rotate through ruins. Well, bang or lose. That's your only option. There's no way Stair can get out of this angle. What? <gasps> he hits a blinder. Monacy misses his, and JKS anchoring now has to lock it down in a 1v1. He hears Device, and he gets out of dodge. There is no time for this round, and Device has to run away, not even with his AWP. G2 scream down the halls and save themselves from humiliation winning their fourth round jks even grabs that orb and device dies to the bomb yeah i mean that that, that gets really close but you know with how device kind of gets bogged down there over towards ct when they lose bar up on the first peak it was always going to be a case where stair had to be the driving force right and and honestly that head-to-head -head fight versus monacy it's a fight that monacy should be holding it's a line that he should be holding he's supporting what jks here it's stair going above and beyond in that engagement i don't think that's an overstep from monacy's orb at all Luckily no. enough, JKS is yeah. able to kind of corral that back into a, a winning round for G2. Device even has double flash and spawn, so, I, you know, he wasn't throwing them. I just thought there's no way that they go for it. But, yeah, Stead just does it dry, doesn't need any support. But then JKS has the clock in his favor and puts on a much-needed clutch for G2 just to stay ahead. Hooksy, he had a great map individually, especially on the CT side of Ancient. And he's coming in very confident. He's been shouting all day. G2 need that energy right now. Trying to pick themselves up from a map lost. Things have started all right. But in classic G2 fashion, sure, they're 4-0 up, Harry. But the last two rounds are anything but clean. Anything but nice. However, you'll take what you can get. Mag 7. All right, device. Go on. All right. New look Deve on the mag. Doesn't get shared. Oh. Device! Two kills off of his mag 7 makes this round very interesting now. And you it's can't... just JKS with the bomb and apartments. He can't drop out anymore. Got Instead, cancel. yeah, the onus would have to be on these players in middle, moving up through short to alleviate some of this pressure. Monacy's trying to do that right now. But he's got his work cut out for him. Monacy has to be the guy to open this. Monacy's got to be the guy that brings them Good into luck. the fold. And he never even accounts for Pit. He is oh. dead to the Buzz Deagle. Who comes alive in the nighttime down in the pit. No swat in this fly. Not in this round. Just Nico left standing. First kill goes his way. But it is a mammoth task here. This crossfire between Sight and Pit is so strong. Too hard for him to deal with, perhaps. He considers that maybe his best option is to look for other avenues, look for an escape plan, a get out clause B. here. And he is going to make that decision, running it all the way through the speedway. Now, this was heard by Blame F, who's trying to get ahead of him on the timings. This is a real mind game taking place here. Nico, cognizant that he could have been heard, but he's got to oh, believe. Yeah. Taps on it. Oh. And Blame F still <laughs> collects. My goodness. That's not even really a fight that Blame F should be ready for. Like, you've just heard him tap the bomb. There's nine seconds left on the clock. They, they've lost rounds to not plotting before, so every bone in your body thinks he's going to commit to the plant. And yet Blame F, quick reactions up through Banana, plays it perfectly. When Device gifts you a double opener on the Mag 7, you, yeah. you do not, you know, you do not let him down. You don't throw away that opportunity. NT for Nico, but what more can you do there? 5 7 hits diff. Device, he's going to see this fast mid play, and Borum has to be ready right now because his team has smoked off. Molotov will help out. Borum runs through the flames, and Nico hunts him down. 
doesn't even choose to try and hang around and fight there. G2 just keep the pace going. Nico hops into the site, and again, he's had enough. When Nico activates, G2 look like a different team entirely as he takes a third headshot over the graveyard. Oh! Nico burying them here. Four kills, just blame F, and vengeance will taste oh so sweet. Nico on a tear. He has done everything in this round, and it's just Blame F left to beat. Nico looking like he wants to give this a jiggle. Blame F <laughs> just going to start to root round. No, no longer open along. And so it might just be this save call for Astralis. Blame F without the kit in this 1v2. Sure, there's one dropped at the hay cart. There's one dropped at Moto, but he's not even going to attempt it. Nico, hell of a round. And, and you know, it's crazy that this seems to be what G2 tried to do to solve these yeah. problems, is it's just Nico saying, fine, you know, we, we, we need someone to do something right, I'll be that guy. That's just it's taken a tremendous uh, amount from him, you know, it's taken its toll, but he's able to deliver it time and time again here. Look at this. One, and then he goes jumping over the smoke, misses device's orb. The one, this one, like, yeah, that, just stair doesn't do anything wrong. Throws an aid, yeah. that's enough. Homing missile for Nico. Yeah, Borum, he's the first one to fall there, but it's a bit awkward getting caught. You know, you know Device got that mid spot that they were rushing, and Borum, you know, he tries to run away. He had to just stay and fight and go one for one. And we're, we're saying, like, you know, it's mad that this is kind of what it's taken for G2 to find these rounds. It's. It's once again, you know, it's it's the individuals making it happen in these moments. When we're reacting to that round there, it's not like some crazy complex idea to say, Nico, go kill out mid. That was all him. But that can't be a crux for them in this series. Astralis have had great teamwork across this. And we often say, you know, it's the best team that wins. So G2 doing well to have, you know, corrected their wrongs from earlier on. There may be no iron team, but there is one in Nico. He's anti-flash right now. Great grenade. Like, look at this Util damage, man. Yeah. Everyone's wounded, everyone's hurting. It's Astralis after all. The the orbs had to be swapped around now, so Monacy doesn't even have it. Now it's on Nico, and Nico's been the guy creating space for you, but he's going to have a much harder time doing that on the AWP, so that responsibility's got to fall down the line. Here's the push out through the top of Banana. Three strong in the site for Astralis, oh. and a lineup out of device. It just seems set in stone, written in the stars that Device would always find the path with this AWP upon his return. And he's sent them out. Even though JKS has got all this yeah. space, it, it doesn't create much. It's not super comfortable. And there was no time to win the round anyway. Stalemate. Astralis are fine letting G2 save. They know it's a very awkward round to save your guns in. And, uh, you know... You, you only have three in the follow-up. It's not like anyone can really buy unless Modesty goes Galil Armor. That's super awkward. Great shot for Device. Astralis, they have a, a far better B setup this time because last time G2 managed to break in into the triple B stack and actually get a plant. This time, Astralis have three players inside of the site. No one cut off by the smokes. Not that they're needed. Device does the dirty work. And he looks oh so comfortable here on the CT side of Inferno. But on a take here for Astralis again. Throwing a player down. It was about time. Blame looks interested. It's going to smoke the molly and fight for it. Care the random spam. Let's freeze up Buzz to once again go and check long. And even getting that info at the end of last round, like, yeah, when we were triple B... We got flanked CT. We saw JKS in, in our spawn. So Buzz needs to be hyper aware of that lurk again. Device is taking it now with the orb. G2, couple of bits of util. Just going to go contact B with this orb. Try and give Monacy a pick. He can get this on the jiggle. Great shot for Monacy. You may as well just go, go, go. Yeah, he's going to try and... Keep this aggression coming through on the AWP. Weapons now retrieved. Oh. It's Monacy with another. This AWP, the saving grace of G2 in this round. And it just might be the save call from Astralis. Damn. They really only get to see the AWP in play. 
never aware of the full picture of the round. They never learn about JKS once again lurking in the apartment. And so they just play this one by the numbers. JKS even wants to try and remove some of these saving players right near the end. Would have horrible consequences for Astralis who have not really built up a bank account. They can rebuy, but in terms of the future, this would hold some weight. Yeah, so the, the, the real big ticket one is if he's able to do anything about the AWP as well. Because ah, then that no like chance. forces decisions. But yeah, I mean, look at the crossfire that's held here. Uh, <laughs> it would take a bit of a miracle for JKS to find that AWP. Going to throw himself in, but Justin ain't walking through that door. And 6-2, to two, G2, a far better T side considering that was their issue back on Ancient as well. They went 9-6 up in the first half. They could barely get on the board in the second half other than some excellence from Nico. Lovely opener for Modesty. We've been seeing Astralis a couple of times just play these jiggles in CT Sport, and they'll have to move away from that now. And again, they go back to Banana, this time with more players. G2 Cup completely out, but Nico still goes through. Denies him that space for a second, but the AWP is still getting involved. I like that mid-banana smoke as well. It's going to scare Astralis a little bit from pushing anyone deep towards the tree. Yeah, but G2, with, they're not scared on A. With the game that Device is having, where when he kind of confirms that he's got this angle, he is that rail gun just set up over towards B. That then frees up this earlier stack to go back and reinforce A. Ooh. They throw this smoke that gives the illusion through. that they can wrap CT, but it's actually Hoopsie walking it to make contact oh. first. Flame F going to deal with Hunter. Spam damage coming in. Hoopsie looking worse for wear as he's trapped in the library. No way. On an island Blame. here. And Blame F. Whoa, <laughs> they're rooting back through the yeah. molly. He's kind of crazy. Thought he, Thought he would have pushed further afield. But the rest of the gang will hold the line. No problems for Astralis yet. Nico looking to cause them. He's got Monacy, the man who created all those opportunities in the last round left alongside him here. But quite the crossfire to deal with. Bar up and Buzz split between Pit and Sight. G2 have got to be heads up in these fights. They, they, they're, they're aware of this crossfire. They're cognizant of it. Nico can't find it, though. And that crossfire... Yields a round for Astralis. And that's why Blame's play is actually really nice. Sure, going back through the molly, uh, you know, he thinks he can do it. He thinks he can survive. But as we can see, it's the way more dangerous option. He's scared of more long players. But getting rid of the guy in library, Hooksy can just dictate the pace of the round with this position. There's a minute on the clock. He's in enemy lines. And it's going to be so hard to actually play a crossfire from pit to sight if Hooksy's alive because you're just completely open to getting swung at any point. Blame... Going one for one in that position forces G2 into the crossfire. And as you said, look at how effective it was. Astralis on low health don't even lose a man in that two on two. So it was worth it for the result. Blames made some really heads up plays today. I am definitely enjoying the new look blame. Even as Adesh talked about coming into this series, you know, he's, his T side ratings are solid. He is finding a lot more impact. It's not just negligible economy kills. And we're seeing the brain power come in clutch in this series. G2 now broken by pushing up mid. Yeah, it's another one of these like pretty, you know, simple looks of around where they're trying to explode out over towards middle, taking this space now on the arches. I like this. Uxie dead, they're wrapping through the spawn. Stair will meet them here. They've got to get past him if they want to have a chance at winning this Ooh. round. And with Blame wow. F dead, it took Device coming in with the big green and removing this bomb, this spawn wrap. And he's even going to take it one step further. Looking to fight Nico. Okay. He's on with the Deagle. Wants the ability for the instant kill, oh. and he's going to get it. Device, digged out of the round. One more man up close. Low on HP is Buzz, but it won't matter. He does to Nico what Nico did to Device. Gets revenge, and Astralis now are starting to amass quite the CT side. It's all starting to come together. Yeah. Might have had some traded rounds in here, but the G2 bank account now runs dry. That was a swing round in this game. 
How did Device get hit quick enough as well after Stair falls one for one? He gets there just in time to stop that bomb. And even though Nico pre-aimed, the exact angle buzzes on, that, that essential one way on the pot, the potted plant is so powerful. Your head completely obscured by the flowers. But Nico looking like a different guy in this map than especially the first half of Ancient. Those are some sexy deagle shots. G2 make a lot they're, of noise. They're in trying to feign yeah. like a like a fast apps play with pistols. Kind of a cool idea, but get some nades out. I mean, look at you know, sure it's early early round Inferno. You're going to throw a lot of util. Your mollies are all gone though. Uh, there's some dropped in sport, but Stratus have used most of their nades. That's okay. And very dangerous position for blame against pistols. But you know he loves them. It's now up to this one rifle that should be okay. But they jump to bait the shot, and Hunter manages to put one more in. Device pulling Julie's out to try and end this round with ease doesn't want it to get complicated but it's starting to yeah the bomb plant is already a huge deal here for g2 hunter with three kills to his name we need the ace and what was a 1v3 on an eco round but he's armed with the m4 they move in together Ooh. and the aim punch wrecks him felt like it was always going to be the way good the eco spacing on astralis was good right they didn't really give him any room to play into that 1v2 to get a gunfight and back out and play around the bomb a very good idea of what they were up against. And yeah, you know, for G2, that is a good round. They got a lot of utility out by faking the apps drop. Then they find the kills over towards Banana. They do some nice tricks to throw off the crosshair and even set that up in the first place. And so they at least get out with a bomb plant. That's going to facilitate things like Monacy's AWP getting to come out. Hunter can drop that over. G2 feel like things are going to plan. First time out only now being called after 12 rounds or 11 rounds of play. So Stratus have started to take their first streak of the CT side. Wonder if we have another Nico go kill round. Those have been the most effective. Or if G2 can go, gonna go a little bit slower. The one consistency of the last few rounds is Astralis have taken Banana away from G2 and they've won it every single time. So do G2 have a response, or are they simply going to let it happen? Hooksy doesn't believe that. Fast backup. Top B smoke, and he goes through as well. Some crucial control taken here by the captain of G2. Is he going to go further, though? Device is ready for that. Haven't seen the orb start in that position. That changes everything. G2 pick up the pace in mid. Double stack. Blame there to trade. And with a Molotov down, there's nothing G2 can do. They're being dragged back and forth across the map and now back into the orb. Yeah, device left here alone Ooh. on the AWP. Going to get smoked off oh, in just dear. a second. They're further afield than he was ready for. Nico is right next to him. Yeah. Looking to knock out this orb from the other side. Going to drop that smoke at CT, but they hear the tag on the Molotov. No! Nico burns! Ow. It spreads last second, Ow. and it follows him into the smoke. Now that smoke fades, nice causing fade. nothing but problems. At least Monacy baits the peak from Device. That's something. But Double they're waiting nades. with a nade stack. They're waiting with the nade stack back in spawn. Blame is still even over at A. They tap on the bomb. Oh. They bait the nades out. And now they look to hunt down these two players on the spawn side. Monacy can't do it. Stair holds the line. And Astralis are just unrelenting in these rounds. Everywhere G2 tried to go, every idea they had is punished. Such a, a round of you know, mind games there. From the from the fake from Odyssey, you know, Device giving it up, to the double nades. G2 read the double nades. They chase both players in spawn. Uh, poor Nico, that looks unbelievable. That, that actually spreads and takes him down, even after he drops off the top of the coffins. Feel like the smoke would cover you there. And Stair yeah, puts that, up another massive multi-kill in spawn. That reaction from Nico, that is like that is so raw. That is how you feel when when you know every bone in your body is telling you you're fine, you're fine to this piece of util. And it burns him last second, right at the end of yeah. the molly when it's doing the most damage. He gets no time. They never stop spreading, do they? Can never let your guard down. Blame. Going very aggressive. Down banana, but it's at the right time, isn't it? Because it's only Nico here in middle lining up flashes. And now you know exactly what was in store. Buzz with his eyes on the apartments. They come flooding through. It might be the blood flood, though, as Borg drops another. Device picks out Hunter, and it's an easy peasy round for Astralis. Taking the lead back. Remember those dominant 4 0 rounds for G2? We are there no longer. Yeah, early on in this game, uh, it might have been enough for, for G2 to just kind of let Nico off the leash, have him tee up rounds. 
but that's what we say. And sometimes the, the individuals, they're a bit of a crutch for you to lean upon, man. Like, I don't know, so many of these rounds are just getting super awkward. And when Nico doesn't find that kill that creates the space, when he doesn't get away with a multi-kill, where's the substance? Where's the rest of it? Where's the plan B? And this was something that, you know, the, the desk were talking about as well. Even how it feels like the, the floor for G2 is lower Ooh. than that of Astralis. Yeah. I mean, they're on the come up right now. Nico again takes a crucial kill up B, but he gets naded. And Stare has just been the multi-kill man this map. And, you know, I want to say, on top of all of this, I think early on when Nico was, like, feeling it and, and, and you could feel that confidence in how Ooh. he was playing, that's surely gone. The last few rounds for him have been brutal, man. He died in the molly. He gets pushed down mid in the last round. They did. One tapped in the back of the head. He got naded in the round prior. Like, it, 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 it's crazy. Look at the health here for G2. It's a two on four. All they've got is utility. And yeah, you would, if they're saving, you can't even blame them at this point. Just, it's the only way to have AKs next round. They're not going to get a bomb plant yeah. at this point. Just look at how the ebb and flow of this game has changed. In the middle, when Astralis were kind of trading these rounds back and forth, it felt like G2 still had what it took to, kept it, to keep it competitive. But that's now gone, right? Like, this round was just a non-starter. It never even really got out of spawn. You, you lost a handful of fights. Everyone's so low from the nades that now you have a whole minute to sit there and think about your shortcomings. Think about what went wrong in the round, what failed you, and you've just got to stew in that. You've got to stew in the fact that this game is rapidly slipping through your fingers. And considering as well, like, you know, you haven't even looked further afield than just this one matchup. This is Group B. This is the opening game of Group B. This is a very hard group. Yes. Where every game, every progression that you have, you're going to face someone harder. And if this is G2 struggling so much in this Astralis matchup, you know, would you have faith if, if they matched up against, you know, a FaZe Clan in the next round? You know, would, would this be even more one-sided? Oh, don't die after time. It's you. You wait a minute for that. Wow. You wait a minute. This isn't such for an that. infuriating game. This is you would be feeling a, a deep rage burning within you as to how these last three, four rounds have gone. It's the most brutal ways you can lose rounds, and they're happening in rapid succession. This is a real test of the metal for G2. We've all run into this Danish five stack on face it, man. It feels like Astralis are sweating out of their gills right now and looking for a nine round CT side on Inferno. Given how this game started, you wouldn't have thought this is how good Astralis would have looked on Inferno. Monacy, he's had enough, and again, the individuals might have to be the answer for G2. It's the only way they've broken in to T sides today. Hooksy getting that smoke in. It looks like they just want to commit, but they haven't got the numbers here to do so. Another fantastic grenade for Astralis does nearly 100 damage over the roof. And so they will reset. They will pull back into a, the, the quietest player, but not because of his inability, but there's just not been much going on back in the pit. Borup, six and five awaits. Device in the right place at the right time, seemingly all half. Moves back on long side. If he goes for a mid peak, he is going to cut one off. Device clears it. And another strong grenade. Hunter has to run back. Only two players here on A for Astralis, but G2 are quaking. Oh, Device. Swinging around on the short side. First contact made at Hooksy. Borup dies immediately down in the pit, so this is all eyes on Device. Oh, this dear. is one man versus the world. Oh, and Device thrives in this environment. Look at him go. Finally locked out by Nico. But he did what he had to do, and then some in this round. Nico's been the one guy to make it happen for G2. The one guy to try and bring them back into the fold. He needs this clutch and he won't be able to find it. Stare again and again locks G2 out of these critical moments. And while it starts strong for the G2 squad, it's Astralis celebrating come the end of this first half.
Dio's gonna get one back from inside of the jungle. That is Goofy with a triple kill. Make it a Kylar quad. That one's a little fuzzy, man. They, yeah, they, they had to hiding. play faster off the information. Like just hiding. If like they that. were if they were tucked like that, um, again, if someone throws a, a fake over your head and you're deep in the choke point, you got to tell your team like, all right, listen, I'm good. There's no one here. 30 seconds. I don't hear a single thing. Um, I either take a risk and peek or whatever, but you don't want to rate, waste resources and teammates just holding on in passive setups on your site when you could just take one peek and take a risk, even if it's just an MP9. And, and in this spot, I think that was and it's sort of one chance to win the round. And if they save and everything, it's it's one thing, but they lose four. They have Deha left. The half is starting to get away from them, and nine are playing perfectly comfortable here on T side. I always just find it so difficult too watching an opera pick peak ticket when you've given them the space to get out you know you're gonna have to deal with somebody standing behind those bricks and that's then at that point just a little head a oh, little head apex, popping up yeah, over apex top is such a strong position right yeah. compared to like having an entire half a body swinging out on ramp yeah they may be pre-aiming you but i mean look what happens when you let them flood out and then on top of that you got poor madden just swarmed backside. element of surprise means nothing when all you have is a deagle Jesus, they are broke, man. Deha, sliver of HP to get away, winning his trade at least. Yeah, but Slim uh, silver lining. Yeah, very slim. Very slim indeed. Nuke was a confidence builder, but uh, turns out Mirage wasn't free. I think if there's one guy to have a, an M4 solo on this team right now, it's, it's probably Deha. Sure. Yeah, no doubt. But how does he get it engaged? Underpass crawl will come his way, but there's also that threat of the top mid push. What is your calling? This unlikely Astralis new look roster is right now putting G2 in the ringer. Nine rounds on the CT side of Inferno. It's G2's map pick. And other than those first four rounds, there is nothing to celebrate here for the G2 squad here in the Cologne group stage. And Astralis, who ran through that play-in, are looking to make a statement in their opening game. Yeah, they, they really stepped up uh, to, towards the middle of this half. They, this game turned on its head. It went from uh, good control for G2 to open up. It felt like they, they had a bit of a point to prove, especially for folks like Nico. But even he got tapered off towards the end. Astralis, they, they learned that they have a, a one-man army to worry about. And they've got five guys who are willing to, to push back against that with device really... Bringing it up the helm, Stare and Monacy clash over in middle. It's traded, it's kept even, but G2 have got more in mid, now starting to walk this. They're gonna miss the timing on this apps pop. Curiosity might kill this cat as G2 push all the way down mid. They lose everything. They lose complete control of the site. Astralis beeline for the feline and they get the bomb plant. G2 still close by with a kit. Can attempt this retake, but Stare in the apartment Right now, looking to be the star that Astralis needed. The star Astralis hoped for, he has delivered in this series. Smoke for the pit, there's only device there though. They're entrenched within the bomb site. Nico needs something magical in from long side. It's J uh, JKS moving in first, doesn't clear his corner. Bomb takes one, there's a backstab for Stare, and they start to fall. G2 with no solution, no answer to this call from Astralis, and it's a pistol round to boot on the back of a beautiful CT side. Astralis are poised for this 2-0. and oh. Did G2 have anything left to say? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think when we've looked at this so far, uh, we've we've touted the individuals for G2. I think that with how that first half ended and now the fact that you don't win the pistol, and when you're in the serve, you know how important this round is. You know the sort of head start that winning the pistol can give you, how it can bring you back into a game and re-energize the team. Well, you don't get that. You lost the half with some 
devastating rounds going against you where it felt like you didn't even have a chance. Mentally, you feel out of this game if you're G2. They need a miracle to bring them back into it. And Astralis start this as they ended that first half with strong utility. It is met by some grenades of G2's own, but Hooksy put down to 40 at the sandbags, has to retreat. Astralis, they want that re-aggression. They're waiting for the pop flash over the wall, but nothing of the sort here for G2. Still only 2B. Flash comes in, but as said, it's all Astralis are waiting for. You're always going to have a player in place to sit behind that wall and re-swing off of a flashbang if your teammate's working sandbags. It's just too standard. It's too expected at this point. So Astralis make all this noise up top B and go back to the A site. G2 at least have the numbers here. Haven't been shaken out of position. But again, we rely on one Deeks. We rely on an MP9 to get through the might of Astralis. Hunter's going to be this first point of contact. He at least wins that out, but it is traded. Equalize JKS out with one. Good damage. Buzz has been hurt over here in the apartments. They know about him, but that's oh, what Honest is meant to deal with. Blame F did just kill his teammate, and now he's okay. thrown into this all okay. alone. Tried to tee himself up for the highlight clip. With only 10 seconds left, Run. Blame F just going to look to get out of there. G2 want to try grab some of these dropped guns up through the short side, and Blame is saving. They needed a miracle, a nade kill from Blame F onto his teammates, a couple of good shots out of the G2 side, and Hooksy's getting loud. He's trying to bring his teammates back into this and get them believing again. Yeah, you got to do what you can at 4 and 12, right? Like, this is a rough game for Hooksy, but... At least his head's still in it. That's a very curious round for Astralis. Um, you know, good damage with pistols and with grenades from G2. And yeah, okay, a little nade. It doesn't bounce as far as Blame wanted. Uh, the round was pretty screwed before then, but that didn't help, did it? Okay, G2 have been given a lifeline. Let's see if they can hang on to it. Or if the rope will burn through their fingers. Stralis force to force. At least Blame has this AK. Ooh, dear. Okay. Nice way for this one to open up. Oh, nice, even doing a bit more damage downrange up through that smoke at Banana. They lose Hunter right away. And with how this uh, entire series has gone, nothing feels sacred, nothing feels safe if you're G2. Nico still fighting down Banana, gives up this kill. This is now two freebies on this Banana fight for Astralis. They've not even had to put much into this position to get great results out of it. Hooksy has got to contain this. He cannot fall here. If he goes down, this is around for Astralis, and suddenly they're extending that lead all over again. Smollied. G2 forced out into the open. These rotates far away. And Astralis have done enough to get the site Bates. here. The nades rain in. That levels the playing field. That has to be the move that lets G2 attempt this retake. But for them, it's not enough to just attempt. They need victory. They need the results here. It wasn't meant to get this close. It wasn't meant to be this down to the wire. But this is where we find ourselves in Flame Effort Device. Two signature players for Astralis left in it, playing it perfectly between one oh. another. And Blame F from the pool cleans it all up. You're in safe hands when it's him and Device left standing. Yeah, a firm grip on Blame, I've heard. And two kills to close it. The kit was all the way over at New Box. That was desperate for G2. That hero AK puts up a double. And what an entry for Device as well. Down Banana. That further damage does matter as they just execute Hooksy. He, I mean, he has no good options there at top e when he finds that kill. He doesn't want to re-swing wide. They're already aiming at him. He has no util, and there's no good positions to play on 10 health in the B side of Inferno. Astralis come back in with a force by their own and respond swiftly for G2.
But I just think, you know, the, the, the moods of these teams must be very different. Buzz is even rocking the Nova in this round. Interesting. And that's not a gun that you buy if you're not feeling confident. Yeah. I, okay. That's just not a gun that you buy. You could have ended the sentence there. Yeah, true. Go in apartments at least, jump out pit, but um, yeah, it's a curious one. Once you clear apps, you're like, well, what do I do now? He's going to go back and get ah, the gun from Ramp, isn't few. he? Won't be playing with the Nova for long. Never given a chance to shine with it. Maybe Ooh. for the best. Ooh. Hang on. He hasn't picked it up yet. Yeah, okay. He will do. <laughs> and now Astralis set their eyes on taking away this banana control. Nico's calling for support, but Hooksy has to walk it. Doesn't want to give Astralis that info. Even then, he's not convinced. So Nico needs to hit more than just the one dig. Just crazy. We're in another spot where it's like Nico has to, has to win this round. Essentially, he's got to get out with a multi kill here. Well, one kill from him. Deagle up close. Oh, oh he's deadly with it. Another from Nico and okay. Hooksy lines them up. An unlikely combo come together on that B site for G2. And so it's just trading these rounds, trading these four spies back and forth right now to open up the second half. Yeah, no one can establish any control, any uh, consistency, any money either. So the the you know wildness at the start of this half will not be ending soon. Astralis will meet them there every step of the way. Fantastic deagling from Nico and Hooksy through the smoke. That was all prefaced by the Nico 1D down banana as well at the start of the round. It's how Astralis started their four spies with device. So where will this opening kill come next? Device hounds it in middle. G2 play a safe setup at the back of the B bomb site and concede mid completely, forcing Astralis, if they want to, to commit. But not before the smokes. This is G2 saying, all right, guys, we've been given this chance. We've come back in with two force by wins now in this half already. Let's not throw this mm. away. Give them banana. They won't have the util to run a fake and do a double pump. They have to just execute and go. And at that point, you should be winning this round if you're G2. Question is, can Astralis find a gap? Can they get a clean entry? Yeah, if you're Astralis, you're even feeling the, the kind of change of this round, you know. As you're going out and you're searching, you're seeking for this early fight and it's not being given to you, you, you should have now realized that, okay, they're taking a much more passive approach here. And so we see Blame F looking to have that first point of contact coming on the banana fight. He'll just go back, right? You've seen the AK over towards B. Noise has been made here. It's going to be enough to keep G2 entrenched because the one downside to how G2 are playing in this passive setup, they won't have the info. They have to react if and when Astralis take fights. They've only sim players at B, so they rotated a third man over. That's left it all Ooh. on the double pit setup. JKS is overran. Nice Hunter shots. gets out with two. He's done what he had to in this round to turn the advantage in G2's favor. But a plant comes in. Astralis are not out of this one yet. Buzz down in the pit. Device with him. We've talked already about how strong this crossfire can be for denying the wraps up through short. Right now, they've got to watch Moto. They know these rotates have scrambled in. They know where it's going to come from. Flash goes high. Second one to follow. Buzz swings on the back of it. A light sprinkling of damage. He's drawing attention Ooh. away from Device. And Device will combine. They find a killer piece. It's left on to Nico, who's running out of time. And Device will not let them pass. Astralis, they keep the four spy wars going just back and forth all across the start of this half. And it feels like when you get Device in the end of these rounds, when you have him in those must-win gunfights in the 2v2 or the 2v3 that are required to close, he'll rise to the occasion. This was a beautiful bit of interplay between him and Buzz to make a 2v3 look so simple, so easy. There was nothing crazy about that. Yeah. They're just playing the crossfire. They're playing the cards they're dealt, but they do it well. A 2v4 in the pre-plant and all five kills from those two players. That's just magical for Astralis. And you, you want to say this is where they can finally get back-to-back -back rounds after breaking G2 yet again. It's just the hero M4, but a B stack for G2. 
Astralis do look convinced. They do look committed. They just want to gung-ho into this bomb site. Modesty hits a deal. Oh, why stop? Why end the madness here? Let's just trade rounds all day. Boron pulls out nades. Nico needs to hit the Deegan. He does on the third shot. Modesty follows up. And blink and you miss it. No one can get comfortable at the start of this half. Buzz might even give an AK over at the end. JKS falls off. And hey, a minute. G2 would have to make some unforgivable errors to give this round over, but they've already done that this series. He's going to give it a look in. See if they let him make it interesting. But up on top of the boost is Monacy, and yeah. they can just triple swing this, right? They can kind of play these different angles of elevation once they get the info that Buzz is moving in. They're playing it very well, and he realizes, mm. yep, I'm, I had my chance. They gave me the spot. I don't get that insta-kill. They're going to 3-2-1 me. I have to save. So I actually love this reserved call for Buzz. He could have gone in and chased. And yeah, they already have full rifles. It's fine. It's not like you're giving them anything, but... Astralis know they can win the next round because, well, they've already proven it twice. So keep this AK going into the next. G2, survive. And frankly, it feels like whoever gets two rounds in a row is just going to start running away with this one. Yeah, the, the, the weird thing with these Force by Wars, you know, when they happen in the first half, yeah, they, they throw the rhythm off a bit, but there's still time to kind of course correct everything. Here in the second, it's, it's a lot less clean cut, right? You kind of get very, very deep towards the end of the game by the time you even have economy playing this, this huge factor of, you know, two for one rounds and the like. So for G2, that can be their path to salvation. That can be their route back into this game and suddenly they can look to recover the series uh, and then it's a whole different ball game. For, for Astralis, if they're able to return on the Force by Wars here, if it's them to start streaking rounds together, this one's done. This one's over. And this is the best force that Astralis have shown in this half. Sure, it is met by more rifles as G2 you know, pick up all these AKs at the end. They have to take a clean one, but Astralis also have two AKs, so... This is still like the best look G2 have had, right, in this round. This is the most complete... Yeah that it's gotten for them on the CT side. Nature's so, healing. Everyone's yeah. got a bit more money to play with. Oh, good grenades with the molly. Two HEs and device is gone. That is such a relief for G2. See, he didn't even waste the smoke because he knew he was dead. He heard, uh, he heard all the util raining in. He knew that they'd seen him. But that smoke's actually retrieved and used to re-block the bottom of Banana. Yeah, this is uh, now a very difficult round for Astralis without and I, a flashbang. I really like that this is when G2 have like moved into the, the triple top mid setup, right? They boosted up on porch, they're here, lots of different angles of elevation. It's a very tricky crossfire to navigate. They just got spotted though with the three players at least on A. So Astralis are certainly going to look for a B hit right now. Very important that Nico blocks it again and keeps Banana intact for G2. Stay has nothing to lose, so he risks it all. But this is where G2 are finally starting to plant their feet in the half. We've waited a few rounds for it. Six down and no two rounds in a row. Nico and Hooksy set up to close. And yeah, this is nice. Nico just gets info. The smoke comes in. Hooksy tries to climb up. And that might be the way the G2 fall down. Yeah, still, the, the heavy hitter of Nico is here. And he might just have this under yeah. control. Beautifully transferred. Blame F now dead. It's going to leave it all on Buzz. Nico doesn't make a play through the smoke. His teammates are here. It's more important now to keep this round clean if you're G2. And so Nico will not be this next guy taking the fight. Buzz is allowed to slip out of there. The bomb not planted for him back at Banana. I almost wonder if he just looks to leave here. Yeah, wouldn't be a bad decision at all. You know, damage is nice, but yeah, he can't do anything about winning this round. So with no flank kills coming in, he will just save his gun. As long as G2 defuse, they will. Imagine if he had a nade right now, bounced over the roof, killed Nico. There's a world, but not this one. 12 to 10. And finally, folks, after seven rounds of play, one team gets two rounds in a row. Buzz well, saves an AK, they get a bomb plant. I hope that doesn't tempt Astralis. I'd love to just see them accept defeat at the start of this half. They still have the lead for now. So give G2 the respect that they've demanded at this point in the game and come back in in the next.
Yeah, it's just going to be a light buy on the players that can afford it, right? Buzz obviously still gets the cash as a result of the bomb being planted with the save, so he's dropped the deagle over. Device bought armor to go with that, and Blame F had a little bit of extra money. He put some armor into this round as well. So what that means is you're going to put Buzz and Device up at the front with the weapons, see what they can do. If either of them fall, well, then that gun gets grandfathered forward onto Blame F. So there's still ways, as unlikely as they may be, for Astralis to make this round more interesting than it feels like it should be. I mean, every round has been interesting in this half. That's that's the one thing you can't deny. No one's been safe. And Nico is just doing his best to drag them over the finish line right now, like he was last week in Copenhagen. I mean, some of those games, one against EG comes to mind where it felt like G2 were doing everything they could to make that hard for themselves, but Nico managed to essentially single-handedly win that game. Right, they've been waiting for Buzz. He, he went and kind of gave mid a top, uh, top mid a look in, saw if he was given a fight there. They've waited for him to join them at Banana before making this play happen. Spotted by Nico on the jiggle. Nico is not going to go back to that as the only line of defense over towards B. Yeah, they have to hurry up with this rotate because it's just guaranteed to be B at this point. There's 30 seconds of smokes come down. Astralis have to run through as it fades. And G2 are walking their rotate. They may as well just get in position. Nico needs to multi-kill and he gets deeped out, but there's no smoke down. These sprays are not pretty and they will be punished. They will be picked apart. The bomb gets planted. 10 seconds, gun shuffled over, and Astralis are looking to win a round they had no business in. This is an AK and a Deagle getting you into the post plant. If Astralis can find this, we're right back on to this weird start to the game. Buzz tucked in, goes uncleared, but Monacy turns around oh. and they will hound down Blame F. Still. Now just two left to deal with. Device in at the back of the site. He's been instrumental in rounds like this. There's a lot of time ticked off the bomb and Borup is just wasting more seconds. Seconds that G2 don't have. Device finally oh, dealt with and Monacy it. will find Borup Phew. to allow this round to come through, but it's not comfortable. It's not clean. The stress was there. They felt that that one was slipping through their fingers. I mean, G2 know it's B at that point, but they're, and they're walking two players through CT, even though they don't want to give it up. That's such a scary decision to make with 15 seconds when the smoke is fading. Like, you know the timing is right there that Astralis are going to start running. And sure, Nico, yeah, he could have mauled them, but Device hits a beautiful one dig, and that's the only reason the, the entire round falls into question there for G2. Nothing is safe, nothing is sacred. And Astralis still might have to face Nuke as the third map if they can't wake up now. But this is their first fall by in round 24 of the half. Keep that in mind. Don't say that every day. Honestly, he's throwing in his top mid smoke. That gives the illusion that they might be looking to make the play happen behind it. So it's going to slow Astralis's roll a little bit here. Nice util early just to have Astralis homed in on mid and wasting a bit of time and resources clearing that. I'll still get up over towards the apartments with the silent boost. Second man went off loud, but it would throw your timings off if anyone was playing in the apartments. Now flashing Blame F into top mid. He tries his hand at the entry, and he is able to get away with it. JKS spotted out. Ooh, up on top of the boost. Gets down. Hooksy takes up position over on the long side, and Monacy's orb rotates in. They're, they're willing to fight for this top mid control because they still had the, the kind of essence of that crossfire. But Astralis had no intentions of meeting them there. Instead, picking up the pace on this B play. Nico's underhanded a smoke to cause okay. a bit of chaos in the pool. Flashed in. He's going to play on the back of nice. it. And Nico puts a leash on the Astralis B play. Monacy <laughs> back turned on Blame F. That one's free. And it's just Buzz left to beat. Monacy and Nico combine for four between them. And that's where G2 find their salvation, now tying up this game. Complete disrespect for G2, but it is supplemented well by utility. Good flashes over the spawn, and that smoke in the choke point gives Nico room to move. And finally, yeah, Monacy has uh, a bit more of a round here in the CT side, where he's able to play into it. Lovely moves. 
Astralis get caught looking a little foolish there with that smoke in the way. They don't know where to look, where to clear. And their buy rounds will not last long. Back to pistols, back to pace, into B, and in your face, Morrissey! Oh! Three digs in three shots, and he wants oh! every single one. Have you ever seen something like that? My goodness! Take a bow, Morrissey! It'd been the Nico show up until this point, but with that display right there, Monacy cements himself as a real front runner in this series. That might be and if these two can find their footing, I mean, that's probably player of the year right yeah. there. Look at this. <laughs> Unbelievable scenes. Like it's a pug, like it's easy. Like it's on rails. That is beautiful. Those are the rounds that everyone lives for, <laughs> that you never really get, that you never truly get. That Deagle, he makes it look like a rail gun. Where's this Monesty been? Yeah, I've been wow. waiting. G2 have woken up. All it took was six rounds of playing only pistols to warm up. Okay, it's a different game now. Double peek, double hold and traded for two. Buzz gets out with the goods. He's going to run it as well. If he can get quickly out and beat Monacy's scope, he can win this round for Astralis at the same time. Offering up a three on three is the risk. He won't take it. They go back to B. G2 are two players here. Monacy assured solo in the site. He's got to care this apartment. And Monacy sure. hits it. He's not missing now. re at B is very dangerous. Well timed on Nico's push though, but he's yeah. caught with nades out. It's stare in the corner. A 1v2 for Monacy. When you've just had a play like that in the last round, all the adrenaline, all of it coursing through your veins. There's that voice in the back of his head right now that's telling him, why not try it? But stare has gone deep. Stare is deeper than Monacy is ready for. And so he will be swift with the reply. Stare, multi-kill round of his own. Bringing that pressure back, the aggro into the top of B, betrays G2. <sighs> yeah, do it again. Play it every round. I want to see this in my dreams tonight. I have a feeling, yeah, I have a feeling we're going to see that a few more times <laughs> before all is said and done. Nice little interaction between Monacy and Device as well. I mean, no, no, one, no one can believe this. They know what these moments mean. They love the waving at this event. There's been a lot of waving across this, uh, the stage. My goodness, you can't predict any of these rounds, any of these moments. We're just living for them. Ouch. Banana's been a battleground of utility in both halves. And this round, Stair comes out worse. Again, G2 concede middle, no triple setup here. They started very heavy B to allow for that util damage, and they've got more in store. Fourth player coming over. Hooksy left alone on B. He's got one smoke, though. And a second back in spawn. Hunter gets mollied, has to reposition, and the orbs look to duel. Monacy, a dry peak will be his demise. A device has been so consistent on these openings. He's 8-1 and one in opening duels in this map alone. That's a, a harsh trip back down to reality for Monacy. Tries his hand at that mid-peak. He's feeling it. He's feeling confident in it. But it's given over the opening. Still, it's well contained thus far for G2. Astralis had to pump the brakes for a moment. Long is kind of out of bounds right now. Nico's still floating around there. So the path in is up through the short side. Double sight for G2. With Hunter playing from back here at Moto, he's going to be able to play around this smoke. Use that to duck in and out of cover, but the Molly burns JKS forward, flying through the air. He somehow gets out with a double. Now the big question is, will Device check for Hunter? The time, oh, the time is awkward. Had to go back and get Hunter. the ball. He's just going to plant it, but Hunter can stop this oh. right now, and he will. Daylight robbery from Hunter. And an awkward reaction of that bomb getting dropped forces Device's hand to plant that wide. And in doing so, he's sold in that round. He wanted to kill. He wanted to clear backside. But yeah, he had to return. He had to go pick up that bomb. And Hunter almost doesn't get that kill falling off of the box. Very, very close. But a crucial round comes through right at the end in the final second for G2.
And it's the star power that's starting to shine now in this series that we haven't had to any consistent de degree for G2. But right as the game closes, it's Astralis on the chopping block. And Nuke is calling. Yeah, I mean, you know, coming into the second half, I think there were a lot of reasons why G2 could have been in their heads, but there's no denying that they've bought a, a consistent fight in the early stages of this game, enough to make up for any mistakes made in the Force by Wars. They were always there, chomping at the bit to get involved again. It's been this late game out uh, activation out of guys like Monacy, Nico keeping it up all day. The scoreboard right now for G2 looks how you would want it to look for this team to be winning. And so now the question is poised to Astralis. Did you do all this? Did you make that comeback happen in the first half only to let it get away from you? Monacy thinks so. He gets his vengeance against 30 kill device. And that's got to feel good. This device has been a nuisance on this T side. And now who can you rely on? G2 have all the room in the world. Play Triple B, they retake Banana. The stair could get burnt out as well. Goes over, but more Monacy. Just gonna scare Astralis away. They've seen the orb at both sides now. Monacy will remain at B. Astralis is gonna just try and get ahead of it. Beat this rotation timing and go for an execute. The flash is well timed. It causes this to taper off. Hooksy. Uh-oh. It's going to be isolated over a long. Won't really be able to be involved uh -oh. here. And his teammates are run down inside of the site. JKS dead after one, and Hooksy, sure, he arrives now. But he's got to get something out of it. And the one and done does not tip the scales enough to make this a safe bet for the G2 round. However, Monacy and Nico, these are the two candidates you want left standing if you're G2. You believe in these two to win you the round. Blame F. As the captain, but right now he's just got to worry about himself. He's boxed in at the oh. back of the site, and now they know about him. The info there for G2, they run him down, and just like that, it's them in pole position. Now, with two chances to make this a series after all. It just never felt doable. It never felt viable for G2 to win this game, to take us to a third map. With the way this half started, with the back and forth force buys, Astralis were con consistently winning. And then G2 go on an unbelievable streak. Where we see the resurgence of Monacy. We see Nico holding down the B site with ease. And now they have map point against the grain. Astralis, wind out of their sails, someone's cut a hole. What a, what a wild ride this game has been, uh, just from start to finish. For Astralis now, the question becomes, right, like Device has been a pillar of consistency here, uh, and Buzz has been the guy kind of, you know, bringing it up behind him. But is the longevity there? It started to become a very stressful game. There was a point in time where Astralis were kind of having fun with this. They felt like they were in full control, and now that couldn't be further from the truth. You've given Monacy enough time to get switched online. G2, it suddenly feels like you're playing against a whole different squad. Everything's just a little more well-oiled. It's all flowing right now for the G2 squad. Yeah, they've burnt so much util in this round, though. So let's see how Astralis try and take this top B back. G2 will have to accept it. And even if Astralis don't commit here, that's kept G2 passive for now. Boost is a lovely call to make at this point. Over the top of the long smoke, Hunter finds that five on four. And G2 have been so solid at closing out these advantageous rounds. Without a flash in the pocket, Astralis need to do it on gunfire uh, uh, gun alone. Oh, but Hunter's dead immediately. Monacy moves in with the orb. He's gone as well. JKS oh. from down in the pit, from bottom of the board, looks to try and safeguard this for G2. Take a bow, Justin. 
As he looks to make this happen, Blame F backstabbed, and it's JKS from the pit to send them packing and lock in a three map series. After all, Monacy in this game was just a delight. That is player of the year. Maybe even, uh, that, it's just an unreal, a spectacle is what we just got to witness there. And with the individuals getting switched online, with the shots hitting, the usual G2 BS finding its way, maybe there's still hope for them yet. Tries to get ahead, but Diha is so swift with the headshot. Minio's chance to shine oh, falls off the flower <laughs> pots. And so it seems like Ents aren't done here yet. Okay, that, I mean, that was a really, really strong call from Snappy with the mid control that took place into what felt like a cat attack with Snap, with, sorry, Sun Pius. So fast. Yeah, so fast. I mean, 20 seconds, he was already staring down Cat into the B site. And then from there, they had everything covered. One person upper B. Late rotate back to A. Presence inside of middle. It was very, it was pretty much impossible. I was trying to look at it from Nine's perspective. Impossible to figure out what's open right now. What can we take back? So they had to take blind risks. That's when you know you're doing a good job on T side. This is the most complicated round that's been called from ends as we sort of reach the crest of this second half. And that's a good sign. They've earned themselves a save out of Nine. They're making this game entirely possible again. Another clean one from Diha there as well. Looked like he was stuck for a second. Gave him the wiggle. Slammed him over the head. Pushes nine into the economic dumps of a pistol round. But I don't know. In these kinds of moments, nine have been impressive. Oh, if it all Deagles. ends like this. I'm not ready for it to end on a round yeah, like this. No, no, no. Not when Ents are starting to get it going, yeah, right? But you're right. They are the two. They're the team that eco twice. It's like such... Finally, I see some inspiring promise on this T side. I think no. And Ents are doing well enough now. They've got their head screwed on straight. They're fully warmed up. I don't think they drop around like this. I'm going to say it. Okay. I'm not willing to put anything on it, okay. but I think this is a 16-14 finish, if not over time. Hey, man. You said it. A little bit of your rep reputation's on the line. <laughs> Betting on the best game possible here. Because it's shaping up to be a banger. This is a sick open road for Nine to take a shot at Cologne playoffs. Just beat Entz first. What's well, Fnatic after Entz? Movement hurt at the yeah. bottom of middle. Vector they do one. have pistols in this bomb site. Mino's got the headshot. Kai's got that 5-7. Everybody's swarming. Nine are getting into the right place at the right time. And speaking of time, they're down to 40. A second half that starts off so back and forth, you could almost cut the tension with a knife. But that does Jeez. not stop Monty Damn. from pulling off this absolute blinder. He's shone bright Whoa. all map. But this round, like, you could just see by the team reactions, nobody expected him to pull this off. No, that was disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Giving him a wave to a device, I believe it is. Giving him a <laughs> thumbs up as well. Even Nico doesn't believe it. I love that reaction. When Nico is sitting next to you and he doesn't believe what just transpired, that's when you know you hit uh, one of the greatest <laughs> clip of the year, honestly. Oh, yeah. uh, obviously, that was beautiful, pristine from Monty. See what an ace. Just the timing of it is also very, very interesting. Like 12 to 12 scoreline. Yeah. It's a little bit tense. You're you're facing being sent down to the lower bracket, and then your teammate just hits you with the deagle ace. Just the best way to alleviate the pressure. Yeah, that that was incredible. And we talked about you know a, a second half that was literally so back and forth. I believe it was the first six rounds. You literally didn't get a consecutive round win from either of the teams. This kind of you know spelt the end, I think, for Australis having any hope of taking this map. Yeah, it was uh, it was a messy game. You know, as you said, it was back and forth. 
none of the two teams could string them together. Uh, I feel Astralis had a couple of chances of, of pulling two rounds in a row, a couple of chances where D2 were left with MP9s, Deagles, uh, and very limited utility. They didn't strike when they had the chance, and that's mm. when you, you see the class of, of these individuals coming in. Monizy having this round. We saw Nico in the first half going full on crazy. Without Nico in that first half, Astralis would have won the game right here, right there. So it was not that Astralis didn't have a chance here. I just feel like they didn't really the grasp the opportunity they were giving by DJ. Yeah, there was enough space, I, I would mm -hmm. say, for Astralis to close it, but you're right to mention Nico. I think he's the hero, exactly. the architect of this comeback. He was the first one to fight back. I think he bought a whole lot of time for the rest of the squad to wake up. And then with the power of his individual plays, then suddenly people started to believe in it. We could feel, we could see, we could hear the energy kind of pick up. The comms started being a bit more activated. And finally, G2 shows some character. That's what we were asking, right? We wanted them to show a little bit of resilience, fight back into the game, and kind of grab it by the horns. And I think that's what they've, they've done here, and that's why they were able to close the second half so cleanly. Yeah, so much impact coming out from Nico, but as you said, great that he wasn't doing it on his own, because we saw that happening in Copenhagen, and that didn't really spell anything for G2, right? It wasn't the start they wanted to this. Yeah, this time he, he got a bit of help, you know, especially in the clutch scenarios. I think JKS had a couple of rounds sitting in pit in the later stages of the game, getting a couple of multi-kills. We saw Hunter chime in as well. Obviously, Manisi came alive at 12-12, so they were more positive to drag away for this game for G2, but still, considering it was their map pick, considering I'm standing with the feeling that Astralis at least had three or four chances, three or four rounds where they could have ended D2 right here mm -hmm. in this series, it's not comfortable for G2, but I guess a win is a win, and there's also a saying about when you're winning when you're down, and when you're winning when you're not playing well, that's a sign of class as well, so it's not all bad for G2. Obviously, we praise the individual form of minus in round 25, but the round prior to that, we were actually praising uh, you know, the team play coming out of G2. Too, right? Yeah, Nico and team play, I think, are uh, two elements that we have to mention in this game. Round 24 is a good example here. You see it starts with a little bit of a skirmish. Astralis does a really good job at kind of sussing out what's happening on A. They see there's a whole lot of people here, so the calls comes in pretty fast. The rotation, you can see on the minimap, Nico is running back towards B, and then he plays it very beautifully, waiting for the right time. That's the pop flash coming in from Monesi, and that double kill allows the defense to be here on time. Once again, Monesi uh, beats Blameth to the punch, so this clip had it all for me. It had Nico with a multi-kill, because that's definitely a story of this game, but also the finesse and the right rhythm, right? Nico could have just gone straight full on through the smoke and died, but he waited. He understood, he just extended the smoke a little bit, waited for Manesi to come in with the flash, and then they struck in. This is the kind of compliment we were paying Astralis on map one, playing with each other, creating synergy, striking at the right time. This was Nico all over in this round. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's hard to, to disagree with, with that point, to be completely honest. It's hard to disagree with me. Yeah, <laughs> I guess sometimes. It, it also felt like, for me, it was a, a sign of the limitation for Astralis as yes. well. They're yeah. still very inexperienced, still a new roster. Again, we saw them have plenty of opportunities, but, but D2 has been a team for quite some time. And we did see D2 back in Katowice having one of the longest winning streaks ever on land. So mm. it's not a team that can play Counter-Strike at a high level. So I feel it's fair enough that it ends up in a 1-1. Yeah, and, and you're right, seeing Astralis didn't really have the tools. And I think one element to Exemplify it is how Blamef is struggling. Yeah. I think sure. he, he really, as an IGL, felt cornered. He felt like he was out of solutions. G2 did a really good job at keeping utility and blocking Astralis when they wanted to take that map control. Mm. And as a result, I mean, we're not just talking about stats. I'm not just doing tab and say blame F bad. It's about blame F being in two late round clutches towards the very end where he sees as neither of them. He's supposed to be the one. You want to have blame F in these 2v2, 2v3 situations on the A side, but because he's been struggling up to that point, he doesn't convert the opportunity. There's also the case to be made that he had his tool in, in toolbox being Device, who dropped a 30 bomb in this That's game. He was, cool. he was fantastic, especially on the yeah. CT side, even on the T side, which sometimes can be tough for an all player. He did fantastic, right? So it's not that Blame if didn't have the tools available. I think the rest of the team of Astralis played well, but I agree with you. I mean, like tactically, solu yeah. tactically yeah. solutions didn't really have the calls, didn't really have the executes. And at the end of the day, you know, maybe that's to be expected as well. We see Astralis being put down to their place now, and, and again, it's still early on for them. Well, we do find ourselves going the full distance and we do await on the doorstep of Nuke but before we do open that said door uh, Banks what's been going on down in the team booths? Well it looks like we're going to a third I managed to get a little bit of insight from both teams so Swanee started off things when he was saying at the Ancient he said okay things were not going well in terms of what he wanted in the game plan, but the fundamentals were there. Obviously waiting for some individuals to warm up. Well, we saw that coming into Inferno. Yes, that monitor clip's great as well, but the individuals were just there and they were ready to get the job done. Now I want to move over to the Astralis side though. Uh, talking to Castle and his main focus on this and his main thing that he said he was concerned about was just there was too many mistakes when it came to that T side. Even with Device putting up these numbers, those mistakes he said are things that just 
shouldn't be happening, and it was what cost them the game. Let's see if they can close it out. Let's see who's going to get this win when it comes to the third. Astralis believe they can do it. G2, they didn't give me as many words, but I'm sure they're confident as well. Let's see how it goes down. And you know what? There would be good reason for Astralis to go, yeah, we could do this, because uh, Jacob, do you remember the last time G2 played on Nuke? They lost to uh, the infamous and very, very fearful team called EG. Don't know oh, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a, a team of, of great caliber, a team that, that really has shown to be one of the best teams in the world on Nuke. So no disrespect to G2. That happens sometimes. Of course, we're kidding right here. They played a horrible game of Counter-Strike It on was Nuke. ugly. It was ugly. It wasn't pretty. But it's been some time. And you'd assume G2 have been practicing ever since. You'd assume they've looked at that game saying to themselves, we cannot let that happen once more. We had Nico going off in that one. I think he had 34, 35 kills, and they still lost that map. So I expect G2 to come in with a better face here. But I have seen Astralis play well on Nuke as well. So, for my money, this is a 50-50 game. Oof, yeah, it's, it's really hard to call, honestly. Even though there is that, that blunder of an EG situation, I still rate G2 rather very highly on Nuke. Yeah. I think they have a whole lot of diversity, a very versatile on the T side. They're not unlikely to be blocked and not knowing where to go. I think Hooksy has plenty of different calls he can use. They, they utilize the space outside very well. And then you mentioned, Nico, like how many times have we seen him do a one-man show on the CT side, just taking obnoxious risks and killing everybody? It's, it's, a, it's a recurring theme. So I think they're armed for this turn. Nico is the best CT player in the world on Nuke, so he's going to be and very it, scary. It looks like G2 have got some fire on their step after that second map of Inferno, but it's time to see if it can translate upon into Nuke. Astralis definitely not wanting to let this one slip. We're going to find out how it goes down in just a few. What is that reaction? Yeah, right. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god, oh boy! FaZe Clan, Faze Clan, the champions of ESL, of ESL Pro League. Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god, you're already gonna be kidding me! What a map! What a map! The in-game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opper, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? Whoa, bro, what happened? Did I miss the news? Uh, no, I fucked my leg in the Royce bachelor party. So, a bachelor party? Yeah. Um, boy from Fnatic, uh, when we had the, the player break, yeah. he was uh, yeah, having his bachelor party and uh, yeah, it was fun for 10 seconds. <laughs> no, don't tell me it, start, it happened at the start of the night. Oh, it happened after three beers. So yeah, pretty, pretty early. Basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, it's not going to stop you from fragging, but I mean, is it is it is it a break? Is this going to be like a six month lifestyle? You'll figure out after Cologne. <laughs> Bloody hell! Okay, you're a soldier, man. You're a soldier. But in terms of Cologne and in terms of that player break, let's start with the break. Uh, how how was that for the soul? Was it nice to kind of maybe disconnect from the the, the world for a minute? Or, or, or when I say world, I mean the sports Counter Strike. <laughs> go to hotels half of the year. You're traveling. Was it nice to kind of unplug for a minute, or did you even have the chance? Ah, usually I don't like the breaks, but uh, yeah. this time <laughs> it was much needed. Yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah, it felt good to finally have some time home and uh, yeah, just not think about counts like twenty four seven. Right. Sure. Yeah. Good. Good. And, and and how long did you reckon you gave yourself? You have like what, like two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? How did how 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 did it go? Well, I had like three days until this happened with my leg, and then I was pretty much uh, bound to the chair. So after that, I was like, yeah, why does well work then? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the I grind start, begins. I just started being serious after three days, but it was nice those three days. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You really treated yourself right, man. You really treated yourself right. <laughs> well, I wish you a speedy recovery uh, and a good time in Cologne. I want to talk, touch on Cologne. How many times have you, have you been uh, to, to, to Cologne for an event like this? Uh, zero. See, I, that was my assumption, but I did. I, I made the mistake before. I'm like, is this your first Cologne? And they went, no, last year. And I was like, oh, hmm, well, anyway. So yes, it's truly your first Cologne, bro. Yeah, in the Flames, we played the Major, ended up Major, and then That's right. Cologne was after that, and we disbanded at the Major. So yeah, uh, haven't tried it yet. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like, there's a lot of similarities from Katowice. So I feel like I tried it a bit, but mm, yeah. uh, never been in the arena before. And it yeah. uh, would be nice to try that. I agree, and that's we'll leave it there. Uh, looking mm -hmm. forward to hopefully seeing you in that Langsess, but start strong, have a good group stage, man.
Well, we've got a series on our hands. That much is for certain. And the stakes couldn't be higher here for the opening match of Group B. Uh, after one hell of an inferno with some phenomenal high points in it for G2, it's safe to say that the individuals have found their footing here. And now come Nuke as this third, as this decider, Astralis might have felt like a couple of small mistakes, a couple of uh, you know plans not going according to plan have let them down. It's left them with this nuke as a third it used to be a home map for the Danes, a home map for Astralis, and it's one that G2 have struggled on in recent time. But an epic series deserves an epic conclusion. And so let's get into this. Without further ado, Device opens up. Hooksy with the reply, making his debut at Cologne, in with a double. And he's going to send Astralis down lower. He's never been to the Lang Langsness. He's never been in the arena, and it is never an easy road to get there. Astralis in a 2 on 4 fighting back, and Hooksy tries to spam him through the smoke. The bomb will be planted. That Vermont rotate is crept down, but Device is covering. This P250 can be lethal in the post part, and it will certainly need to be as it swaps off, in fact, to the dual Berettas, back to the double door. There is no kit. Device can win this round with a couple of well-placed shots. They need to kill him quick together, and Device only puts down one more. It's going to be G2 with a pistol as they try and fight forward. This team looks different to the one we got on that opening map of ancient lackluster T sides went quiet when we needed them the most. Have G2 woken up just in time? Hot start for Hooksy as well, right? He is the, the reason why this pistol's nice and clean. His double first over towards outside, then the second one down at B. Uh, really do make life a, a lot easier for G2. And he'll even be the guy to put the cherry on top and cement the pistol round. So not normally the one you look to, but he does the uh, the heavy lifting there. And he's gifted G2 a nice start, providing they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Device's AK Force. I've taken nothing for gra granted in round two, given how the Inferno second half began. So, yeah, it's only one gun. It's not a full force for Astralis, but they seem to be believing in it. And if you're wondering what all the screaming was in this building, it was nine Ents, which as you can see on the right has ended in favor of Ents in an overtime bout on map three. So only bangers coming down today. But group B definitely is tough. We've got Navi Maus after this matchup as well, waiting. Vice looking for this pick, but very passive position towards the back of Garage for Nico, so he'll be giving over nothing. It's extremely difficult to find that cross. Device is going to walk it. They'll allow this, but it's not that G2 are worried too much about lower. JKS can quickly rotate. Monacy's come in to support and ramp, and they're hopping out into their own demise. The bomb tries to survive, and Hooks is even chasing these vent players, dropping that AK-47. Even though Stair gets it back, winning this round is a tough task. Upper is open with the exception of Hunter. But you've got to fly up the vent with that AK. Yeah, Upper is now very much closed. Yeah. There's suddenly three players here in the blink of an eye, ready for the vent rotate. So very well handled by G2. They piece together what's happening in that round. It's a team ace, everyone chiming in, everyone pulling their weight. And said, no worry on the hero AK round, but Astralis have got more tricks up their sleeve, right? They might have come into that one with a rifle, with a couple of players on armor. But they're still bringing out guns in this follow-up round. So there's never a moment to rest if you're G2. You don't get that usual freebie. Not yet. You're going to have to earn it. Instant wall off of the first gun round. Blame's going over it, though. Looking for this garage pick, see where Nico has found himself. Different position every round so far. And I love this call for G2. They read this well. They started too low. They're walking straight up. Blame's got that spot. But even going wide on main, you have to be careful with your shadow. There's the flash. Honestly, is seen. They don't want to show there's two players here, though. And Nico, as a result, can fall all the way back. And he's actually reconfirmed ramp is clear. So Astralis are going to get given no kills in the yard in any capacity. They can use it to get deep towards hell or take some control in secret, but I don't think you're expecting this much room 
Looks like it wants to be an A split, perhaps. With Blame left on the roof, they go back to the lobby. Bomb's picked up for outside, though. The time is going to be the problem here for Astralis. Lining up top site Util. And G2 assured in this one. Two players on A and a third can come in quick rotation. Well, I say that Nico's doubling down on ramp, so there's a shot here for Astralis. 30 seconds. The flank is in. Oh, fake is, out. Yeah, this is a very late play that they're looking to make. It's going to be JKS, the, the real focal point here. Now the rest of G2 know that this play is coming in at lower. JKS, I like this decision. He backs out of there. He's trying to waste time, trying to be a nuisance, and he's nice. doing a great job of that. JKS does all he has to, and then some. Stare is getting hounded from every single angle. Wherever he chooses to fight, he's open to something. Too many angles, and he's just one man. So over ramp by G2. A nice start to their CT side, very composed. That wasn't, you know, a, a super standard round out of Astralis. That is a very, very late take of the lower site, trying to get tricky with some of those rotates, knowing that they wouldn't have much to go up against down at lower. Yeah, the issue is the later you go there when you haven't seen anyone outside, G2 make the perfect call to push lobby. They know they're going to catch you doing something for the execute, you know, setting up for an A pop, or they're going to clear lobby completely. Nico catches device coming down on the ladder. So Astralis just aren't ready to be pushed with 20 or so seconds left on the clock. That's when they're priming themselves for a hit. We have a nade stack here on roof. It looks like four HEs trying to blow Hunter to bits, and I think they might have him. One nade missed, though, and Hunter sees it coming and dodges. I don't think one nade would have made the difference. Very heads-up move for Hunter to reposition there. And not enough damage that you know, any one player can know they've hurt him off of an assist, know that those nades were a good play. As far as they're concerned, no one was backside. Astralis have always loved that. That's like old school Astralis, you know, nade stacking hut roof or top silo on, uh, on A. It's nothing new. A legendary map for this organization, although only one player remains from that era. And we talked about this earlier, but this is Astralis at Cologne, man. The last four Lanxus appearances in a row. They want to get there again. G2 mauling them at ramp, though. Not going to make it easy to run through this very difficult group. One man's made it out. And well overwhelmed, Monacy didn't know about Blame F, who was a little deeper than he was ready for. Now armed with the AK, bomb on the back of Stare. They're going to fixate down the ramp. Noise made by Stare on the run up, and Blame F is the one caught in the crossfire. Now left in another one of these clutches is Stare. Going to try his hand at the plant, but Hooksy will move in swiftly and mop that up. Stare wanted the money, wanted the chance to play that 1v2 out with a bomb to, to play around and act almost like a second man. But Hooksy never gives him the time, never gives him the respect. You know, early in the year, G2 had a monstrous win streak on Nuke, if we remember. It was broken at Pro League by Fnatic. It was, I think, around 16 wins in a row for G2 on Nuke alone. They got destroyed in the game they lost, but this is a, you know, a team that when they are you know, playing at their peak and warmed up, they can be unbeatable on this map. And we're seeing you know, the better, better G2 the longer this series goes on. So Astralis are really having to work if they want to take this series away now in map three. It's a big opening kill for Device. It's been a very consistent piece of Astralis' T size today. High success rate. I mean, even coming into this tournament, just off of the games Astralis have played in the new season, he has like 75% success on opening attempts. That's like an impossible to keep that up. But he's so far done it in this series. Nico's teed up for success here, flashed in by JKS. He'll only get out with one. Blame F was ready to respond there. And now Hooksy can hear them running amok down at lower. Question is, is he going to hold? Oh. Bide his time for Stare outside. Doesn't matter. Stare finds him first. They JKS in the 1v3, already down on the lower side. But this is where Stare, you know, being kind of let off the leash. He's going to go. He's going to clear the upper site. He calls, guys, there's no one up here. The vent rotate is safe. And so they will bypass any world in which JKS looks to win this clutch. Yeah, and to a degree, that's like what we were talking about at the end of last season about the idea of positionless CS. Because the second you kill four players and you look 
and you uh, look at the rate, uh, the uh, scoreboard rather, uh, and you go, oh, it's JKS, he's ramp. So don't go B. You know, we've got so much upper control. He can only be, you know, heaven or dropped in back sight, or he's got the perfect position on B to stop us coming through doors. So that's uh, why we have that conversation on would it be better to, you know, keep things fresh, even if it is just swapping players in and out in certain rounds during maps. But obviously then you have the you know, danger of having to learn more positions and being, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. But it's an interesting conversation nonetheless. We'll see how CS develops in CS2. Good round for Astralis. Off the back of Device's opening pick outside, they convert it with three alive. That's their first round since this third map begins. And on the last couple of maps, we would have, you know, one team start off nicely, convert the pistol, maybe win that first rifle round, and then things would get trickier with teams streaking back and forth. Astralis kind of want that trend to remain true, right? You don't want this to be your one and done. It was signposted by Device with that AWP outside to kickstart the whole ordeal. He's been fantastic across this series, getting great mileage out of him. And this is where they're hoping they can make this game competitive uh, immediately, right? Don't let G2 get comfortable. Don't let them build up this bank account off of a, a crazy second map. Don't let them carry that momentum forward. And so that's what Astralis have got to do here. Going to take it into the lobby. You'll see G2 are already working within some limitations here. Hooksy down to the MP9. Those are great so. nades. They went on roof and they, they bounced them off the top of the silo like we were talking about. And you know, they did them so quickly that it's as Hooksy's setting up. It's not like he's static in a position. He's moving off spawn and he gets blown to pieces. JKS just going to block ramp. Just going to deny this territory for now. They're kind of hoping that Nico and Monacy are going to be given the chance to shine over here outside. Might never come down to it. Stairs often been kind of left over here just to lurk out on his own. So we will have Nico to contest with. Tucked in behind red. Hunter's spamming the smoke, oh, yeah. giving the illusion of like, yeah, we don't know. We don't have the info that no one's crossing. Oh, when in no. reality, Nico, Nico thinks that no one's made it down. <laughs> Him and Stair go bad. cross paths like ships in the night, never knowing just how close they came. This is bad for Astralis, though. This is ultra bad. Nico, will he hold the shot? Oh my yes. goodness, trying to get as much as he can out of it. Uses the trigger discipline to execute too. And with that, the round unravels for Astralis. Nico's like a ghost, a ghostly apparition, a demon in the back of the lobby that they were not ready for. And he's even gonna hound down another. Beautifully wow. played from Nico, great round. He'll never realize why they were so unprepared for him outside, why no one was ready for that. But he plays it beautifully with the situation he gets himself into. And this was what started it all. This ring around the red box. He doesn't go for too many as well. Just two kills is perfect. And I love it when you're making that play. He's telling his teammates, get ready. I don't want you to initiate. But as soon as I make contact, you can go. And Hunter pushes Hut after Nico finds a double. Also gets a kill. Gives Nico four frags at the end of the round. That's a beautiful one-two punch, but it's mainly the right hook for G2. Nice move from Nico. And G2 looking like a different team entirely now. 5-1 up. Broken by for Astralis. They'll molly red this time. They learned their lesson. But Nico. Oh. I mean, he's been flash food in the past, but there's no one here to lob it for him. Could look for one through the windows, but yeah, he's just going to play up close. Listen, use them ears to try and get some info out of this. He's heard players cross down, and he looks to apply pressure. Oh, That's the bomb boy. dropped. 
Nico gets that away from Astralis. JKS locked in a fight over at Rampa. The bulk of the pressure is on Hunter down here at lower. He will stand the test of time. Does not let them cross into B just yet. And when he sees that third man, that's his decision. Now just to back up out wow. of there, swinging in on Hooksy's contact. A great trade of players making contact first to still get value out of a low HP Hunter. And now it's all on Buzz, JKS. Tapped out from the heavens, sure, that's something. But how much further can you really take this? The bomb down at lower. G2 only have Hunter here still. He did get but the they're gun. holding all the extremities. Buzz has got to make noise. Time's not on his side here. There's no sneaking down secret. In a way, vent dropping feels like his only option. If he goes outside, that's exactly what Nico wants. And so no chance for Buzz in this 1v3. G2, lock it in. Nico just harassing outside in these rounds. Him and Hunter combining to make this one happen. It's it's a beautiful sight. And I mean, these were the, the two that couldn't quite show up at the same time back on the back on the first map of this series. Yeah. We had a great start from Hunter. Then he kind of fell off come the second half, and it was Nico stepping up. But now they're both switched on. Yeah, uh, Pimp called him the best outside rifler in the world on the CT side. And right now, Nico is showing us exactly why he earned, he's earned that title. A good variety of setups, playing close and far from the smokes, getting great flank timings. Another nade puts device down to half. And he's aware of the possibility this will be even Glaive Smokes late. JKS, though, how about ramp rush? He hears that first guy come through. He's going to have to abandon this completely, running amok. As Stair chases him down, there's a good grenade. If they swing with it, they will walk slowly into JKS's crosshair. Two headshots is lovely, and that's a costly B take for Astralis. I'd be surprised if they can convert this. G2 are right here at the doors. Yeah, very well played from JKS in that position. The, the drop down was about half oh. a second later than you would have liked. Still gets out of it with a lot. But Device is really looking to make this round intriguing. He's on some super weird routing here if you're G2. Uh -oh. Now this is going to be heard by Nico. And Device should never check this. Device should never be ready for this. And he's not. So that orb gets its head cut off. One head off the beast, a second found, and just Borup left to beat. G2 flow over Astralis down at lower. It starts with a lovely double out of JKS, and Hooksy's getting loud now. Yeah, and, and that's that's what you want out of G2, right? Three stars left in, in the post part. All three find their kills. They're all given 1v1s. They make it look so easy. And that's after JKS in a very difficult position. Yeah. Gets out with a double kill. I, I wanted to talk about it more, but obviously you know, so much is happening in that moment. He, he kind of dropped down the ramp on like a bit of an odd timing because he tried to take that yeah. first fight. So that actually left him with less time than your ramp anchor likes to have to get down ramp. That's why his decision to underhand the smoke nade the only available choke point. It, he does a really good job of being in a pretty dire situation and making it as streamlined and as easy as possible as he can to get out with a multi-kill there. Again, smoke's down. This time Nico's not here to challenge them. He has started down lower for the first time for at least this player. Astralis, they have nothing in terms of util. They just have to dry walk this one. Now the numbers aren't known, but Nico will confirm that soon. Three players in secret blame the insurance policy on a main lurk. Oh, boost is a really good idea. Nico might get caught by this. That's a great shot for Borum. Not an easy head to hit. Nico finally dead, 11 and three. They're gonna get a bomb pawn out of this one, you'd think, unless JKS can spam this smoke efficiently. Oh, can't quite find it. Haircuts not dished out. And G2 might just save off of positions alone. That's a fantastic opening for Astralis. Unless Buzz dies very soon. But even then, G2 are just crunching the lobby. They'll have this kill, but they won't have the round. <laughs> that was, if he fired, that's a collateral right there. I, I love this call for G2. It shows great restraint to do this at 7-1, but they realize, yeah, just one, not even a mistake. One really nice play for Astralis to catch Nico while he's looking at the wrong angle. And we may as well just play the long game, keep our money.
and we can still dominate this half. Yeah, you know, I mean, in any round of Counter-Strike, there's decisions to be made, right? And that's the beauty of this game. There's almost an infinite number of possibilities. And with every decision you make, you accept that you're going to be making some concessions. And that round there was essentially, if Nico falls down at lower, getting nothing done, if they're able to locate him, then yeah, you, you were kind of out of the round. Good restraint, as you say, to just ride it off. Yeah, go back was, to the drawing board. It was basically instantaneously. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't a hoo haring or a bit of self doubt. It was just you know, make the call and believe in it. And ultimately, that's the best bet. Modesty not be required to go crazy in this map, but he looks like he wants to get involved. Put this orb in the picture, and that's one way to do it. Up in front of the door smoke gets that entry. Astralis wanted to hit this top site. That's called into question. Yeah, you lose the door component, it gets a lot more awkward now. You're just kind of funneled through this fatal hole over towards the front of heart. Blame Whoa. F. Good damage on the spam, but that's so little to write home about in this moment. Very good awareness on Monacy, right? That's a, that's a pretty standard entry route there from Astralis. You throw that smoke that lands out from the door. It gives you a few more options to try and make that play. And Monacy gets ahead of it by, by quite literally playing in front of the smoke, ready to catch someone on their attempt to entry out through the door. So a job well done for G2 here in containing this top site hit. You just feel like you've removed this as an option for Astralis for, for at least the next couple of rounds. Yeah, there's no safe route here either. Best bet is trying to trade onto JKS. But it looks like Astralis might be leaning into the save if nothing is given to them. And even Nico, who has been in this position for about 40 seconds now, he could have flanked, but you know that that's a way that you give Astralis a way back into this round. Instead, he's confirmed they're saving with this info play, and now he can go hunting. Try and finish one of them off. He knows one's still lobby side, though, or roof. Flash has come over somehow through a window, perhaps. Blame still gets the kill. A two on four save should be good i love these flashes wow blame he's full blind just shooting as jks comes up the ladder it's a very efficient save here for astralis but g2 it shows that there you know four rifle save in the previous round was the right call they come right back in with an answer And much as how you can, you know, we, Borum showed us, you can win a round with one kill. Modesty does almost the same thing, just with that opener. It stifles the A play completely, and Astralis, like, cancel the rush. Then they go back in for it with no flash. Yeah, there's a pretty desperate decision. Oh, they're going to try to go back outdoor again. You, you're hoping that Monacy is trying to reposition on his orb. So you use that against G2. Hooksy is the hero of this round, though. Dropping in at the back of the site. The Anchorman arrives. And now it's just Ooh. Device. Knows about the Heaven player. Knows about the backside player. There's still one man unaccounted for, and that's making Device uneasy. He's going to try and fight the battle he knows about, and he deals with Hooksy. He's ready for that re-peak out of the heavens, and when he isn't given it, he gets suspicious. Why have I not been traded yet? So he'll go hunting, oh. and he finds JKS in the back of the lobby. This is a fantastically played one-on-three from Device, but there's one man still to beat. Monacy gave him the wave earlier on. Look at this. Device reply with a smile. And now it's gonna be Device's time in the limelight. Bomb retrieved. Plant found, Monacy out through the door, and oh! Device executes him! Clinically done, and he <laughs> returns the favor! Beautiful scenes, Device shows how he finds this level of consistency, the experience, it all shines through and is embodied in that clutch. Just one of the greatest of all time. And the fact that he's still doing it in 2023 in a different Astralis roster with none of the remaining players from his era. And he just pulls out rounds like this every damn yeah! day. It's Monday, sickening. What a 1v3 for Device. And this head to head between him and Monacy, you've been getting it. You've been getting these orb fights all series long. And now he's shut it down in a clutch as well. So entertaining.
I just can't get over, like, you know, he, the decision making, you see the cogs whirring, like the, the speed he's having to process everything. Now, we have the X ray, it feels almost too easy, you know, like for us, but he's got his own mental imagery of how that round's panning out. And you could just see the awareness, you know, it was in the positions that he knew about, that was how he figured out where the man he didn't know about was, like some sort of ICBM. Look at him. So here we are, JKS are growing into the lobby. G2 want their revenge. And they're doing it by trying to take away this staging platform for Astralis. They've taken the lobby control, and now Astralis have this awkward decision where they have to try and retake this, that they can't let G2 have it. They don't have any pressure outside. They don't have any presence there. So they've got to go fight for the lobby. And every step of the uh -oh. way, it's thwart with danger. Even though Device is out in the A site, Blame F is pinned in, and they know he cannot be anywhere else. So it's down to Device to deliver go again. On. Molly swings <laughs> Monacy wide, and and this time, he wins it out. Yeah, full focus, not looking up from his screen after that one. G2 have a goal in mind, and right now they are delivering it here in this third map. The most one-sided map we've seen of this series so far. Great shooting for Monacy. Shame to see Blame just, you know, go and crouch peek into Monacy there with the orb. Uh, instead of waiting for Device, you know, who had Util, who had an easy route to come back into lobby and help him. That feels like an oversight uh, for, for Blame to just, you know, force the fight when Monacy is already known about on that angle. But Astralis getting sloppy near the end of the T side, perhaps nothing has really worked, even when they get that outside Ooh. lower control. JKS could be in some trouble here. They're closer than he's ready for. And yeah, so he will get over Ram, caught with the nades out. That, that moment where he doesn't have vision over ramp allows them to get close. And so Astralis have at least got a nice bit of real estate here and an AK retrieved for Borup. Yeah, Nico's let Stare at have outside essentially. He's just making sure he's not main splitting. So down lower goes Hunter to deal with this one lurk. But Astralis can't really do anything if Stare gets killed and he's on the clock right now. Hunter's, oh my, Hunter? He doesn't know. Nico knows about stair outside. He called it. He left it completely. Hunter's not even considering this with his knife out in the vent. That looked like a rotation called, but instead, just confused, dazed, dead. Nico does find Bor up on ramp, but that bomb has snuck down into secret, into this B site. G2 are on the retake here. This round shouldn't even be close. Yes, there is the one who got away. It's all going to get thrown onto him in the clutch, and he's low on health. So this is where the mop-up should look to come through. Two players out from ramp. Hooksy clearing the back oh. line, but Stare adds another to the tally. Oh, no and way. one more for Stare. Low on HP, but not a care in the world. It's Nico left to beat. Nades the door off. This is such a strong post plant. Stare can pick and choose his battles, and all the pressure. It's all on Nico now, running him down. Even though he gets the kill, Stare has done enough. Beautifully done from the man who has so often been touted as the next hot thing in Denmark. Beautiful scenes from his Deagle, playing like he's 100 HP, like he's the star, like he's the guy. Yeah, this shot here, that was just clinical through the window as well. I don't know how he even got into secret unbeknownst to G2, That's but then crazy. he haunts their yeah. nightmares. That's so confusing. The lack of consideration that he was down when he was already spotted crossing red. And that is one that G2 will live to forget, uh, live to regret. Definitely not forget. Astralis trying to find their second win to the end of the half. Suddenly six rounds isn't off the table. No, far from it, far from it. G2 coming in with another buy. Sure, it's gonna have the AWP. You've got Nico on an M4. That part sounds great, but it's as you go down the list, it gets worse and worse for G2. And this is all in. This is everything put into this round. So really, you're looking at Monacy, you're looking at Nico, and you're saying like, they have to stand and deliver here. That's such a clutch round to find at this point in the game, because yeah, just flips the money, flips the momentum completely. And if Astralis win this map out of nowhere, that's all the all you're gonna be thinking about. These two incredible clutches for Astralis in this T side. Device is one on three. Stare doing the same. Monacy has had enough. 
Going to put his money where his mouth is, back in the door. Looking for danger, and he's found it around every corner. Buzz removed. Device get picked outside as well. And Nico letting no one slip by in these smokes. He's going to find Stair this time. Five on two, and G2 recover very well. Yeah, out of all the ways that this round could have gone, it's perfect for G2. The two players that they wanted finding contact first, that they wanted involved early, that they set up to be involved early, do get those engagements. And it Lovely. just starts to fall apart for Astralis past that point. Blame F1v5, lobby taken, and they've got him boxed in with the bomb outside. They know his end destination, if ever there was one. Sure, overruns Nico here, but it's so much more work to do, and time is of the essence. 20 seconds left. They're behind him. They're in front of him everywhere he goes. G2 a look to occupy. And so the best case scenario now for Blame F is that he gets to hold on to his AK and not even that is a given as Hunter hunts them down. G2 right back in the swing of things. They brush off the last couple of clutches that Astralis have found and now they lock in double digits. That's probably the best aspect for G2. The fact that they can lose two you know, unbelievable clutches. Like the device one's just super well played but the stair one's definitely, you know, a, a, a missed move for G2 and Still, G2 are looking like they might find 11-4 at the end of the half. That's great resilience mentally when this series could have been done and really should have been done in two, given the opportunity Astralis had back on Inferno. They will have to force for the last round. And it's looking like a ramp hit again. JKS has not had a problem. One round, he's fallen one for one on ramp. Every other time, he's escaped with his life and done more than that as well. Good tag, though. He's kind of trapped out here in the corner. They're going to run through the smoke as well. He doesn't know where to look. Blame is right behind him. And G2, they can't save this time. They've got to save the day. Oh, Hooksy's going to keep getting chased here. Nice that one shot. fight is not the end of the line, but he will quell that ag aggression through the double doors. Device is Deagle. Domes won. But Nico replies and things slow down for Astralis. It was in the chaos that they were meant to thrive in this round. Nice the move. slowdown is not good for them. These smokes fade and now sight lines are open. Nico playing this very smart. If they want to leave, this is the only route out. And this is the last place you look. Oh, on the swing, he's dinked immediately. Nade could find Buzz, certainly could. Brings him down low, but not enough to get the kill. Nice. Hooksy returns the favor, the advantage put back in favor of G2, blame F. How about another clutch? It's where Astralis have had to find all their successes, and now it's the man who said he could take this squad to the promised lands, the captain of blame F. Left to do it, only himself to worry about here as he slinks into the B site. Hooksy has not moved a muscle Still just waiting. Hunter clears out upper. Now they know it's the B play. Hooksy drawing the attention in, making Blame uncomfortable, never giving him a moment of rest here to get set up for this post plant. Util goes out now. Blame F looking to give Astralis five at the end oh. of the half, and they nearly <laughs> line up for him. But Hunter will get the trade. G2 come together beautifully by the time Nuke rolls around, and they're sat just five rounds away from picking up the dub. Enjoys a hero AWP round. That's not going to be the case here, though. The M4s are coming out as well. They'll be sacrificing full utility. But with what they have, can they find the right play heroic? Early incendiary into the window. And that will extinguish the smoke. There'll be a gap to play with for Stout, who's holding angles there. The fast boost into the apartments. Oh, he's posted up at 910, is there. Ready and waiting again. Good fight from Hazteca, just catches Stown before Stown smokes it off.
And Heroic's early round moves not working out for them. The Mongols well prepared for the early round aggression. Stan was not able to get involved in the previous round. So I think he was trying to see if he could get involved in the action in towards Connector, but just got the timing slightly wrong. Didn't realize Hazteca was so far up. Now Heroic will need a big step up to have a chance in this round. Smoke goes into window. Tessess has taken over orping duties for now. But the Mongols with full mid control starting to get into connector. And this might be false information from Shush. It depends where that bomb goes. It's at mid, so it can go either way right now. But it feels like the Mongols are starting to spot out that A is a little clearer than you'd normally expect. 36 seconds. And Heroic don't really have the utility to slow these players down. The patience from 9 10. Claims another soul. Securing jungle. Ooh. They've got angles on short as well. Potential upgrade for Shush as the bomb will be planted. Second AWP then, if they can survive. But a 5 0 start for Mongols on the T side of Mirage is fantastic. Off to the races immediately. And I think that's what you want to see from an underdog as well. Again, absolutely don't have, can't really compare in terms of name value with the best team in the world at present. But they could certainly earn some in this series. How much do you want to hunt? Smoke might deny. Ooh, there is the push in from under though. Tech G2 came into this series looking scrappy and rusty, but they have scraped it off, and right now diamonds are being revealed beneath. 11-4 at the end of the first half. It's map three, it's Nuke, and it's G2 in their opening bout here in the IEM Cologne group stage. Astralis, an impressive run through the play-in, and an impressive hold here in this matchup. But finally, on the third map, the Danes are having trouble. Are G2 gonna make quick work of this, or will this be made into a meal? Yeah, outside of a couple of clutches, that's all Astralis are able to find. Monacy opens up the pistol as G2 come in confident with a fast top sight hit. Ends up even in a four on four. They want this one to end with a bang. They know that winning the pistol is basically enough to, to lock you in this series. And look at the moves that Hunter's making right now. All the way in through ramp. This backstab could be timed perfectly. They've got knives pulled. He will only get one from it. That's going to pressure these players out of the heavens on the back of the flash. They've got to fight forward as Hunter corrupts the back line. Bested by Borup and Buzz floats into the site to tap the bomb. Baiting peaks. Nico finds him. Just Borup in this 1v2. And G2 don't have to fight him. They don't have to give him the satisfaction. And Nico will go hunting anyway as G2 pick up the pistol. They they want this win. They want to make amends from how this series started. Firing on all cylinders now. A confident display to open up this second half. It's, good. it's nothing but reassuring for, for G2 who have had a, a pretty horrible last few months, right? As I said earlier, with the exception of two BO3 wins over Cloud9, this roster has not beaten a top 10 team since the Katowice Grand Final over Heroic. They have had a rough last season. And even though this is only one step, at least it's in the right direction and not just beating Astralis, but battling their own demons in this series, certainly. And remaining resilient despite some incredible clutches from the Danes and a seemingly unwinnable Inferno pulled back from the brink of defeat. If they could end this series with a statement going back to how their nuke looked at the start of the year, a 16 win streak, that would certainly be a good sign for G2 moving forward. And with the option of either FaZe or NIP waiting in that next matchup on Monday, the chance for G2 to maybe get a win against one of the proven tier one rosters. This is all in the future though. They've got to finish what they started. Forced by for Astralis. And while well, they're out of position, frankly, it might just be that full blame F save. An old callback to Cole. And a unicorn round, perhaps. 
not on JKS's watch. But even so, this is just going to be a rerun next round for Astralis. Yeah, it's the very old school, you know, blame F for Spy round. And they might even get out of it with this Galil. They know he's here somewhere. You almost don't want this to be the unicorn round. JKS ain't looking up. Got to look up, man. So a gun gained. Something to work with for Astralis in this next round. This force gets a tiny bit more interesting for them. They can still put this to use. G2 seem unfazed by it, though. They know that they've done a lot of the legwork here. Thanks to the success in the pistol, now in the conversions. If they can just hit the sweet spot on this next one, they're in great tidings to pick up a dominant win in the third. And I mean, with how this series has gone, with how back and forth uh, Inferno was, with how Ancient felt like they were lagging behind for the longest time. You used the word reassuring earlier, and that is, you know, the, the, the feeling for G2 right now. Nico creeping up close to these smokes. CT or T side, he feels more than comfortable out in the yard, and he's going to guide everyone across. The Shepherd leads. And the kid follows. You'd like to think this is a safe bet. Astralis still have everyone over on the top site. Only now is that starting to change. And G2 have options here. Their hands are not tied. They don't have to follow through with the B play. Even if that's where the bomb is, even if that's where the bulk of these players are. Honestly, Five. quick work to find device. Does this make them want to follow through? Because Nico runs in, will end up falling at the hands of the 5-7. Buzz still alive, still a threat, buying time in at the back of the site while his teammates thin the rest of the herd. I'm scared. Buzz is finally dealt with, but he gets away with a lot of damage as they show him the door. And now it's Stair oh, with yes. that scavenged Galil from last yes. round, 1v2. They're going to try and dupe him and get ahead on the rotate. They need every advantage they can get right now with these two players low. Bomb planted, post plant set up. Right now, this round is set up for Hunter to win it if it comes down to it. And he's making a perfect play, wrapping heaven as well. Stair doesn't have a kit, he's on the clock. Silent drop is lovely, but Stair... There's no saving this situation. Hunter is the guarantee to win this round. Monacy giving him nothing and Stair sneaking in, but silence will not help you today. Missed shot, it's fine. It's I'm fine. not sweating and neither a G2. Hunter can afford to check this first, he can afford to die. He doesn't even do so. It's Stair who will not survive. And G2, the pacifist approach, everyone dies. Except Monacy. 14 to 4, and that's one way to do it. Yeah, very well done. I mean, you know, there, there was some serious, uh, serious well where that could have gotten out of hand, right? If they they felt that pressure, compelled to just commit to the B plant. But no, they, they put some distance between them and Stair. They, they cut off that flow of info. They don't make life easy for him, and they make it very easy for themselves. Great try for Buzz, though. We've seen you know good signs out of a lot of players for Astralis in this series, even though Buzz is having a really poor map here. Uh, did all he could there on the B-bomb side. Kill and two low players. But G2 right now just outmatching, outclassing Astralis on map three of this series. Doing what they should be doing, as far as I'm concerned. Nice dig from Blame. I like that little one way as well. It's good for fighting on an A rush. It can also put out the hut roof molly. Got a full wall outside. Blame repeaks. He finds Nico. Good flash from device. Definitely hands over eyes. And G2 can make it down to secret, but stairs already there. He's got his work cut out for him. Because he can't really afford to fall. Suddenly the B site goes dark and he barely even gets info on that peak. 
dead immediately. Buzz rotates in swiftly, looking to take up where his teammate left off, and he will deal with the double lower push. Contained nicely by Astralis, Monacy and JKS are left to worry about, but they're nowhere to be found here. Monacy might try and give a bit of room across to JKS to come in on this flank through ramp. He himself is getting hunted oh. through the lobby, and so the one and done is all he gets. Right now, Monacy knows he's got a 1v1 in the B site. He almost wants to try and pressure this. He wants to try and take it. But with no time, with no peak given, Monacy is forced to head for the hills. Yeah, his molly was so good. If he actually fought with it, he would have killed Buzz, who, who sat in it for two seconds and just swings out. Monacy tries to use that molly to predict another player's swing to help him out. It's a nice idea, but it's not enough to win the round here today. Very low. He goes to save. And Astralis, thanks to Blame with those openers outside, great damage. They do right by the captain. They close it, finding five. A long road ahead here for Astralis. A perilous one. G2 with ample opportunity to end the game. Honestly, maybe the big ticket item to allow that. They give him some room to entry. Go for a ramp pick after the smoke. Do the heroic boost. Buzz is very passive, making sure not to offer up a free kill here. Nico trying to sell the outside. And right now there's no actual eyes on it. Device is all the way towards hell and he smoked off. So coming up secret is blame instead using a one way. They will get ramp control. Buzz concedes it, making the right call. Especially against a low econ round, hearing those tech nines, you don't want to get flooded and arm your opponents. But now he has to multi-kill from this position. One and done, and G2 are laughing. Util raining in over the top. He hears the footsteps, and uh -oh. yeah, there's that one and done you talk about. That's exactly what G2 wanted here. They were set up for the trade. They've got themselves into B. Borup, first man on the scene, drops in down the vents. Nico is controlling and manipulating these ramp rotates if Astralis look to go for it right now. Everyone's still on upper with the exception of Borup. At least his presence down here on B allows for vent to be used as a point of rotation. But re-smoked in at the double doors. This is starting to get really Ooh, awkward. No You've kicks. imposed a horrible situation here. You've all got to flood out through decon and win fight after fight, wave after wave of G2 players ready to meet them there. Hunter goes one for one. The MP9s move into the site. They get up close where they do their best work. But Dealing with Monacy and JKS back in the doors. I mean, that's wishful thinking. And Astralis now try to head out of there. Now try to save G2. No! With not much to offer in this round, they find it. They deal with that lone b site player. Yeah, that's a, a call of desperation for Astralis, right? 14-5, cool. You have no kit. You are all stuck inside a decon, double smoked off, no ramp flank, and they still go for it. Yeah, you wouldn't do that at a, in a closer game, but Astralis know that they can't just surrender every round. It's not, yeah, it's not even a nice try. It's just a try. It's the only option. And so they save two rifles, but G2 save their souls in this series with a reassuring finisher and a final round needed. They always keep you entertained to do G2 through win or loss. We'll give them that. And if there's an MVP on the other side, it's a man on your screens and device. He has been the rock for Astralis across this series. Came into this map 11 and 4 on opening duels, was into the double digits and multi kills back on Inferno. A 1.47 rating before Nuke began. And while this map's been a little harder for everyone, it probably wouldn't have got here without Device, and he will start this round off as well. Yeah, beautiful way to open on the back of this aggression, right? Already you've kind of put G2 in a bit of a weird spot. 
They have to dedicate a bit of attention into the lobby just to hold on to this. Smoke down. Bar up on the other side. And walking outside is a death sentence for Hooksy. When you see him walking close to the main smoke like that, you're anticipating that that was the beginning of a bit of a top sight hit. The flashes do enough to stifle these door players. It grinds to a very awkward halt now. And Bar up alongside Stair will farm on the MP9s. It's just Monacy. 1v4, AWP in his hand. Minute left to play with, so you're gonna see him float around, see if anything's offered up. But if Astralis just take their hands off the keyboards, if they stop moving, Monacy has already decided he will not attempt this round. Uh -oh. Device wants more than uh -oh. that. Him and Monacy have developed a bit of a rivalry across this game. The gestures to one another down the desk, down the sightlines when they oh. open up, and Monacy hunted down by his orping counterpart on the other side. That'll give Device the big green at least, and that's something for Astralis to look forward to. At least an exit. It's actually G2 calling in a timeout as well. Their money is pretty garbage at the moment, so... It looks like they just want to force up and give it a, a Hail Mary, go for a quick hit, maybe a top rush. Those MP9s can be really annoying to play against, so... If anything, there might yeah. be a world where they can actually get out onto this top site. Yeah, I mean, you know, these these types of calls are always... Are always uh, dangerous to play against, because, you know, your opponents do play that much looser. When you're coming through with the uh, with the force, it can make containing it hard to deal with. It means that device needs to pick and choose his battles a little uh, a little smart on the AWP. Uh, it can be down to where you start as well. Yeah. CT or here, if G2 are going for a quick you know pocket strat and they're they're you know pulling out something a like dry run, they're going for a fast A. Device starts in the wrong position. He can be left completely out of spot to deal with this. JKS going to try and get behind the vent but he's going to get spammed down quite significantly and maybe even to his last legs. One more shot will do it. He's going to late pop. I mean, you've spammed it so much, you almost don't believe he could still be here. Yeah. Blame F will locate him on that smoke fade and now looks to clean house the remaining G2 players like lambs to the slaughter go into this bomb site up against the rifles. It doesn't always work, but I like that G2 tried it, right? Just pull out something that you, you, everyone knows what they're doing. Everyone's got late util to, to help JKS out. It's just a lot of smoke spam. Astralis read that very well. They started with three on top site immediately and a fourth came in through main. So it's it wasn't too much of a surprise, but yeah, G2, they have the room to go for something like that. Exactly, right? It's the freedom that comes with having 10 chances to close this game out, right? You don't feel so remiss for taking the, these kind of early uh, early risks, get everyone's money back on the same page. That's exactly what they've done now. As this eco round flows down the pipeline, they're still a long ways away from being worried yet. Not a penny spent. Pissing in the wind for G2 with Glocks. And just using this as a faux timeout, chatting it through for that next round. Just existing. But how do you feel about Astralis, Harry, after watching this series? They've been through some ups and downs, without a doubt. Taking the first map, something that's been a mainstay of their pool mm. in a lot for a long time, especially for Blame F and Ancient. And yes, the Inferno loss hurts, but at one point that was their game. You know, this is probably the best Astralis we've seen since Cologne last year. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think it's very good signs for Astralis. It's all building and pointing in the right direction, right? And that's the main thing when you look at this squad. I mean, there was never really a question around someone like Device or or even Blame F offering up good performances, but it feels like, you know, Blame has found better ways to be impactful. He's he's put his bag of tricks to use in, in other avenues. Uh, and then around him, you know, you've got this, this really... 
uh, interest in supporting cast element of uh, someone, you know, like Stare, who you've seen these star moments from, who has been touted as the next big thing. Someone like Buzz, who's been around just that tad bit longer, larger degree of familiarity. I think for the most part, he's made some very sound choices across this, uh, across this series. So all moving in the right direction, but will that be enough to keep this Ooh. match alive? Hooksy does not seem to think so, oh. but Device is quick with it He's in the off. reply. Deeg out, he does it with the sidearm. Returns the lead to Astralis in the round, but now they've got to contest with this plant down lower. Hooksy dies a hero in just selling this A play while they all drop down the vent. It's a very cheeky move for G2, and it's getting weirder by the second with Hunter inside of the smoke. Oh, they spam it. Did they hear that? They did. And Hunter gets cleared out from the miss. Two on four. Someone needs to save the day, and it might be down to JKS, but flicked by Borob. Astralis get a commanding and convincing retake on that lower site, despite that upper kill and a very early bomb plan. Astralis are not going down without a fight. No, they're not. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you've already used up almost half your chances, G2, to close this out. True. To put it to bed before it even becomes a worry. And with each passing round, folks like Device are only getting more switched on. That's a beautiful sequence from him. Just straight gorgeous as he changes out to the Deagle, ready for that swing up through the site. So cleanly done. Clean is you the keep, right word. You keep telling yourself, we only need that one <laughs> round. But you'd be surprised how hard it can be to find yeah. when you've got 15 already. Down to the pistols again. You hit this point where like these become scary because they're the ones that you care about a little less. You don't overthink these ones. You try to brute force it. You try to cause chaos. So let's see if that can be the answer for G2. Last time the top site hit got denied the moment JKS tried getting outdoor. Yeah. He's running a similar path thing here, but it's a little later in the round. Got this backside molly from Monacy and lots of flashes that are just going to cycle in. Stair needs to dodge the right ones, but he's blind after an instant. He just commits staring into the white as he sprays away. Dodges that next one. A nice attempt from Stair. Bore up on top of the hut with a smoke in his face. Doesn't matter to him. He hits three heads and Hunter has to reset and try and squeeze something out of this round. It's a good escape from Hunter. To commit into certain death on that A site is not the move. This at least gives him options. And there are a lot of options open right now. They're going to hear him. They, they know the game's afoot. They know what's happening here. But now you've got to deal with it. Device and Buzz, the two left up against Hunter. Armed with only the Tech 9. Hunter's looking for a clutch to end this for G2. Early on in this series, this was the only way they could win rounds. Now they look to win the whole series on the back of one. Hunter up close, oh! and the Tech 9 delivers. Hunter oh! with the close, and the uncrowned kings of G2 pick up some steam towards the end of this series. They believed in the five-man unit, one of the few squads to not make changes over the player break, heading into the new season. We were questioning the synergy early on you were questioning if they were all there and i think that's what you have to look at nico he held down the fort long enough for reinforcements to arrive and for g2 to put their best foot forward yeah for astralis it's not nose in the dirt this is definitely a roster to be intimidated by inside of the clone group stage a very difficult group ahead of them but the best astralis we've seen at least since cologne 22 when they made it to the semi-finals in the Lanxus arena they want to do it again under a legendary organizational name astralis with a good form right now. Yeah, G2 certainly turning over a new leaf and pulling off the reverse sweep in this series. They continue along the upper bracket. And man, talk about a dominant first half to this map. Sure, things got a little bit dicey. We were thinking, could Astralis pull this one back? But Hunter says, hell no, I'm taking this into my own hands. Yeah, Hunter said no, G2 said no, Nico said no. I think we prefaced it coming into the game as well. I called him the best CT player in the entire world on Nuke. And I think he got to showcase that once more. Nico was aggressive on Yard. He was pushing in back lobby in the beginning of the round. He was all over. It. And Astralis never felt comfortable at any point in that first half. Well done to Nico, well done to G2. Yeah, congratulations, Manasi. That was a bit of a marathon of a game. Uh, a can you tell me the mentality during that game? I mean, it was a good game. Obviously, we didn't give up after losing the first map, and uh, we just showed that we're, we're back. <laughs> it's a good confidence by us, and yeah, mentality was good. Uh, and just nothing special, just 
Cologne. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually talked about how a team like you guys in these moments with the prestige comes together. Is that something that you feel within the team that you're in Cologne and everyone is giving that extra percent? I mean, yeah, like we talked about, like give just extra percent, you know, like exactly what you said uh, after we lost the first map and obviously uh, also after the second map, which you said like to, to ourselves that uh, just give like this extra percent, you know, to like to just everything and uh, we will just close it out because like every time uh, after every series, like we just we were losing like with 16, 14, 16, like 13, 16, 12, and we just didn't have this, you know, like extra percentage, uh, percent, yeah. But yeah. Every time when I come like in Katowice and Cologne, like it's the second time for me, I just feel better to play, you know, I don't know. Manasi, we saw a lot of intensity, a lot of yelling, a lot of waving, a lot of thumbs up back and forth. Tell us about the energy in that game, because it felt like both of the teams were giving their all in terms of like screaming at each other. I mean, yeah, we have a lot of energy, like maybe also you said like uh, showing like thumbs up. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, what was yeah. that about? Like waving, <laughs> or just nothing, you know, like just showing because like I'm pretty calm, you know, I don't like to scream or something. I just like trying to focus more on myself. I don't want to scream and yell and uh, lose a bit my, not focus, but just uh, energy. And uh, it's mostly like Rasmus doing and uh, other people. Maybe <laughs> not, not Justin, because Justin likes to smile. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So. Yeah, listen, we, uh, we talk about intensity. The second map was very harsh, very difficult, back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then you have this moment where yeah. you literally destroy them. By yeah. the way, congratulations, you're going to be in a whole lot of frag movies. Thanks. We were wondering, how did that change or how did that affect the team mentality that very round where you destroyed I think them? we've got the round. There we go. Here it is. Oh, well, that's oh, the I moment, actually. You get to enjoy it. I want to it. see. I want to see. I want to see. Yeah. Bam. That's pretty Bam. nice, huh? <laughs> like, the, the, thing is, the thing is, I was like not dreaming, but I always wanted, like, since I was playing 1.6, <laughs> I, I wanted to make like something, uh, something like... Uh, like similar to it, you know, because in 1.6 you had like this frag movies with Deagle, you know, like where people just stay standing in one position, just uh, killing with Deagle everyone. I wanted to do this once and uh, yeah, like... Just we did how did it feel in time. team then? Like how did it feel after you did that? It, for us know. it felt like you guys exploded. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Rasmus went crazy. Yeah, I, I started waving and uh, <laughs> devices all. I've never seen Nico waver. pull a face quite like that as well. Like that was pure disbelief. Yeah, I don't know. I'm better with Deagle than Nico. So. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. I, I mean, I just wanted to get your sentiment as well. Obviously, coming off of Copenhagen, we know that wasn't the start to the season you wanted. Yeah. What happened between... Uh, obviously, you guys didn't have to play in the play-ins either, so you had a bit more time than some of the other teams. What were you doing with that kind of uh, off time? I mean, like, after Blast, yeah, like, on Blast, we didn't show ourselves really good, especially me. I don't know, maybe, I don't know what, what even happened on this, like, Blast. A lot of people, like, started, like, writing that, uh, like, just some shitty comments, you know what I mean? But I don't really care, just, like, everyone is human, you know? Like, sometimes you have you can have bad games, and uh, sometimes you can have good games. And, like, that Blast just, like, I wasn't not confident, you know? I wasn't, like, not in a good form. I was in a good form, just like something happened in like in our game, so I couldn't like just find my game, you know? Like I couldn't find my own game and uh, everything went wrong. Like, I don't know, just something like that. But after like we had some like a few days off, like we didn't practice and uh, I like I recovered a bit, but I still played CS, you know? I cannot not play CS and just, you know, like chill, you know? So. Mm. I think we just had this day yeah, off. We, we, we discussed it coming into this game as well, saying that you have been a little bit inconsistent. We saw your Blast have a yeah, fantastic yeah. game against OG and then you you fell out. Yeah. Is there anything you're working on in regards to become more consistent? Uh, I mean, just game by game, you know, like, yeah, I'm trying to work to be consistent, but just, you know, just I'm playing my games and uh, from th this, like, if you want to be consistent, you need confidence, you know? Yeah. Without confidence, you cannot be really that, that consistent. Maybe you can just hit, like, easy shots that sometimes I'm, like, I'm not hitting, you know? I can hit like, for example, this by like four diggles, you know, but uh, <laughs> I can miss. Uh, but just nothing, just playing games. I started watching like uh, demos, you know, because before I didn't really like it. I was just focused more on my individual game. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Manasi, for your time. Congratulations on the win and that incredible deagle ace as well. <laughs> thank you. Uh, it was great <laughs> to get to pick you. your brain. Yeah, we'll thank see you so us very soon. Obviously, the thank game you. versus a uh, phase or NIP. Yeah, yeah leave, leave us a mic. Right there. <laughs> you thank you very much, man. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Um, yeah, obviously uh, the side of G2 will be playing either Phase or NIP oh. moving forward. Uh, but for That's Astralis, nice. um, it's kind of a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? Because such a great start to it and then just kind of falling off on the T side of New yeah, about the end. Yeah, that's the only problem that I have. Not that losing a best of three to G2 is, is cause for alarm or worry or no, concern. No. I think it's still a very honorable uh, result overall. It's just that the T side of New lacked a little bit of flair and finesse that I wish they already had. Mm. And we know it's still a young roster 
and there is going to be limitations in the maps that they play and the level that they can play to it. But maybe I just cast myself up in thinking they were more ready than what they've shown here. This was a very um, inoffensive T side from Astralis. That, that worries me a tad. I yeah. think overall, when you look at the series, they, they should be somewhat, you know, happy with the result. Obviously, losing is, is not I mean, cool. But Inferno is winnable for them. Inferno is winnable, exactly. It was it was a 2-0 on the cards there for Astralis, so it wasn't completely unrealistic they could have taken a win here. Unfortunately, they weren't hitting the mark when they had to. Yeah, unfortunately, I lost to G2 in their opener, but by no means the end of the road for Astralis. So let's get a few thoughts from Device. Ruling series and a, a well-fought series until the end. And I want to start with that device. Was It felt like you guys kind of fell flat on Nuke here towards the end and, and just ran out of ideas when it came to it. Not getting enough of the, the T rounds in particular. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a tough half for sure. I think, I don't know how many rounds we got, not so many, but we also had some good clutches with there and, uh, and everything. So, yeah, I think we didn't uh, play our best on the third map, but... All in all, I think we can be proud. Like I think we showed some good like plays on on the first two maps, and honestly, I think like the second map was 50-50. Yeah. So, yeah, it sucks to to not be competitive at the third map, but gotta focus on the positive side. And you guys are definitely enjoying this whole being able to see your opponents across the side. We saw some smiles, we saw some waves across the whole thing. You enjoying this? Yeah, I think it's really funny. For me, it's the first time and uh, it's a lot of banter and it's a really nice aspect. I think like there's like mutual respect and yeah, it's yeah. it's really fun to have that as a like part of the game. Did you want to uh, maybe steal back your way from Monacy after that little AC did? Yeah, I, I, but that ace was crazy, so I understand <laughs> it. Uh, I also gave him a thumbs up. I didn't know yeah, if you yeah. saw it. Yeah, I think I think it's just so funny to have like those moments and it's really unique and I had the, the clutch on Nuke where I went back I, or like I don't I don't know what I did but I looked at him and yeah I think it's really funny and it's just a fun like little aspect of the game and it also shows you like if your opponents are level headed or if they're tilting are they looking only in the screen like it's a lot of body language you can yeah. you can take away from it so uh, yeah trying to look a little bit at that. Okay, that's really interesting. So you see something across there, you can go, okay, look, I've got him, Nico's maybe a bit more tilted, something like that? For sure, yeah. And that's also, I think there's a lot of like, how you position your eyes, if you only look at the screen, are yeah. they looking at their teammates, like, are they talking, stuff like that. So I think it's, uh, it's fun and it adds some uh, strategy as well and some like fun, fun aspect. I love it. I like it as well. Device likes it. We'll have to see how the stars get on in the future games, but we'll keep things moving for now. Yeah, still some good vibes from the Astralis camp. Device smiling, even though he lost. And uh, yeah, showed some good vibes during the game. We love wholesome competition, don't we? We do, we do. And, and he just dropped, I think, a golden nugget on us right there. Like the fact that it is true. You can actually observe your opponents as the game is happening between the rounds. You, there's actually cue in there. Like, oh, how tilted are they? Are they talking with each other? Are they just in face in the screen just mad as hell are they relaxed like he's right there is a little bit of information to be taken and there is a mental game to be won have they funny around or is this very serious are people arguing hell i, I really like that i'm gonna start just posting up with my phone and just recording the teams i'll make like an analysis or a study or something yeah. <laughs> my experience in cologne <laughs> Uh, particularly when you're coming up against G2, because we know them to be a team who can uh, get quite emotional at times. We saw that in Copenhagen. We did, we did. It's, it's, it's not uh, out of the woods yet for, for G2. It's a good no. win, you know, it's a good start for, for Cologne for them. But we were witnessing a game that could have gone 2 0 for Astralis. It wasn't all easy. But as I said, you know, when you're winning, when you're not feeling comfortable, is also a sign of class for me. And we did get to see the best of Nico. We did get to see Monisi go off. So, all things considered, I'm pretty happy with that game. And we have got to see some incredible Counter Strike going down today. But by no means are we done yet. One one more matchup to be rounding out the night, and it comes in the form of a best of three of Maus versus a new look Navi. It's going down after this break. What is that reaction? Yeah, right. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh boy! FaZe Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god! Get ready, you're gonna be kidding me! What a map! What a map! The in game leader, architect of every move and every win. The Entry Fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. 
The Opera, the deadliest of them all. The Support, the true difference between winning and losing. The Lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? Hi boys, can I be the sandwich? Can I be the meat in the sandwich? Imme, JL, I mean, some of the most exciting players in the Paris Major. Now you find yourselves wearing a Na'Vi jersey. I mean, this is, this is bloody exciting. In terms of the, the pressures and the excitement, like where is it, how does the scale work? Because I bet there's both, right? You're probably feeling some pressure because it's Na'Vi and it's a big project and it's, you know, you're playing with superstars, but it's also, got to be exciting to be able to play for such a prestigious organization. You must have been watching Na'Vi games, you know, well before you were getting paid to play. Of course, Na'Vi was my first org that I ever found or knew yeah. about. Uh, but uh, talking about the pressure thing, uh, me at least, I just take one day at a time. I don't look yeah. at like we're going to quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, just do what you have to do. Yeah. You practice, you execute the things that you've practiced and uh, you take it. One day at a time. Nice. Well, that sounds like a healthy mindset. Is it? Are you, are you doing something similar over here, man? It's maybe similar, but like I have, at least for me, I did. Like I don't have any pressure because basically we are a new team. Yeah. Like, everyone knows this, and then if you put pressure already, it's gonna be yeah. very very rough, and then you're gonna make it harder, and then yeah, like maybe it's gonna be pressure after six months sure. whenever, whenever we have like a lot of practice together and all of this stuff. But now it's like new tournaments, new team. We try new things and then... Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's realistic as well. That sounds good. I mean, I, when, when you take a look at, uh, when you talk about pressure, do you think for you, like your individual performance is quite consistent at the moment? Like you just seem, you seem comfortable from the get-go. Is, is there a secret source? You know, is there, is there a reason that you, have, you, you and JL have kind of been hopping and skipping your way up the, the world rankings? You seem to just be able to kind of keep it realistic and not get too lost in the emotions and the... The humans. You mean in Navi or in Game of Legion and past I'm, teams? I was thinking about before, like I, even before, yeah. I mean, in past teams, I'm, I mean, I bet that it's, it's the same with Game of Legion and Apex. Like, we just uh, played our game, we went step to step, and then whenever we beat some team, like, uh, higher than us, yeah. we were like, okay, this is possible. And then we just kept going and kept going, and then we went up there. Yeah. Is this your first Cologne? Yes, first Cologne. First Cologne? Yes. Man, okay, so you haven't got a taste of the Lanxess Arena experience yet? No, not yet. I hope so. I yeah. hope we do. We, we get through. <laughs> One step at a time, right, guys? Yeah. One step at a time. But okay, that's gonna, that could be exciting. I'm going to write that down for my notes. <laughs> but I'll let you go. I can see your teammates are already outside. But thank you for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Cheers. What is your calling? NPL, Perfecto, and Electronic, what do they have in common? Well, they're not going to be joining us in the server today. This BO3 barn burn of an affair between the new smell Navi and a red hot mouse who saw themselves clashing for a notch in that Intel Grand Slam in Dallas at IEM, only to fall just a little shy. Uh, Mouse took to the stage here in the play-ins. They found themselves advancing to the group stage after some career highlight plays from their members. Meanwhile, we take a look at Navi taking to the server for that first time here in Cologne today. It's going to be an enthralling series. So perhaps we take it all in. We kind of enjoy what we're about to experience. The spectacle that is Counter-Strike, it's a lovely thing. When you get good teams in the server, you got to love every second of it, which is exactly why we take this opportunity to hear from Frozen over on the Mouse side.
mouth f***ing hot at the plane and Mouths were looking hot at the plane and frozen. You were burning everyone alive when it came to this event because you were the third highest rated player coming into that. But also I want to touch on the fact it was your first time with Shuhei. And how has that been for you? How different is it? Uh, I mean, obviously it's a different IGL than uh, Dexter was, but I think I'm at the point where I'm actually just getting used to him. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, looking good so far, but uh, I, it's not at the level where I would want it to be yet, but I think it's looking great. Tell me then, what is the level you want it to be at? What, do you, what are you looking for? Uh, I mean, just to be the best I can, right? The best version, and yeah, I think the sky's the limit for us, and for me as well, so, yeah. Does he give you a lot more freedom than like what Torzi was telling us about how Dex was using him before? Has it changed at all like that? Uh, me, personally, I feel like I always had uh, my freedom in the game, and if I didn't, then I would always try for, you know, like have some like individual talks and, you know, see the limits, how much I can push, and uh, yeah, I think like so far we had good understanding of each other, like how he sees the game, how I, how I see the game. So I think so far it's looking, it's looking good. And how has your preparation been and how is your understanding of this new Na'Vi? Because they're still quite an unknown quantity. I don't really know what to expect, to be honest. I mean, they have great players, obviously, but uh, I think both of the teams coming to this match going to be like, I don't... They saw a few matches of us, we saw a few matches of them, so I think... It's still hard to say where the teams are, like what level the teams are at. And I mean, we'll see how it goes, honestly. Well, I'm looking forward to see how it goes. It's the ultimate test for both teams. Let's see which one takes the win. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah, the Iceman known as Frozen, not Paul Wall. I'll tell you that. Welcome back, everybody. My name's Trace. Taking over the reins here from Freya, and we're ready to kick off this best of three. One featuring that of Navi, one featuring that of Mouse, and a whole hell of a lot of questions to be answered at the conclusion. Joined by, of course, none other than a pimp in the middle and then a maniac to his left. They have their own cartoon series that's going to be coming out in a couple weeks. Right, I love guys? that. I'd be the pimp and the I'd maniac. Love that. I don't know what the it can like, take so many wrong ways. Of course, a pimp and a maniac. Also right ways, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice yeah. How can it actually not be bad? Uh, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. I think that's kind of what we're asking ourselves after seeing, you know, what Mal's had to offer in the play-in, and now we look at Navi, who get to play for the first time here in Cologne today, Jacob. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see both these teams take on the server. Uh, I think obviously we have seen a little bit of Mouse so far, but Navi comes in as a bit of a question mark. We saw them in Copenhagen, the both yes. of us. We saw them live, and I feel like they were doing all right. They were exceeding our expectations. We thought it was going to be a bit of a shit show, considering LXB would come in as an in-game leader, a completely revamp of the roster. But I think they learned over time, and they did okay in Copenhagen. Oh, I think they did more than okay. Mm. Listen, they surprised us. We thought it'd be, as you said, uh, a jungle of a gameplay. But actually, no. I think LXB CB was very, very good at calling simple yet efficient Counter-Strike. And then because of the quality of the roster that they had, the mid-round, late-round clutches were great. It looked like there's a great team spirit. Simple was very open about it. He just said, listen, if I'm not toxic, it's going to be fine. I think he's going to do something, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, he did say it. Be honest, I guess. Be so honest. Put your feels out there. Uh, speaking of which, let's start our feelers around the mouse side a little bit. Now, Frozen in this team, Torji, Torji, Torji. It doesn't even matter how Make you say choice. it. He's, he's all over the place so far in Cologne. And if you look at this LAN rating leaderboard, Jacob, what do these numbers mean? Yeah, we have Torsi who's been playing absolutely fantastic, but we have another guy who currently is the highest rated player in the world on LAN the past three months, which is Frozen. And it's kind of wild to think about that he's up there with the likes of Saibu, with Nico, with BlameF, Device, and as you can see occasionally as well, Ima and Simple all the way down to 15 and 18. My point here being is Frozen is, in my book, underrated. I know people think he's great, but I think he's been absolutely fantastic for this mouse lineup. He's still in here, and to some surprises out there, he's 21 years of age. That's crazy. It feels like he's been around for forever, but right now he's playing the best Counter-Strike he's probably ever played. And and there is a reason why he is underrated, quote-unquote. It's because of the lack of late finishes for mouse. Yeah. because we rarely get to see them in these moments. We rarely get to see them on the playoffs having these big-ass games where suddenly, if you're frozen, you're writing a couple of lines on your resume and you're marking the spirits of everybody. It's true. At the level at which they usually end in a tournament, he's just skyrocketing. He's literally just gliding in the air with greens all across the board. He's an absolute machine. What about the, the finish man? What about him over there on the mouse side? Yeah, Jacob, I, I know that you're a big fan, so tell me what you think. Yeah, big fan. I think he's he's a young, interesting guy. Uh, but I also have seen him already being used a little bit or being bullied a little bit. Uh, Jim Pat right here, you see the stats from the mouse NXT time coming into mouse now. We knew there was going to be a drop-off. We knew that he couldn't continue to farm like he did online at a lower level coming into mouse. It's still early days. He still has time to integrate into the lineup. But I've seen some early signs that he's not feeling comfortable just yet. Yeah, listen, I, I will give him some leeway. The issue 
issue is we're at IEM Cologne. It is the most important moment in the calendar, so there is very little space for that. But so many rookies broke their teeth in the first few maps that they've played. Hell, you play against Navi. Remember Bit the first time he put on yeah. the jersey to play? It got ridiculed by of a from Inferno. And then he ended up being the player that he is now. So I, I know it's been complicated for Yimpa, but I'm not going to be too harsh on him right now. So let, let's look at that mouse side, but really kind of understand the tactical prowess, right? We, they had really been given a run for their money against the Mongols. That ended in overtime, went their way. But what did you see that stuck out? Well, I want to show you guys something on the Telestrator that to me was quite interesting. That was the Mongols targeting Yimpa. So if we jump into the Right here, you can see the score is 13 to 13, so it's a very, very important moment in the game. We play out the clip right here, and if I were to stop the clip, let's say in a couple of seconds, and put focus on the utility, look how much utility the Mongols have to play with. They could basically call any given round in this instance. Instead, they go for a very simple ramp pop where they just walk through a smoke and put pressure on this guy who up until this point had a strugglesome game. Look at it. 20 seconds into the round, let's go through a smoke, oh. let's kill Jim Fat. And that's what they did. Follow Farhart. Next round, they won that one, by the way. We go into the same scenario. It's 14-14, right? It's very tense in the mm -hmm. game right here. Again, Look at all the utility available. They could have done whatever they wanted to in this round, but instead, they go for it one more time. They wanted to bully this guy. They wanted to put him under pressure, and that's what they did. And it's not only just 14-14. Look at how much time is on the clock yeah. while they're trying to pressure uh, ramp room right there. Well, it's basically the idea that there is an easy way for you to gain map control early on, and then that utility that you're talking about is something that is on top as a bonus late round. Mm. You get to the bomb sites, you push the impact away, and then you have a couple of smokes, a couple of molotovs that you can use to have that bomb plant situation. It's not to supposed to be that easy, but for the Mongols, apparently it was. Yeah, uh, yeah and you know, this kind of carries on. We talk about rivals, rivalry all the time. It seems to be like a, a nice little word, isn't it? You make you think a little bit when you hear the word rivalry? Yeah, it does. You know, I like a good rivalry. Uh, former teammates. Even. This is actually great. There's a great story that's happening here, Tris, yeah. honestly. The fact that Shuhi and Ime, of course, both in the Gamer Legion jersey in Paris with that d dream run mm. rather that they had, and now they're obviously enemies today, opponents today, and they both have a whole lot riding on their shoulders on either side. Shuhi, you're supposed to be the messiah, the leader that was needed in Maus to make it to the next level. And then for Ime, you're supposed to be the secondary superstar of one of the most storied team organization that we have in the game. So these two brothers in arms at times now enemies, that is going to be interesting. I think it speaks volume. We saw Gamer Legion play earlier today, and we saw how mm -hmm. lackluster that lineup looked without Shuhei, without Emma, right? I guess you can't make that logic all the time, but they I lack that, you know, powers. They lack that leadership of Shuhei. They lack the firepower of Emma. Fact of the matter is the Gamer Legion is nowhere near the same team without those two guys, because they were the two best players of that lineup. Would you say that's simply unacceptable? I would say that's uh, simply... Uh, it's not good enough. <laughs> it's not good enough. No, good. that's good. That's I, I was looking for simple, the word simple. We're not really looking for him anymore. In fact, we're going to hear from him direct. So what's he got to say? RV is entering Cologne and it's a busy day, but I want to just start on Copenhagen looks really good for you guys. But now we want to see what this development's going to be. What would you say? Is you still been just the same full practice you had as what you were telling me about before? Yeah, we just had uh, one day off when we arrived here. And after we just uh, fully practice as well to fix a lot of mistakes on other maps and just to prepare better some maps. And in terms of preparing some maps better, would you say you have a lot more depth to your map pool now? Yes, probably, yeah. I feel like we can play good five maps now. You know, of course we will make some mistakes, yeah. but uh, this time we will fix them much faster. And for you, you as a player for me is where you have confidence in your team, confidence in what they're doing is where you can shine most. We started to see glimpse of that in Copenhagen. Are you feeling like that's going to happen again here? Yeah, probably. I mean... Uh, our teammates are on really good individual level right now. My teammates are our. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, they will deliver. And of course, uh, we want to happy birthday Ime with a, hey. with a present. So yeah, he deserves this win today. Let's see if Navi can get it. Let's see if Ime is going to be delivered the birthday win in their opening game at Cologne. Oh boy. So Perfect. we got our boy. maps. How about that? How about that? How about that? So we're looking ancient right down overpass. ancient overpass. Should we need Inferno? That is possible. Listen, there, there's one angle we can uh, put the screws on Navi on, and that's the the moment when a team starts to actually think and put together a plan, which is not just spontaneous calling. Because I think this was mostly what happened in Copenhagen. Mm. It was mm. mostly, let's play simple kind of strike, let's see what's happening in the mid-round, we have a couple of easy moves, mm. and this is what we're going to do. On the fly, you rely on individual IDs and intensity. When you start trying to plan, 
it can really get complicated, and we'll see if Alexi B can thread the needle on that one. One thing we learned in Copenhagen was that Navi haven't played Ancient whatsoever. They started to practice it during that event, and I think they'll be put to the test by Mouse now. I see it as a punish pick, and I'm curious to see if Navi can uh, survive that one. Well, we do need to get our questions answered. That is just one thing that we need out of many things in this world. But this one for sure does pack a punch. With Navi, fresh face, everybody looking ready to go. The mouse sports side as well. The winner to face OG or Vitality in the upper semis of this group. And this is already a pretty damn hard group. So I think without any further ado, we start to get this game underway, gentlemen. Uh, is that okay with you? Yeah, that's I'm fine. all right. Yeah, let's go for it. I was waiting for that that war drum. You know, I feel like it's going to be there, uh -huh. but it might not. Oh, you're going to give it a shot yourself. <laughs> I don't think that sounds like you think it sounds on camera. <laughs> <laughs> just just want to be clarifying on that. The, um, the idea was here. The, the, my heart it was all into this uh, drum roll. Yeah, you, you nailed it. Um, thank you, thank you. Don't Trace. quit your day job, but you've absolutely nailed it. Here it is. This means it is time to ride, and it's exactly what we're going to do. Again, Ancient, Overpass, Inferno, and for you all at home, I've got the two United Kings of Harry Russell and Hugo Byron. Yes, you do, Trace. Thank you very much. Some slapstick on the desk, but let's put our hands together for this Navi Miles matchup as we get right into Ancient Miles' map pick. The first of hopefully three, Harry, because this one bounds to be a banger. Yeah, I uh, am looking to be the first point of contact here <laughs> out towards the box. Zershan over uh, overwhelms him. Oh, bit of an interesting start, but he has successfully. Gained control over the site. Smoke's down, and Na'Vi's stuck on the other side of it. Frozen even harassing them Ooh. from middle, but it's going to be JL raining out first with the kill to propel Na'Vi back in. Now, they've got to be cognizant about this mid flank. Frozen can get activated in the blink of an eye, but they tap on the bomb already, forcing peaks. Now, Frozen's got to make a move, and his teammates are falling like flies. It's all eyes on Frozen, having Ooh. to do the heavy lifting. Ice in his veins, but they're on the bomb. Got to act quickly here, does Frozen. This is the guy for Mouse, but he can't quite find and so the deep fuse stuck, the full 10 seconds used. And it's Na'Vi with an exciting round off the rip. The first of many, I think. What Morgan Frozen do with that spam, man? He puts every single round down range into the smoke. But as said, great body block. Na'Vi keep him covered. That was an absolute nightmare of a round, an absolute mess. This is a pretty cool matchup, though. It's like a real homecoming matchup, right? Because obviously, Shui goes back to his teammates in Mouse, his former teammates in Mouse, after that great success uh, with the Game of Legion squad. And Emo was a big part of that. He also found a different path to try and excel on the other side in Na'Vi. So a battle of brothers here. Now mortal enemies, at least for the next few hours. This would be quite a run for Miles. I think there's so many questions on this team just off the back of their play-in run of Torshi's performance, the unbelievable nature of his 50-kill opener, and then he even kept it up against NIP, which Miles dominated in. So can he do that against the big boys of Na'Vi, the new boys on the block? Sui does take down the opposing captain. And it all goes quiet. That silence broken by this engagement over at main. Not really what Mouse were hoping for. Impact wanted to try to take a bit of room there, take a bit of space, and set them up to eventually have this play culminate on the A site. Now he's dinged. He doesn't get the real estate he was looking for. Mouse going to have to get a bit creative here. Well, now that that original avenue has been locked out. Mouse in mid. Fast wrapping through the donut. Bit sat up in Temple. Gonna have to keep his wits about him. He'll hear these footsteps so he knows Ooh. they're coming. <laughs> Full blind. Torshi's dead. Never even knew what hit him. And Bit goes swinging out with another before Frozen can get that trade. This one ends up even. Bomb now down. Mao's giving it a great go with the force by. Zershan trying to go through the motions. Gets into the big box. A little awkward here. He's got to pick a path, and he will try and fight for the safety of CT, but dead after one. It's left. On to Ema. Looking for Na'Vi's route back into the retake, and he can't quite deal with Frozen, so the reply is immediate. You don't wait long. 
Now's come out with the guns in round two on the force, and they put them to work immediately, getting that early advantage, quelling the aggression of Alexi B, and then regrouping for this A hit. Frozen's just such a monster, man. It's so great to see him in interviews, looking all smiley and happy, and you know, with high expectations, high goals, not just for his team, but himself. It felt like he was the, the guy left to the wayside after you know, Carrigan and Rob's round of phase, and you know, there were only so many spots, but Frozen was, without a doubt, next on the block. And despite that, it's been great to see, you know, Mal's find so much success over the past, you know, 12 months. With a top eight major performance. And more. Ending the season on a high at Dallas with some great games. And now this new roster that certainly has our attention. Frozen at the forefront of it. Chewie down in cave gets flash peaked and Torshi looks to break in with his first kill. The nade might be the answer for it. Alexi tries to run and just about gets it out with six health. Mal's now locked off by utility, still wanting to execute into what is a three man hold. And it looked like for a moment, Na'Vi were going to disband this to go clear out middle. That's still coursing through their minds, but as this util reigns over, they will get drawn back. Too little too late though, really. Even though you have the numbers, there's no flash to get you back in. You have a kit, so immediately the clock has struck. The bell has tolled, and Na'Vi are saving. I like the decision, but Mao's want more from it, so they're going to go hunting. For me, the question is not just Torshi, of course, can he keep up his playing performance, but it's Zershin as well. Uh, a guy with a great brain and a, a, a great understanding of the game. We learned that very much at Pro League when we had him you know, on the cast talking in detail. Uh, and, and he really flexed his knowledge of every team and the players and the positions on the map and the, the protocols in place. And it you know, showed that he thought about the game in a way deeper than many other players have or, or do. Um, but his player performance was underwhelming, to yeah. be honest. Obviously, it wasn't really required. They they did stomp their games, with the exception of the Mongols' BO1. Of course, that took Torshi. But Zershin didn't put up the numbers we usually expect from him. So yeah. as we get deeper into the tournament, I hope we get more of the you know last season Zershin, who was such a titan of Mao's. Yeah, you know, because I, I, I think while I think when you when you look through at Mouse, it's very easy to pay all that attention to Frozen. Zershin was earning a lot of that attention himself, right? Uh, and like you say, he's proven to be very affluent and very, uh, very well spoken when it comes to the the CS world as well. Very good at putting, uh, you know, verbalizing his knowledge. But he put out tweets. He said he wasn't he wasn't thrilled with his performances from the play, even though they they came through it looking good. Bit. USB yeah, gonna tap out one. Don't quite know how he's gotten away with it, and it makes this round oh interesting. My. Simples Deagle can't Big. quite stand up to Zershin. And so JL now moving in, taking up the rain, smoked off. The Mac 10 Ooh. will find the kill as he battles through the smoke. Now Frozen left to finish the job. He's got the bomb on his back, but he just wants to take this fight, keep him at bay, keep him at range. The Molly. Allows him to cross in, allows him to get this plant, and now he's got the bomb to play around. He could smoke the molly if he wants to, but he's probably just going to save it for the bomb. No kit is the big problem here. He could stick it, but that would be putting it a lot down, a lot down to luck. Does he want to trust Luck or will he trust his aim? On the tap, forces a spam, goes over the top and he sees Frozen through it, but not enough to get the kill. You only have one more chance to run this fake play in the flash. Frozen's buying his time and JL can't win this, surely. Oh, I don't know about it. It's going to be close and even he realizes it's one bridge too far. Nice try, but Mao's get out with a good Zershan with a massive three kill round and Frozen living just long enough. Yeah, very well played from Frozen, right? Just knows that if you're smart about how you're fighting that, how you're peaking it, especially when, you know, he, he, you don't get finished off on your first swing out, he knows there's a world where you win that without even having it come down to a gunfight. You can just win it to time. And knowing that the money was not there for Na'Vi, that that was, you know, just kind of the, the follow through of the force buy, 
That kit would not be in play. It gave him a, a huge degree of freedom, but now this is where things get interesting, right? We've got the AWP in hand for Simple straight away. Yeah. Pretty much everything you could ask for here if you're Na'Vi. The dinner bell has rung, you know? It's hungry time as Torchy's also got his AWP and looks to take this one-on-one -on -one against Simple. And he ducks right under the scope, uncrouches into the fight and takes the opener for Na'Vi. Been talking up a lot of mouths, but this guy reminding us that it's the simple show. And he did have a, a fresh look back in Copenhagen. A couple of strong games was a good takeaway for Na'Vi. Win over G2 and big, close loss to Heroic. Jail gets out of cave. Five on four. Good grenade. And Na'Vi can sit pretty on this B bomb site. Don't want to double cave for too long. There's no one watching the ramp. So they'll pe peel back and play more of a retake setup. Simple, of course, floating as he does on CT side. Ema gets spotted behind the boxes, but Zershan can't finish his meal. And Simple's coming on to finish it instead. Ooh. Zershan gets a second chance at life. What will he do with it as his teammates? Move towards B. That's actually quite big, though, because now it's allowed him to take some room over towards red. He's going to have a hard time influencing the rotates, but any pressure he can apply here is great, even if it's just slowing down the remaining Na'Vi players. His teammates have Whoa. got to get into the site. They've got to get the bomb planted. And that little float tactic from Sui as he surfed along the wall there has kept him in this round. Bomb now planted, and Zershan, still in the red room, admittedly, won't be able to do anything about the players having crossed, but he can play on a timing now on this window to come in with a backstab and keep pressure applied. Na'Vi have got to look forward, oh, got no. to fight forward, and that spray is ugly out of Zershan. He had it all to do in this round. Now it's left onto the captain, and he is overran, overwhelmed. That is actually very composed from Na'Vi, considering the, the positions, the real estate that Mao's had, the fact that they had to bear in mind the red player throughout the entire time that they're committed yeah. to that retake. It actually looks really clean when all is said and done. That's a nightmare there for Zershan, though, because that's a kill that can really influence the round and, and put pressure on Na'Vi's backline. He does everything right, but he misses his shot, and it goes into a desperate spray that Bit takes him down from. I'm really glad that we got to see that simple versus Torshi head to head from Torshi's POV because I, I I really believe that one of the things that just you know put simple on another level and from speaking to him this is what he attributes as like uh, one of his best qualities is just being able to like visualize every angle and every timing and you could tell with how he like manipulated his view model that he felt so comfortable in that Torshi fight. Yeah, I mean it looked good, didn't it? You know, Torshi doesn't really get much chance to react. It was a fight he knew was coming off the reload. Get baited. JL was there to cover his teammate as he puts a fresh mag in. And Na'Vi already pulling out some tricks. Yeah, him and Alexi have been doubling up in cave in a lot of these rounds, trying to go for these kind of bait and switch buddy Ooh. system plays. He was caught out on a bit of an island over there in mid. Not how you would have wanted to have give up this, uh, gave up this mid fight. And there's a lot of room taken by Maus in response to this. And now V are kind of having a guess every step of the way just how many players have followed through up middle. Bit say main aggression is nice for Na'Vi to have, but it's all about how much can he actually get away with here. Oh dear. He is very far ahead, right at the front of the pack, but he's got some support as this play looks to come in. Oh. He's got his teammate Simple. Not needed for the first two. Simple just playing the bait, tucked in, Perfect. waiting. He's been teed up to yeah. win the round. The trigger discipline comes through. Simple knows he's won it. And so that one comes together before your very eyes. It is just so simple, isn't it? Doesn't take a shot, kills the guy with the gun out, not the planter. Good prioritization of targets, and Simple does everything he has to. Prefaced by bits, you know, arguably more impressive double kill. Don't know how he gets that second shot off while he's in the Molotov. He's only up against a pistol, but this smoke fade timing, he got peaked on the right when it faded. So there's a world where Bit gets no kills there, and he somehow makes it a double. Him and Simple combine. The two old boys of Na'Vi to put on a third round. And this matchup is just so exciting because it's so hard to truly know the grit of each team with this being a new season. And even though Na'Vi on paper are favorites, 
Mal's with proven good form. And still Na'Vi with a lot more question marks given the amount of changes. And I guess both have brought in new in-game leaders. What's just an older in-game leader for this Mal's core? Desertion. He's had a, a decent start to this game, gotta say. He's hit some bangers, and that's okay. one of them. Yeah. Drops his deagle over, and he goes for the upgrade. So arming his teammates. Smoke out. That's, that's been retrieved from the body. That's gonna block off the spawn. Bit suddenly feels like he actually does have a Whoa. lot on his plate here. Nice save. Simple moves in. Yeah. Simple and bit. The one two punch. Looking very strong right now, and rotation is simple. You know, Na'Vi have already shown in these few rounds there, find to give up bomb sites and, you know, play heavy stacks together and just trade out. They've pulled out of B in gun rounds before after showing double cave. And obviously Simple gets what Simple wants, especially on Na'Vi. So him just floating around the back, light, uh, the back lane in CT, taking up red, re-peaking Donut, reinforcing B ramp. He is everywhere at once. You can never quite get comfortable. So already looking like a good start here for Na'Vi, who recover despite Mouse's opening couple of rounds. Yeah, we, we've got to we've got to start keeping a, a keen eye on on two of these folks who are kind of yet to be involved for Mouse. One of them, I think, more important than the other in Torshi, who's one in six. You know, admittedly, hasn't really had uh, yeah. had his hands on that orb. We saw him try to go toe to toe with Simple. He gave it the attempt, but it, you, you can't really. Uh, Overemphasize just how pivotal Torshi's performances were in yes. the playing stage for Maus to have made it here in the fashion they did. It's also not just you know pivotal in, in, in getting there and in winning this game, but it's uh, about whether he can keep up that kind of form, form that he didn't show last season at all. He talked about his lack of confidence, uh, you know, towards the end of Maus, and you can understand there and the. the chatter over in-game leaders and feeling more comfortable under Shui as well. And so for all these reasons, we wonder if that was reproducible, so to say. So Torshi has definitely got some you know, more proving to do. Or we could all overreact. That's also the op the other option. That I like that fun, option. Yeah. I like that option for sure. So let's see. B hit for Maus. Na'Vi with only one man even close to the bomb site. Alexi's going to have to get trapped out in cave here. Put up a tent. Do some camping. Yeah, still, he's got great knowledge of how he should be approaching this, right? Just knowing that being oh, alive is all yeah. that really matters. Oh. JL rains death down through the smokes. What smoke? That's madness. He makes it look so controlled. Like, that was easy. Like, that was ever obvious, but... Single-handedly, he's torn this round away. Mao's never even have the time to feel like they get set up there. You get into a site, you get a bomb planted, but then you get mauled and... I'd love to know what he saw, because like, on the kill feed, there's no smoke icons. And, you know, I, I, I can't really tell. It looks different on client slightly, but it looks like he can just see everything there. He gets a bit of an inkling. The bomb plant is open, but maybe he's just lining it up with a pillar. That's fantastic work for JL. For me, he's been you know, more impressive than near MVP, major MVP form Ema, you know, since joining this team. JL's had some real pop-off games. Yeah, the other thing that's obvious as well is is he's a, a very big personality, yeah. is JL, right? And, and he's someone who is like very, very smiley and very much, you know, Ooh. tries to be oh. the, the funny guy. And that's an interesting dynamic to bring to the Na'Vi squad. Yeah, never really Na'Vi culture, is it? Very loud, boisterous guy. He's been tagged down low to open up this round. He asked for the AWP and Simple will oblige, giving that over. Na'Vi sat real pretty in this round, and even though JL's flashed off ramp, giving a bit of room, you know, there's still fail-safes in place, and a lot of them at that. It's not just Alexi in the cave. Simple's here with that AK. The spam does a lot of damage onto Frozen. That simple sp uh, spamming through the wall. 
And Frozen <laughs> is boxed into this tiny, you know, meter-wide radius inside of the bomb site. These uh, these rounds where Navi give up B, where they kind of pull back to the extremities, yeah. and then they they isolate you in such a constricting manner. It's not often, you know, that you see teams getting into the B site and then just feeling like they have nowhere to go, like they're lost. Normally, there's other ideas there that's taking long, it's taking cave, it's setting up post plants at ramp. But Navi have got the util, they've got the know-how to shut down these options. Options. And so whenever Maus are getting in and getting the plant, they essentially get trapped in this cage of Navi's making. That is the danger of, of, of you know post plants on this B site because there's you know say you have five players in a post plant, there's not five spots to play for the bomb really. That's why you see a lot of teams lean towards taking long. Sometimes you don't even have cave because you focused full ramp, so that you don't even have that for you know a couple of players to watch flank and wall bang. And you just see players just standing in the open on off angles towards the ramp close on the cube on long. There's not really a huge amount of options. So yeah, Na'Vi, they give you the plan. They welcome you into the house, but then they lock the door. Great time to pull out a gimmick like that. Zertion's been getting away with a couple of these mid fights in rounds gone by. So they give him something new to contest with. And now Na'Vi flash back into middle, looking to exert a bit of ownership on this part of the map. That actually frees Ooh, up Bit lovely. to rotate over to B, and in good timing as well. However, oh. Beast getting fed in mid. Alexi, traded at least, leaves this even. Now's have got B. They've also got to lurk all the way through the A site. Torshi with a crucial kill on the simple though. That's going to give them the bomb plant. The molly forces them wide. Torshi almost lines them up. I think Bit realized there, but it's too little and it's too late. Torshi's come to play. Finally, with his second AWP, puts in three kills in a three on three and gets Mouse on the board. That's what we were waiting for. Great shooting. Yeah, I think it's going to be, I, th I think it's good for Maus that he, he has a round like that right now while it's still early on in the map, right? Especially after the first outing with the AWP kind of got hard cancelled, right? In in a, in a peak that felt so unwinnable and so simple-esque. And you don't want this guy in his head. He kind of knows, you know, there's almost a bit of a target on his back uh, for, for folks wanting to keep an eye on his performance, yeah. right? Both because of, of the claims made, but... Even the fact that when you look at the, the XIGL of this team and Dexter and how Afro's doing in that team and the various also comments true. made there. And then towards the end of last season, obviously he had that dip in performance. So he knows that people are watching. You know, that's a pretty unique pressure that comes with it. Yeah, and unfortunately he set the bar quite high <laughs> with the play-in. I, I don't think we can expect him to keep it up yeah, to there. Yeah, little 50 bomb. Yeah, casual 50 a map, you know. See, Nifty did it once, and we never stopped saying it, so... Yeah, that's a good point. You don't forget it. Not quickly, at least. Boost up on B. Zershan going again for his rambunctious plays in middle, but I love these self-flashes from Bit. That's beautiful. Pops back out Donut with the kill. Or dry up ramp, but that smoke timing will save JL's life, and will keep this B site intact. Ooh. Or flasher of smoke. That's something you see. On, you see the trajectory of that flash. If it lands a centimeter shorter, JL's blind. But just unlucky, I guess. Now this is a bit of a non-starter of a round for Maus. Everywhere they tried to take the map control to actually begin playing their round, they they've lost out on these head-to-heads. And you know, I mean, the impact. I know he's 0 seven, but he's. In a lot of these moments, in a lot of these rounds, he's kind of been a little surplus to requirement. Even in the round that Mao's just won, he was lurking, late lurking through A while the bomb's getting planted over on B. He's been responsible for this side of the map a hell of a lot. But when, you know, your teammates are dying in mid, your teammates are dying over on lane, it, it does leave you kind of struggling to be, to be super involved. And the one place where Na'Vi haven't been super aggressive, I know they had bit kind of scouting it out, but I would say he's like hitting this fine line between passive and aggressive with the space he takes over at main. The impact isn't being given any freebies of players just walking yeah. into his crosshair. So it's a pretty interesting challenge that he faces What with the relative lack of experience within this squad and exposure towards the top level. Nice. He's got to find impact on these lurks. Yeah, and on this map, it's very difficult to find that those timings on A main as well, right? Like footsteps can be, uh, they, they they can be fake sometimes. You know, hearing donut players doesn't necessarily mean you have room to walk out A. There's often a guy hiding behind big box, hiding behind default. 
For those unfamiliar with the impact as well, 16 years old, young talent from the Mal's NXT project where many of these players former came. But most Im importantly, a uh, younger brother of major finalist and once top 20 player, Sergey, of course, uh, from the Finnish esports ENTS organization at yeah. one point, who we saw, you know, Katowice final against Astralis. So and the, and the guy who uh, was leading there, Finds himself on the other side of the server. So, yeah, you know, there's that relationship between. Yeah, it's tenuous, but yeah, uh, the, the, yeah the point is, like, Sergey's brother, that's sick. You know, shame, uh, shame we don't have Sergey playing anymore. But he was quite the talent. And so we have some expectation of Yim Pat. Hopefully, Sergey is cheering him on. All right, Na'Vi starting to take the reins of this game. Bucking Mal's off the saddle. B has been the way in. So they'll go back to this cave take. We've seen some nice double setups this time. Na'Vi both on the site. Bit and Donut has been difficult to deal with. This time it's Ema. And Bit behind the red smoke. Grouped up 5B right now for Mal's. They climb up on the ledge side. So they're just going for a flat out execute into top performer JL and Captain Alexi B. Yeah, and, the, and these two have had some really nice ideas for, for how to approach this, this B site. So often it, it's just centered around these double cave setups, giving a bit of freedom to uh, to Bit to rotate over. You know, sometimes it's Bit, sometimes it's simple. And Bit here this time over at the long side. The Mao's want to take this space, right? They, they, they're feeling what we were talking about earlier on, that they get boxed into the site. So they want to try and take Ooh. long away. And as a result, that fight on Bit is weighted very heavily. The fact that they get it and they don't lose anyone in doing so, tease them up nicely in this round. They've got some serious real estate. These are the best post plants that Mao's have had on these B plays. And so this has to be their moment. You got to strike while the iron's hot. Leg from Torshi. Good damage Ooh. found, but it's the decision to re peek that betrays him. The smoke in the way of cave. That's actually a Navi smoke lobbed out. And it ends up blocking them in. They were hoping it could give them this path. Trying to block off the short side right with long taken. Oh! Ooh. Stylish from Simple, but Style ain't going to win the round for him. Even hangs around and picks the impact, finding him 0 and 8 on the ramp retreat, feeling just like a role player right now, having relative well, no impact in terms of frags, but at least staying alive in his position to help Mouse take the B bomb site. It's a nice round out of Mouse, not even getting trapped inside of the cave on that post plant, as you say by their own util. And simple, not brazen enough to peek down ramp, but I, I think if he did, he probably dies to Torch. She's double scoped in, in on him anyway. So that retake was never really materializing. And Mao's trying to get scraps, get a couple of handfuls of cheddar right at the end of the half. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if you actually see Mao's try to go about their B takes in a fashion more like that with how often Na'Vi are retaking with this cave presence. It felt like long control had to be their way in. And so they, they, they feel a bit of a weakness there. They feel a bit of a gap that could be exploited. Na'Vi looking to battle for lane control again. Impact giving some util over at main. He might be the one to kind of set the tone of this round a little bit more, lobbing the util over, faking the hit. That first flash misses, which is far from ideal. This isn't doing anything though. Navi on shuffling. Bit did go for an aggressive play, but they see the B hit coming from a mile away. And JL puts up a kill. Trying to hide out in his little cubby here in the corner. Alexi causing problems. They do nade out JL at least, but Torshi deciding to back up with a bomb. He's alone right now, calling desperately for reinforcements. Yeah, both these guys were faking the A site, right? So they're a lot later to the uh to the bomb site. And 
Ooh. Ema sees the leg, looking to take more than nice. that though. He'll swing it wide, full blind, and there's the impact with his first kill on the board. And what an important one it is. Simple on the receiving end. It's all left onto Alexi. A threat from the cave, but wiped out by Torshi on the wide swing. Maus do a, a fantastic job to make anything of that round, considering it started so direly. Uh, you know, the, the util in towards A, not successfully drawing the rotates, at least giving them one fight in middle, but the, the, the big glaring problem was that they had Torshi out on an island here with the bomb, just stuck in the site, couldn't move anywhere. Just like how a lot of these B players have gone down. What a time for Yimpat to, to achieve something in this game. Yeah. Three on four pulled back and a big 3k for Torshi. This is crazy for Insertion. He ran through the Molotov. They didn't even put it out and they might put him down with a nade, but it's cost them two kills. The nade falls short. A second one must do it. Insertion dies, but he dies a hero. We said we needed four out of him today. He's the top performer of his team. And that is a mental way to open up, running the gauntlet down middle and even clearing Ema above him. He didn't even consider that, didn't even look down. Too much going on for Na'Vi to handle. And now Maus is all just on closing this cleanly, not overcooking the pooch. Leave that dog alone. Na'Vi still with two and B though. Simple's on the way. Yeah, I think at this point, right? Like, take the gamble. Especially as Util reigns over, you're, you're feeling like this is the site they want to hit. And so they're going to pull everyone over. Na'Vi still want to uh -oh. compete for this round. And Maus are walking into the stack. Is the bomb about to go out first? It's a wide swing from Yimpat, but he will deal with the first man. And they learn about Alexi. He was the one boosting. Simple's been spotted with his AWP. Maus know everyone's here. Oh. What goes in? The spam is so risky. Yeah. If anything was given over Na'Vi, the retake would have been back on, but thankfully nothing found through that smoke and the save called for Na'Vi. This B site was once their strength, right? And you see how just a few rounds ago when Mouse successfully broke it down, it's changed the result of the, the these last few B hits. It's look, it looked a lot better for the Mouse squad. Sertion is helping massively with the impact, the, the openers that he's finding over in mid, and then that only draws more resources away from B. <laughs> Sertion might not have been happy with his performance in the play-ins, but the, the opener to the group stage, this is uh, this is looking more like the Sertion we wanted to see. Yeah, look at this. I mean, this is crazy. They're just, you know, Ema doesn't even realize what's going on there until it's too late and Bit's blinded. They finally just beat Na'Vi with a util in mid, and Bit's been either assisted or often done his own self-flash off the roof of Dona, and he's just been wrecking in middle with that util. So a change of tune for Maus in round number 14, and now we end the half. If Maus can win it out, that would be monumental on this T side of Ancient. Climb up missed, Sertion blind in mid. Ima looking like he wants to come through the smoke as well. There's so many Mouse players nearby ready to receive. And Simple's AWP for the last few rounds has been out of position to deal with these mid takes. He's going to try and finally get involved. Decides against it, goes back to B, and this does seem to be an A split for Mouse. A donut taken to an A play. Right now, the most undefended part of the map. And so Simple may remain avoided until the dying stage of this round. No info. Na'Vi don't know what's going on. They're about to find out. Oh, Bits clean with it for the first one. Swinging out for a bit more. Another dink from him, but end of the line. Now Ema's got to do it, and he's burning. Forced out into the open. They oh. hear that molly tagging. Yimpat with there another to his name, and Torshi's all fires down range. JL dead, and it's all left on to Alexi. Late through middle. But hope in the world in this retake. Maus have got all the time they need to get set up. And Yimpat's even trying to take the donut away. Finn's going to clash here and he'll win it out. What a feeling to go forth and win out this first half. If your Maus, considering how this starts, it was looking lights out for Na'Vi, but a late game activation. Guys like Zershin getting switched online. This one just got a hell of a lot more interested.
And now Heroic even hunting at the end here. They were so short on cash previously, but now they're the ones trying to punish. Zinio somehow still alive, but on two health, one health from the bomb. <laughs> they might get him. Oh, he actually survives. Fair play. Winning enough of the right rounds are heroic. Making this so hard for Mongols on their CT side. So hard to string anything together. This will still be a dangerous round though for Heroic with what Mongols are carrying. But that was an excellent response. And that's the kind of grit that makes you the best team in the world. Able to win rounds like that, the unlikely rounds. Turn things back into your favor, be it low on numbers, be it low on primary weapons. Nine tens somewhat gone missing in this game as well. The only frag he's got, I think, is not oh, where he was standing what? in that Molotov. Yeah. Kill from Stan was crazy. I guess he just had the right angle onto barrels, onto the right side, and just thought, I'm going to put a couple of shots here in case I hit a headshot. Gloriously ugly. Seven to two then. This will be very encouraging for Heroic. 9-10 of the AWP, looking to double his kills. So Mongols have got a fair chunk of rifles. Pretty reasonable by all things considered. Situation is looking very dire. Not doing so bad though. That's the kind of frag that Mongols are looking for. Just a reminder that 9-10 is on the server. See the T's being very careful now. They've got nobody in long to stop the rotation from Mongols. What do you mean rotation? Blitz will stand his ground and drop the bomb. And there's a bait set up again. Almost two for one, but the bomb gets even closer. 9-10 suddenly comes to life. Not too late for Mongols to mount a comeback. Has taken through the smoke. They just press W, Mongols. Beautiful. Yeah, some of these rounds have definitely felt competitive for the Mongols, even when Heroic have been winning them. So now that they're starting to get rounds. Stages do not get bigger than this. Mao's in control, but for how long is the question here on Ancient? It's their map pick. They're up by a round, but we just got a nice little listen in to the Mao's comms from our balcony above them. Shui just went on a little rant about how despite them being in the lead, this is a very close game and they need to keep it tight. It was it was impassioned. It was way more impassioned than I'm making it sound. And it was pretty inspiring, Harry. So Mao's all on the same page right now. A late activation from the young Finn and Zershan performing like we hoped. Yes, Daddy. Is, That's what is what Frozen yeah. said in reply to that earlier on. That's a fact, yeah. Navi walking out through mid. No contact on this approach. That's because Maus have got intent to take away ramp at the opener of this pistol. Well, Zershan check this deep. Ooh. Oh dear, he does not. Shot in the back of the head. A nice way for this to start. If you're Navi, not just going a man up, but shutting down this attempt at taking away some key real estate that Maus were looking to do. Now Navi can just pick up the pace. You know that Maus might have to concede this side of the map and wait for the uh, the rotates, and that's what Ema is here to cut down. Sure, it's the one and done. But he keeps Na'Vi looking pretty as they're now four on three with the bomb down bits boosted. Beckon in them in. I love this boost. He's going to peak really late as well. But they forget about it. Shuey wins that fight. And now they have info. They know another man's trapped. Simple holds on the cross, but JL's dead at ramp. This one is so quickly getting away oh. from Na'Vi. And Maus will be the ones to pick it up. How? They didn't have anything to latch onto there. Red was controlled. The rotates were slow. They were retaking the site. The boost landed an immediate dink. You thought that that was going to be enough. But they battle through. And they'll maintain this lead to open up the second half. It's getting stressful for Simple. As Na'Vi are losing some very awkward rounds in this game so far, this being one of them. And with a pistol on top of a winning T side on Ancient, this could be quite the steal for Maus in map one of the series. Overpass and Inferno to follow. Two far more slow and calculated maps than the madhouse that this one has given us. 
But I imagine the pace will dampen a bit with now Navi on the T side. Sui was keen to call just a lot of quick B in the mid rounds after mid takes. Navi not so much taking their spawns here with this force buy. We've got some deagles and a couple of rifles. Simple armed and dangerous. Tries to peek before the blooms, sees one. They're keen to walk down the ramp. Will Zershan find his timing? He's just seen Alexi jump it. Navi are grouping A. If Mao's info gather B right now, they will have an early stack, but they don't want to be the first to make mistakes. Good smoke of 40 seconds. Sure, it gives Navi access to Red Room, but that's not their goal. They want this A split quicker than that. Emo might just have to take this space as a result, but instead they group and go close to the smoke into Frozen. I mean, this is the man for the job. This is the one that you want, and he's got support with him. Frozen chains together the double with a bit of help from Yimpat. And now it's just simple wow. left to contain. Yimpat gets the better of him again. And so just the Deagle's bomb plant found for Na'Vi is something to hold on to. But a 2v5 needed from JL and Bit. They've at least been given a little bit of time to get set up here. This is relatively respectful from the Mouse squad as they wait for this CT component to group up. They, they've really left nothing unaccounted for here. They're going to be clearing, just sweeping through the site, clearing all these sight lines. Now they know where Bit is with the Deagle, and Chewie's going to run him down. So they will pick that up cleanly, only using, only losing impact along the way. And Yimpat had a great recovery. He was 0-8 to start this game. And even though, you know, he's 5-10 and 10 now, his kills have been high impact. He's come up with, you know, the first kill of a post plant here. He helps Frozen with the spray down mid. Reswings, which is a great call. If they don't reswing, they're both trapped in the same corner. They're going to get hunted down and, and probably double killed. But forces the, the you know, the refight, wins it. He's supposed to die there to be traded. He's had some, some very nice kills in these last six rounds or so. Oh, frozen through the smoke. Not again. And Na'Vi, just the round in disarray now. That's something. Yeah, but you're not ready for a second, man, which, you know, kind of ironic for Alexi there, considering <laughs> how often yeah. uh, they, they double caved when Na'Vi were on that CT side. He just completely discounts the presence assertion. And so that one never allowed to get more interesting. Yeah. Real, uh, real hot stuff for, for Frozen to open up. Knows his lineups around that mid smoke. Oh, I like that we get it from his POV. Yeah. Doesn't see a damn thing, but those kills in the kill feed. And look at those head twitches yeah. as he's checking the uh, the damage he's done down range. Channeled in. Give me these orbs now because while Simple won the first two engagements, I think it was against Torshi, Torshi won the last three. So the head to head, I'm pretty sure, is in favor of the young Hungarian. And while Simple's had a good game, those last few rounds of CT side, he couldn't really get in position to do much. So. Give me some more head uh, head to heads. Give me that B boost. Simple's got his outside of B holding for ramp. And Torshi's close A main. Playing a different game. So not for now, but they're both in play. And Simple even gave up head armor to get it. So really wants some value out of this. JL solo lurking pocket, but Na'Vi looking to take mid late. Walking mid through the spam. Risky business when Frozen's on the other side. They brave the waters, but the bombs come back up onto the ledge. It's yeah. still with simples, so... They're really trying to force an A stack, it seems like, but I don't think Mal's going to move out of cave. Oh, the bomb is ending A now. That's the right call. Yeah, Simple just joining up with his teammate back in May. 
JL's going to be able to control rotates out of the cave. That one kill on to Zertion is the signal to hit the go button. But the backstab in from Shui. And now Torshi looks back at main. Bit dead. Simple's oh. got to hit this, and he will. The pressure's on now seconds. for Torshi. Ten Gotta watch seconds. two angles, but his teammates move in, and they'll make it nice and easy for him. Frozen's got Donut, and the wrap round comes through. If anything, it's Na'Vi getting the cave kill that signs a death warrant because JL just runs away and that's all the info. He gets backstabbed, but most importantly, you see in the minimap, when the cave player dies, Mal starts shuffling B and immediately that's counter called. No, he's running Donut. Watch your A site. Everyone's entrenched. The orb's in the right place. Frozen remains behind default and he finds a huge double kill on that Donut split. What a great double setup for Mal's. They are showing us some fantastic Counter-Strike right now. And Na'Vi will pulled over their eyes in that late execute. And you know, like the, the, the mad thing is, is like it, pound for pound at the start of this game, it felt like the, the individuals were showing up for, uh, for, for Na'Vi, whereas for Maus, you know, outside of nice rounds from Zertion. There, there wasn't a whole lot there till we got towards the end of the half, and then they started to find their footing a little bit more. They're, they're winning a lot of these, just playing it smart. You know, it's not coming down to these huge, brawly plays right now. Yeah, pieces in the right place. And we just saw a B-Stream update. Mongols, a map up over Heroic and a winning 8-7 half on map two on Overpass. So we're getting some crazy games today on the group stage of Cologne. If the Mongols go and do it against Heroic, that's insane, that's right? That's crazy. It's supposed to be the, the team that, oh, oh. Yeah, Pat. Watch out, buddy. All right. Little halfy for Na'Vi. Get to throw everything at the wall. See what sticks, what bounces off. Yeah, this looks like a pretty standard, you know, just lobbing in the Standard little B exec util, the smoke nice for cave to try and deny some of these angles, but fighting in the sight of Mao's playing ahead of this util that's down, and so it's not going to apply a whole lot of pressure there. They made that B hold look so good, right? Molly in, in, right in front of Long, so Zertion doesn't get rushed, and then Zertion flashes front default for uh, Shui to peek. That's just such a beautiful way to deal with pistols, to funnel them to pillar and make sure they're all blind. They, they, that's just excellent. They don't molly the choke point, which they know will get smoked, and then you know you can't see anything. But they just molly to deny control, not to do damage. Great combo for Mal's. They've got all these little tricks. Navi getting desperate mid rushes. It goes as well as you expect. Stacked with three CTs here, they obliterate Navi. How's JL? Oh, oh yeah, it's kind of oh. mad, isn't it, that he even gets that deep? But we'll get caught. Simple's here. And you know, I think this was one of the this was one of the interesting things with Navi making the decision to go international right, and switching up the, the the language that they're coming in. I think that it, it's going to force someone like Alexi to have to try and cook up simple solutions to very complex problems here. You don't want to get it lost in translation. You don't want people having to. Uh, to think too much about the plays that are being made. It's got to flow. Now, if you have battled their way to a bomb plant here, and it's bit and simple left in it. Yeah, maybe it is that simple solution here for Na'Vi. As the Ukrainians try and clutch up up against Mao's bit, he could get a double kill right here, but Frozen is feeling frisky, putting simple in the clutch. So much to do, and right now he's holding for a cave swing. Never even a look at Ram. Frozen goes walking up it and just executes him. Simple's waiting for contact that never even arrives. And Frozen goes on to close that out. A fantastic game from this guy. Sat up top of the board. Wrecking them in mid. When it comes down to these retakes, he's, he's holding his own. He's looking so solid. What a statement this is from Maus, man. 14-7, Na'Vi on their final tactical timeout. Blade trying to weigh in. The guy who picked Alexi for this team. And right now, solutions are needed because Na'Vi have yet to field a single round on this T side. 
And I wouldn't even go ahead and say there's been ample opportunity. Mal's have had their number every step of the way. They've won mid. They've been stacked on A. They've had good anti-ecos. Froze has just been kicking dust up in their eyes. So is there anything or should we just go next? Well, Na'Vi went for something, you know, very wild in the last round, very stripped back when it came down to how they went about taking mid. And in this one, they don't even get out the double doors over towards B. Zershan has kind of been chomping at the bit to, to take this lane control, to take these ramp fights, and this round's no exception. JL, who is lights out for Na'Vi to open up this game, has, has come to a, a full stop in the second half, it feels like, just, just cancelled out by a lot of these pushes over towards the lane. And so someone else has to be the one to make the offering for Na'Vi. They want to have any hope to recover this because you're not shy on players that can fill voids for Maus right now. Ema's got his eyes set on Cave, and with a teammate with him, they finally feel ready to start moving in. Torshi going to play this crossfire with Shui between the long angle and the cubby here over towards B. And then you'll see that because Mauers have just cleared mid right now at around about the 30 second mark, they've confirmed that mid is clear. Now they hear the footsteps. They know it's the B play. Oh, There's a sorry. third man here. Shui dies immediately. The Torshi rings out with one from long. Over on short, low HP on Zershan, but that's not slowing his role. He's still playing this pretty aggressively. His teammates a little ways out from cave nice and he chat. will end up giving a kill away. Bit flushes him out. Ready for the next fight through the cave. And the impact can't trade it. Left up in the 1v3. He's had a very quiet game. And even though he's got some of these swing rounds for Maus, he will get silenced by Simple. Yeah, just fired off to, to try and trade Bit. And that one bullet gave all the info for Na'Vi. If he, if he doesn't fire there and Bit just gets around the corner, he has a huge window to walk into B with two long players and a ramp man. He had full util. But Na'Vi managed to finally convert to T-side round with a nice B execute. Spam damage went a long way, did, you know, two players down to half, at least. And then Sui getting cleared. Porsche can only go one for one on the AWP out in the open. It's a nice round for Na'Vi, but it's the first of many needed. Going to go back for more B work. Simple looks in with the AWP. Still relatively default on the map of Na'Vi. Missed attempt. Na'Vi looked to middle instead. Frozen just departing. Wow. And they go running into that Torshi Orp. It's an annoying smoke. Sershin doesn't seem to think so. He quite oh, likes it. He's my. playing around it. He hears that. And he knows they're boosting. Here's the scope. Oh, he's rubbing Go his on. hands together. JL has got to be holding oh. this on the fade. JL's got to be holding it. Smoke now fades. Simple oh. fed to the walls, but JL will trade. At least stops any more damage being done through that smoke fade at the base of ramp. However, this Torshi or Oh! What? Oh! What? Oh! That's a bit of a head scratcher. Yeah. That's a bit of a question mark. Impact is moving in. He might be able to stop this. The bomb is the last oh, man crossing. No. And so a high impact kill. Out of impact again. And it's bought time for Frozen to move into middle and lend a helping hand. Impact does not have to do this alone. He's got his team backing him up every step of the way. And there's Frozen as the point man to come in and take matters into his own hands. Yeah, forget what Torshi did in the round, right? Trying to run a rotate back in mid with his knife out with 30 seconds when Yimpak comes in and drops the bomb. I feel like, yeah, again, I want to give this guy props because not only is he super young and inexperienced coming in, playing against some of the best players in the world, but he's in some bad spots, man. He's not in the, you know, the spots to give you these huge multi-kill moments. Moments, and he's still managing to find just the one or two kills here and there that, that win you rounds right now for Mal's. They're just going to try and rush up B. Na'Vi are getting desperate, and that's the welcome exertion who lets him in with one. 
Ollie in the way, Frozen throwing himself forward, but these flashes are a problem. And Shui's getting spammed up as Alexi runs him down. Captains clash, and Navi bash back with nine. So that's one of those rounds that, that is not, you know, something that you could just replicate. It hinges on the util hitting, on Mao's being in positions that are a little vulnerable to the Tech Nines as the distance is closed. It's one where you yourself, you know, played like you had nothing left to lose because you want to leave nothing unsaid at the end of this game. But this is just the start of a far longer journey for Na'Vi in this map if they ever wanted to drag us into OT. If you're Maus right now, you know, with six more chances to take this game over the line, you're, you're not worried yet. It's important not to give Navi any steam. Shut it out ASAP. That look like a guy who's worried about giving Navi steam. <laughs> True. It's gonna give them smoke. Yeah, there's only one guy in B as well. Definitely Mao's caught out of position, out of timing for the B rush. It's not the end of the world. They immediately remedy it with a timeout. Three or four used. As you said, six opportunities seem ample for a team that have been very clean on this CT side. Torshi is a main spawn. And he's running it right now with the AWP. He wants to kind of take a bit of a line here early. And he isn't given a fight, you wonder, does he keep creeping forward? Because there's a lot of info to be gained there. Oh, they're flashing through. That's so cheeky with the molly as well. Right as Na'Vi had walked out through the smoke. Alexi's still here. Shui doesn't know how close he was to death there, but his teammate's flash gives him some room and Frozen takes a second. This may be the beginning of the end. The start of something for Mouse in a new season. So they look to make a statement over this new European Na'Vi roster. Upsets galore here. Oh, I mean, a lot of these rounds have felt pretty desperate towards the end for Na'Vi, and with each kill that goes against you, you're getting more and more desperate. Feels like you're living in a nightmare right now. Every player you face is just locking you out all across the map. You've got nothing left if you're bit, and so he'll get hounded down. It's the captain to close, and with that howl, I'll move up a map in this series. Overpass coming down the pipeline next. That's where Na'Vi have got to seek some redemption here. Yeah, Frozen looks like such a monster, man. He really looks like the star player we've been waiting to see, getting better and better every season. Let's see what he can do in map two. players don't care who they're playing against and they're gonna play their own way they're not gonna play scared that is a ridiculous round win heroic had the whole read they had four players on b but techno wins these fights this double peak from both sides was perfect and then blitz goes all the way round that is such a big brain clutch and that's not easy to do against heroic who normally are good at outbraining opponents themselves 3v5 was that it might have been. Two after seven. Second timeout for Heroic. They have the AWP and they have money, which is currently together. But they cannot afford to give up too many rounds. You can always win a round with just an AWP. And that might be the play for them in round 20. Cadian's got a very good spawn to do something aggressive towards Connector. All the party area, of course. The menacing Mongols march on, fully equipped. 
This is unbelievable right now. If you have just tuned in, yes, the Mongols are a map up. They're a man down in this round, though. Kadian, using that spawn to his advantage, gets that pick in towards mid. This is where the Mongols need to hold their nerve. But where has the AWP rotated? They know that was the only weapon saved from the last round. Has he gone down towards B? It's magic. That's exactly what it is when we look at what Mal's have accomplished here on the first map of this series. Would you believe it if I did tell you the Navi starting out rather slow? Of course, we do get a second one guaranteed. My name's Trace, and I'm welcoming you back. It's the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne 2023. All the fixings and a group stage on top. As a matter of fact, it is not Magic Trace. Oh. It is very understandable. It is very logical because when you play with that kind of attitude, when you play with the risk taking, with the daring that Mouse put on the server, then there is a very high chance you're going to win. Every single round on the CT side, we witnessed a player taking a risk, hmm. trying something, sneaking in a smoke, pushing a smoke, getting an edge, being in their faces. That's why they ended up here. They were in control and they didn't shy away from any risk. You know what makes me happy, Trace? Oh, when please team, do tell me. When a team picks a map and then they go in on that map and they showcase exactly why they did that. Mouse had a game plan, you said it, aggressive on the CT oh, yes. side. The T side was good. Overall, it felt like Mouse were in control. Sure, at certain points, the individuals from Navi were going to do something to disturb the way Mouse wanted to approach the game. Jail had a good first half, Symbol had a couple of rounds. But overall, it felt like Mouse were just one step ahead of Navi from start to finish. Yeah, you know, you look at a guy like JL too. He's run around like he owned the place. He I mean, he, he started well. Yeah. He started well, and, and he's slowly becoming a, a pillar of the defense on the CT side for, for Navi here on B. He was tested a couple times, and he very quickly put up crazy amount of numbers. We see how invested he was in some of these very offensive duels as well, maneuvering the utility on the side of Mouse. That was what we from JL. Like you say, 11 kills in 10 rounds were not making this up. But he did cool down a little mm. bit in the, in the second part of that game, as did the whole lineup, to be honest. He kept them alive. He, he gave them a good lead here, right? It's 7-4 to four this point for, for Navi. There was a chance. <laughs> there was a chance for Navi to do something right here. But unfortunately, for that point in the awards, as soon as JL cooled down, there was nothing Nothing else to be offered from the side of Navi. Had he not been playing so well and above expectations, I think this would have been a complete blowout of Navi. So, if you have to diagnose this, Doc, what do you say? Diagnosis now. Come on, Doc. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, we're not. We're Navi in the <laughs> showing like, here. There we go. I'll give you more. I, I, you put more. me on the spot. I was just like, oh, am I going to get real with this? <laughs> like, it's going to get dark. Not <laughs> dark. So, so if, that's, if that's the diagnosis you would like to go with, it's not always no, like, no, you know, no, like no. a bad thing. No, no. I, I think it's not too problematic of a situation for Navi. Hmm. I think for a new team uh, in, in their sequence right now, we know there's going to be discrepancy in maps. Uh, we talked about it in Copenhagen a plenty. Uh, Ancient was an issue, and it would appear that there's still kind of a gap between the very good teams on that map and Navi. Uh, I think that the T side was very telling. They were uh, struggling to take any map control for free. They were always fighting. They were mm -hmm. always in their faces. So, no, I'm not too uh, scared yet. We're not breaking out the sofa and we're not having a therapy. We're, we're all right. Okay, we're I was thinking, like, if you're saying we're not breaking out the life raft, you know, like, <laughs> I get that, too. Like, that's a, that's a whole idea. Uh, check this out, though. Continuing on, some of the form that we saw within the, the play-in part of this would have to be frozen. Like, this guy, is he's lighting it up. Yeah, I think we said it coming into to the game right here. Maybe underrated by many. I think he's making a name for himself, and he has been making a name for himself for a very long time. With this performance, I'm pretty sure he is now single-handedly the highest-rated player on land the past three months. So, arguably, a player we have to have in the conversation as to who is the most informed player in the world as of right now. Frozen will be up there in the conversation. He was playing lights out on the CT side. Look at his scoreline right here. He was 9-12 and 12 after the first half, and he finished with 28 kills. He dominated the CT side. Now they couldn't do shit against him. No, that is actually crazy. Like, I didn't even realize how much or what percentage of his frags came from the second half. Yeah. I just had the, the the idea, the feeling that he was always up there. That's not the case. He was very, very instrumental. We can see here some of these retakes as well. And Dude, he was it, 9 and 12. He's 23 and 12 now. <laughs> That's 24 actually, and 12. That's actually Jesus, ridiculous. That's insane. You see some of these retakes as well. Even when Navi were allowed, I'm going to use the word allowed to get <laughs> on a warm side, felt like Mouse knew exactly how they had to retake it. Mm. Like there was no panic. They were just going through the motions, using the numbers advantage, using the timer if they needed to let a smoke bloom. This this is what like feel good Counter Strike looks like. What does feel good Counter Strike if you're Danish feel like, especially on that end of the room specifically? How's that going over Jacob? there, Jacob? I think I think your rogue is about to lose 2 0 to the Mongols. I'm not going to lie. No, it's not been good. no. Oh, you ain't say all that, good. did you? You I didn't mean, mean that, did you? Fantasy teams in shambles for everyone, so <laughs> it is for the <laughs> At all times, 
at any given times. moment, oh, the fantasy teams are in, in shambles. Yeah, I think uh, we might be able to take a look there quickly at that B stream before we talk a little bit of an overpass. But uh, really and truly, that's an upset. That is an upset. We're talking Mongols Hillary right just now? Just a little bit. Just That's a little crazy. bit. That's crazy. Oh, man. It's, I mean, yes. Yeah. That is an upset if I've ever seen one. And uh, also, we've, we've heard some, some interesting words yes. throughout the series. Are you want to repeat uh, what was being said? Yeah. I do believe some mentions of noobs were thrown out there. Some, uh, were before that as well? Uh, very noobs. Much if, noobs. If, if thing. That was not, noobs. yeah. It was, nobody uh, said very about any of that. No, it was no. just <laughs> noobs. Like, a little bit of self-censoring. And, of yeah. course, as luck would have it, when, when you do that, which is, by the way, what we want to see. Mm -hmm. we, we, entice, you know. we entice players to be more out there, have more charisma, you know, take sure. more risks. And then when Kadian goes out and have a keep himself, yeah. he's going to lose that series. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, the, man. that's the worst kind of marketing and possible. There's a testament to the internet being forever on that notion. And speaking of which, one person that knows around on the internet would have to be shocked. Hey, what's up down there? Hey. I know it's exciting over there, but you gotta watch this game, man. It's Heroic versus the Mongols. And the first map was Mongols' map pick, and they won, which I think will surprise a lot of people, but it was still their map pick. But now we're on to Overpass, and I was watching it. It was seven rounds up for Heroic. I blink, seven, 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 ten. 7-12, 7-13. Um, but now, finally, Heroic have, have been able to break the money from the Mongols. So you know what they can do with that, what Kadian can do with that. But they're not out of the woods yet. Can you believe it? Do you believe in the Mongols, Stunna? Do you? Yeah. And, and you know what? That was a hell of a smile, Shocks. I felt you. I felt you right there. Hey, yeah, we can see her. She's across the room, but obviously that's a pretty big B stream update for us. We were just kind of thinking about the idea of overpass. Anybody here want to go ahead and grab the 2 0 mouse before we go to a break? I think it's possible. I think Mouse is playing some damn good Counter Strike right now. Navi is still a new team. They look good. Yeah. Noobs. <laughs> Whoa, there it is. Okay, red card for that, man. We go to a break. We come back. It's Navi and Mouse Sports. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters in Cologne. What is that reaction? Yeah, right. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my! Oh boy! Phase Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my God! Get yeah, ready! Gonna be kidding me! What a map! What a map! The in-game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opper, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? I'm that guy who's, who can be aggressive. Whenever we do a strat and someone goes first, maybe now I'm going first instead of someone else or something like this, but I have some freedom and then I will still try to do my own stuff. I'm probably the calmest guy in the team. I can be vocal whenever we are winning, but I can be so quiet. Like, if something happens, I'll be quiet, still try to, to play my own game, to don't like be affected of whatever happened. I don't like to set goals. Easy as that. No goals, just go with the flow. I have so many questions, bro. I have so many questions and I haven't got to hear any of you, uh, uh, any of your interviews talking about it, maybe briefly, maybe, but uh, I mean, this is a whole new chapter. Yes. I mean, a whole new chapter. And uh, I mean, I'm sure you want to keep some of your cards close to your chest, but um, in terms of three players, you know, three, yeah. three is such a huge, I mean, it's a new team now, right? Nothing, nothing lasts forever. Like for me, it was uh, not so, uh, not so uh, like huge change, like everyone says, because for me, this lineup was, um, for last year, it was a little bit, like uh, a feeling of it's 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 fading. it's it's fading like yeah it's hitting like it's uh, it's it's ceiling yeah and uh, so it was something in the air yeah yeah and then when it comes to the the, the players themselves I mean you you've landed with such an, an interesting cast 
My main question starts with Bit. My main question starts with Bit because he has so much talent, but it's also, I imagine, this is the biggest change. You know, he probably just got comfortable in that team that was fa starting to fade. He started so strong and now we're going international. Do you think he's got it in him? Does he ha is he the kind of person that can, that can take this struggle and overcome it? Um, actually, Bit surprised me a lot, like yeah. this season. He started this season after vacation much better. And I didn't expect this from him at all. So yeah. the, imagine how environment affects the player. Yeah. Uh, environment out of the game and also in the game. Mm. Uh, one, one thing that I told him, like, that now you'll speak like in English mostly, and uh, maybe it will help you because your brain will, more, uh, will work constantly. You always must be focused on what you're saying. Yeah. And maybe this also helped him. But obviously now he is not comfortable enough uh, in uh, communicating in English at all. Like sometimes he waits two seconds to say in four, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, for example, he says in Russian. Yeah, right. Um, or, or it's like, uh, confusing, it's or like... confusing, like the name of the, of the, like saying another one. Right, right. But right. he immediately, immediately, like fixing it with his aim. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is your calling? After a dominant first map from Frozen and the rest of Maus, they sit one step closer to knocking down Na'Vi. Na'Vi on the other side, obviously, they uh, have one of the most, I think, interesting roster changes in the shuffle, the decision to, to go international. And it was one that was uh, met with mixed, mixed, mixed reactions from yeah. the community, we'll say. No one quite sure how to feel about it. And while we've had some promising showings from Na'Vi here in that opening map, it did feel like they had some problems, you know, problem solving the issues that Maus are bringing to the table on the fly. Yeah, I almost want to delay the game just to go watch the rest of that Blade interview. I definitely will be checking that out later uh, from the lobby. But the, the big one to me is is the risk of picking up players who come off of, yes, incredible form back at the Paris Major. But that's the first we saw of them at that level, right? Making playoff runs. It, the, the question for me is, can these players keep it up? Can Ima you know, replicate what he showed us back in Paris on a consistent basis? So far, the answer in Na'Vi has been yes. There have been maps, but also we've had troubles and the last map was a trouble for someone like Ima. Uh, I think JL, if anything, is, has fitted in better so far. Only time will tell. We'll have to give Na'Vi exactly that. But right now, Mal's are making them look like fools, Harry. That was a strong opening game for the new, new Mal's roster. Yeah, team huddle for Na'Vi. They know that this is the time to get your head screwed on. Meanwhile, Mal's polar opposite on the other side. These guys have been sat down, getting focused, getting ready to go. And so as Na'Vi take to their seats, let's see if that little team huddle time to discuss is what was needed. <laughs> Frozen's having fun with it. He's been cheeky today, no doubt about it, trying to catch their eye yeah. through the looking glass. You know, Frozen is a very interesting character. He is a very, and you know, there's no better word for it. I think he is a very meme -y guy. He's someone who kind of likes to, to be the life and soul of the party, even during that last map, during Sui's uh, uh, talk with the team. You know, he had time to inject some humor there, and it feels like it smiles all around right now for Maus. It was insane as well how all throughout that first half, it was Zershan rising to the occasion. Yeah. It wasn't even until they switched sides, and we saw that CT side from Maus, that, that we even had to fixate on Frozen, and he finishes top of the server, dropping nearly 30. He finished that first half with nine kills to his name. So yeah. phenomenal stuff from him. Didn't feel Let's like, see if he can keep it up. Didn't feel like there was a weak player on Maus, right? Everyone had their moments, everyone had their impact. Torshi was beating simple and head the heads by the end of the game so uh, let's see if we can keep that up city side overpass great place to be for mouse but navi this is their map pick and they better show us why at least on the bright side is something that the old core of navi have certainly enjoyed across the years and so what can alexi inject into this t half Ima heading mid but it's a con cruel into two players sui and torshi the julies await 
It's clean from Shui to open. Oh, oh more dualies Lightning. where that came from. That's five guns in the connector, all firing back at Na'Vi. Good tap from Simple. Well, remove one and give them the spacing to get into B, but so much more has to be done before Na'Vi can even look to get this bomb down. JL tries to take a bit of space back over towards Spawn, and he will find Yimpat, but he's in this all alone. The sight is lost, the bomb dropped with it, and Zershan is there to put a stop to it. If this is the tag team that you're going to get, if you're going to get these hot starts from Zershan, and then you're going to have someone like Frozen as that late activation, this is a very scary mouse squad. Zershan picks up right where he left off. Extremely threatening team right now. Looking like the sleeper pick of the tournament for the time being. Get in early while the going's good. Because here in Group B, man, it's tough. You got FaZe, you got G2. Astralis in fighting form, not to mention Vitality. He's trapped down in mid right now, but he's got a smoke to allow an escape. There's a team kill in there. But they also Glock out Torshi. So, swings and roundabouts. As they move through the playground, they can grab that gun. Yeah, I, I always think, you know, these, these first few events uh, back after the roster shuffle are so wild because there's so much in it man everyone has a point to prove if you made changes you want to show why you made changes and yeah. that they were the right changes to make and if you didn't well then you got to demonstrate why you decided to stay together and like we said you know last map if someone doesn't have a great tournament we should all overreact <laughs> no we should all freak out we should all call right. for some heads and some cuts and that's what Mal's are dishing out right now on this anti-eco they get back the m4 as well with a second to spare and Na'Vi come in with their first buy round. The sooner you start, the better, especially on overpass. Oh. Yeah, this buy is actually kind of weird because of that team kill from Bit. And it's very rare that you see that make a difference, but it left him with money where he couldn't get armor in an AK. So he's now down to the MAC-10. Alexi's also donning the Galil. This is a little more limited than you would want your first round buy to be. Now's really wanted that mid pick, right? They put uh, a lot of util down range, reflash frozen in, but didn't want to hang around and lose timing to a playground player. Frozen will go long instead with the option to back out. Navi take connector. They have to use a smoke. As the door gets blown off, pretty matter nowadays. You even see some teams throw a smoke for the door out of T-spawn in expectation of the nade going. Lexi battered. Put in the deep fryer. Ooh, are they trying to... No, never mind. It's just a double setup outside of Monster. It looked like Impact was going to try push here. He was kind of creeping around the corner for a moment, but... Looks like he was spotted by JL as he's just tucked himself in. The rest of Na'Vi starting to try work this control down through the toilets. So right now it's all about pushing Mao's back into bomb sites. You don't want them with this space in mid. You don't want them with this info. And so the more reactive you can force Mao's to play, the better. Mao's have done really well with the util. They've just put down two smokes at about 40 seconds and they still have one more. It just went through. They're re-aggressing to get info at the moment. They're going to catch JL going back up A. And again, we saw these rounds on Ancient. They know what's going on. 20 seconds. A is confirmed. Over the top. Frozen having a drop on down. And he oh. will get sandwiched between Whoa. long and toilet. Simple. That looked like a lovely flick. We saw that from Torshi's POV. That was a 90 degree snap. And that might be enough for Na'Vi. I can't believe they win that round. That's excellent shooting. But more importantly, the flashbangs ruined both side players, especially Frozen, who has a one way over dice and probably two kills on offer. And he just gets full blinded, dropped into long. And Simple, of course, hits some stunning shots. But that's, you know, Mal's knew exactly what was coming in right there after they re aggro short at the right time. They use their smokes extremely well, but Simple outshoots every statistic. And Na'Vi starts strong soon. 
Yeah, good to see. As you, like, like you kind of pointed out, especially with all the, 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 the early util damage that had been found, the fact that they'd been replenishing oh these smokes. My. Oh, my goodness. Over on the B-stream. <laughs> oh the Mongols. Me. Looking for a 2-0 over Heroic. Three kills away from 2-0ing Heroic. Current number one ranked team in the world versus the Mongols. But, you know, the best team in the world versus Heroic, if you yeah, want to look at it that course. way. So, yeah. That's incredible. It's a good time to be alive. It's a good new season. Sugar, spice, all things nice. RV again take mid very early. Bombs coming in as well, JL, the B lurker. Torchy has the AWP on default as well. So this is where all eyes go to the telescope. Even though you can only fit one in usually. Nice. Torchy. We'll get this fight eventually. He's and they're not giving it to him just yet. Taking their time over on the long side of Navi as they group up in mid, waiting. Crossing their T's, dotting their I's, making sure all pieces of this are ready to move in. And we'll, and we'll clear out Frozen. Torshi's Zort was supposed to trade this back out, but never given enough of a chance. Now the flashes start to stream in again. He's got to pick an angle, dedicate to it, because they're getting closer up through the short side. He does have Sui back at the truck, but going to struggle to give him much of a helping hand here. Torshi baited into oh. the long fight. And that's when Ima comes in with the backstab. The A site crumbles, struggling to get a lot done there. And with the plant now found for Na'Vi in the 2v4, it's crazy to me that Zershan's even continuing to walk on up here. Mao's almost look interested in giving this one a go, even though everything's telling you that this save should be coming through. Ooh. Impact will get rewarded with one, and yeah, Zershan has just hands off the keyboard at this point. It's a combat save for Zershan in the bank. His teammate's going to get away. And that damage at least means he should save himself from being hunted down. Regardless, it's not much of a victory. Na'Vi find themselves a second. And just like that, it's a tie game. Yeah, great trading for Na'Vi and spacing. Coming in on that long and mid split. Torshi doesn't get many opportunities to fire off the AWP. When he does, Na'Vi pounce on him. Alexi thinks they're going to buy. But I don't know if they will, looking at the money. 2k a player. Just saving these two guns. But Na'Vi are prepared for anything. Already we're seeing some nice hay takes though from Na'Vi. Taking mid control efficiently. Gonna have to see Torshi starting more aggressive early with the yeah, right to slow them down if they're getting all the way up to the divider without even running into players. Yeah, you're, you're, I think in that round there as well, you kind of felt it. Navi had a lot of room to to be ready, to feel ready. At no moment did they did they feel like they were in danger of being pressured. And I don't think you can let Navi feel that comfortable. Simple spots the con man. But it's Yimp. First kill in the round. No Zershan way. follows up. Not like this. That bomb's got to get retrieved by Alexi. Ema's walking into A and he's got his teammate with him in simple. So they will get the opener. It's the rifles they got to worry about and they're a ways away. They were both spotted. One down on B, one in the connector. And Sanavi, so this is a quick reaction. Nice back off of Frozen there. He almost walked out with Torshi, who didn't realize they were deep, but he'd rather just stay alive and play with his teammate. Set up a rifle. They're gonna do that now. The Molly falls short. Yimpa hits a massive kill. You could barely see him. And Ema gets picked out. Meanwhile, this long flank comes in. It's going very slow, though, just in case there's a toilets lurker. Now both players called in the site. So she starts to run, and Alexi takes him out. Huge kill for the captain of Na'Vi. Two on three. And everyone coming from Dumpster. Alexi on the angle. 
Farms up the first man in. The impact's going to be the one who has to trade this and sees him on the dice box, knows nice. he's got him boxed in, does deal with Alexi. Now Simple is the one to beat, but that's easier said than done. They're on the bomb and Simple swings, oh. will deny the defuse. Kick, kick, kick. He's he got the it. Kick. He got he's it. grabbed it and Sasui will grab this defuse right from under their wow. noses. With seconds to spare, he gets that trade, that all-important trade onto Simple Swinging Toilet. If you let Simple get away there, you're not winning the round. And what a sick round from Yimpat as well. One of the two saved guns, and he puts on three kills there, coming in on the flank into Connector, and then comes up and, and you know, they, they do it kind of like how Heroic do it on those kind of rounds, right? They don't send the pistols in just to die. They let the rifles take early kills, arm them, and then suddenly you have such a, you know, arm force in a four on two you're, you're begging to win that round simple tries his best he pulls it back to a one-on-one -on -one, but miles are able to do it with that saved kit it goes a long way that's a robbery of a round when miles didn't even buy on three players my oh my we got a game and all i can hear is Cadian yelling across the room It's a bit still yet to find anything since that TK earlier in the game. He's someone I'm, I'm going to pay close attention to as this game rages on for Na'Vi. Back when he first joined the team, he kind of brought new life to their overpass. It's been a long while since then. So, nice flash peek. They know JL's been the sole B lurker in a lot of these rounds, so... They find him early. Alexi's still nearby, but he's not really got any support, so... Looking to reset A, perhaps? Well, they're coming to him. They've all kind of come to each other. Yeah. Gonna group for a con take instead. Dawn naded off. And a very good timing. Even walking in through con feels so scary when that door's off. Yeah. At any moment, there could just be a boost. Or even a flash peek in. They mm. don't even have short info, right? There could be players close right here. Navi have to be very careful with their clearing. Silent drop in, and they're just going to pop out B. Hope for the best. In this moment, Frozen has just taken mid. So in a minute, expect to see Torshi like, look to rotate at the first flash, and there it is raining in. Oh, Full blind. Flash. So he's still going to get away with one. Not able to deal with him as he just no hides way. himself, steals himself away on the pillar and robs them of another kill before they even get into the site. This is a non-starter of yeah. a round for Na'Vi. Back to the drawing board, go next. They can't do anything here. Locked out on their attempt at the short peak, and in the end, you know, that info that Frozen goes and collects from mid doesn't even have to play into the round. It's held convincingly by the captain over towards B. And he doesn't go too far either. He comes down connector, and he sees Na'Vi, like, pull back from that B hit, but he just doesn't face. He hides in the corner, smokes the Molotov. He had a smoke out anyway, just probably to, to you know, smoke off the door to escape, uh, knowing that, yeah, if I fight here instantly and I die, Na'Vi have technically the timing to run up to A and so just doesn't give them a way back in to win the round. Anti-throw here for Maus. Four to two and yeah, you're going to get rounds like that on T-side overpass where you where you just have non-starters and your team get massacred on a B hit and you just save two guns. That's pretty common nowadays. So it's not the end of the world for Na'Vi but they've got to make these two guns sing now. Simple with a lot to do. Frozen is still in this position. It, it's so ballsy to still be here because, you know, if he starts getting pressured and feels that uh, sense of urgency to try and fall back, well, suddenly, oh, you're either, yeah, back. like, he, he's just not and he's going to die to con. They're not going to clear it. Oh, <laughs> but just the one and done. He jumped the gun. He went for it. Probably not expecting three players there. I see. The, the thing I was worried about, though, is how much does this pull Torshi into the mix to want to float around? I like that he's kind of already starting to go through the motions of falling back. That's because they've got this B push. Ooh, timing miss for Zershin. Player gets up con. But it's a fake for Alexi. 
I don't even know if they hear it from that range anyway, so this is just going to keep Torshi stalling on the A site while they set up to flank. Zersha's not going round the world here, so they're actually keeping way too many players at B for the current round. They jump spot B short. Sui now realizes, okay, they're probably walking up on A, and they need him now more than ever. Really, Impact should rotate as well. Yeah, you're thankful that that smoke slowed this push down to allow Sui to even be here, but it doesn't prove to matter. His old teammate cuts his head off. And so even though Torshi has this line through the bank with the bomb planted, Na'Vi, this is teed up to be their round. Torshi or Zershan need to be the one to get the ball rolling here. And if a kill is not found soon, and this is stage set for Na'Vi to cook one up. Shot. Zersha manages that, but he's not ready for bit, even though he's blind. <laughs> that was the uh, the hurts. flash that catches him. Yeah, I've, the big mistake of that run for Bowser is it feel, you know, I say mistake. It, to them, it, it must have felt like a B play waiting to happen because Torshi hadn't seen anyone on A because they were all waiting behind his smoke. With such a deep monster push, and then Yimpat on default on B, Sui still rotates just to jump spot. That's something Yimpat could have done. Sure, it would have been a little more dangerous. But then they pull the monster player, I think it was Zershan, back to watch B short from tunnel. So they had so much info towards B and only the AWP on A. So at a certain point, like, you, you have all the info to justify a triple A hold and you're actually only one A. That realization definitely sets in too late for Maus. And right now, Torshi is, you know, not star of the show. We'll hype him up, but... Right now, he needs to be doing more on the CTAWP. It's a heavy investment. He saved it multiple times. He's lost it on long A. Sure, he didn't have a lot of support there, but Mal's need him now as Na'Vi are fine to just break in and trade rounds here and there. This could still be a very good T side for Na'Vi here, especially with the amount of saves Mal's are forced into. Full buy for the time being. Well, this time they're going to leave Frozen early, and that's because they want to get this orb put up on the boost. The smoke in the door feels annoying. Toshi would have loved that angle. And Bit's just done that, just to cut off this flow of info, just in case that boost is employed. Now it lets him walk up close. And as you'll see, Toshi lost that angle. The re-smoke's in, but that's going to land deep, and Na'Vi are already ahead of it, so that's not going to work as well as Maus believe it has. JL tries to lead the charge with a lengthy Ooh. opening. Comes down to Yimpat having to hold the line. Not bad. Clashes with Simple, sure, but he gets his double. He does what he had to do in the round. And now if you try to go back up A, that's when you're walking into Frozen with the games these guys, th this guy's been having. As opponents, you'd rather no face way. here and frozen. Good timing on the turnaround back to long. When you see Ema there, you're under no illusion what that means. That this bomb was looking to come back up, that they were leaving the back door open. But simple deals with frozen cleanly. Now they hear the plant coming in. They know they've got a 1v1 on the planter, oh. but they can't win it. And so with that kill, it leaves it all on Torshi. Nah. He's too far removed. Yeah. He's saving the AWP again. Now he's pissed because he's like, all oh, right, you're losing B. I start B and they go A. But uh, that's a sick shot for Simple because Frozen has shadow advantage on both those fights. That's why he kills Ema, that and good timing, yes. But he has the prior warning. And then I love how Simple and Bit play that. Bit just sends it up A. Hey, that's meant to bait Frozen to chasing the kill. He doesn't fall for it. He realizes Simple could still be here. Simple gives him the shadow advantage and just decks him anyway. Bit goes on to kill the retaker in the 1v1 for the round. So that's, yeah, the, the, the firepower duo of Na'Vi showing us what they got. And forcing the orb save will now be the only thing Mal's have in this follow-up round. Four B to four A. Four Mal's. Frozen's going to try and get that confirmation in middle or con. He'll hear this one. 
Nice idea to get a quick See, kick on the boost. Toshi really wants to be fought here, like more than anything. More than anything in the world, he wants someone to try and walk through short. He has a nade for the door, he didn't use it. Maybe it's for the plant, but... If he used it on the door, that could have been a fight to Na'Vi. Well, I gotta say, now we heard what Sui called in this round, yeah. and it's shaping up nicely, playing the, the, the heavy forces down towards B early, waiting to see if Na'Vi tried to take that short control. And sure, Torshi didn't get the fight he was hoping for on the, on the boost, but it's still info, right? Even in not getting a fight there, you know that Na'Vi don't have that real estate right now. It's good for Mao's in that they've made the right call to be heavy A, and Zershan's also got smoke to stall out B, so JL doesn't walk through, but they're going all long, and we have this triple toilet and, and front toilet setup, so Na'Vi are still actually bypassing this for the most part. So, yeah, Jim has spotting it, but he's also playing dice. So Ma I feel like Mao's gonna find out too late. Torshi gets a chance, he gets a shot, he can't connect it. And they're coming up long quick with a lot of util. Yeah, they are really close, far closer than Mao's are expecting. No one's even considering this right now. They oh, decide dear. to fight forward and they go walking into the embrace of bit. Yimpa in at the truck, managed to find one with the USP. I'm loving it. But it's not fruitful. Alexis done really well on this T side. He's exploited every weakness. He's found so much room. He's found every gap. The reeds that he's been cooking, they taste divine. Yeah, and I, and I like, you know, I think I think even the fact that they follow through, commit into the long push, when, when other options are available and you've spotted the AWP on A, but I think it's the fact that you spot the AWP in particular, dueling down that line at toilets, and you're already deep down long, right? Not even for a second did Na'Vi consider abandoning that A hit. They recognize that that's a good fight for them, that Torshi's out of position, that that AWP is going to struggle to accomplish much. And so they follow through with the A hit. And worth noting, Na'Vi don't even take that AWP, even though it's right there for free. And that's just a sign of the times, right? They are just trading out on A hits. And they don't need to, you know, leave simple holding dice for jumps. They're not getting desperate. They're not having trouble finding opening kills. So they can just continue to trade out on these, uh, these mid-takes. Why buy the orb? It's not like Torshi's been a threat yet. But maybe this is the round. Oh, he doesn't realize Bit's already crossed under him. He went for the deep peak, but Bit had a good spawn. Nades for the boost. Not bad, actually. Does hit Sui significantly. And we have a B default round for Na'Vi. Something different now. But it's all a fake out. The bomb goes back up uh, with simple... They leave JL in probably his most aggressive position in this T side. He's been outside of Monster for the most part. So if Mal's try and regather info here, it's got to be a good flash and it's perfect. Got to give it to Mal's. Their flash B peaks have come up with results. So Na'Vi should just go back to A, but here's where Mal's continue to make moves. Yeah, one extra detail was the there must have been a miscommunication there in the mid round as well because Simple and Alexi both smoked the same thing over towards A. So now they don't have one for this sight hit uh -oh. when it looks to come through. And that's going to prove to matter here if you're Na'Vi. Mao's a full setup over on A. They really want Na'Vi to come back up the connector into this triple A lean. Frozen fights on short, and he will feed Alexi one. So he's on a bit of an off angle for the long hold, and nice. so that one just walks right into him. Torshi has missed this timing, oh. and he hears the footsteps turning around. He'll deal with it, and Alexi oh. sandwiched Torshi, puts him in a box. Good night. No. He just spammed him through toilets. I don't think he saw him at all. That's just a shot through the wall. About time we had that orb. Win a round for Maus. If Ima takes down Sui on this long corner, that's how that unravels, but a really nice off angle. And yeah, let's see this. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Yeah, he just, he just RNG'd him. I. Okay, it's competitive. It's looking nice. Maus with two aggressive B moves in that round as well. Trade out two for one. Looks like they want to go early here for a change. Testing the new kid on the block. Yimpat, what you got? 
Well, he's actually looked good over here at the barrels, man, in the, in the, in the rounds where he's had to provide something for Maus. He's been able to do it. This Ooh. one is not one of those rounds. Bit has really come alive across the last couple. Grinds away into this one for Na'Vi, uprooting both the B-site anchors. And so now it's down to the retake again. Maus are clearly scarred by some of these A rounds. They've been dedicating a lot more resources there early, and that leaves them a bit high and dry here. They don't have that you know, usual triple layer over towards B, that third man to try and turn the tide. And so that is all bit, baby. Yeah, sick. Really nice headshots. That third one as well, especially. Takes a very deep fight into CT spawn just to guarantee it. It's like the swing kill. You lose that and suddenly Maus might be tempted, but Bit does not miss. Triple entry and puts Na'Vi on the board. Nice to know they can just do those quick B hits and get away with them. That's something they'll keep in the back pocket for later in the half. I think if you're Na'Vi, if you're Alexi, you're, you're kind of recognizing that you've you've got Miles where you want him. They, they're they adjusting these setups a lot to try and contain what Na'Vi are bringing to the table. But the, the thing that's quite striking is it's never a clear end destination. These aren't just calls out of spawn. I don't want to go back to the meme of, you know, the Alexi classic of, yeah. you know, fake A but go B. Um, but, you know, he, he is playing a very varied game. You're never quite sure where it's going to end up. And when you look at it, I know he hasn't had a tremendous amount of impact in the game so far, but I think someone like JL, who's been just holding over towards short water, not often getting caught off guard, uh, it's leaving all these backdoor options open. So they're doing a very good job of kind of keeping Maus guessing. Whenever we see them look to pad out a site, it feels like Na'Vi are going to the other one. So Alexi has this feeling right now that he's got a very good grasp on the game. Yeah. And if JL starts, you know, getting B entries or something. Oh! Ah, that's, that's a little awkward. Yeah, free gun. And finally, Torshi takes a peek into an enemy for a change. He gets that killer monster frozen, finds a second. And Maus, this isn't the, this wouldn't be the first time they've won a round with two guns. That's it. And it's looking like enough. Are you really going to drop in? Oh, you cheeky boy. No way he commits. Frozen doesn't shoot because he wants Alexi to drop. He's like, oh yeah, I'm not here. You, you can come down this ladder. It's safe. It's not safe. And Ima in a one on four. First job find Frozen. And well, next job, go next round. Over on B-Stream, looking like Heroica dragging it to three. My oh my, double overtime and it's done. Heroic versus the Mongols will rage on. And we have the chance for a three map for ourselves if Na'Vi can keep up such a T-side. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought Heroic Mongols ends up becoming the, the, the big fixture, you know? Like, that, that's, that's a crazy game yeah. going on over there. And they got Inferno, which was a classic Mongols, Mongols map. map. Yeah, different team, obviously, but that's yeah, it's bound to be exciting. I don't want to look away from this one though, not right now. Still questions to be answered. Yeah, I think this is already a very good T side for Navi, honestly. Yeah. Right, uh, really, I think the onus is going to be on Maus now, trying to clamp down on it a little bit more. I think Navi have felt like they've had a lot of freedom, uh, a pretty big degree of freedom. That's why plays from folks like Frozen down through the connector in that last round are great. Just the, the, the reminder that he can, that he can get away with those sorts of rounds, those sorts of plays. Finally, something to cut through the Navi default. And so they're a lot slower this time around doing their. When they're all checking under every rock as they make their way down long. They've also cleared out the connector. So this is another one of those rounds where Na'Vi have got options. You know, they don't have to follow through over at A. A lot can be judged on this first contact and the info that you pick up on the back of it. Torshi's got support, so he's feeling pretty free with the AWP, right? He's quite down to take fights as they come up through short, knowing that he's got two teammates back in the site. This is a good angle for him. The one worry is this creep up through the bathrooms. And while his teammates are checking oh it, he's out on an island, and the swing from Frozen is just a what? second too late, but it won't matter. 
because he goes on to knock out every remaining Na'Vi player. And then Sui locks it in. He arrives right on top. Yeah, forget I said anything. Sure, Torshi kind of got hung out to dry. But Frozen more than makes up for it. For the greater good. The greater good indeed. These are sublime shots for Frozen. And that's after simple, you know, throws himself around the corner, baits the orb shot out, kills him, and then Frozen just massacres Na'Vi. And that changes everything. Sure, six rounds is a, is a good T-side on overpass. You're not going to complain about that. But Na'Vi have now been made to eco for round 15. There are not enough lifeboats. And look who they're running into on long. Yeah, Frozen's just waiting. He's very comfortable in this fight. Torshi. Oh, no. <laughs> this is, this is going to go Torshi wrong. Could, to, don't yeah. hang around. you got to leave. Who knows? Has support from Zershan oh. again down at the connector. He's going to try and tee him up with that flashbang, but oh, no, everything's Harry. looking a little muddled right now. Oh, He's no. once again, same <laughs> island as last time. Same result. Ooh. Frozen. Okay. This time, not the 4K. But it shouldn't come to matter. It shouldn't come to pass. That said, Simple's been armed with the AWP and a chance to plant. Won't stick it straight away. And that's where Mao's clothesline and They don't give him the room nor the respect to play out that 1v3. It's a little flustered for Simple, trying to stick it again. You know, he, he, he tapped it. He runs. And I guess he's trying to tap it again just to really force a fight. But he didn't know Mao's just got there. So he's tapping in the open. And he just gets swung before his guns back out. Torshi's making me nervous. Yeah, in these yeah, rounds, I'm not liking man. it. Like, I'm not liking it either. It's good. It's yeah. yeah. I'm clenched basically the whole time. Navi are finding great room. Don't get me wrong, but uh, the synergy is not quite there on this A site yet. Ooh, and that's, okay. That's a move that Frozen's attempting to make. This is more Torshi. Okay, let's see if he can make it work on the long push. Nails simple, and that's a freebie. You'll take the return to the 4v4. Torshi just wants to back out of there now. Doesn't want to risk going down. Instead, you've got these little gimmicks employed to turn the tide oh. in favor of Maus. But this timing hit over towards Monster is interesting. JL versus Yimpat. Oh, he JL's yeah. ducked right under his crosshair. Yimpat does not know that a man is in the sight with him right now. Ooh. And that loud rotate away. Maybe this gives an avenue to Na'Vi. Did he jump spot him? It looked like he was going <gasps> for the jump. Hang oh, on. Alexi's been hurt. Free bomb. First class delivery. Zersha's got it smoked off as well, but they're down the ladder. They're not far around the corner. Eva dead as well. Zersha on a tear with three in the round. And JL's luck out be no matter how influential. Well, it's now anything but his team. Nowhere to be seen. And JL for the end of the half is just looking for stats. The ultimate grift from, uh, from ours proved to just be the presence of this con man in every round that they had one. You know, it, it, the, the results were there. It's palpable. Whether it's Frozen 4K, Zershan going forward and finding the bomb, this half shapes up nicely for Maus when all is said and done. Fucking insane, mate.
the early bird may get the worm, but it's the second mouse that gets the cheese. And right now that's true for this mouse squad. They've been late activators in both of these maps, but it's worked out for them. They recover this first half from being 4-6 down. They stop Na'Vi in their tracks and they put together a CT side they can work with here. They're looking for a 2-0 in their opening game of the group stage. That would be a statement for Mouse right after their playing performance to keep it consistently going into the groups up against a threatening Na'Vi who showed, you know, a pretty good face back in Copenhagen with some ups and some downs. But it went over G2 and Astralis and Big. Certainly nothing wrong with that for Na'Vi. And they're having some trouble here on overpass. A good beginning to the T side, but it dripped dry by the end of the half. And now Mal's with the opportunity to run away with this whole series. Holes and all. Yeah, and you know, I mean, when, when you really want to look at how this is, uh, how this has happened, you know, what, what what's kind of taken place, you really have to look no further than two two individuals who have been lights out in, in both maps for for Mal Zershin and Frozen have been a fantastic tag team here. Back in the play-ins, we were looking at Torshi a hell of a lot. He was looking like a like a new man, but here, you know, he, he's had a much harder time. He, he has been struggling. I think it's fair to say, just looked a little uncomfortable every now and again. However, it hasn't really felt like it's come to matter because Frozen and Zershin have been enough to pick up the pieces. This round, Simples dink down to one HP. You heard that right, one HP. Uh, where I'm from, we call it a goosh, you know, because it's all about the noise, Harry, and yeah, no helmet. Simples had the gush sucked out of him. This is a very weird retake. Yeah. 5v5, but with a 1 HP player, it feels like a 4v5. So as they move in, they're going to get struck down oh. by the Glock. Sui trying to make some moves. Eventually bested, but Bits Dooleys have got their work cut out for them. Far too much to do for just one man up through short. And Mao's start the second half strong, double digits achieved, and it can only get sweeter from here. Yeah, a scary sign for Na'Vi fans right now as they will have to pull a massive comeback once we hit gun rounds. I think even a force here is it would be a dangerous decision. I'd love to see Na'Vi full eco and just get M4s out in the third. You already don't have much room in this map, and considering you're down already on Ancient Mao's pick, this could be a very, very quick second half. Navi would make the safer call and go for that full eco. Stack on the B-bomb site. Hoping for the best. You know, I think with any team that, that, that likes overpass, that likes to lean into it, you, you have to come to terms with the fact that a lot of your games are going to be spent coming back in the second half. And so Na'Vi should have been prepared for this worst case scenario. It's a test of the metal though. It's a test of a metal of a team that really? made that transition over sure. to, to coming in English. Let's see it. Wow, I've never seen that. Cool POV, but yeah, I mean, getting a kill from it, not as easy. I have no doubt you could get one. Yeah, USP though, you need to double think. It's you know, do I think Yimpat drops on you with a Mac 10 after you get one? Yeah, probably. However, in this round, we don't even have to worry about it. The boost will never get spotted because Maus have picked right out of the two sites. One was stacked, the other not. Like a twisted game of deal or no deal, kind of. Golden ball, do you want to stick or what's the other one, steal? Well, Navi won't be stealing this round. They're just going to come in right near the end and see if they can find any damage. But you got your wish, Hugo. You wanted them to take the eco here. You wanted rifles bought out straight away for Na'Vi. Yeah. This does put a lot of emphasis on this first rifle round, though. The, the later they go, the more damage they can do, right? But that's why Yipat's getting aggressive. Oh, one HP. Now that is a dink, and they're just gonna start running and gunning, but no kills for Na'Vi, sadly. And Mal's 11 to six. They don't have open. No way they have open, okay? No way they have open. He's not wrong. Navi going down to flat M4s. And a famas. Do or die right now for Navi, right? Like, these rounds hit two for one. Yeah, I mean, you know, th this was uh, in, in in the very nature of this third round buy. It's always a little weaker than the one that you could have had in the fourth. That's the advantage, right? You get it earlier. But uh, it does mean that you have Alexi down on the Famous. You're lacking a bit of the util. You don't have the kits. 
You don't have that AWP in the hands of Simple, and Maus are aware of that fact. So let's see how they want to use this against Na'Vi. They know that they can make this series, they can make this opening game in the group stage so easy for themselves if they win this round right now. Oh, Ema out on an island. Just fine down long. And he gets the info that Mao's are there and that they were there in numbers. Mao's own the connector and they have done since the start of this. So in the same way we saw a good few of these rotates happening at the final few seconds, that's what that's what connector allows. That's what allows Overpass to be such a a fakey, rotatey map. Frozen gets stuck in but bites off more than he can chew. Bit straight levitating down towards Monster. Opens this round up to the advantage in Na'Vi. And now the A-side's about to get tested. Oh, great play inside of the smoke here for Ema. Jim Pat, and as he spams it, he'll have no idea. He'll run right by this. What a play with a flash, though. Definitely not ready for more. Alexi picks up a huge double, and Ema wants to play for the whole goddamn round. He wants to play for everything. Takes the bomb. Sui now given a chance, cross behind the site, but he sneaks right into the angle, and Ema makes do by his position. What a lovely play inside of the smoke, even though Mao's had a, a cheeky little flash onto Simple. Even Alexi getting two there from out of dice box was impressive enough. Na'Vi, stay in this series for now. Yeah, that is exactly what Na'Vi needed if they wanted to keep the hopes of making this a three-mapper alive. And I like this from, from Ema. I think it would have been so easy to have reacted fast, especially when you factor in the fact that he's been having a bit of a rough game. These factors weigh upon you, right? You, you may be a little more hesitant on making the call to play the trigger discipline, but very well handled in defense of that top site. This is a platform for Na'Vi to springboard off and pull a comeback here, like you said. Certainly common on the CT sides of Overpass. Good wall bank damage to begin this round for Na'Vi. Already got three players tagged up. Sertion on his last legs. Ema very aggressive, but Simple's assured in the bomb site. Considering that all of mid is open right now. Mao's going to group for a B hit. Triple stack. Bit of barrel. Oh, that re-smoke timing is excellent for Na'Vi. That will change the plan here for Mal's. They're going to group up on short as they hear that come in. Leave Frozen to late pop through the smoke. Monster flash goes over. I am already cleared mid, though. Alexi's here. There's four players inside of the B site, so this is about as pretty as it should be for Na'Vi. They've got everyone in the right, right. place. JL oh. farms up the remaining two. Nice. He goes on to get a hat trick at the end of that. JL starting to find his footing. And I am, you know, a real star in that round, considering he was not at all involved in any of the fights. It's the info that he gains from that long push. It's the yeah. fact that he pushes on the back of that timing flash out through mid that occurred, you know, 30 seconds earlier. When he hears it's gone silent for so long, he feels like something's up. I am gets aggressive. That allows Alexi to be in place down on the B site. And it all comes together in a very nice way for Na'Vi. Yeah, and suddenly, you know, the scoreline doesn't feel anywhere near as daunting, right? Especially with an anti-eco up ahead of Na'Vi. Very little to play with. It should be nice and clean here with no flashbang and four glocks remaining. Yeah, you're not you're not worried about this round. Uh, for Maus, there's a pretty big there's a pretty tall uh, tall task ahead of them here. Oh. Oh, I thought they were going to show something cool, but it's just a kind of a Stralis esque stack. Why is that not cool? Well, because, you know, I, I think it's just going to be this for a minute. <laughs> 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 you know? Uh, yeah, but, man, no, this is very reassuring for Na'Vi. Uh, as we were kind of prophesizing, you know, it's always the case that you do have to, to make up for a bit of a deficit when you pick an overpass. And. I think around such a fresh team and a, change, a team that's gone through such a change, that, that definitely can be a question. You know, it's a justifiable thing to, to think on. But they're looking good out of the gate. And we haven't even had things like the AWP in Simple's hands yet to, to worry about. So you feel like, you know, there's, there's more depth here. There's more layers to it for yeah. Na'Vi. I mean, that could have been a really good T side. It was six rounds, which is fine. But there were a couple of awkward opportunities thrown away for Na'Vi that 
if they win them, they probably win the T half at least. So I imagine they are feeling pretty comfortable right about now. Mm. They cut us off. Fair enough. Yeah, I gotta give it to him. Into the uh, into the tag pause. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, overpass is a map that tests your defaults. That is kind of the the nature of it, right? For the most part, that's how every round starts: is spreading out, taking that default, looking for the CT aggression, looking for the channels and the avenues that they're trying to get info from. Yeah, Navi did a lot of just leaving JL outside outside of B and either four mid or one con three mid. And the way that Mouse countered it really nicely was just continually harassing JL. They would constantly play the double fade in the Monster Smoke or flash peak short, and they would always kill him when they flash peak short. And that just frees up so many rotates for upper. Not that they were needed. Frozen was just on a tear there. So yeah, let's see what this default looks like for Mouse if that's going to be the cool Frozen outside of B two down connector, door off for Na'Vi. And Ema, not playing fearful, is a good sign. They're not throwing much at him yet though. Letting him play his hand here in middle, seeing if he goes one step too far. It's three flashes in a row for Na'Vi to set Ema up, and he doesn't see anything. So he goes back to the bomb site. they can pad B, but that's what Miles want. Now they're coming up con. Now they're taking playground. So Na'Vi stacked B. How long can Miles keep them there? Oh, they'll be going B after all. See, they're like when you're holding the default like that early on, what you're hoping for was that Na'Vi were going to come looking for you. And and as you as you were talking about, IM did, right? They never found him. The thing that's like awkward for Mao's now is that IM has re-aggressed long right as Mao's have disbanded the default and moved away. So we should have a rotate at a simple in just a moment. And here's the push down towards B. They get the two openings. That's crucial. Simple takes up position in heaven, but a smoke's going to obscure his sight lines and leave it all on one man down in the sight. Alexi has got some heavy lifting to do uh -oh. now as Mao's are looking to run him down. So he finds him when the, clap, uh, when the captains clash and Simple's flashed off the angle, denied any say in this bomb crossing. Now V just a second too late to the realization of this round. The entry's finally coming up in favor of Maus. And they get one on the board that they can be proud of. Simple. Still looking to exert a bit of pressure over oh. the site here, but a gnarly shot from Sui still did the peak from Simple. Borders on unnecessary when Eam is already so dedicated to the save. I mean, if he got out with that gun, they're, they're buying in the next round. There's no issue there. With him dying, this this actually carries you know, some ramifications for the future. I think they can still get a squeeze a buyout, but yeah, you're, I, you're right. Didn't need to go for the exits. And actually, Eam might not be guaranteed anything either. But they won't go any further. Thank goodness they don't come around. Yeah, there's a lot of angles there in T-Spawn. Mal's just build their money. Take a 12 on this T side. Very nice entries. Trade out monster and awkward timing for Na'Vi who re aggress on short. But Mal's aren't blind. See, and look, man, when you look at the money, like, yeah, Na'Vi can buy. I'm not doubting that. It's going to have some choices made yeah. in it, right? It's going to have some limitations. And those were limitations that didn't need to exist. So you hope that that, that isn't, you know, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. Simple as 5800, Harry. He can buy an orb. Yeah, I mean, you know what? He can get his hands on. <laughs> He's fine. We'll see if Navi go for it, though. They might take one more eco and do a halfy round the hero rifle. But yeah, with yeah, four I just rifles, don't think you can when uh, you're like this deep in the game, right? You kind of need to take every every reset. one of these that you can. Four rifles. What's JL got? MP9. It's not the end of the world. Full util. Got to make do with what you got. Mouse, they can basically win this game off this round here. This would be monstrous. I'm going to go back to defaulting again. 
just waiting and seeing if, if, if Ema goes for these mid, pe uh, mid peaks, if Na'Vi gonna try and work a bit of control, oh, simple, ahead. ahead of the Molly wow. with that orb, <laughs> cleanly done, and he's gonna smoke it, get the hell out of there. That is a, a great start to the round for his first look in with the AWP. That's so smart, dude, because he even waits, he lets them walk in the mid, thinking the Molly's worked, anything but the impact, only good for one, Ema still stuck down in connector, and he's dropped the bomb, and then some three kills to Ema, who's having a quiet map, but that's a massive round that Na'Vi need drastically. And it's suddenly very important that Mao's kept all their four players alive last round, because if they want to rebuy, it won't come cheap. Dude, Eamon's brimming with the confidence yeah, here. Even also. committed to the push through connector. Uh, this has been a very connector focused game, right? It's yeah. another multi kill round down in con. Ooh, Ema has missed this. So there's a kill for Frozen available. Not that he knows. But it goes both ways, yeah. And Frozen's just going to elect to get out of there and hold on to this gun. It's for the best. Now, V. Lovely, lovely round opener, right? I love the idea from Simple playing ahead of that Molotov, using that to just surgically remove one player from Maus and then disappear through the same smoke from which he came. Do they buy, though, is the question. I mean, yeah, they should, really. Just because, you know, it's back and forth and Na'Vi don't have full cash yet, but you can see Maus' money. It's going to be four rifles akin to how Na'Vi had in this round. Great play for Ema. And a stylish shot for Simple. Sue being really vocal down Yeah, there. I was just going to say, I'm trying to listen in. I'm stood off the balcony right now looking down because that, that entire you know time of, of Frozen saving with, with Sui talking the entire time. He, uh, he's got something cooking. Let's let him cook. What's the idea? Condor smoke. Moving through middle as well. Emo going to back out with Simple. I do love this combo of Simple and Emo as a concept. The firepower on this A site. Very potent. Emo in toilets. Already looking like they're running safer setups than that of Torshi and Frozen. Frozen got away with some madness. Orp is in a safer position, simple jump spotting. And simple uh, still as a smoke as well, so like just as this one's coming over to Ward Short, he can replenish that at a moment's notice. And Maus don't have the util to double pump this, so that could cause some problems down the line. Instead, he's going to use his at the front of toilets now, but even that is great. You know, this is going to slow the roll of Maus. It's really making them question, do they want to follow through with this top yeah. site here? And so they're going all the way back through the spawn. It's a B play. Leaving this on Zershan to sell the A fake. Utils reined in. Just something to try and keep Na'Vi here right now. Three strong in the top site. If Zershan could even get a kill, just something. Just a bit of damage downrange to keep three bodies there. He served his purpose as the rest of Maus now try and break into B. Oh. Too strong, falls to one. It's just JL from behind the pillar. He's going to need support. Alexi's raining in flashes from the heavens. Very complimentary to his sight anchor. Makes it nice and easy for JL. And with the bomb away from Maus, there's no winning this round. Na'Vi are closing the gap. That was sick from JL. What a what a way to pivot off of Pillar. And as you said, supporting Flash is just raining in. Bit even managed to dodge the util coming in. Maus fake Na'Vi pretty well to keep them 3A with the orb. And JL just does everything on the lower site. Drops a bomb twice over. Rock solid hold on B for Na'Vi. And now Maus, now they're in trouble. They can't seem to break into these last couple on the T side. And they're back to pistols, trying to throw themselves right into Na'Vi. Yeah, going for a bit of a Hail Mary B play, just straight through the monster smoke. You're not expecting the best results. But sometimes something gives. This doesn't look like it's going to be one of those rounds, even though both the, uh, the site players are very, very low. There's just so Whoa. many bodies oh. here. He hit the hop. He almost got it. 
but Navi contain the eco rush without yeah, a single there's, casualty. There's a real feeling of like the, the the strength starting to appear for Navi right down yeah. towards B. You've got the you've got this impeccable little duo of Bit and JL who it feels like even if one of them uh, has a bit of a rough round, the other will make up for it. And then over on A, Simple starting to get involved with this AWP. That's something that many a team have tried and failed to solve. IM has come into his own in such a big way. He was sat down bottom of the board, struggling to find his impact. It was a couple of rounds where he was getting info for the team and winning them rounds on the back of that. And now he's fragging as well. Miles need a hero, they need a savior. We've not said Frozen's name in a few rounds here. Some big entries could save them. In what feels like a, a game that is slipping through their fingers on the harder half. They've got a lot of room on A. Navi is scrambling. Simple's back in here in time. Front toilet smoke gives him room to face deep. They will have heard that scope though, so Mal shouldn't go dry swinging divider. Simple won't hang around forever as the smoke fades. Sui even looks in. He's playing the fade. Navi getting aggressive on B. About to clear this out. It might not matter. It might be too late. Oh. Line. That's so awkward. Oh. I am head on a swivel as Ema tears him down. Torshi in the back line makes it a little more competitive for a moment here. Simple as to back up, go through the motions through bank and bit full sends wow. straight through the dumpster. It's left on a simple. He's going to replicate the move that bit just made. They never saw it. him He's cross. They never saw him cross. And so Frozen's deleted. No one in position to trade this. Simple oh. eventually dealt with and it's Yimpat to find him. That's a very intriguing head-to-head -head because I feel like Impact actually has been uh, getting the better of Simple in a lot of these fights, in a lot of these rounds. I mean, he's 18 kills. He's right neck and neck with the top of his team. Him and Frozen at 18, Zershan at 19. What a double from Torshi. That fast flank for Na'Vi completely dealt with by the Orpa on a rifle. And it was Simple's flash that set him up for two huge kills on top side. That's a three on five for Maus, but you wouldn't know it because in an instant, it's down to a three on one. Great work to recover that. Felt like Ema did all he could. It felt like he did enough. But that was that early B setup for Na'Vi that even though it was super proactive. Yeah, right. That, that That's a, a frustrating round to lose for that exact reason. You made the right moves. You made the right decisions, but they just came a fraction too late in the round, right? Even though you are being proactive with that triple B lean, even though you are taking space, it wasn't quite fast enough. Oh, big boost in T-Spawn with the orb. Putting Torshi, oh, he missed it. He, he fired a shot at least and someone came out of heaven, but I wonder if that changes anything for Na'Vi, knowing that we have a bit more room, but no need throwing yourself a few steps forward. They have a double mid-fight setup. They've re-smoked Monster. Alexi down in con. Doors off as well, they've even seen him. I like the Miles went for it. I haven't seen that in a while. But you really got to hit those. This takes a lot of resources. This game is on a knife's edge right now. Simple at long. Not even seen uh, the AWP here. Run boost into it. Oh, I miss Flick for Simple. And so he'll back up, does not want to hang around over at long, doesn't want to be that first domino to fall in a very lengthy map. Can't afford to make any sort of mistake here. Na'Vi re aggroing into the toilets. I like this. They conceded what? long, but Zershan, that is a gnarly gap through he the smoke. Knows. He's heard the tag, and I am dead as well. With Eva gone, wow. Sui follows up. Alexi dispatched of as that first man on the scene and the last man on the scene for Na'Vi in that one. Yeah, Mal's, Everyone else has got to run for the hills. Mal's are super far up long before they even got that kill on Simple. Zershan looks under Na'Vi's smoke on Divider and finds the Orper. But they were already going for the A hit. Even if he doesn't get those kills, Mal's about to pop out long. So Alexi just thinks, yeah, I have a bit of a timing to get behind Truck, but... Mal's are so much further than Na'Vi were ready for. And they just, again, come out swinging. So the, the thing that made this round so tense was the, you know, both teams are hitting that point where the money's running out. And this late in the game, that is a make or break, you know, condition yeah. for the matchup. 
Whoever won this one was always going to feel real good about it. The fact that you win it flawlessly if you're oh. Maus, and then you oh. even remove one of the saving players. That kill right there carries monumental impact. With two players surviving, there were ways you could have juggled the money here and put together a full-on buy. Give yourself the best possible chance with, with still a bit of room to maneuver. They would have had five rifles. Yeah. Now they can't justify it. Now they're in, now they're in such an awkward position. They're in dire straits, and oh. they're going to kind of put a bit of money around the saved gun but yeah. this isn't the buy you want to deny match and series point to your opponent with yeah gonna get 2400 next round so they get the full buy but this is very unfortunate timing <gasps> J uh, i am hits a beautiful one though he only makes it one quick trade they were setting up a run boost for long there's no warp in play there's nothing to worry about in the range game but jl who's down on b Looking longingly for a kill. Mouths keep it tight. There's no reason for them to lose this round. Especially when there's not like a, a whole lot this, this M4 can ever hope to do from down towards short, right? It's not like uh, JL's in a position where, where he can be hyper involved. He's got to make a bit of noise if he wants to commit to a wrap round. So really you're just kind of waiting and seeing and hoping that these pistols can deliver salvation, something to hold on to here. They are right next Ooh. to Simple. The entirety of the Mao squad is right here. All four? Surely not. I mean, they checked him last time. And One. this time they try to check him. The impact dead. They're going to start spamming. Nice. And so it's just the one and done. Now that con rotate comes into fruition for JL. But as mentioned, he had to make noise to do it. They didn't know about Alexi, but Frozen trades him. Turns on a dime. Bits recovered the M4. A oh, chance no! at the 1v1, but doesn't convert the spray. And that missed opportunity, just as the bullet sailed on past, that opportunity sails past Na'Vi. What an unbelievable flick for Zershan, and there is no doubt about it, he has been the hero of this T side, coming in with that crucial double kill up short in the last gun round, flicking to avoid disaster in this one. He has had some monumental moments for Maus in the last couple of T sided rounds, and just when it felt like Na'Vi were waking up to make this a three map affair, Zershan has sent them back to bed. Three shots now to close this map and series, and that would push Maus forward in the groups. It would send Na'Vi down to the lower bracket, 1B03 away from elimination. And as we say here in Group B, I mean, it, it's a very tricky group, right? Every single game you win, you go on to face someone even harder in the next round of the matchups. There's some crazy matches still to be played in Group B. Of course, the winner of this facing off against Vitality OG's Victor. Oh, and this time oh. the boost is <laughs> fruitful. They do it again, and Torshi reaps the reward. You get a 5v4 to open up this round. You get a 5v4 to grace you oh. in what could be your last round of play, and he even takes it one step further, does Torshi. Simple rush connector after they saw that boost. He thought he had room. Torshi's taking him out as well, so two kills, and it might just be done. Yimpat, what a phenomenal map from this guy who has not looked like this yet. This is his best game in Miles, 20 and 12, up against Na'Vi, and he has just slammed the hammer down with two more shots. Alexi, the captain, alone. And it seems like Maus have got this in the bag. Yeah, there, there's there's no world in which Alexi wins this. We, we can start wrapping this one up. He's 1v5 or 1v4. He's so far removed. He's down on B and Maus are hitting the top site. They've done it on Na'Vi's map pick as well. Alexi, what is he supposed to do here? All there is left to do is die. And for this outing with the Na'Vi squad after you know, finding their form back at Blast, you, you were hopeful that they could show up here and deliver on day one. Whenever you looked at Na'Vi, whenever you spoke to Na'Vi, you felt like the vibes were good. 
And Maus from the play-ins who were lights out there where Torshi was the star. Now the usual suspects look to show up. It's Frozen, it's Zertion. Lights out game from them today. Yimpat started this on dire straits. He couldn't even find a kill on Ancient. He was having no impact. But by the time Overpass rolled around, he showed he's got what it takes. Yeah, Maus continues to show the Academy prospects really do lead a run to some of the deepest tournament runs in Counter-Strike. This is the youngest team at IEM Cologne, and they've just taken down Na'Vi 2-0 and oh, and didn't even break a sweat. Sui's back, and Na'Vi are in disarray here as a disappointing day graces their screens. Secured their opening victory here, and they do it in style. Thank you, Shuri. Trying to make me, trying to make me laugh, trying to, trying to tickle me up a little bit here. But Zersh, I want to touch on you for one thing, right? In the play-in, even when you guys won this this 0.86 rating you had, you didn't even look happy after getting through to the group stage after advancing. But here, you turned things around massively. So were you just hard on yourself? You weren't satisfied? Yeah, I mean, I, I was happy, obviously, to win. And I mean, I have an amazing team that could carry carry me through kind of the plane because I felt like I played probably one of my worst games, like in uh, those two games. Um, but yeah, I'm just really happy to be back. And yeah, I'm very harsh on myself. So I think that's a really positive thing. And yeah, I'm just happy I could show up today. And what did you do different to change it, right? Because it was only a couple of days. Yeah, I mean, I had a really good talk with uh, Shuhi, my IGL, Kamil. Uh, he's amazing and he really pushed me forward to kind of understand what I'm doing wrong. and. Yeah, I think I've focused on it last two days as well in practice, and uh, yeah, I think it worked. Now we started to see on overpass there, and this is the first time we've seen an official for U5 right now. And we saw Na'Vi start to make this comeback going into it. What kind of calls was Shuei delivering at that point? Mm. Wait, can you ask again? The question? Sorry. <laughs> what kind of calls was Shuhei delivering when Na'Vi started to come back into it? Yeah, I mean, we kind of just took a timeout. We kept talking about it. Uh, Camille kind of wanted us to take maybe a bit more A space faster so that we can have more options, which I think we didn't do so well. Um, but yeah, we just had more options. And I think we, we got into really good situations executing, but I don't think we did so well this game. Um, at the end, we did well. So at least we stepped up when it mattered and we won the game. So yeah. I love this. this is a common theme with you Mal's guys right now. It's like even when you're winning, even when you're doing well, you're seeing all these details and going this little step further. What does this Mal's feel like right now compared to the old one? Uh, well, it feels very different. Obviously, we have two new players and we are a much younger team, so we're having a lot more fun, I would say, uh, which can be good and bad. So it's very important to balance it. I think Frozen is doing a really good job at kind of keeping us calm when it's needed because he's the most experienced. So, yeah, I think there is a bit of chaos now, but I think with experience, it uh, will only develop. And I think the sky's the limit with this roster and I'm just really excited to be here. I like it. I like what I'm seeing. Go back to you, sit on the desk. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, it's a good day in the Mal's office. Of course, that would be Navi taking L here to start their journey in Cologne. But for Mal's, they just continue down the trend that is hot. And that's why we brought in the coldest man that we have in the room. His name is Frozen. We're going to begin to dive deep into what the hell Mal's is doing right. So tell us all about it. Yo, what's good? Um, yeah. I mean, we just won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Easy. Frozen, you, you were hitting some bangers, man. So, it, you know, kind of tell us, you know, what, what's your preparation like going into these events that, you know, what's the difference? You just said bananas. They were out of bananas. What happened? I mean, yeah, banana is part of it. Just, you know, stay energetic throughout the game. But um, I think just like being mentally prepared for mm -hmm. what's coming up. Basically, every match, you know, there's some like ways to get ready. Um, for me, it's gym, most likely. And... Yeah, you know, just being ready there mentally always. You, you talk about being there mentally ready. There was a moment in this overpass where it felt like they figured you out. They were starting to block you. How was the process in the team to kind of find a solution to break through that barrier? Yeah, I mean, the couple of rounds we lost, I think we went B and I mean, we just ran into a wall, it felt like. And I mean, towards the end, we just actually started to abuse the A space we had all the time. And yeah, I mean, I think uh, Shuhi called the great game towards the end. We also kept it calm. And uh, yeah, that's nice. all. Nice, <laughs> Jacob. You're gonna congratulate the man. Yeah, folks. Now I kind of want to talk about you because we uh, we've been uh, we've been watching you and, and seeing you play. We have round 12, by the way, here running for you or 26. 26. 26. That, 26. That's 26. what he was talking about. That's abusing the A side, right? Yeah. Nice little uh, one way, by the way, from Zersh. That's a bit nerdy there. A uh, bit of a one way. I mean, I don't know what he really did, but I just so he got two kills, which was, I mean, very impactful, obviously. <laughs> that's <It's> nice. <laughs> I mean, I, I think he just won the round basically by killing two people for us and. Yeah, I mean, he, he just entered the side like that. Abusing the A space, yeah? We spoke about you coming into uh, into this game and into this 
tournament. You're in a great shape right now. I don't know if you know, but you're the highest rated player the past three months on land out of everyone, you know, with the likes of Saivu, Nico, etc. Do you feel like you're playing your best Counter-Strike right now? Mm, not really. I think, yeah? I mean, for me, it's, I think there's always room to improve, to be honest. And even though maybe the stats say it, I still don't feel like I'm where, uh, that I'm where, where I want to be. Okay. Right. Yeah, we were we were arg we were having this conversation on the desk. You're obviously flying high, super high level Counter Strike, but there is still a final step with your team to be in these deep runs in tournaments. Do you feel like you have the roster to do it now to show us what you can do at these moments? I think everybody is stepping up lately. Uh, I mean, Torshe had a rough year uh, last year, so I think he bounced back hard this year. And I mean, he's one of the most key factors that we that we will need if we want to go for titles this year. So, yeah, I mean, if we keep this up, and I mean, we're also just getting to know each other, to be honest. Right, sure. So, I mean, looking good so far, you could call it honeymoon period, but I think with the uh, the, the age that we have, I mean, it just feels like a, like, a, like classmates, you know? It, like, it's like a school trip. It feels you're good. You're 21, you've been around for a long time, and you're still 21. Speak to us about Jim Fat, because we, uh, we don't know too much about him. We know he's young, he's, he's a great player, he's been uh, having a rough start, I'd say, to the tournament, but how is he doing in practice, and how is he to play with? I mean, in practice, I think it's easier to play, kind of, there is no pressure, right? So, in the practices, I mean, he's been amazing. Not saying that he played bad in officials, because I think he actually did very well for his first time, like, for his big first tournament. And, uh, yeah, obviously, some, some stuff to improve on. Mm. And But I think so far, I mean, I think he's excellent. Uh, a lot of people were excited about Shuhi coming to the lineup, right? How how are the pre-existing relationship between he and other players in the team? Like, how is that a family feeling already from the beginning? Because there's a bit of history, right? There is a history. I mean, without me, right? I wasn't there before. I'm still worried. <laughs> You're part of the family. They they take you in. I mean, I'm still worried they might replace me with Hubert or, or who was that? Shane who was the last guy. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I think I got welcomed nicely. I would say, as I said, it's like it feels like a cl classroom. You know, I mean, we are what like. 19 average, 19 years average, mm -hmm. and I mean, we're just having fun, you know? If it's a classroom, who's the class clown? Who's the one that's really keeping the, the atmosphere light? I bet it would be you. Yeah. Uh, Is it you? I think it's a good bet, but I think <laughs> depends on the day and the uh, caffeine yeah. dosage. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fair enough, yeah. Uh, but I think everyone, I mean. And who's the teacher? Who's like the strict one? Who's I, the adult? I think the coach. I think oh, the coach. Right. He's trying to calm us down. <laughs> I mean, we were just playing football before the match, you know? Yeah. Fair, I, yeah. fair. Hey, so check it out. As the, the brackets turn out, you've got either Vitality or OG. So how do you feel about that, pal? The way I feel, I mean, if you want to go far, I think we got to beat the big dogs, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think whoever comes, basically, I think we, I mean, not, that, not saying we should beat them, mm. but we basically have to beat them if we want to go far. Uh, a whole lot of people are using the... Uh, oh, my microphone was re into my mouth. Yeah, I actually heard that. <laughs> a whole lot of people are talking about it's early in the season, not everyone is ready in, on the full scale. I'm kind of... I'm getting... I've had enough of hearing that. How ready are you guys? Deep into the map pool, ready to take on the big teams? I mean, we're ready. Ah, <laughs> I know? like that. Like, that's, that's we, yeah. like, we, we have some stuff that we added on a couple of maps already. We had, we had a boot camp. I think there is still a lot more stuff to add for us, but I think so far, I mean, with what we have, I think we are doing all right. I think straight from the play-in, you guys already set a tone, or uh, you know, you said like, hey, what, this is what we're gonna do. A little bit of overtime scares, but then you know, the bracket starts to unfold. If you want to look at it for yourself, that's what it looks like, Frozen. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. Not I, bad. I mean, yeah, as I said, we gotta beat everyone basically to to go far. Just yeah. when you got up here first and you asked about the heroic game versus uh, the Mongols, heroic came super, super close to losing that second map. They pushed it into a third one. You played against the Mongols in the, in the very first game, also got into overtime. Were you bad or are they good? What's Honestly, I think I'm uh, I'm very impressed by them. Yeah. I mean, I, coming to the match, even I think earlier this year, they had a couple of upsets at Katowice already. Yeah. But I mean, I think they changed two players and they are still very solid. I mean, we played overtime with them and I think if Torshi didn't drop 50 that game, it would have very likely lost Probably, that game. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, they're playing very close with Heroic. I think they have the basics nailed down and most of all, I mean, they are shooting heads. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're taking duels to them, I think that's what they want. Okay. Yeah, yeah they're, they're applying pressure. You know, I think yeah. that, that's the easiest Definitely. way for me to put it. These are your stats for the day, but, but truthfully, man, uh, Frozen, you say Mouse Sports has to beat the big dogs. Uh, and I think you're gonna need some sleep for that, right? So maybe we'll get you out of here. As you wish. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank for your time. We'll take a look at tomorrow's matches. That is Frozen from uh, 
Yeah, from Miles. Sorry, it took me a second there. I was just trying to direct traffic and land an airplane at the same time. It's okay. Uh, Tower to control. We're we're looking at Cloud9 nine and 9. So commentators have fun with that one, I yeah, suppose. That is going to be great. And and honestly, with the level of performance that 9 has been put through and the fact that Buster is playing for Cloud9, I don't think it's that easy of a call. I wish I could tell you Cloud9 is going to take it for sure, but I actually don't feel about that. Okay. And then the Vitality OG game. But I know you're looking forward to, Jake. Yes, I am. But let's be honest, right? On, on paper, there should be no way OG could contest with White Saturday. But OG has surprised us so far in this tournament. That's fair to say. They are they're in the group stage. I didn't see that coming, first and foremost. But uh, I expect Saibu to show up and do what he does best, which is playing the best counter strike in the world. Right? My man. Which is own. You know, basically. Absolutely own. Own, yeah. even. Also, in that matchup, I think it was determined that uh, Simple had got some 2,000 frags in Cologne. I, I, I don't know if you guys <laughs> saw that or not. Hello. Not like this... Go around. It has been like 2,000 frags in the first match today. Come on, guys. Let's and, be realistic. And now they find themselves in the lower bracket, right? Yeah. It would be interesting to know when was the last time Simple did not make it to Lanxess. Okay. Because I don't know that that happened that many times. I mean, that that last, you know, that last grand final we had here in Cologne was, you know. Crazy. Was, best of five. That was awesome. You know, that was a, a full thrill ride if you were in attendance in the Lanxess. Yeah, 2,000 kills across that's Cologne crazy. history. That's that's a lot of frags. Ah, that's crazy. That's a testament to how long he's been around here at the game. Now, obviously, commiserations to Navi for having taken the L today. Mal's were just a better team. There's just simply no way else to put it, right? I Jake? think it's a reality check for, for Navi. Yeah, we, we came in, you know, we had higher expectations than we did in Copenhagen because they surprised us. Surprised Price us, sorry, but I also do think it's it's a reality check in the sense that Navi have re ramped their entire roster, moving from being a CIS team into a European team, new in game leader, etc. etc. I don't think personally they're ready for Cologne, they're not ready for the playoff, they're not ready to go deep here, but it's gonna be tough for them, let's be honest. It will be that. Jensa, I want to thank you for a great day at Counter Strike. Guess what else we have coming up tomorrow? Another great more day at Counter Strike. That's uh -huh. right, more CSGO, the last clone with CSGO, as I'm told, as we're led to believe nonetheless. We do call it a day here on the A stream. I think that Heroic Mongols game is still going on down below us. So if you want to check that out, it's going to be over on the B stream. But for the night, the A stream is done. We'll see you tomorrow. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters in Cologne. <laughs> I am my hero, you couldn't imagine what it's like in my mind It's beauty and catastrophe at the same time Remember they laughed at me when it was game time Now I know that they mad at me, I'm what you can't find I'm not from the day, I come alive at night I'm not what you used to, couldn't recognize that y'all on the ground While I'm taking flight, yeah, you're welcome to join me I promise I won't fight <laughs>